Tell me why we shouldn't kill you now. The Conclave is destroyed. Everyone who attended is dead. Except for you. You think I'm responsible? Explain this. I... can't. What do you mean, you can't? I don't know what that is. Or how it got there. You're lying! We need him, Cassandra. Whatever you think I did, I'm innocent. Do you remember what happened? How this began? I remember running. Things were chasing me, and then... A woman. A woman? She reached out to me. But then... <sighs> Go to the Ford camp, Liliana. I will take him to the rift. What did happen? It will be easier to show you. a massive rift into the world of demons that grows larger with each passing hour. It's not the only such rift, just the largest. All were caused by the explosion at the Conclave. An explosion can do that? This one did. Unless we act, the breach may grow until it swallows the world. Each time the breach expands, your mark spreads, and it is killing you. It may be the key to stopping this, but there isn't much time. You say it may be the key? To doing what? Closing the breach. Whether that's possible is something we shall discover shortly. It is our only chance, however. And yours. You still think I did this? To myself? Not intentionally. Something clearly went wrong. And if I'm not responsible? Someone is. And you are our only suspect. You wish to prove your innocence? This is the only way. 
So I don't really have a choice about this. None of us has a choice. They have decided you built. They need it. The people of Haven mourn our most holy, divine Justinia, head of the Chantry. The Conclave was hers. It was a chance for peace between mages and Templars. She brought their leaders together. Now they are dead. We lash out like the sky, but we must think beyond ourselves, as she did. Until the breach is sealed. There will be a trial. I can promise no more. Come. It is not far. Where are you taking me? Your mark must be tested on something smaller than the breach. Pulses are coming fast now. The larger the breach grows, the more rifts appear, the more demons we face. How did I survive the blast? They said you stepped out of a rift, then fell unconscious. They say a woman was in the rift behind you. No one knows who she was. Everything farther in the valley was laid waste, including the Temple of Sacred Ashes. I suppose you'll see soon enough. Your weapon. Now! A demon attacked me. What was I supposed to do? You don't need to fight. Are you saying it won't happen again? You're right. I cannot protect you. And I cannot expect you to be defenseless. I should remember you did not attempt to run. is yours. You mean this? Whatever magic opened the breach in the sky also placed that mark upon your hand. I theorized the mark might be able to close the rifts that have opened in the breach's wake. And it seems I was correct. Meaning it could also close the breach itself? Possibly. It seems you hold the key to our salvation. Good to know. 
Here I thought we'd be ass deep in demons forever. Barrick Tethras, rogue, storyteller, and occasionally unwelcome tag along. Are you with the Chantry, or...? <laughs> Was that a serious question? Technically, I'm a prisoner, just like you. I brought you here to tell your story to the Divine. Clearly, that is no longer necessary. Yet, here I am. Lucky for you, considering current events. That's a nice crossbow you have there. Ah, isn't she? Bianca and I have been through a lot together. You named your crossbow Bianca? Of course. And she'll be great company in the valley. Absolutely not. Your help is appreciated, Varric, but... Have you been in the valley lately, Seeker? Your soldiers aren't in control anymore. You need me. Ugh. My name is Solus, if there are to be introductions. I am pleased to see you still live. He means I kept that mark from killing you while you slept. You seem to know a great deal about it all. Solus is an apostate, well versed in such matters. Technically, all mages are now apostates, Cassandra. My travels have allowed me to learn much of the Fade, far beyond the experience of any circle mage. I came to offer whatever help I can give with the breach. If it is not closed, we are all doomed, regardless of origin. I had less choice in volunteering to help. Cassandra, you should know. The magic involved here is unlike any I have seen. Your prisoner is no mage. Indeed, I find it difficult to imagine any mage having such power. Understood. We must get to the forward camp quickly. Well... Bianca's excited. Ah! Here they come! You made it. Chancellor Roderick, this is... I know who he is. As Grand Chancellor of the Chantry, I hereby order you to take this criminal to Valroyo to face execution. Order me? You are a glorified clerk, a bureaucrat. And you are a thug, but a thug who supposedly serves the Chantry. We serve the most holy, Chancellor. As you well know. Justinia is dead! We must elect a replacement and obey her orders on the matter. So none of you are actually in charge here? You killed everyone who was in charge! Call a retreat, Seeker. Our position here is hopeless. We can stop this before it's too late. How? You won't survive long enough to reach the temple, even with all your soldiers. We must get to the temple. It's the quickest route. But not the safest. Our forces can charge as a distraction while we go through the mountains. We lost contact with an entire squad on that path. It's too risky. Listen to me. Abandon this now, before more lives are lost. How do you think we should proceed? Now you're asking me what I think. You have the mark. And you are the one we must keep alive. Since we cannot agree on our own... I say we charge. I won't survive long enough for your trial. Whatever happens, happens now. Liliana, bring everyone left in the valley. Everyone. On your head be the consequences, Seeker.
blade rift. How many rifts are there? We must seal it if we have to get cut! One down! Sealed, as before. You are becoming quite proficient at this. Let's hope it works on the big one. Lady Cassandra, you managed to close the rift. Well done. Do not congratulate me, Commander. This is the prisoners doing. Is it? I hope they're right about you. We've lost a lot of people getting you here. You're not the only one hoping that. We'll see soon enough, won't we? The way to the temple should be clear. Liliana will try to meet you there. Then we'd best move quickly. Give us time, Commander. Make her watch over you, for all our sakes. Temple of Sacred Ashes. What's left of it? That is where you walked out of the Fade, and our soldiers found you. They say a woman was in the rift behind you. No one knows who she was. Have your men take up positions around the temple. This is your chance to end this. Are you ready? I'm assuming you have a plan to get me up there? No. This rift was the first, and it is the key. Seal it, and perhaps we seal the breach. Then let's find a way down, and be careful. Now is the hour of our victory. Bring forth the sacrifice. What are we hearing? At a guess, the person who created the breach. You know this stuff is Red Lyrium Seeker. I see it, Beric. But what's it doing here? Magic could have drawn on Lyrium beneath the temple, corrupted it. <sighs> it's evil. Whatever you do, don't touch it. Keep the sacrifice still. Someone tell me! That is Divine Justinia's voice. called out to you, but... What's going on here? Run where you can! Run them! We have an intruder. Slay the canary. There. Who attacked? And the Divine is she? Was this vision true? What are we seeing? I don't remember. Echoes of what happened here. The Fade bleeds into this place. This rift is not sealed, but it is closed, albeit temporarily. I believe that with the mark, the rift can be opened, and then sealed properly and safely. However, 
Opening the rift will likely attract attention from the other side. That means demons. Stand ready. I didn't know you were awake. I swear. Is this another prison? I... no. I mean, I don't think so. Then where am I? Tell me. I beg your forgiveness and your blessing. I am but a humble servant. You're back in Haven, my lord. They say you saved us. The breach stopped growing, just like the mark on your hand. It's all anyone has talked about for the last three days. So, a trial happens now, I suppose? I don't know anything about that. I'm certain Lady Cassandra would want to know you've wakened. She said, at once. And where is she? In the Chantry, with the Lord Chancellor. At once, she said. Chain him! I want him prepared for travel to the capital for trial. Disregard that, and leave us. You walk a dangerous line, Seeker. The breach is stable, but it is still a threat. I will not ignore it. So I'm still a suspect, even after what we just did? You absolutely are. No, he is not. Someone was behind the explosion at the Conclave. Someone Most Holy did not expect. Perhaps they died with the others, or have allies who yet live. I am a suspect? You, and many others. But not the prisoner. I heard the voices in the temple. The Divine called to him for help. So his survival, that thing on his hand, 
all a coincidence. Providence. The Maker sent him to us in our darkest hour. You realize I'm Kanari? I have not forgotten. No matter what you are or what you believe, you are exactly what we needed when we needed it. The breach remains, and your mark is still our only hope of closing it. This is not for you to decide. You know what this is, Chancellor. A writ from the Divine, granting us the authority to act. As of this moment, I declare the Inquisition reborn. We will close the breach, we will find those responsible, and we will restore order with or without your approval. This is the Divine's directive. Rebuild the Inquisition of old. Find those who will stand against the chaos. We aren't ready. We have no leader, no numbers, and now no Chantry support. But we have no choice. We must act now, with you at our side. What is the Inquisition of old, exactly? It preceded the Chantry. People who banded together to restore order in a world gone mad. After? They laid down their banner and formed the Templar Order, but the Templars have lost their way. We need those who can do what must be done united under a single banner once more. But aren't you still part of the Chantry? <laughs> Is that what you see? The Chantry will take time to find a new Divine, and then it will wait for her direction. But we cannot wait. So many Grand Clerics died at the Conclave. No, we are on our own. Perhaps forever. You're trying to start a holy war. We are already at war. You are already involved. Its mark is upon you. As to whether the war is holy, that depends on what we discover. What if I refuse? You can go if you wish. You should know that while some believe you chosen, many still think you guilty. The Inquisition can only protect you if you are with us. We can also help you. It will not be easy if you stay. But you cannot pretend this has not changed you. We'll see how this goes. That is all we ask. Help us fix this before it's too late.
Does it trouble you? Not really. What's important is that your mark is now stable, as is the breach. You've given us time, and Solas believes a second attempt might succeed, provided the mark has more power. The same level of power used to open the breach in the first place. That is not easy to come by. Clearly, you have something in mind. We do. You've met Commander Cullen, leader of the Inquisition's forces. It was only for a moment on the field. I'm pleased you survived. This is Lady Josephine Montelier, our ambassador and chief diplomat. You're even taller than I'd heard. And of course, you know Sister Liliana. My position here involves a degree of... She is our spymaster. Yes, tactfully put, Cassandra. Cassandra tells me you have a plan. I mentioned that your mark needs more power to close the breach for good. Which means we must approach the rebel mages for help. And I still disagree. The Templars could serve just as well. We need power, Commander. Enough magic poured into that mark. Might destroy us all. Templars could suppress the breach, weaken it, so... Pure speculation. I was a Templar. I know what they're capable of. Unfortunately, neither group will even speak to us yet. The Chantry has denounced the Inquisition, and you specifically. That didn't take long. Shouldn't they be busy arguing over who's going to become divine? Some are calling you, a Kunari, the Herald of Andraste. That frightens the Chantry. The remaining clerics have declared it blasphemy. And we, heretics, for harboring you. Chancellor Roderick's doing, no doubt. It limits our options. Approaching the Majors or Templars for help is currently out of the question. Just how am I the Herald of Andraste? People saw what you did at the temple, how you stopped the breach from growing. They have also heard about the woman seen in the rift when we first found you. They believe that was Andraste. Even if we tried to stop that view from spreading. Which we have not. The point is, everyone is talking about you. It's quite the title, isn't it? How do you feel about that? I'm no herald of anything, particularly not Andraste. I'm sure the Chantry would agree. People are desperate for a sign of hope. For some, you're that sign. And to others, a symbol of everything that's gone wrong. So if I wasn't with the Inquisition... Well, let's be honest, they would have censured us no matter what. And you not being here isn't an option. There is something you can do. A Chantry cleric by the name of Mother Giselle has asked to speak to you. She is not far, and knows those involved far better than I. Her assistance could be invaluable. Why would someone from the Chantry help a declared heretic? I understand she's a reasonable sort. Perhaps she does not agree with her sisters. You will find Mother Giselle tending to the wounded in the hinterlands near Redcliffe. Look for other opportunities to expand the Inquisition's influence while you're there. We need agents to extend our reach beyond this valley, and you're better suited than anyone to recruit them. In the meantime, let's think of other options. I won't leave this all to the Herald. The Inquisition cannot remain, Ambassador. If you can't prove, it was founded on Justinia's orders. This is an inopportune time, Marquis. More of the faithful flock here each day. But allow me to introduce you to the brave soul who risked his life to slow the magic of the breach. Master Radar, this is the Marquis Durellion, one of Divine Justinia's greatest supporters. And the rightful owner of Haven. How does Durellion lend Justinia these lands for pilgrimage? This Inquisition is not a beneficiary of this arrangement. This is the first I've heard of Haven having an owner outside the Chantry. My wife, Lady Machin of Denver, has claimed to Haven by ancient treaty with the monarchs of Ferelden. We were honored to lend its use to divine Justinia. She is a... She was a woman of supreme merit. 
I will not let an upstart order remain on her holy grounds. Demons are pouring from the sky, and you're worried about land claims. Haven is the Durelion's rightful property. Has Empress Selene officially acknowledged your possession of Haven? I was unaware her Imperial Majesty had conferred with Ferenden's monarchs on this matter. The Empress... has not yet had the opportunity to do so. <sighs> we face a dark time, Your Grace. Divine Justinia would not want her passing to divide us. She would, in fact, trust us to forge new alliances to the benefit of all, no matter how strange they might seem. I'll think on it, Lady Montillier. The Inquisition might stay in the meanwhile. Do the Durellians actually have a claim on this place? His Grace's position is not so strong as he presents it. Despite their Ferelden relations, the Durellions are Orlesian. If the Marquis wishes to claim Haven, Empress Selene must negotiate with the Ferelden on his behalf. Her current concerns are a bit larger than minor property disputes. I'm so pleased the Marquis isn't tossing us out into the cold. His Grace is only the first of many dignitaries we must contend with. You expect more people in Haven? Undoubtedly. And each visitor will spread the story of the Inquisition after they depart. An ambassador should ensure the tale is as complimentary as possible. May I ask what brought you to work for the Inquisition? Sister Leliana approached me. We've been acquainted for quite some time. For better or worse, being the Inquisition's diplomat has become as interesting as she promised. What sort of dealings have you had with nobility? For some years, I was the royally appointed court ambassador from Antiva to Orle. The nobility of Thedas is a rather singular sphere. Those I'm not acquainted with, I know through reputation. I'm glad for your help. I have a feeling the Inquisition's going to need it. I do believe you are correct. Thedas's politics have become agitated as of late. I hope to guide us down smoother paths. But please excuse me. I've much work to do before the day is done. Blessed are the peacekeepers, the champions of the just. Blessed are the righteous, the lights in the shadow. In their blood, the Maker's will is written. Is that what you want from us? Blood? To die so that your will is done? Is death your only blessing? You speak for Andraste, no? What does the Maker's prophet have to say about all of this? What's his game? How is this a game? Do you see the sky? What about the temple ruins? The bones lying in the dust? Even if you didn't support the Divine's peace, you wouldn't call this right. Who could? So many innocent lives. The faithful murdered where the holiest of holies once stood. If the Maker willed this, what is it if not a game or a cruel joke? Awful things happen every day. Get used to it. Get used to being a pawn? To be discarded when the Maker's done with you? The Chantry teaches that the Maker abandoned us. He demands repentance for our sins. He demands it all. Our lives, our deaths. Justinia gave him everything she had, and he let her die. Um, maybe you should be angry at the people who murdered her? If the Maker doesn't intervene to save the best of his servants, what good is he? I used to believe I was chosen, just as some say you are. I thought I was fulfilling his purpose for me, working with the Divine, helping people. But now she's dead. It was all for nothing. Serving the Maker meant nothing. I'm not really the best person to talk to. Doesn't the Chantry have people for this? <laughs> so I should let a priest comfort me? No, this is my burden. I regret that I even let you see me like this. It was a moment of weakness. It won't happen again. Come, to work then. We will speak later. So, now that Cassandra's out of earshot, are you holding up all right? 
I mean, you go from being the most wanted criminal in Thetis to joining the armies of the faithful. Most people would have spread that out over more than one day. It's not so bad. I'm taking it in stride. Better than most of us, then. For days now, we've been staring at the breach, watching demons and maker knows what fall out of it. Bad for morale would be an understatement. I still can't believe anyone was in there and lived. If it was that bad, why did you stay? Cassandra said you were free to go. I like to think I'm as selfish and irresponsible as the next guy, but this? Thousands of people died on that mountain. I was almost one of them. And now there's a hole in the sky. Even I can't walk away and just leave that to sort itself out. I'm still not sure I believe that any of this is really happening. If this is all just the Maker winding us up, I hope there's a damn good punchline coming. You might want to consider running at the first opportunity. I've written enough tragedies to recognize where this is going. Heroes are everywhere. I've seen that. But the hole in the sky... That's beyond heroes. We're going to need a miracle. The Chosen of Andraste. A blessed hero sent to save us all. I've no interest in being a hero. All I want is to find a way to seal this breach. Pragmatic, but ultimately irrelevant. I've journeyed deep into the fade in ancient ruins and battlefields to see the dreams of lost civilizations. I've watched as hosts of spirits clash to reenact the bloody past in ancient wars both famous and forgotten. Every great war has its heroes. I'm just curious what kind you'll be. What do you mean ruins and battlefields? Any building strong enough to withstand the rigors of time as a history. Every battlefield is steeped in death. Both attract spirits. They press against the veil, weakening the barrier between our worlds. When I dream in such places, I go deep into the Fade. I can find memories no other living being has ever seen. You fall asleep in the middle of ancient ruins. Isn't that dangerous? I do set wards. And if you leave food out for the giant spiders, they are usually content to live and let live. I've never heard of anyone going so far into the Fade. That's extraordinary. Thank you. It's not a common field of study for obvious reasons. Not so flashy as throwing fire or lightning. The thrill of finding remnants of a thousand-year-old dream? I would not trade it for anything. I will stay there. At least until the breach has been closed. Was that in doubt? I am an apostate surrounded by Chantry forces in the middle of a mage rebellion. Cassandra has been accommodating. But you understand my caution. The giant hole in the sky trumps any other concerns. We can worry about the rest later. Yes. Who can say what this world will look like when we are done fighting for it? But now let us hope either the mages or the Templars have the power to seal the breach. You there. There's a shield in your hand. Block with it. If this man were your enemy, you'd be dead. Lieutenant, don't hold back. The recruits must prepare for a real fight, not a practice one. Yes, Commander. We've received a number of recruits. Locals from Haven and some pilgrims. None made quite the entrance you did. That wasn't my idea. I'd be concerned if it was. I was recruited to the Inquisition in Kirkwall myself. I was there during the Mage Uprising. I saw firsthand the devastation it caused. Sir. Cassandra sought a solution. When she offered me a position, I left the Templars to join her cause. Now it seems we face something far worse. You left the Templars for this. You believe the Inquisition can work? I do. The Chantry lost control of both Templars and Mages. Now they argue over a new divine while the breach remains. The Inquisition could act when the Chantry cannot. Our followers would be part of that. There's so much we can... Forgive me. I doubt you came here for a lecture. You've given this a lot of thought. I know what happens when order is lost. And action comes too late. <sighs> There's still a lot of work ahead. Commander, Sir Ryden has a report on our supply lines. As I was saying. Ugh. 
I think you need practice dummies made of sturdier stuff. That would be nice. Like maybe iron. Did I do the right thing? What I have set in motion here could destroy everything I have revered my whole life. One day they may write about me as a traitor, a madwoman, a fool. And they may be right. What does your faith tell you? I believe you are innocent. I believe more is going on here than we can see. And I believe no one else cares to do anything about it. They will stand in the fire and complain that it is hot. But is this the Maker's will? I can only guess. You don't think I'm the Herald of Andraste? I think you were sent to help us. I hope you were. But the Maker's help takes many forms. Sometimes it's difficult to discern who it truly benefits, or how. What's going to happen now? Now, we deal with the Chantry's panic over you before they do even more harm. <laughs> Then we close the breach. We are the only ones who can. <sighs> After that, we find out who is responsible for this chaos, and we end them. And if there are consequences to be paid for what I have done, I pay them. I only pray the price is not too high. You didn't have any choice. Didn't I? My train is always said, Cassandra, you are too brash. You must think before you act. I see what must be done, and I do it. I see no point in running around in circles like a dog chasing its tail. But I misjudged you in the beginning, did I not? I thought the answer was before me, clear as day. I cannot afford to be so careless again. It wasn't like you had no reason to suspect me. I was determined to have someone answer for what happened. Anyone. You've said you don't believe you're chosen. Does that mean you also don't believe in the Maker? You're asking me? You're not a follower of the Kyun. You could be... I suppose it doesn't matter now. I have to believe we were put on this path for a reason. Even if you do not. Now it simply remains to see where it leads us. of Andraste. I've heard the stories. Everyone has. We know what you did at the breach. They might not know much about the Canari, but you'll get no backtalk from anyone here. That's a promise. Inquisition Scout Harding, at your service. I, well, all of us here, will do whatever we can to help. <laughs> Harding, huh? Ever been to Kirkwall's High Town? I can't say I have. Why? You'd be Harding and I... No, <laughs> never mind. Ugh. I'm starting to worry about these stories that everyone's heard. Oh, there's nothing to worry about. They only say you're the last great hope for Thetis. Oh, wonderful. The Hinterlands are as good a place as any to start fixing things. We came to secure horses from Redcliffe's old horse master. I grew up here, and people always said that Dennett's herds were the strongest and the fastest this side of the Frostbacks. But with the Mage Templar fighting getting worse, we couldn't get to Dennett. The Maker only knows if he's even still alive. Mother Giselle's at the crossroads helping refugees and the wounded. Our latest reports say that the war's spread there too. Corporal Vale and our men are doing what they can to help protect the people, but they won't be able to hold out very long. You best get going. No time to lose. Inquisition forces! They're trying to protect the refugees. 
Looks like they could use a hand. Hold. We are not apostates. I do not think they care, Seeker. are not Templars. We mean you no harm. Doesn't look like they're listening. There are mages here who can heal your wounds. Lie still. Don't... Don't touch me, Mother. Their magic is... Turn to noble purpose. Their magic is surely no more evil than your blade. What? Hush, dear boy. Allow them to ease your suffering. Mother Giselle. I am. And you must be the one they are calling the Herald of Andraste. Not through any choice of mine. <laughs> we seldom have much say in our fate, I'm sad to say. So you agree with them? I don't presume to know the Maker's intentions, for any of us. But I did not ask you to come simply to debate with me. Then why am I here? I know of the Chantry's denouncement, and I am familiar with those behind it. I won't lie to you. Some of them are grandstanding, hoping to increase their chances of becoming the new divine. Some are simply terrified. So many good people, senselessly taken from us. And that's an excuse? They're making things worse. They don't know that. This is my point. Go to them. Convince the remaining clerics you are no demon to be feared. They have heard only frightful tales of you. Give them something else to believe. You want me to appeal to them? If I thought you were incapable, I wouldn't suggest it. Will they even listen? Let me put it this way. You needn't convince them all. You just need some of them to doubt. Their power is the unified voice. Take that from them and you receive the time you need. So I show up, say hello, show them the mark on my hand? I honestly don't know if you've been touched by fate, or sent to help us, but I hope. Hope is what we need now. The people will listen to your rallying call, as they will listen to no other. You could build the Inquisition into a force that will deliver us, or destroy us. I will go to Haven and provide Sister Leliana the names of those in the Chantry who will be amenable to a gathering. It is not much, but I will do whatever I can. Your kind killed the most holy! Lies! Your kind let her die! 
Shut your mouth, mate! Enough! Knight Captain! That is not my title. We are not Templars any longer. We are all part of the Inquisition. And what does that mean, exactly? Back already, Chancellor. Haven't you done enough? I'm curious, Commander, as to how your Inquisition and its Herald will restore order as you've promised. Of course you are. Back to your duties, all of you. Mages and Templars were already at war. Now they're blaming each other for the Divine's death. Which is why we require a proper authority to guide them back to order. Who? You? Random clerics who weren't important enough to be at the Conclave. The Rebel Inquisition and its so-called Herald of Andraste? I think not. If the proper authority hadn't completely failed, the Conclave wouldn't have been needed. So you suggest I blame the Chantry and exalt a murderer? What of justice? That won't help restore order in the here and now. <laughs> order will never be restored so long as this rebellion is allowed to fester. Remind me why you're allowing the Chancellor to stay? Clearly, your Templar knows where to draw the line. He's toothless. There's no point turning him into a martyr simply because he runs at the mouth. The Chancellor's a good indicator of what to expect in Val Royo, however. How widespread is the violence between mages and Templars? Impossible to say. Your organization flouting the Chantry's authority will not help matters. With the Conclave destroyed, I imagine the war between mages and Templars is renewed with interest. The mages and Templars are fighting even though we don't know what really happened at the Temple of Sacred Ashes? Exactly why all this should be left to a new divine. If you are innocent, the Chantry will establish it as so. Or we'll be happy to use someone as a scapegoat. You think nobody cares about the truth? We all grieve Justinia's loss. But you won't grieve if the Herald of Andraste is conveniently swept under a carpet. Don't let anyone riot while we're gone. The walls will be standing when you return, I hope. Having the Herald address the clerics is not a terrible idea. You can't be serious. Mother Giselle isn't wrong. At the moment, the Chantry's only strength is that they're united in opinion. And we should ignore the danger to the Herald. Let's ask him. What can they do? It's just talk. Don't underestimate the power of their words. An angry mob will do you in just as quickly as a blade. I will go with him. Mother Giselle said she could provide us names. Use them. But why? This is nothing but a... What choice do we have, Liliana? Right now we can't approach anyone for help with the breach. Use what influence we have to call the clerics together. Once they are ready, we will see this through. The city still mourns. Just a guest seeker, but I think they all know who we are. Your skills of observation never fail to impress me, Varric. My Lord Herald. You're one of Leliana's people. What have you found? The Chantry Mothers await you, but so do a great many Templars. There are Templars here? People seem to think the Templars will protect them from... from the Inquisition. They're gathering on the other side of the market. I think that's where the Templars intend to meet you. Only one thing to do, then. Val Royo, hear me. Together, we mourn our divine. A naive and beautiful heart 
silenced by treachery. You wonder what will become of her murderer. Well, wonder no more. Behold, the so-called Herald of Andraste, claiming to rise where our beloved fell. We say this is a false prophet, a wicked Kunari sent to subvert the Maker's word. You say I am the enemy. The breach in the sky is our true enemy. We must unite to stop it. It's true. The Inquisition seeks only to end this madness before it is too late. It is already too late. The Templars have returned to the Chantry. They will face this Inquisition and the people will be safe once more. Still yourself. She is beneath us. Was that display supposed to impress me? On the contrary, it wasn't for you at all. Lord Seeker Lucius, it's imperative that we speak with... You will not address me. Lord Seeker? Creating a heretical movement. Raising up a puppet as Andraste's prophet, you should be ashamed. You should all be ashamed. The Templars failed no one when they left the Chantry to purge the mages. You are the ones who have failed. You who'd leash our righteous swords with doubt and fear. If you came to appeal to the Chantry, you are too late. The only destiny here that demands respect is mine. If you're not here to help the Chantry, then you just came to make speeches. I came to see what frightens old women so, and to laugh. But Lord Seeker, what if he really was sent by the Maker? What if... You are called to a higher purpose. Do not question. I will make the Templar Order a power that stands alone against the Void. We deserve recognition. Independence. You have shown me nothing. And the Inquisition, less than nothing. Templars, Val Royo is unworthy of our protection. We march. Charming fellow, isn't he? Has Lord Seeker Lucius gone mad? Do you know him very well? He took over the Seekers of Truth two years ago, after Lord Seeker Lambert's death. He was always a decent man, never given to ambition and grandstanding. This is very bizarre. Doesn't look like we'll be getting the Templars to help us after all. I wouldn't write them off so quickly. There must be those in the Order who see what he's become. Either way, we should first return to Haven and inform the others. If I might have a moment of your time... Grand Enchanter Fiona? Leader of the Mage Rebellion. Is it not dangerous for you to be here? I heard of this gathering, and I wanted to see the fabled Herald of Andraste with my own eyes. If it's help with the breach you seek, perhaps my people are the wiser option. I'm surprised the leader of the mages wasn't at the Conclave. Yes. You were supposed to be, and yet somehow you avoided death. As did the Lord Seeker, you'll note. Both of us sent negotiators in our stead in case it was a trap. I won't pretend I'm not glad to live. I lost many dear friends that day. It disgusts me to think the Templars will get away with it. I'm hoping you won't let them. So you think the Templars are responsible? Why wouldn't she? Lucius hardly seems broken up over his losses, if he's concerned about them at all. You heard him. You think he wouldn't happily kill the Divine to turn people against us? So yes, I think he did it. 
More than I think you did it, at any rate. And what do you want in exchange for the Mage's help? Oh, I haven't promised the Inquisition our help yet. Consider this an invitation to Redcliffe. Come, meet with the Mages. An alliance could help us both, after all. I hope to see you there. Au revoir, my Lord Herald. Come, let us return to Haven. It's good you've returned. We heard of your encounter. You heard? My agents in a city sent word ahead, of course. It's a shame the Templars have abandoned their senses, as well as the capital. At least we know how to approach the mages and Templars now. Do we? Lord Seeker Lucius is not the man I remember. True, he has taken the order somewhere, but to do what? My reports have been very odd. We must look into it. I'm certain not everyone in the Order will support the Lord Seeker. Or the Herald could simply go to meet the Mages in Redcliffe instead. You think the Mage Rebellion is more united? It could be ten times worse. Or you could stop bickering and make a decision. I agree. We shouldn't discount Redcliffe. The Mages may be worth the risk. They are powerful, Ambassador, but more desperate than you realize. So it'll be dangerous. I've been in danger since I walked out of the Fade. If some among the rebel mages were responsible for what happened at the Conclave... The same could be said about the Templars. True enough. Right now, I'm not certain we have enough influence to approach the Order safely. Then the Inquisition needs agents in more places. That's something you can help with. In the meantime, we should consider other options. There is one other matter. Several months ago, the Grey Wardens of Ferelden vanished. I sent word to those in Orlais, but they have also disappeared. Ordinarily, I wouldn't even consider the idea they're involved in all this, but the timing is curious. Do you have proof? It could just be a coincidence. The others have disregarded my suspicion, but I cannot ignore it. Two days ago, my agents in the Hinterlands heard news of a Grey Warden by the name of Blackwall. If you have the opportunity, please seek him out. Perhaps he can put my mind at ease. And if he can't? Then there may be more going on than we thought. Excuse me. I've got a message for the Inquisition, but I'm having a hard time getting anyone to talk to me. Who are you, soldier? Comissius Aklasi with the Bulls Chargers Mercenary Company. We mostly work out of Ole and Navarra. We've got word of some Tevinter mercenaries gathering out on the Storm Coast. My company commander, Iron Bull, offers the information free of charge. If you'd like to see what the Bulls Chargers can do for the Inquisition, meet us there and watch us work. What can your Bulls Chargers offer the Inquisition? We're loyal, we're tough, and we don't break contracts. Ask around Val Royale. We've got references. You lead a company yourself, right? So you know talk is cheap. Come to the Storm Coast and you can see us in action. What should I know about your commander? Iron Bull? He's a canary like you. He's big, he's got the horns and all of it. He leads from the front, he pays well, and he's a lot smarter than the last bastard I worked for. Best of all, he's professional. We accept contracts with whoever makes the first real offer. You're the first time he's gone out of his way to pick a side. Why did your commander send us this information? Iron Bull wants to work for the Inquisition. He thinks you're doing good work. I look forward to meeting this Iron Bull. We're the best you'll find. Come to the Storm Coast and you can see us in action. Keep focused. They'll know what it means. Remember how to carry your shields. You're not hiding, you're holding. Otherwise, it's useless. Blackwall. Warden Blackwall. You're not. How do you know my name? Who said. <laughs> ah! Ah! 
That's it. Help or get out. We're dealing with these idiots first. On scripts, here they come. Sorry, bastards. Good work, conscripts. Even if this shouldn't have happened, they could have... Well, thieves are made, not born. Take back what they stole. Go back to your families. You saved yourselves. You're no farmer. Why do you know my name? Who are you? I've been called a lot of things lately by a lot of people. Well, I'm talking to you. Stop dancing. We're Inquisition. Trying to find out why the Wardens disappeared and if it had anything to do with the Divine's murder. Maker's balls. The Wardens and the Divine. That can't... No, you're asking so you don't really know. First off, I didn't know they disappeared. But we do that, right? No more blight, job done. Wardens are the first thing forgotten. But one thing I'll tell you, no Warden killed the Divine. Our purpose isn't political. I'm not here to accuse, not yet. I just need information. I've only found you. Where are the rest? I haven't seen any Wardens for months. I travel alone, recruiting. Not much interest because the Archdemon is a decade dead, and no need to conscript because there's no blight coming. Treaties give Wardens the right to take what we need, who we need. These idiots forced this fight, so I conscripted their victims. They had to do what I said, so I told them to stand. Next time, they won't need me. Grey Wardens can inspire, make you better than you think you are. I wasn't aware Grey Wardens could take whatever they want. It's complicated. If there's a blight, everyone has to help the effort to fight it. The treaties are ancient. Outside of blights, it's as binding as a clever tongue can make it. Do you have any idea where the other wardens could have gone? Maybe they returned to our stronghold at Weishaupt? That's in the Anderfels, a long way north. I don't really know. Can't imagine why they'd all disappear at once, let alone where they disappear to. Why haven't you gone missing like the rest of them? Well, maybe I was going to. Or maybe there's a new directive, but a runner got lost or something. My job was to recruit on my own. Plan to stay that way for months. Years. It's been a pleasure, Warden Blackwall. But this didn't help at all. Inquisition. Agent, did you say? Hold a moment. The Divine is dead and the sky is torn. Events like these, thinking we're absent is almost as bad as thinking we're involved. If you're trying to put things right, maybe you need a Warden. Maybe you need me. The Inquisition needs all the support it can get. But what can one Grey Warden do? Save the fucking world if pressed. Look. Maybe fighting demons from the sky isn't something I'm practiced at. But show me someone who is. And like I said, there are treaties. Maybe this isn't a blight, but it's bloody well a disaster. Some will honor them. Being a warden means something to a lot of people. Warden Blackwall, the Inquisition accepts your offer. Good to hear. We both need to know what's going on. And perhaps I've been keeping to myself for too long. This warden walks with the Inquisition.
Krim, how'd we do? Five or six wounded, Chief. No dead. That's what I like to hear. Let the throat cutters finish up, then break out the casks. <laughs> Damn, it's true. <laughs> oh, the Chantry must love you. <laughs> A Canary mercenary is the herald of Andraste. Who'd have thought? Sinead on, Sten. Oh, let's try to keep that to a minimum. Makes the boys twitchy. I assume you remember Chromisius Aklasi, my lieutenant. Good to see you again. Rope cutters are done, Chief. Already? Have a check again. I don't want any of those Tevinter bastards getting away. No offense, Krem. <laughs> None taken. This bastard knows who his mother was. Puts him one up on you, Canari, right? So, you've seen us fight. We're expensive, but we're worth it. <laughs> and I'm sure the Inquisition can afford us. How much is this going to cost me, exactly? Wouldn't cost you anything, personally. Unless you want to buy drinks later. Your ambassador, uh, what's her name? Josephine. We'd go through her and get the payments set up. Gold will take care of itself. Don't worry about that. All that matters is we're worth it. <laughs> the Chargers seem like an excellent company. They are. But you're not just getting the boys. You're getting me. You need a frontline bodyguard. I'm your man. Whatever it is. Demons? Dragons? The bigger the better. And there's one other thing. Might be useful. Might piss you off. Ever hear of the Ben Hasra? I learned of the Ben Hasra from my parents. They are the enforcers of the Canari and the spies. Yeah, that's them. Or, well, us. The Ben Hasra are concerned about the breach. Magic out of control like that could cause trouble everywhere. I've been ordered to join the Inquisition, get close to the people in charge, and send reports on what's happening. But I also get reports from Ben Hasrath agents all over Orle. You sign me on? I'll share them with your people. You're a Canari spy, and you just... told me? Whatever happened at that Conclave thing, it's bad. Someone needs to get that breach closed. So whatever I am, I'm on your side. You still could have hidden what you are. From something called the Inquisition? <laughs> I'd have been tipped sooner or later. Better you hear it right up front from me. What would you send home in these reports of yours? Enough to keep my superiors happy. Nothing that'll compromise your operations. The Canari want to know if they need to launch an invasion to stop the whole damn world from falling apart. You let me send word of what you're doing, it'll put some minds at ease. That's good for everyone. What's in these Ben Hasrath reports you're offering to share? Enemy movements, suspicious activity, intriguing gossip. It's a bit of everything. Alone there, not much. But if your spy master is worth a damn, she'll put him to good use. She? <laughs> I did a little research. Plus, I've always had a weakness for redheads. All right, you're in. Excellent. Krem, tell the men to finish drinking on the road. The Chargers just got hired. What about the casks, Chief? We just opened them up with axes. Find some way to seal them. You're Tervinter, right? Dry blood man. We'll meet you back at Haven. It occurs to me I don't actually know much about you. What do you want to know? I'm not sure. Where are you from? I thought you knew that. I suppose I could ask Liliana. She has collected a frightening amount of information on you. But I don't want to ask her. I want to hear it from you. No specific. My mercenary band worked mostly in the free marches, however. At least until you crossed the waking sea to reach the conclave, I suppose. Tell me, do you consider the free marches your home? Are you eager to go back? Wherever I am is home enough for me. That's how I feel now, after years of tending to business for the Divine. I'd like to get to know you better. You would? Is that a problem? Not entirely. I'm just curious as to your motivation. 
You're a very suspicious person, you know that? When it's warranted. I can see why you have some friends. <sighs> As you wish. My name is Cassandra Pentagon, daughter of the Royal House of Navarra, 78th in line for the Navarran throne. I joined the Seekers of Truth as a young woman, and was with the Order until they withdrew from the Chantry. I remained as the Divine's right hand, carrying out her order to form the Inquisition. And here we are. That's all there is to know, my lord. So you were the right hand to the Divine? To Divine Justinia, yes. And Divine Beatrix before her, in fact. The position is normally reserved for Templars of the Knights Divine. But my circumstances were unusual. Unusual how? You don't know the story? Thank the Maker. I will tell you if you wish, but it isn't as exciting as some drum it up to be. The short version is that I once saved the previous Divine's life. My reward was becoming her right hand. But what does a right hand do, exactly? What is your hand capable of? It gives, it takes, it beckons. It makes a fist. Liliana and I extended the Divine's reach beyond the Grand Cathedral. We went where she could not. After Beatrix, I was tired of the position and wanted to return to the Seekers. But Justinia convinced me to stay. Her vision for the future gave me hope. You thought she could really change things? Justinia knew the war was coming long before it began. She tried to avert it. But the forces arrayed against her were too strong. Sometimes you have to break a bone so it can be reset. That's where the Inquisition comes in. It was to be the answer. A means to preserve as well as an agent for change. I only wish she had lived to see it. So what's the story about you becoming the right hand? Sweet Andraste, do you really want to hear that? It was, what, 18, 20 years ago? Some still discuss it like it happened yesterday. The tale gets bigger each time it's told. I barely recognize myself within it now. That's what happens with stories that become legends. I am not a legend, nor was I then. I was a young woman, barely a whole tree. To hear others tell it, I alone saved divine Beatrix from a horde of dragons sent to assault the Grand Cathedral. Rather impressive for such a young seeker, wouldn't you say? And the truth is? I stumbled upon a conspiracy to kill Beatrix. A Templar Knight Commander was at its heart, and there was a dragon battle at the Grand Cathedral, but I had help from loyal mages who rallied to the cause. They freed the dragons from magical control. Without them, the Divine and I would both have died. Yet I became the right hand, and they are forgotten. And what happened to the mages that helped you? They went back to their circle with rewards and privileges and most holy gratitude. Many of them died at the conflict. An impressive tale. I can see why people enjoy telling it. <sighs> Just wait till they start telling stories about you. You're a member of Navarra's royal family. The Pentagasts are a very large clan. Half of Cumberland could say the same. Really? No, but it feels that way. I have hundreds of relatives so distant they need charts to prove we're related at all. And they have them. Oh yes. The Pentagasts value their precious blood like it runs with gold. So, not on very good terms with your family then? I do not visit, if that's what you mean. The Pentagasts are famed for dragon hunting, but few actually pursue the cross. Most are fat and lazy. They pay lip service to the Maker and care only for idle pleasures and past glories. My brother was all that kept me in Navarra. Once he was gone, so was I. Tell me about your brother. I would prefer not to speak of Anthony. Another time, perhaps. I'll let you get back to work. Need something? Can I ask you something, Varric? You want to talk about me? I'm flattered. Also inclined toward extravagant lies. You from Ferelden? Orlais? Free marches. Born and raised in Kirkwall. And despite whatever you've heard, no. Kirkwall's not that bad. I'm not clear on your line of work. You're a merchant? I'm a businessman. My family has a seat in the Dwarven Merchants Guild. Merchants buy and sell goods. 
businessmen buy and sell stores. In my spare time, I manage a spy network, and occasionally, I write books. What sort of shops do you own? Actually, we don't own shops. That was just an example. Mostly, we invest in money lenders. Auction houses, a few mercenary companies, a couple of smithies. I think we own half a beet plantation in Ravane somewhere. Most of that's my brother's doing. Bartrand had business sense. Not much tact, but loads of business sense. You're an author? What kind of books have you written? I tried my hands at a few genres. My crime serials are my most popular. Hard in Hightown, guards breaking the rules to get things done. The Tale of the Champion is the most famous thing I've written, or infamous, maybe. I started a romance serial once, Swords and Shields, but to be honest, I don't have a knack for romances. Most of my stories end in tragedy. Probably that says something unfortunate about me personally. If you've run a spy network, why is Liliana our spy master? To be honest with you, she's just a better spy master. The truly great ones can keep their distance. They don't get attached to their people. Me, I always wind up babysitting my informants and worrying about their families. We're in better hands with her. How do you and Cassandra know each other? You heard about the Kirkwall Chantry being destroyed? The guy responsible used to be a friend of mine. The Seeker had questions about that, and I had answers. Where did you get that crossbow? I've never seen one like it. Bianca? She's one of a kind. Funny story. I bought a salvaged ship and found her locked in a dragonbone reinforced chest in the hold. I broke three dozen lockpicks and blunted nine saws opening that trunk, but it was worth it. Who is she named for? I can't tell you. And the reason for that is? Complicated. It's the one story I'll never tell. We just have to leave it at that. Thanks, Varric. No problem. Closing the breach is our primary goal. But I hope we might also discover what was used to create it. Any artifact of such power is dangerous. The destruction of the Conclave proves that much. You don't think whatever created the explosion was destroyed in the blast? You survived, did you not? The artifact that created the breach is unlike anything seen in this age. I will not believe it destroyed until I see the shattered fragments with my own eyes. We would do well to try to recover whatever created the breach. Liliana's people have scoured the area near the blast and found nothing. Whatever the artifact was, it is no longer there. In any case, did you need me for anything? I'd like to know more about you, Solus. Why? You're an elven mage. Not from the Circle, not Dalish. You're an unknown element. I wouldn't trust my life to a blade before I'd tested its balance. Nor would I. All right. What can I tell you? What made you start studying the Fade? I grew up in a village to the north. There was little to interest a young man, especially one gifted with magic. But as I slept, spirits of the Fade showed me glimpses of wonders I had never imagined. We treasured my dreams. Being awake out of the Fade became troublesome. Did spirits try to tempt you? No more than a brightly colored fruit is deliberately tempting you to eat it. I learned how to defend myself from more aggressive spirits and how to interact safely with the rest. I learned how to control my dreams with full consciousness. There was so much I wanted to explore. I gather you didn't spend your entire life dreaming. No. Eventually, I was unable to find new areas in the Fade. Why? Two reasons. First, the Fade reflects the world around it. Unless I traveled, I would never find anything new. Second, the Fade reflects and is limited by our imaginations. To find interesting areas, one must be interesting. Is this why you joined the Inquisition? I joined the Inquisition because we were all in terrible danger. If our enemies destroy the world, I would have nowhere to lay my head while dreaming of the Fade. I wish you luck. Thank you. In truth, I have enjoyed experiencing more of life to find more of the Fade. How so? You strengthen your body to deliver and withstand punishment. The muscles are an enjoyable side benefit. 
You have chosen a path whose steps you do not dislike because it leads to a destination you enjoy. Out of eye. You said you'd traveled to many different places. This world, or its memory, is reflected in the Fade. Dream in ancient ruins, and you may see a city lost to history. Some of my fondest memories were found in crumbling cities, long picked dry by treasure seekers, the best of the battlefields. Spirits press so tightly on the veil that you can slip across with but a thought. Any place in particular? I dreamt to Dostagar. I witnessed the brutality of the Darkspawn and the valor of the Ferelden warriors. I saw Alistair and the hero Ferelden light the signal fire, and Loghain's infamous betrayal of Caelan's forces. I've heard the stories. It would be interesting to hear what it was really like. That's just it. In the Fade, I see reflections created by spirits who react to the emotions of the warriors. One moment, I see heroic wardens lighting the fire, and a power-mad villain sneering as he lets King Caelan fall. The next, I see an army overwhelmed and a veteran commander refusing to let more soldiers die in a lost cause. And you can't tell which is real? It is the Fade. They are all real. Have you always traveled and studied alone? Not at all. I have built many lasting friendships. Spirits of wisdom, possessed of ancient knowledge, happy to share what they had seen. Spirits of purpose helped me search. Even wisps, curious and playful, would point out treasures I might have missed. I don't know of any spirits by those names. They rarely seek this world. When they do, their natures do not often survive exposure to the people they encounter. Wisdom and purpose are too easily twisted to pride and desire. You're saying that you became friends with pride and desire demons? They were not demons for me. Meaning? The Fade reflects the minds of the living. If you expect a spirit of wisdom to be a pride demon, it will adapt. And if your mind is free of corrupting influences, if you understand the nature of the spirit, they can be fast friends. You trust these spirits not to possess you the first time you accidentally make a wish? Do you trust your friends not to turn on you? Well, yes, but they're people. Ah, of course. You know what I mean. Are people only people because they are flesh and blood? Is Cassandra defined by her cheekbones and not her faith? Varric by his chest hair and not his wit? I'm certain you have some rhetorical trick ready to counter anything I say. It's likely. I've had a lot of time to discuss the question with people. Or spirits, if you prefer. We'll talk later. Goodbye. Make a look at it. So much easier to ignore when it's far away. And to actually walk out of it. To be that close. If I hadn't been saved by Inquisition soldiers, I don't know what would have happened. Inquisition soldiers? That's not what I've heard. I have to admit, I thought you'd be... human. Yes. Being up front is better than... Archman. It was a foolish thought. Should have known better than to say anything. It's what you do, and how you do it, that's important. Just one question, then. How do you think you fit in with all this? It's been a whirlwind. It's hard to say where I fit. I guess we'll have to figure that out. For me, I'll be satisfied so long as we find the bastards that killed the Divine. They owe us some answers. I've got good form. Cullen's putting his Templar training to good use. Did Cullen tell you he was a Templar? He's not wearing the armor. He didn't have to. Might not be a Templar shield, but it's a Templar holding it. He angles the shield just a bit down. Helps direct fire or acid away, so it doesn't spray right into your face. Kalari learned the same thing when we trained to fight to Vinter Mages. Your Templar's doing good work. You sound like you want to head down there and give the troops some pointers. Nah, I'm no good at command unless I know who my guys are sleeping with and what they like to drink. Inquisition's already too large for that. The charges are big enough for me. Biggest problem for the Inquisition right now isn't on the front line. It's at the top. You've got no leader. No Inquisitor. Cassandra's been the driving force of this Inquisition. She's the leader in all but name. Cassandra's a seeker. From what I gather, that's a bit like a Ben Hasra. She's a good hunter and a great fighter, but she doesn't see the big picture. Too busy searching for answers. My people don't pick leaders from the strongest, the smartest, or even the most talented. We pick the ones willing to make the hard decisions and live with the consequences. 
Ah, who knows? Maybe you sealed the breach. The Chantry gets off its ass and all those soldiers go home and get fat. Do you think? It could happen. It won't. But it could. Yes? Why would Templars break away from the Chantry? The Order believes the Chantry no longer supports their efforts. Not to the extent they should. But the Templars have served the Chantry for ages. And in that time, they have come to take the Order's services for granted. Templars risk their lives against blood magic, demons, abominations, to feel as if those efforts are dismissed. Now, I may disagree with the Order's actions, but I'm here as proof of that. But I sympathize with their frustrations. I should get to know you better. We're working together, after all. What would you like to know? All right. Uh, where are you from? I grew up in Ferelden, near Homley. I was transferred to Kirkwall shortly after the Blight. This is the first I've returned in almost ten years. You haven't seen Ferelden in ten years. Are you glad to be back? I was not sorry to leave at the time. I did not expect to return. Now, between the Divine's murder and the Breach, I've arrived to find nothing but chaos. You were in Ferelden during the Blight. Did you fight Darkspawn? No. I was stationed at Ferelden's Circle Tower. The Circle had troubles of its own. I remained there during the Blight. What happened at the Circle Tower? Few who survived the Blight have fond memories of that time. I would prefer not to speak of it. Varric's from Kirkwall. Did you two know each other? I knew he was friends with the champion of Kirkwall, but little else. We've spoken more since I joined the Inquisition, largely at Varric's insistence. Apparently, I spend too much time with a serious expression on my face, and it's bad for my health. What was Kirkwall like? While I was there, Canari occupied and then attacked the city. The Viscount's murder caused political unrest. Relations between mages and Templars fell apart. An apostate blew up the Chantry, and the Knight Commander went mad. Other than that, it was fine. What happened between Kirkwall's mages and Templars? You were at the Conclave. Must have heard people speak of it. Yes, but you were there. <sighs> there was tension between mages and Templars long before I arrived. Eventually, it reached a breaking point. There was fighting in the streets. Abominations began killing both sides. It was a nightmare. What happened then? The Templars should have restored order. But Red Lyrian had driven Knight Commander Meredith mad. She threatened to kill Kirkwall's champion, turned on her own men. I'm not sure how far she would have gone. Too far. So you opposed her? I stood with the champion against her, in the end. I should have seen through Meredith sooner. I'll let you return to your work. Should you require anything, I'll be here. There were so many questions surrounding Faria's death. Did he think we wouldn't notice? He killed Faria, one of my best agents, and knows where the others are. You know what must be done. Make it clean. Painless if you can. We were friends. Wait. What are you doing? He betrayed us. He murdered my agent. And you'd kill him? Just like that? You find fault with my decision? I'm sure most of your decisions are fine. But that one? A little extreme. Extreme? Butler's betrayal put our agents in danger. I condemned one man to save dozens. I may not like what I do, but it must be done. I cannot afford the luxury of ideals at a time like this. Now is precisely the time for ideals. You feel very strongly about this. <sighs> very well. I will think of another way to deal with this man. Apprehend Butler, but see that he lives. Now if you're happy, I have more work to do. Greetings, Herald of Andraste. How fares your quest to seal the breach? I'm doing everything within my power. A task such as closing the breach is a heavy burden. I hope you do not carry it alone. We remember Andraste, but Andraste did not carry the Chant of Light alone. She had generals, advisors, even her husband for a time. Do everything within your power. 
but remember those who would help you. I thought I made it clear that I'm not the Herald of Andraste. I understand. Whatever you believe, there remains a task to be done. If the faith of the people is nothing but a tool, then I beg you to use it well. We will all perish if you do not. In any case, I pray this Inquisition proves less brutal than its predecessor. Do you know who the Grand Clerics will choose as the next Divine? It is a difficult decision. All the obvious candidates perished with Divine Justinia at the Conclave. The Grand Clerics are terrified of the Inquisition. They will not decide soon, and I fear they will not decide wisely. Whoever is chosen needs the Inquisition's support. No one else seems likely to seal the breach. I don't believe I've had the chance to speak candidly with a revered mother. Can you tell me about the Chantry? Of course. Too many think that the Chant of Light should only be sung by humans. The truth is that knowledge of the Maker and Andraste should be open to all who wish to learn of him. We believe the Maker created us, and that mankind's sinful nature caused him to turn away. With Andraste's blessing, the Maker will forgive mankind once the Chant of Light is sung from all corners of this world. Why does the Chantry allow only human women to become priestesses? The official doctrine is that elves and dwarves have turned further from the Maker than humanity. And as for men, the Chant holds that they are more vulnerable to anger or passion. But in truth, it is simply political. Added after Andreste's death, like too many of our beliefs. If you don't believe these restrictions are what Andraste wanted, why haven't you tried to change them? Has the current state of the world not taught you the folly of fighting too many battles at once? I chose to use what power I had to help peasants forgotten by the nobles of Orlais. I believed there would be time to address their inequality under the Chantry once we had saved them from starving. What is your stance on magic? Andraste put it simply. Magic must serve man, not rule over him. However, those words must be put into the proper historical context. Andraste led a rebellion against the Javinta Imperium, whose magisters controlled most of the world at the time. Even then, she never called for all mages to be put to death. She believed in peaceful coexistence. I don't recall the Chantry being as tolerant of magic as you describe. No. The Chantry is an imperfect vessel, pulled in every direction by those who would steer its course. Yet the Templars rebelled precisely because Divine Justinia was not restrictive enough. Perhaps the Inquisition will find a better way. There were calls for an exalted march to put down the Mage Rebellion. What was your opinion? It was ignorant gossip. An exalted march only succeeds when it carries the will of the people. Even then, it cannot be undertaken lightly. People are too easily frightened. We cannot destroy everything they fear. An exalted march is justified only against a true threat to this whole world. It is an offense to the Maker to use it as a political bludgeon, or as a means of spreading the chant of light. What about the exalted march that conquered the elves? That is a hotly debated matter in some circles of the Chantry. The Elves had conquered Mont-Semard and threatened Valreau itself. They were not helpless victims. But even then, Orlais was the only nation to provide troops. It was hardly an exalted march of all the faithful. The Maker wishes his world to spread by example, not by war. We win no converts with blood. Farewell. Until next time. Has anyone dared ask? No, I do not think. Ah, Master Radar, may I have a word? What did you need? Well, as you are, Talbashos, people have asked. You grew up outside the Canary homeland, but... <sighs> there is no easy way to ask your thoughts on the Kuhn. Have you studied the Kuhn? It is a decided gap in my education. I know the Kuhn is a philosophy, a set of laws, a legislative guide, and a social architecture governing the Kunari. 
Those who appeared at court, however, insisted the Kuhn is too complex for an outsider. It's not because you're human. Real Kunari tell me I'll never understand the Kuhn. Yet they take converts. Their criteria is beyond my grasp. Do you believe in any of the Kuhn's philosophies? You can't take a breath in the Kuhn without someone deciding how long you should hold it. That's not a life for me. Many won't accept your word by virtue of your birth. People ask how a Kunari could be Andraste's herald. It worries them if they believe it, and angers them if they do not. Convincing them of your good intentions will be tasking. You'll think of something, Ambassador. I hope so. It will be interesting. Strangely, your mercenary work is not so inflammatory. People are fabricating extravagant tales of your heroics. They don't know how we held Kelgor's pass, or tricked an army into surrendering at Val Falaise. These people don't know the half of what I've done. I noticed. Leliana found a letter from the captain of your last company. He had nothing but praise for your skill in battle, but doesn't mention what part you play. Captain Tully praised me? William Iron Ash Tully? That's quite the moniker. But yes, your captain went so far as to say he'd have lost entire battles without you. Just like the old man not to admit that to my face. Some people find it difficult to give praise, or find it in their interest to withhold it. Your captain did sincerely admire your skill in battle. He especially praises your last engagement. I was in charge of mercenaries storming the headquarters of the bandits we were to dispatch. We caught them by surprise. It was over before the sentries even blew their horns. That is impressive. I hope life in Haven doesn't bore you compared to such exploits. There are some people who've made staying worthwhile. How wonderful. Oh, you must tell me who they are. <sighs> We spread word the Inquisition was coming. But you should know that no one here was expecting us. No one? Not even Grand Enchanter Fiona? If she was, she hasn't told anyone. We've arranged use of the tavern for the negotiations. Agents of the Inquisition, my apologies. Magister Alexius is in charge now, but hasn't yet arrived. He's expected shortly. You can speak with the former Grand Enchanter in the meantime. Welcome, Agents of the Inquisition. What has brought you to Redcliffe? Is this some sort of test? We're here because you invited us in Val Royale. You must be mistaken. I haven't been to Val Royale since before the Conclave. There is no mistake. While the Templars were leaving, you came to Val Royale and asked me here. The Templars left Val Royale? Where did they go? That sounds... Why does that sound so strange? Whoever or whatever brought you here, the situation has changed. The free mages have already pledged themselves to the service of the Tevinta Imperium. An alliance with Tevinta? Do you not fear all of Thedas turning against you? Andras Tezas. I'm trying to think of a single worse thing you could have done. And I've got nothing. I understand that you are afraid, but you deserve better than slavery to Devinda. As one indenture to a Magister, I no longer have the authority to negotiate with you. Very well. Who's in charge now? Welcome, my friends. I apologize for not greeting you earlier. Agents of the Inquisition, allow me to introduce Magister Girion Alexius. The Southern Mages are under my command. And you are the survivor, yes? The one from the Fade? Interesting. I'd like to know more about this alliance between the Rebel Mages and the Imperium. Certainly. What specifically do you wish to know? 
The Grand Enchanter told me she was indentured to a magister. Our southern brethren have no legal status in the Imperium. As they were not born citizens of Tevinter, they must work for a period of ten years before gaining full rights. As their protector, I shall oversee their work for the Imperium. I'm not clear on when exactly you negotiated this arrangement with Fiona. When the Conclave was destroyed, these poor souls faced the brutality of the Templars who rushed to attack them. It could only be through divine providence that I arrived when I did. It was certainly very timely. What does the Imperium gain from taking rebel mages under its wing? For the moment, the southern mages are a considerable expense. After they are properly trained, they will join our legion. You said not all my people would be military. There are children, those not suited. And one day I'm sure they will all be productive citizens of the Imperium when their debts are paid. I haven't seen any sign of Redcliffe's Arl or his men. The Arl of Redcliffe left the village. Arl Tegan did not abandon his lands during the Blight, even when they were under siege. There were tensions growing. I did not want an incident. I'm here to get mages to close the breach. Right, to business. I understand, of course. Felix, would you send for a scribe, please? Pardon my manners. My son Felix, friends. I am not surprised you're here. Containing the breach is not a feat that many could even attempt. There is no telling how many mages would be needed for such an endeavor. Ambitious. Indeed. Does that mean you'll lend your mages to our cause? There will have to be. Felix. My lord, I'm so sorry. Please forgive me. Are you all right? I'm fine, father. Come, I'll get your powders. Please excuse me, friends. We will have to continue this another time. Fiona, I require your assistance back at the castle. I don't mean to trouble everyone. I shall send word to the Inquisition. We will conclude this business at a later date. Come to the Chantry. You are in danger. Something like that. Good. You're finally here. Now help me close this, would you? that work exactly? <laughs> you don't even know, do you? You just wiggle your fingers and boom. Rift closes. Who are you? Ah, getting ahead of myself again, I see. Dorian of House Parvis, most recently of Minrathus. How do you do? Another Tevinta. Be cautious with this one. Suspicious friends you have here. Magister Alexius was once my mentor. So my assistance should be valuable, as I'm sure you can imagine. Are you a Magister? All right, let's say this once. I'm a mage from Tevinter, but not a member of the Magisterium. 
I know Southerners use the terms interchangeably, but that only makes you sound like barbarians. I was expecting Felix to be here. I'm sure he's on his way. He was to give you the note, then meet us here after ditching his father. Alexius couldn't jump to Felix's side fast enough when he pretended to be faint. Is something wrong with him? He's had some lingering illness for months. Felix is an only child, and Alexius is being a mother hen, most likely. Are you the one who sent that note, then? I am. Someone had to warn you, after all. Look, you must know there's danger. That should be obvious, even without the note. Let's start with Alexius claiming the allegiance of the mage rebels out from under you. As if by magic, yes? Which is exactly right. To reach Redcliffe, before the Inquisition, Alexius distorted time itself. I hope that's less dangerous than it sounds. More. That is fascinating, if true, and almost certainly dangerous. The rift you closed here. You saw how it twisted time around itself, sped some things up and slowed others down. Soon, there will be more like it, and they'll appear further and further away from Redcliffe. The magic Alexius is using is wildly unstable, and it's unraveling the world. You're asking me to take a lot on faith. I know what I'm talking about. I helped develop this magic. When I was still his apprentice, it was pure theory. Alexius could never get it to work. What I don't understand is why he's doing it. Ripping time to shreds just to gain a few hundred lackeys? He didn't do it for them. Took you long enough. Is he getting suspicious? No, but I shouldn't have played the illness card. I thought he'd be fussing over me all day. My father's joined a cult to Vinter Supremacists. They call themselves Venatori. And I can tell you one thing. Whatever he's done for them, he's done it to get to you. Alexius is your father. Why are you working against him? For the same reason Dorian works against him. I love my father, and I love my country. But this? Cults? Time magic? What he's doing now is madness. For his own sake, you have to stop him. It would also be nice if he didn't rip a hole in time. There's already a hole in the sky. Why would he rearrange time and indenture the Mage Rebellion just to get to me? They're obsessed with you, but I don't know why. Perhaps because you survived the Temple of Sacred Ashes. You can close the rifts. Uh, maybe there's a connection. Will they see you as a threat? If the Venatori are behind those rifts or the breach in the sky, they're even worse than I thought. Do you have any suggestions? You know you're his target. Expecting the trap is the first step in turning it to your advantage. I can't stay in Redcliffe. Alexius doesn't know I'm here, and I want to keep it that way for now. But whenever you're ready to deal with him, I want to be there. I'll be in touch. Oh, and Felix, try not to get yourself killed. There are worse things than dying, Dorian. We don't have the manpower to take the castle. Either we find another way in, or give up this nonsense and go and get the Templars. Redcliffe is in the hands of a Magister. This cannot be allowed to stand. The letter from Alexius asked for the Herald of Andraste by name. It's an obvious trap. We can't waste time fighting among ourselves. We have to come to an agreement. A Tevinter Magister controls Redcliffe, invites us to the castle to talk, and some of us want to do nothing. Not this again. Redcliffe Castle is one of the most defensible fortresses in Ferelden. It has repelled thousands of assaults. If you go in there, you'll die. And we'll lose the only means we have of closing these rifts. I won't allow it. And if we don't even try to meet Alexius, we lose the mages and leave a hostile foreign power on our doorstep. Even if we could assault the keep, it would be for naught. An Orlesian Inquisition's army marching into Ferelden would provoke a war. Our hands are tied. The Magister... ...has outplayed us. The Magister's son, Felix, told me Alexius is in a cult that's obsessed with me. I doubt they'll graciously receive our apologies and go about their business. They will remain a threat, and a powerful one, unless we act. We cannot accept defeat now. There must be a solution. Where is the Arl of Redcliffe? 
I'm sure he'd help us get his castle back. After he was displaced, Arl Tegan rode straight for Dunarin to petition the Crown for help. I doubt he'll want our assistance once the Ferelden army lays siege to his castle. Wait. There is a secret passage into the castle, an escape route for the family. It's too narrow for our troops, but we could send agents through. Too risky. Those agents will be discovered well before they reach the Magister. That's why we need a distraction. Perhaps the envoy Alexius wants so badly. Keep attention on Adar, while we disable the Magister's defenses. It's a gamble, but it might work. Fortunately, you'll have help. This man says he has information about the Magister and his methods, Commander. Your spies will never get past Alexius's magic without my help. So if you're going after him, I'm coming along. The plan puts you in the most danger. We can't in good conscience order you to do this. We can still go after the Templars if you'd rather not play the bait. It's up to you. Announce us. The Magister's invitation was for Master Adar only. These others will have to remain here. Where I go, they go. My Lord Magister, the agents of the Inquisition have arrived. My friend, it's so good to see you again. And your associates, of course. I'm sure we can work out some arrangement that is equitable to all parties. Are we mages to have no voice in deciding our fate? Fiona, you would not have turned your followers over to my care if you did not trust me with their lives. If the Grand Enchanter wants to be part of these talks, then I welcome her as a guest of the Inquisition. Thank you. The Inquisition needs mages to close the breach, and I have them. So, what shall you offer in exchange? Actually, I hoped you could tell me about these Venatori I'm hearing so much about. Now. Where could you have heard that name? I told him. Felix, what have you done? You wanted me here. Why? Do you know what you are? You walk into my stronghold with your stolen mark, a gift you don't even understand, and think you're in control. You're nothing but a mistake. If you know so much, enlighten me. Tell me what this mark on my hand is for. It belongs to your betters. You wouldn't even begin to understand its purpose. Father, listen to yourself. Do you know what you sound like? He sounds exactly like the sort of villainous cliché everyone expects us to be. Dorian, I gave you a chance to be a part of this. You turned me down. The Elder One has power you would not believe. He will raise the Imperium from its own ashes. That's who you serve? The one who killed the Divine? Is he a mage? Soon, he will become a god. He will make the world bow to mages once more. We will rule from the Boric Ocean to the Frozen Seas. You can't involve my people in this! Alexius, this is exactly what you and I talked about never wanting to happen. Why would you support this? Stop it, Father. Give up the Venatori. Let the Southern Mages fight the Breach, and let's go home. No. It's the only way, Felix. He can save you. Save me? There is a way. The Elder One promised, if I undo the mistake at the Temple... I'm going to die. You need to accept that. Seize them, Venatori. The Elder One demands this man's life.
Your men are dead, Alexius. You are a mistake. You should never have existed. No! Vlad, the Elder One. Where'd they come from? Get ready! Another blight of... Displacement. Interesting. It's probably not what Alexius intended. The rift must have moved us... to what? The closest confluence of arcane energy? The last thing I remember, we were in the castle hall. Let's see. If we're still in the castle, it isn't. Oh, of course, it's not simply where, it's when. Alexius used the amulet as a focus. It moved us through time. That doesn't sound good. It sounds terrible. Depending on when we are and what happened while we were away. Let's look around, see where the rift took us. Then we can figure out how to get back. If we can. What was Alexius trying to do? I believe his original plan was to remove you from time completely. If that happened, you would never have been at the Temple of Sacred Ashes or mangled his Elder One's plan. I think your surprise in the Castle Hall made him reckless. He tossed us into the Rift before he was ready. I counted it. The magic went wild, and here we are. Makes sense? It just seems so insane. I don't even want to think about what this will do to the fabric of the world. We didn't travel through time so much as punch a hole through it and toss it into the privy. But don't worry. I'm here. I'll protect you. Alexius mentioned an Elder One in the Hall. Do you know who he was talking about? Leader of the Venatori, I suspect. Some Magister aspiring to godhood. It's the same old tune. Let's play with magic we don't understand. It will make us incredibly powerful. Evidently, it doesn't matter if you rip apart the fabric of time in the process. There were others in the hall. Could they have been drawn through the rift? I doubt it was large enough to bring the whole room through. Alexius wouldn't risk catching himself or Felix in it. They're probably still where and when we left them. In some sense, anyway. You have a plan to get us back, I hope. I have some thoughts on that. They're lovely thoughts, like little jewels. The light shall lead her safely through the paths of this world and into the next. For she who trusts in the Maker, fire is her water. You've returned to us. Can it be? Has Andraste given us another chance? Maker, forgive me. I failed you. I failed everyone. The end must truly be upon us if the dead return to life. I'm not back from the dead, Cassandra. I just got... Well, this is hard to explain. I was there. The Magister obliterated you with a gesture. Alexius sent us forward in time. If we find him, we may be able to return to the present. Go back in time? Then can you make it so that none of this ever took place? That's my hope. Alexius is master. After you died, we could not stop the Elder One from rising. Empress Selene was murdered. The army that swept in afterwards, it was a horde of demons. Nothing stopped them. Nothing. We'll stop all that from happening. I promise. Maker, guide us all. You're alive. We saw you die. The spell Alexius cast displaced us in time. We just got here, so to speak. Can you reverse the process? You could return and obviate the events of the last year. It may not be too late. I'm glad you understood what he just said. Because I'm not sure I did. You would think such understanding would stop me from making such terrible mistakes. You would be wrong. This world is an abomination. It must never come to pass. Disappear into the rift. 
I don't understand. What's happened to you? Red Nerio. It's a disease. The longer you're near it, eventually you become this. Then they mine your corpse for more. Can you tell us the date? It's very important. Arvest Mia. 942 Dragon. 942? Then we've missed an entire year. We have to get out of here. Go back in time. Please, stop this from happening. Alexius serves the Elder One more powerful than the Maker. No one challenges him and lives. That Magister is going to regret he didn't just kill me. Our only hope is to find the amulet that Alexius used to send us here. If it still exists, I can use it to reopen the rift at the exact spot we left. Maybe. Good. I said, maybe. It might also turn us into paste. You must try. Your spy master, Leliana. She is here. Find her. Quickly. Before the Elder One learns you're here. How did the Kanari learn of the sacrifice of the temple? Speak! Never. Ah! There's no use to this defiance, little bird. There's no one left for you to protect. You're wasting your breath. Ah! Talk! The Elder One demands answers. <laughs> He'll get used to disappointment. You will break. I will die first. Or you will. safe now. Forget safe. If you came back from the dead, you need to do better than safe. You need to end this. Do you have weapons? Good. The Magister's probably in his chambers. You aren't curious how we got here? No. Alexius sent us into the future. This, his victory, his Elder One, it was never meant to be. I need to find Alexius and reverse the spell. If we can get back to our present time, we can prevent this future from ever happening. And mages always wonder why people fear them. No one should have this power. It's dangerous and unpredictable. Before the breach, nothing we did. Enough. This is all pretend to you. Some future you hope will never exist. I suffered. The whole world suffered. It was real. What happened while we were away? Stop talking. I'm just asking for information. No, you're talking to fill silence. Nothing happened that you want to hear. Alexius, it's time to answer for your crimes. And here you are, finally. I knew you would appear again, not that it would be now, but I knew I hadn't destroyed you. My final failure. Was it worth it? Everything you did to the world, to yourself. It doesn't matter now. All we can do is wait for the end. It does matter. I will undo this. How many times have I tried? The past cannot be undone. All that I fought for, all that I betrayed, and what have I wrought? Ruin and death, that is nothing else. The Elder One comes for me, for you, for us all. <sighs> Felix. That's Felix. Make his breath, Alexius. What have you done? He would have died, Dorian. I saved him. Please, don't hurt my son. I'll do anything you ask. 
Hand over the amulet, and we let him go. Let him go, and I swear you get what you want. I want the world back. <laughs> no. No! I gave the world the Phoenix. You will not take him from me. lies he told himself, the justifications. He lost Felix long ago. He didn't even notice. Oh, Alexius. This Alexius was too far gone. But the Alexius in our time might still be reasoned with. I suppose that's true. This is the same amulet he used before. I think it's the same one we made in Minrathus. That's a relief. Give me an hour to work out the spell he used and I should be able to reopen the rift. An hour? That's impossible! You must go now! The Elder One! You cannot stay here! We'll hold the outer door. When they get past us, it'll be your turn. We'll make this count. The only way we live is if this day never comes. Cast your spells. You have as much time as I have hours. Though darkness closes, I am shielded by flame. Andraste, guide me. Maker, take me to your side. You move, and we all die! You'll have to do better than that. You failed, Alexius. How forgiving is your Elder One? You won. There is no point extending this charade. Felix. It's going to be all right, Father. You'll die. Everyone dies. Well, I'm glad that's over with.
or not. Grand Enchanter, we'd like to discuss your abuse of our hospitality. Your Majesties. When we offered the Major Sanctuary, we did not give them the right to drive our people from their homes. King Alistair, Queen Anora, I assure you, we never intended... In light of your actions, good intentions are no longer enough. You and your followers have worn out your welcome. Leave Ferelden, or we'll be forced to make you leave. But we have hundreds who need protection. Where will we go? I should point out that we did come here for mages to close the breach. And what are the terms of this arrangement? Hopefully better than what Alexius gave you. The Inquisition is better than that, yes? I suggest conscripting them. They've proven what they'll do given too much freedom. They have lost all possible supporters. The Inquisition is their only remaining chance for freedom. It seems we have little choice but to accept whatever you offer. We would be honored to have you fight as allies at the Inquisition's side. We'll discuss this later. I'll pray that the rest of the Inquisition honors your promise then. The breach threatens all of Thetis. We cannot afford to be divided now. We can't fight it without you. Any chance of success requires your full support. It's a generous offer. I doubt you're going to get a better one from us. We accept. It would be madness not to. I will gather my people and ready them for the journey to Haven. The breach will be closed. You will not regret giving us this chance. It's not a matter for debate. There will be abominations among the mages, and we must be prepared. If we rescind the offer of an alliance, it makes the Inquisition appear incompetent at best, tyrannical at worst. What were you thinking, turning mages loose with no oversight? The veil is torn open. They're not monsters, they're people. And they deserve the same respect as anyone else. This is not about respect. Even the strongest mages can be overcome by demons in conditions like these. You were there, Seeker. Why didn't you intervene? While I may not completely agree with the decision, I support it. The sole point of the Herald's mission was to gain the Mage's aid, and that was accomplished. The voice of pragmatism speaks. And here I was, just starting to enjoy the circular arguments. Closing the breach is all that matters. Closing the breach will require a lot of magic, and that means lyrium. I have contacts who can help. Contacts meaning smugglers? Send them word. We need every advantage. We have legitimate lyrium supply lines already. And they don't need to hear of this. Keep it under the table, and I'll do what I can to quiet rumors. We should look into the things you saw in this dark future. The assassination of Empress Selene. A demon army. Sounds like something a Tevinter cult might do. Orle falls, the Imperium rises. Chaos for everyone. One battle at a time. It's going to take time to organize our troops and the mage recruits. Let's take this to the war room. Join us. None of this means anything without your mark, after all. Of course. Meet us there when you're ready. I'll skip the war council, but I would like to see this breach up close, if you don't mind. Then you're... staying? Oh, didn't I mention? The South is so charming and rustic, I adore it to little pieces. I must admit, I'm surprised. We both saw what could happen, what this Elder One and his cult are trying to do. Not everything from Tevinter is terrible. Some of us have fought for eons against this sort of madness. It's my duty to stand with you. That future will not come to pass. Stay if you must, but you'll be watched. Watch away. I have nothing to hide, and evidently plenty to prove. I'll begin preparations to march on the summit. Make a willing, the mages will be enough to grant us victory. And what are we supposed to do, exactly? What you always do, complain. We've already spoken with Commander Cullen. No one listens. We want better quarters. 
We want the Templars kept at a distance. And some respect for... This is not the Circle. You mages are our allies, not our wards. Act like it. How are we supposed to... Deal with it. It never ends, evidently. You don't need to tell me that. I just don't know who told them I'm the one to yell at. Is it that bad? The mages are here as equals. They need to get used to what that means. It is your doing, after all. You created this alliance. You would have done differently, I suppose? Oh. I do sound like I'm blaming you, don't I? I don't disapprove. In fact, you did well. You made a decision when it needed to be made. And here we are. I wish I could say this was my doing. We wouldn't be here at all if you hadn't stood up against the Chantry. You're being kind. You're discounting your role in this. Let's close the breach. Then we can say how successful I was. The mages are ready to approach the breach. I pray this will be enough to close it. I know you're worried about having the mages here. Give them a chance to prove themselves. Now, I'm not questioning their ability or their intentions, but we cannot ignore the risks. I will not endanger the alliance you've created. We need their help. Any precautions taken will be to ensure the safety of our people and the mages themselves. Nothing more. I'd like to know more about the Templars. What would you like to know? Do the Templars do anything besides hunt mages? The Templars protect against the dangers of magic. Before the Order left the Chantry, that meant serving in a circle. They were also tasked with tracking apostates or fighting demons inevitably summoned by the weak or malicious. You've made it clear that you consider mages a threat. Any mage can be. I won't pretend otherwise. I've seen the suffering magic can inflict. I've treated mages with distrust because of it. At times without cause. That was unworthy of me. I will try not to do so. Not that I want mages moving through our base completely unchecked. We need safeguards in place to protect people, including mages, from possession of the least. Do Templars take vows? I swear to the Maker to watch all the mages. That sort of thing? There's a vigil first. You're meant to be at peace during that time, but your life is about to change. When it's over, you give yourself to a life of service. That's when you're given a filter, your first draft of Lyrium, for its power. As Templars, we are not to seek wealth or acknowledgement. Our lives belong to the Maker and the path we have chosen. What does Templar training involve? There is weapon and combat training. Even without their abilities, Templars are among the best warriors in Thedas. Initiates must also memorize portions of the Chant of Light, study history, and improve their mental focus. Did you enjoy your training? I wanted to learn everything. If I was giving my life to this, I would be the best Templar I could. You were a model student. <laughs> I wanted to be. I wasn't always successful. Watching a candle burn down while reciting the chant of transfiguration wasn't the most exciting task. And I admit, my mind sometimes wandered. Why did you join the Order? I could think of no better calling than to protect those in need. I used to beg the Templars at our local chantry to teach me. At first, they merely humored me. I must have shown promise, or at least a willingness to learn. The night captain spoke to my parents on my behalf. They agreed to send me for training. I was 13 when I left home. 13? It's still so young. I wasn't the youngest there. Some children are promised to the order at infancy. Still, I didn't take on full responsibilities until I was 18. The Order sees you trained and educated first. What about your family? Did you miss them? Of course, but there were many my age who felt the same. We learned to look out for one another. You've lived in the Circle. What was a typical day for a Templar there? <laughs> typical? The last time I was in a Circle was right before it fell apart. Nothing was typical. Before that, then? Certain rituals require a full guard. A mage's howling, for instance. I've attended a few. Most of the time, you merely maintain a presence, on patrol or in the circle, ready to respond if needed. 
Mages pretend to ignore that presence, but they're watching you just as closely. Do Templars and Mages never speak to each other? Some do, but Templars are supposed to maintain a certain distance from their charges. If a mage is possessed or uses blood magic, you must act quickly, without hesitation. Your judgment cannot be clouded. Of course, ignoring one another does nothing to foster understanding. That's all I wanted to know. Thank you. I'm sure you have other matters to attend. Reports of fade rifts and demons keep coming. The people are terrified, and it's only getting worse. The only thing that will calm their fears now is the hope that someone out there can save them. You have to be that someone. No one else has any power over the rifts. Seal them. Your legend will spread, and Thedas will learn to trust the Inquisition. In Redcliffe, you sacrificed yourself so that I could return here. Of course I did. One small life in exchange for a second chance at history. I always loved a bargain. It was still a sacrifice, and still noble. And I would do it again. Why do you want me to seek out the rebel mages? Why do you care? I've known mages. Some of them were better people than me. And yet I'm free and they're not. It's not right. Let's talk about you. Me? What did you do before you worked for the Divine? I was a bard. An Orlesian spy for many years. For a time I also served a small cloister in Lothering. After the Blight, the Divine called on me to oversee her personal network. Bards tell tales. I bet you tell some good ones. There are plenty of tales in the library. Perhaps you should look for them there. I should leave you to your work. We can always talk later. The Mage Rebellion joins the Inquisition. I've got to admit, that's a twist I didn't see coming. One thing you saw in the future worries me. I mean, it was all bad. But Red Lyrium and Ferelden infecting people and growing out of them, that's bad. Finding more of it really punches a hole in my Red Lyrium at the Temple was a coincidence theory. How long does it take for Red Lyrium to grow? How fast can it spread? It took years to infect people in Kirkwall, but no one there was actually ingesting the stuff. This Elder One managed to take the worst thing I can think of and make it worse. That's an accomplishment. We can't leave a single piece of that Lyrium out in the wild. I'm with you on that. I've got people trying to find out where the red stuff came from. I think maybe we should make that a priority. But th that's enough doom and gloom. You just won a big victory for the Inquisition. What are you going to do to celebrate? We can't know what's coming. Best not to get too comfortable. I can't disagree with that. But maybe you should try to relax while you can. Things should be calm around here for at least the next hour. Take a moment to enjoy it. If the world's about to end, I'm sure the Seeker will let us know. So we have gained the mages. Excellent. They should be able to seal the breach. You are certain you experienced time travel. Could it have been an illusion? A trick of the Fade? I know what I saw. It was real. What an amazing gift. It is vital the Inquisition succeed to avoid the future you witnessed. I'm surprised you're not more interested in your own future. I know enough. If that future happened, then I, and Cassandra, Cullen and the rest, failed to stop this Elder One. Speaking of which, you should ready yourself. For? This Elder One? You have now interfered with his plans twice. Once at the Temple of Sacred Ashes, and now again at Redcliffe. A being who aspires to godhood is unlikely to ignore such an affront. The Inquisition supports free mages. What's next? Elves running Halamshiral? Cows milking farmers? I take it you don't agree. On the contrary, I approve. Partly. I do wonder if you've considered what this support of yours will do. For mages in general, I mean. The Inquisition is seen as an authority. You've given southern mages license to, well, be like mages back home. So what? They all turn into blood mages, worship dragons, and then take over? Not at first. But you'd be a fool not to see where this could lead. Thing is, the Imperium was once just like the South. Templars, proper circles, all that rot. Then it changed by inches. 
not that this is reason to oppress us. Still, my homeland should be a cautionary tale, not a source of inspiration. It occurs to me that I barely know anything about you. Beyond my being a mage from Tevinti, you mean? Beyond that, yes. And beyond my being so charming and well-dressed, which is obvious to anyone. You certainly think highly of yourself. It's true. I could be more modest, but I'd be lying. Now, what was I talking about? Ah, yes, me. I am the scion of House Parvis, a product of generations of careful breeding and the repository of its hopes and dreams. Naturally, I despised it all. The lies, the scheming, the illusions of supremacy. That's Tevinter in a nutshell, isn't it? Needless to say, my family was not happy with my choices. Why would your family be upset with your choices? Because I rejected their idyllic plan. If they had their way, by now I'd be married to some unlucky girl from a powerful family. We'd live in luxurious despair, despising each other as I waited to take my father's place in the Magisterium. I declined the honor, and thus it's best I'm far from home. Less of an embarrassment that way, you see. I'm getting the impression you don't care much for your homeland. On the contrary, I care for my homeland a great deal. There's so much potential. Sadly, we squander it. We refuse to acknowledge how far we've fallen because pretending is easier. We pretend the Canari can be beaten. We pretend that we're superior to everyone, even our own people. Not everyone feels that way. I don't. Sadly, with a minority. It just seems so much of what you say about the Imperium is entirely negative. It might sound that way. For all our faults, my people have many virtues. We are laden with history and culture. Tevinter is where Thedas truly began, remember? We treasure our past and preserve it. You can walk down a side street and find nothing built during the modern ages. And despite appearances, we care deeply about everything. We have no reserve, not in war and not in love. If I truly believed my homeland was beyond all hope, I wouldn't miss it so much. Why remain with the Inquisition? Why not go back to Dinter? <laughs> I'm not exactly welcome back home. Not that it matters. I'm quite accustomed to being a pariah. It adds to my charm. I can do more for Dinter here. If the Venatori succeed, it'll set my homeland back a thousand years. I'm sure some Magisters would disagree, but that's why we kill them. What did you mean by generations of careful breeding? The great families of Devinter don't have children. They refine traits, weed out the undesirable, and promote the rest. My mother was chosen for my father because magic runs strongly in her blood. Never mind that they loathed each other. They wanted a son who could become Archon to make House Parvis the envy of the Imperium. They got me. A cautionary tale that you should be careful what you wish for. I think I've heard enough. That's too bad. I never tire of talking about myself. Have you gone to see Alexius yet? He's in the cells. Not yet, no. I saw him before they locked him up. He looked... despondent. Broken. Not the man I remember, nor the one I want to. I suppose the Inquisition will judge him eventually. I wonder if there's any chance they'll show him mercy. He hardly deserves it, but for Felix's sake. I can't help hoping there's something left of the man I once knew. Master Adar of the Inquisition. A pleasure, sir. We so rarely have a chance to meet anyone new. It is always the same crowd at these parties. So you must be a guest of Madame de Fer. Or are you here for Duc Bastien? Are you here on business? I have heard the most curious tales of you. I cannot imagine half of them are true. What have you heard about me? Some say that when the veil opened, Andraste herself delivered you from the Fade. I'm not familiar with that name. 
I was invited here by First Enchanter Vivienne. Madame de Fer is a fond nickname the court has given Lady Vivienne. I've heard she finds it amusing. I've heard very little about Duke Bastien. He hasn't been seen much at court lately. His business with the Council of Heralds often takes him from home for long periods. It can't be good for a man of his years. And of course, there's the civil war. Bastien probably wishes to distance himself from the actions of his one-time son-in-law. Tearing up the Dales in a foolish bid for power? It will end in disgrace for Gaspar. Everyone knows it. Some of those storytellers may have gotten carried away. But only for the best effect. The Inquisition is a ripe subject for wild tales. The Inquisition. What a lot of pig shit. Washed up sisters and crazed seekers. No one can take them seriously. Everyone knows it's just an excuse for a bunch of political outcasts to grab power. I've never made any claims to holiness. What's your point? In front of all these people, you admit to being a pretentious usurper. We know what your Inquisition truly is. If you were a man of honor, you'd step outside and answer the charges. My dear Marquis, how unkind of you to use such language in my house to my guests. You know such rudeness is intolerable. Uh, Madame Vivienne, I humbly beg your pardon. You should. Whatever am I going to do with you, my dear? My lord, you're the wounded party in this unfortunate affair. What would you have me do with this foolish, foolish man? The Marquis doesn't interest me. Do whatever you like with him. Poor Marquis. Issuing challenges and hurling insults like some Ferelden <coughs> doggerel. <coughs> and all dressed up in your Aunt Solange's doublet. Didn't she give you that to wear to the Grand Tourney? To think all the brave Chevaliers who will be competing left for Markham this morning. And you're still here. Were you hoping to sate your damaged pride by defeating the Herald of Andraste in a public duel? Or did you think his sword would end the shame of your failure? Run along, my dear. Do give my regards to your aunt. I'm delighted you could attend this little gathering. I've so wanted to meet you. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Vivienne, first enchanter of Montsimard, an enchantress to the Imperial Court. Is that Marquis going to pose a problem? His aunt is the Vicomtesse of Mont de Glace. Not a powerful family, but well respected, and very devout. Alphonse will be disowned for this. It's not the first time he's brought his aunt disgrace, but I'm sure it'll be the last. And after such a public humiliation, I expect he'll run off to the Dales to join the Empress's war effort. Either to make a good end, or to win back a modicum of self-respect. You invited me here. What is it you want? I wanted to meet face to face. It is important to consider one's connections carefully. With Divine Justinia dead, the Chantry's in shambles. And you seem to have won over the fractious rebel mages. I didn't think such a thing was possible. As the leader of the last loyal mages of Thedas, I feel it only right that I lend my assistance to your cause. You say you led the last of the loyal mages. Loyal to whom? To the people of Thedas, of course. We have not forgotten the commandment, as some have, that magic exists to serve man. I support any effort to restore such order. You don't much care for the rebels, I take it. Are you aware they've been offered an alliance? With proper guidance from the Inquisition, I think my colleagues will return to their senses. Surely they will have to realize that their rebellion endangers everyone. Are you devout? What's your opinion of the Chantry? I was a great admirer of the late divine Justinia V. The Chantry, at its best, unites the disparate cultures of Thedas and looks after its most vulnerable. Had she lived, 
Justinia could have accomplished so much. You are aware that the Chantry hasn't sanctioned this Inquisition. The Chantry is leaderless. They're in no position to officially sanction anything. Besides, my dear, if there is one virtue the Chant of Light teaches us, it is forgiveness. Once the Inquisition has sealed the breach, I am sure the new Divine will not care in the slightest about official permission. What exactly can you do for the Inquisition? I am well versed in the politics of the Orlesian Empire. I know every member of the Imperial Court personally. I have all the resources remaining to the Circle at my disposal. And I am a mage of no small talent. Will that do? Does that mean you'd be aiding the Inquisition from the Imperial Palace? Ordinarily, I would be happy to serve as liaison to the court, but these are not ordinary times. The veil has been ripped apart and there is a hole in the sky. It is now the duty of every mage to work towards sealing the breach. And so I would join the Inquisition on the field of battle. What's in this for you? The same thing anyone gets by fighting this chaos. The chance to meet my enemy, to decide my fate. I won't wait quietly for destruction. The Inquisition will be happy to have you, Lady Vivian. Great things are beginning, my dear. I can promise you that. Errol of Andras Day. How much did you expend to discover me? It must have weakened the Inquisition immeasurably. I don't know who you are. You don't fool me. I'm too important for this to be an accident. My efforts will survive in victories against you elsewhere. Just say what? What is that? <laughs> Ugh. Squishy one, but you heard me, right? Just say what? Rich tits always try for more than they deserve. Blah, blah, blah! Obey me. Arrow in my face. So, you followed the notes well enough. Glad to see you're... You're big. Real big. From the north, yeah? Ravain or... North. I mean, it's all good, isn't it? The important thing is, you glow. You're the Herald thingy. Some believe I'm the Herald of Andraste. But who are you, and what's this about? No idea. I don't know this idiot from manners. My people just said the Inquisition should look at him. Your people? Elves? <laughs> no. People, people. Name's Sarah. This is cover. Get round it. For the reinforcements. Don't worry. Someone tipped me their equipment shed. They've got no breaches. Friends really came through with that tip. No breaches. <laughs> so, Herald of Andraste, you're a strange one. I'd like to join. Could we take a few moments for sense to reassert itself? Who are you people? I'm not people, but I get what you want. It's like this. I sent you a note to look for hidden stuff by my friends. The friends of Red Jenny. That's me. Well, I'm one. So is a fence in Montfort, some woman in Kirkwall. There were three in Starkhaven, brothers or something. It's just a name, yeah? It lets little people, friends, be part of something while they stick it to nobles they hate. So here, in your face, I'm Sarah. The friends of Red Jenny are sort of out there. I use them to help you. Plus arrows. The Inquisition has spies already. Can you add to these professionals? Here's how it is. You important people are up here, shoving your cods around. Blah, blah, I'll crush you. I'll crush you. Mm -hmm. Ooh, crush you. <clears throat> then you've got cloaks and spy kings, like this tit. Or was he one of the little knives, all serious with his little knife? All those secrets, and what gave him up? Some houseboy who don't know shite, but knows a bad person when he sees one. So no, I'm not knifey shiv dark, all hidden. If you don't listen down here, too, you risk your breaches. Like those guards? I stole their... Look, do you need people or not? I want to get everything back to normal. Like you. 
So who are your friends of Red Jenny? You must know them. Ah, oh, it's not hard to understand if you're not trying to waste your day on it. Someone little always hits someone big. And unless you don't eat, sleep or piss, you're never far from someone little. Doesn't always work out, but a lot of people hated this guy. Someone got a laugh, someone got even, someone got paid. And someone has to have it explained to them that free help is good. You sound like a thief who acts out petty revenge fantasies. And that might be bad. Oh, right. You want to prop that guy up so I can say my sorries? Bad things should happen to bad people. We find someone not so bad, maybe he'll end up not so dead. Good enough? You say that like it's obvious, but you didn't know him. I knew about him. That's just rumor. Look, I'd have been fine stripping his guards and nicking his stuff. Turns out he deserved worse. Or was him trying to kill you a good thing? Are you the baddie? Didn't think so. Back there you wanted to know if I'd glow. Why? That's what you do, innit? You walked out of somewhere and now you glow. Andraste's Herald. True or not, it seemed like the easiest way to know it was you. True or not? Well, that's what they say and all. Look, don't get ahead, yeah? I want to help this... whatever it is. Inquisition. All right, Sarah. I can use you and your friends. Yes! Getting good before you're too big to like. That'll keep your breeches where they should be. Plus extra breeches because I have all these... You have merchants who buy that piss, yeah? Got to be worth something. Anyway, Haven. See you there, Herald. This will be grand. The Inquisition appreciates your assistance in this matter, Lady Corbin. And my miners appreciate your business. You'll have your Illyrium by the end of the week. I should tell you, Ambassador, the Chantry raised some fuss when they learned about our arrangement. The Inquisition must certainly seem an audacious idea to the Grand Clerics. We hope to convince them it is a necessary one as well. I'll take my leave. Good day. Who was she, Ambassador? A merchant. I thought we should reach out to the Dwarves to secure Lyrium for the Inquisition's mages. According to Lady Corpin, it raised the ire of the Chantry. Oh. Access to Lyrium makes us rather more formidable than anticipated. We're becoming a challenge. Sadly, the remaining Grand Clerics appear to be consolidating the Chantry's power instead of comforting the masses. Mage circles started falling years ago. The Chantry was troubled even before the Divine's murder. Yet many people continue to bear it great love. We will not benefit from its decline. Little but the Chantry ties Orlais, Nevara, Ferelden, Antiva, and even Rivain to a common cause. Has the Chantry truly promoted such peace? Andraste's chant is familiar across kingdoms, a source of many shared customs. That is the crucial point. Common ground is the start of all negotiations. I suppose a shared faith can be useful when talking with strangers. Precisely. And these similar interests are merely where we begin. We must learn to think beyond our own wants to secure peace in Thedas. How did someone so lovely and selfless go into our Legion politics, Lady Montelier? Well, that is, uh... <laughs> really, you give me too much credit. While you're here, I do have a question. The remaining Grand Clerics sent a missive inquiring about the events at the Temple of Sacred Ashes. They demand to know whether the Inquisition officially claims that Andraste saved you from the breach. If it were up to you, how would you reply? Will my answer change your reply to the Chantry? If Leliana, Cassandra, Cullen and I could agree on our official stance, I could answer that. We should decide soon. The revered mothers don't seem to know what to make of you. I tell the Chantry I was saved by circumstance, not divine intervention. Yet as rumors your Andraste's herald grow, the Grand Clerics may not believe such a humble reply. A difficult situation, and I thank you for your answer. A good day to you. I understand you were instrumental in garnering the assistance of the rebel mages. It is well done. And I pray this Inquisition fares better than the Chantry in its handling of magic. 
You disapprove of something the Chantry did? Are you allowed to do that? That largely depends upon one's company. While surrounded by those declared heretics already, I am safe enough. In some ways, Andraste had the simpler task. Magic should serve man, and not rule over him. That tells us what should be, but it does not tell us how to get there. So many times the methods of men have undone the spirit of their goals. Once you have sealed the breach, we shall see whether this Inquisition is truer to the Chantry, or its own namesake. Can you tell me about the original Inquisition? The original Inquisition was formed after the First Blight, well before the Chantry as we know it. The Inquisitors were hunters, zealots, who tracked and killed cultists and dangerous mages. As Andraste rose to power, the Inquisition came into her service. Instead of hunting those who would do harm, the Inquisitors spread the chant of light by force. No wonder everyone is so nervous around us. Who chose that name? Divine Justinia herself. I understand that this was not a popular decision. In any case, once the chant of light had spread far and wide, there was less need for zealots. The Inquisitors became the seekers of truth, and eventually the Templar. We're more zealous than the Templars and the Seekers. I suppose that explains Cassandra. Do you know what impresses me most about the original Inquisition? They fought horrific battles, killed and died for their cause, and when it was time, they put their swords away. Perhaps the name was Divine Justinia's message, that when the Inquisition is needed, it will strike without mercy. But when its work is done, it will put its sword away. How are the people doing after what happened at the Conclave? They are scared, of course. Many have lost homes or loved ones. I doubt many will sleep well until you have sealed the breach. I have offered what help I can. The rest is for the Inquisition. What more do you wish to know? How are the villagers in Haven doing? You did well to gain the mages to your cause. The people have hope that the breach may be sealed. Some of them are returning to the lives they fled. Others are starting fresh. In either case, they no longer believe the world as they know it is ending. What are you doing to help these people? My sisters and I have been tending to the injured, as best we are able. Some refugees come with food, while others arrive empty-handed. I have helped ensure that all have enough to eat. Beyond that, many simply wish the familiar comfort of the Chant of Light. It is little enough work to offer some comfort to those in pain. Farewell. Until next time. If Fiona and her malcontents are joining us as allies, we need to be prepared. Abominations are inevitable. Cullen doesn't have enough Templars to handle incidents. Some of the rank and file need to be trained. The last thing we need are abominations running amok. It's good to see someone with an understanding of the situation. I'll have a word with Cullen. We are reliant on his people, absolutely. There has never been a greater threat to mages than the Breach. Until it is closed, no one is safe. When you say mages are a danger, are you counting yourself? Of course I am, my dear. Every mage who joins the cause is taking a calculated risk, whether they know it or not. Magic is dangerous, just as fire is dangerous. Anyone who forgets this truth gets burned. There are no Templars among the Vashoth. My dear, your people cut the tongues from mages they deem dangerous, just as the Kunari do. And they kill those they deem too weak to resist demons. Your people are no kind than any other. For those who value survival, sentimentality is not an option. Tell me something. As you will no doubt have a hand in shaping it, what future do you see for mages? Mages should be treated like anybody else. And yet, however much we may wish it, we are not like everyone else. Anyone can see that a chevalier is armed and dangerous, and they can see when his blade is about to strike. But can you spot a mage coming? And if he arrives at your stoop, can he leave his magic at the door? It's something to consider, my dear.
So, this is it, huh? Oh, no, it's fine, yeah? It's just, I thought it'd be bigger. <laughs> Hear that? I meant the stronghold, but it sounded like... Well, it's funny, right? Anyway, stopping wars should earn more sovereigns than this. Need things back to normal for coins to be flowing again. Another reason the Templars and Mages need to be sat down. The Templars and the Mages? Most people pick a side. Most people are stupid. But where do you stand on the war? In the frigging middle with everyone else. You know what I hear about mages? Nothing, until one goes all demony. Know what I hear about Templars? Nothing, until they take maybe mages. They're too busy to look up where the real questions are. Is there something else you're looking for? Like what's behind all this? Maybe. I don't know. First things first, right? I help you march, march, arrow, kick. Then people stop being stupid, and everything starts to make sense again. Sound good to you, all chosen Lord Herald? I'm ready to give it a shot. That's all I can ask from anyone else. I'm in. It's an investment, yeah? Better pay off, too. Stupid war and everything. I had things to do. So, that Tevinter guy sent you into the future? Ugh. Every time I think I understand magic, the rules change. <laughs> I know, right? If I were a mage, I'd just throw fire at people. That's honest. Anyway, I hope our new friends have what it takes to close the breach. Damn thing gives me a headache just looking at it. So how did you get the name Iron Bull? I picked it. You know how it is. Even growing up Talvashath, your parents had to tell you about some of it, right? No names. I figure your parents chose yours the same way. Nice going on a dar, by the way. Weapon. I like that. But why specifically Iron Bull? This may surprise you, but I really like hitting things. Also, it's THE Iron Bull, technically. I like having an article at the front. It makes it sound like I'm not even a person, just a mindless weapon. An implement of destruction. That really works for me. I'd like to know more about your work with the Ben Hasrath. Ben Hasrath is actually a general term. You've got the secret police who investigate problems inside our territory. You've got the re-educators who take people with problems and fix their minds. Or make them disappear. And then you've got the spies. How do the re-educators work? Well, I only know the basics. Wasn't my area. That said, keep a man awake long enough, ask the right questions, give the right potions, and you can get him to say anything. You don't need blood magic or demons to change someone's mind. We're a lot more fragile than we'd like to believe. My parents told me stories about what the re-educators did. Yes, you were lucky your parents got away. The weak minds get bent into the right shape, strong minds like yours. They'd have given you a poison called Kamek. You'd have been a polite, happy laborer for the rest of your life. And you'd have had a handler to help you eat and make sure you didn't crap your pants. None of those sound exactly like you. Yeah, I was a special case. They sent me to Saharan because they needed someone who could fight and hunt down problems. That whole island was a sack of cats. Incursions from Tevinta, Talvashath, and native rebels fighting both sides. And in the middle, me, trying to wrangle the rebels and restore order. How'd that work out for you? About as well as you'd expect. I hunted down a lot of rebels. Lost a lot of friends to the Vince, or the Fog Warriors, or the Talvashar. One day I woke up and couldn't think of a damned reason to keep doing my job. Turned myself into the re-educators. Obviously you made it out alive. I wasn't sure I would. But I honestly didn't care at that point. I just couldn't keep fighting that fight. The Ben Hasrath ordered me to go to Orlay, ostensibly as a Talvashath, and work undercover. That's how I ended up here. Thanks for the information, Bull. No problem, boss. Anyway, nice talking with you. I've heard rumors of abandoned Morden camps all over these parts. If we have time, I'd like to take a look, see if there's anything we can salvage. I want to hear more about you. <laughs> Compared to yours, my life will seem dull indeed. 
Your name Blackwall doesn't sound Orlesian. Marcher then? Pereldon? I was from the Free Marchers originally. Mock him. That was a long time ago. Another life. I hear that many wardens were once criminals. You're right. And when you join, your past is forgotten, so let's leave it that way. What did you do before you became a warden? I was... A soldier, a, a nobody trained to wield a sword and follow orders. I grew weary of fighting other men's wars. So you became a warden? More or less. Becoming a Grey Warden was the first time I felt like I mattered. The life I led before seems hollow in comparison. Perhaps one day it will fade away. Why did you join the Wardens? Because they remember honor and sacrifice. Words that have little meaning to the rest of us. Because they lay down their lives for those they have sworn to protect. We all need to believe there are such men in the world. I needed to believe I could be one of them. We can continue this discussion at another time. Very well. The best of the mages are ready, Harold. Be certain you are prepared for the assault on the breach. We cannot know how you will be affected. the Herald. Let his will draw from you. Solas confirms the heavens are scarred but calm. The breach is sealed. We've reports of lingering rifts, and many questions remain. But this was a victory. Word of your heroism has spread. You know how many were involved. Luck put me at the center. A strange kind of luck. I'm not sure if we need more or less. But you're right. This was a victory of Alliance. One of the few in recent memory. With the breach closed, that alliance will need new focus. Forces approaching! To arms! What the... We must get to the gates! Cullen? One watchguard reporting. It's a massive force, the bulk over the mountain. Under what banner? None. None? I can't come in unless you open. I'm 
Cole. I came to warn you, to help. People are coming to hurt you. You probably already know. What is this? What's going on? The Templars come to kill you. Templars? Is this the Order's response to our talks with the Mages, attacking blindly? The Red Templars went to the Elder One. You know him? He knows you. You took his mages. There. I know that. This Elder One. He's very angry that you took his mages. Cullen, give me a plan. Anything. Haven is no fortress. If we are to withstand this monster, we must control the battle. Get out there and hit that force. Use everything you can. Mages! You! You have sanctioned to engage them! That is Samson! He will not make it easy! Inquisition! With the Herald! For your life! For all of us! to the gate. He tried to stop a Templar. The blade went deep. He's going to die. What a charming boy. Harold, our position is not good. That dragon stole back any time you might have earned us. I've seen an archdemon. I was in the Fade, but it looked like that. I don't care what it looks like. It's got a path for that army. They'll kill everyone in Haven. The Elder One doesn't care about the village. He only wants the Herald. If you know why he wants me, just say it. I don't. He's too loud. It hurts to hear him. He wants to kill you. No one else matters, but he'll crush them. Kill them anyway. I don't like him. You don't like... 
Herald. There are no tactics to make this survivable. The only thing that slowed them was the avalanche. We could turn the remaining trebuchets, cause one last slide. We're overrun. To hit the enemy, we'd bury Haven. We're dying, but we can decide how. Many don't get that choice. Yes, that. Chancellor Roderick can help. He wants to say it before he dies. There is a path. You wouldn't know it unless you'd made the summer pilgrimage, as I have. The people can escape. She must have shown me. Andraste must have shown me so I could t tell you. What are you on about, Roderick? It was whim that I walked the path. I did not mean to start. It was overgrown. Now, with so many in the Conclave dead, to be the only one who remembers... I don't know, Harold. If this simple memory can save us, this could be more than mere accident. You could be more. If that thing is here for me, I'll make him fight for it. And when the mountain falls, what about you? Perhaps you will surprise it. Find a way. Inquisition, follow Chancellor Roderick through the Chantry. Move! Herald, if you are meant for this, if the Inquisition is meant for this, I pray for you. They'll load the trebuchets. Keep the Elder One's attention until we're above the tree line. If we are to have a chance, if you are to have a chance, let that thing hear you.
pretender. You toy with forces beyond your ken no more. Whatever you are, I'm not afraid. Words mortals often hurl at the darkness. Once they were mine, they are always lies. Know me. Know what you have pretended to be. Exalt the Elder One. The will that is Corypheus. You will kneel. Why are you here? What do you want from us? I ask for nothing, because it is not in your power to give. But that will not stop me. I am here for the Anchor. The process of removing it begins now. It is your fault, Geralt. You interrupted a ritual years in the planning, and instead of dying, you stole its purpose. I do not know how you survived, but what marks you as touched, what you flail at rifts, I crafted to assault the very heavens. the anchor to undo my work. The gall. What is this thing meant to do? It is meant to bring certainty where there is none. For you, the certainty that I would always come for it. I once breached the Fade in the name of another to serve the old gods of the Empire in person. I found only chaos and corruption, dead whispers. For a thousand years I was confused, no more. I have gathered the will to return under no name but my own, to champion with it to winter and correct this blighted world. Beg that I succeed, for I have seen the throne of the gods, and it was empty. Ah! The anchor is permanent. You have spoilt it with your stumbling. So be it. I will begin again. Find another way to give this world the nation and God it requires. And you, I will not suffer even an unknowing rival. You must die. Your arrogance blinds you. Good to know. If I'm dying, it's not today!
thank the Maker! We cannot simply ignore this. We must find a way. And who put you in charge? We need a consensus or we have nothing. Please, we must use reason. Without the infrastructure of the Inquisition, we're hobbled. I can't come from nowhere. She didn't say it could. Enough! This is getting us nowhere. Well, we're agreed on that much. Shh. You need rest. They've been at it for hours. They have that luxury thanks to you. The enemy could not follow, and with time to doubt, we turn to blame. Infighting may threaten as much as this Corypheus. Do we know where Corypheus and his forces are? We are not sure where we are, which may be why, despite the numbers he still commands, there is no sign of him. That, or you are believed dead. Without Haven, we are thought helpless. Or he girls for another attack. I cannot claim to know the mind of that creature. Only his effect on us. They're arguing about what we do next. I need to be there. Another heated voice won't help. Even yours. Perhaps especially yours. Our leaders struggle because of what we survivors witnessed. We saw our defender stand and fall. And now we have seen him return. The more the enemy is beyond us, the more miraculous your actions appear, and the more our trials seem ordained. That is hard to accept, no? What we have been called to endure? What we, perhaps, must come to believe? I escaped the avalanche. Barely, perhaps, but I didn't die. Of course, and the dead cannot return from across the veil. But the people know what they saw. Or perhaps what they needed to see. The Maker works both in the moment and in how it is remembered. Can we truly know the heavens are not with us? You saw Corypheus. What do you think of his claims of assaulting the heavens? Scripture says magisters, to winter servants of false old gods, entered the Fade to reach the Golden City, seat of the Maker. For their crime, they were cast out as darkspawn. Their hubis is why we suffer blight, and why the Maker turned from us. If such is the claim of this Corypheus, he is a monster beyond imagining. All mankind continues to suffer for that sin. If even a shred of it is true, all the more reason Andraste would choose someone to rise against him. Corypheus said he found only corruption and emptiness. Nothing golden. If he entered that place, it has changed him without and within. The living are not meant to make that journey. Perhaps these are lies he must tell himself, rather than accept that he earned the scorn of the Maker. I know I could not bear such. Mother Giselle, I just don't see how what I believe matters. Lies or not, Corypheus is a real physical threat. You can't match that with hope alone. Thank you. 
army needs more than an enemy. It needs a cause. A word. A wise woman, worth heeding. Her kind understand the moments that unify a cause. Or fracture it. The orb Corypheus carried, the power he used against you, it is Elven. Corypheus used the orb to open the breach. Unlocking it must have caused the explosion that destroyed the Conclave. I do not yet know how Corypheus survived, nor am I certain how people will react when they learn of the orb's origin. All right. What is it and how do you know about it? They were foci, used to channel ancient magics. I have seen such things in the Fade, old memories of older magic. Corypheus may think it to Vinton. His empire's magic was built on the bones of my people. Knowing or not, he risks our alliance. I cannot allow it. If you've something that will help us, now's the time. Yes. Judging by the faithful, now is the time. By attacking the Inquisition, Corypheus has changed it. Changed you. Scout to the north. Be their guide. There is a place that waits for a force to hold it. There is a place where the Inquisition can build, grow. They arrive daily from every settlement in the region. Skyhold is becoming a pilgrimage. If word has reached these people, it will have reached the Elder One. We have the walls and numbers to put up a fight here, but this threat is far beyond the war we anticipated. But we now know what allowed you to stand against Corypheus. What drew him to you? He came for this, and now it's useless to him. So he wants me dead. That's it. The Anchor has power, but it's not why you're still standing here. Your decisions let us heal the sky. Your determination brought us out of Haven. You are the creature's rival because of what you did. And we know it. All of us. The Inquisition requires a leader, the one who has already been leading it.
you. Are you insane? They expect a savior, someone with divine power. They want you. Because they think I'm chosen. They believe you are chosen because of what you have done, what you have inspired in all of us. Without you, there would be no Inquisition. Where you lead us, what kind of leader you are, that is up to you. I will lead us against Corypheus, and I will be an ambassador. I'm a Canari standing for Thetis. The Inquisition is for all. Wherever you lead us. Have our people been told? They have, and soon the world. Commander, will they follow? Inquisition, will you follow? <laughs> So this is where it begins. It began in the courtyard. This is where we turned that promise into action. But what do we do? We know nothing about this Corypheus except that he wanted your mark. Corypheus wants to restore to Vinter. Is this a prelude to war with the Imperium? I get the feeling we're dealing with extremists, not the vanguard of a true invasion. Tivinter is not the Imperium of a thousand years ago. What Corypheus yearns to restore no longer exists. Though they would shed no tears if the South fell to chaos, I'm certain. Corypheus said he wanted to enter the Black City, but this would make him a god. He is willing to tear this world apart to reach the next. It won't matter if he's wrong. What if he's not wrong? if he finds some other way into the Fade. Then he gains the power he seeks, or unleashes catastrophe on us all. Could his dragon really be an archdemon? What would that mean? It would mean the beginning of another blight. We've seen no darkspawn other than Corypheus himself. Perhaps it's not an archdemon at all, but something different? Whatever it is, it's dangerous. Commanding such a creature gives Corypheus an advantage we can't ignore. If you can't find him, then find his followers. We can go after them. We do have one advantage. We know what Corypheus intends to do next. In that strange future you experienced, Empress Selene had been assassinated. Imagine the chaos her death would cause. With his army. An army he'll bolster with a massive force of demons, or so the future tells us. Corypheus could conquer the entire south of Thedas, god or no god. I'd feel better if we knew more about what we were dealing with. I know someone who can help with that. Uh, everyone acting all inspirational jogged my memory, so I, I sent a message to an old friend. He's crossed paths with Corypheus before and may know more about what he's doing. He, he can help. I don't have time for a meet and greet, Varric. You'll get a lot out of this, and it's... Probably overdue. Just come up to the battlements. Trust me, it's complicated. Well, then, uh, we stand ready to move on both of these concerns. On your order, Inquisitor. I know one thing. If Varric has brought who I think he has, Cassandra is going to kill him.
Inquisitor, meet Hawk, the champion of Kirkwall. Though, I don't use that title much anymore. Hawk, the Inquisitor. I figured you might have some friendly advice about Corypheus. You and I did fight him, after all. You've already dropped half a mountain on the bastard. I'm sure anything I can tell you pales in comparison. Oh, I don't know. You did save a city from a horde of rampaging Kunari. I don't see how that really applies. Or is there a horde of rampaging Kunari I don't know about? I am a horde of rampaging Kunari. So then, what can I tell you? Varric said that you fought Corypheus before. Fought and killed. The Grey Wardens were holding him. And he somehow used his connection to the Darkspawn to influence them. Corypheus got into their heads, messed with their minds, turned them against each other. If the Wardens have disappeared, they could have fallen under his control again. You're giving me maybes. I need proof. Then let's get you some. I've got a friend in the Wardens. He was investigating something unrelated for me. His name is Stroud. The last time we spoke, he was worried about corruption in the Warden ranks. Since then, nothing. Corypheus would certainly qualify as corruption in the ranks. Did your friend disappear with them? No. He told me he'd be hiding in an old smuggler's cave near Crestwood. If you didn't know about Corypheus, what were you doing with the Wardens? The Templars in Kirkwall were using a strange form of lyrium. It was red. I'd hoped the Wardens could tell me more about it. Corypheus had Templars with him at Haven. They look like they'd been exposed to the lyrium you describe. Hopefully my friend in the Wardens will know more. I'll take any lead I can get at the moment. Good. I'll do whatever I can to help. Corypheus is my responsibility. I thought I'd killed him before. This time, I'll make sure of it. Let me know if you have any other questions. Otherwise, I'll meet you at Crestwood. You said you thought you killed Corypheus? The Grey Wardens had him imprisoned. They used my father's blood in a ritual to seal Corypheus inside. But he could still reach out and influence the Warden's thoughts. He sent them after me. And I didn't just think I killed him. When the fight was done, he was dead on the ground. Maybe his tie to the Blight somehow brought him back. Or maybe it's old Tevinta magic. But he was dead. I swear it. I assume Varric's been feeding you information about the Inquisition? What did he say about me? Only good things, I promise. I was a little surprised, actually. Varric isn't one for religion in general, but he thinks highly of the Inquisition. I think the exact phrase was, has a good shot at fixing Blondie's mess. Where did you go after the mages rebelled? I heard the Chantry might be sending an exalted march to Kirkwall to put down the rebellion. I hoped that leaving would save lives and force the Divine to divide her forces to come after me. As it turned out, I needn't have bothered. All the circles started rising up, and the Exalted March never came. I'd like to know more about Anders. What was he like? I don't know if there ever was just Anders. He was crazy. By the end, there was nothing left in him except this insane need to start a war no one could win. I heard you had family and friends in Kirkwall. Where are they now? My brother's a Grey Warden. I had my friend Aveline take him as far from Orlais as possible. When all the Wardens started acting strangely, I had to keep my family safe. Isabella and I never believed in being tied down. When I had to go into hiding, she understood. We'll see each other again. Until then, she'll be having fun. And hopefully not too much fun. We'll talk later. Right. I've made some inquiries into the Imperial Court. The sooner we deal with the threats to the Empress, the better. The political situation in the Empire is dangerously unstable. It will complicate matters. Everything in the Empire complicates matters. It's the Orlesian national pastime. Turn your nose up at the grand game if you like, Commander. But we play for the highest stakes. And to the death. The court's disapproval can be as great a threat as the Venatori. We must be vigilant to avert disaster. Exactly what do you mean? How is it more dangerous than usual? 
The Empress is in the middle of a civil war. Her cousin, Grand Duke Gaspard, seeks to take her throne by force. Leliana reports that a group of elves has been sabotaging both armies, drawing out the hostilities. Orle holds Tevinter at bay. All of Thedas could be lost if the Empire falls to Corypheus. Selene is holding peace talks under the auspices of a grand masquerade. Every power in Orle will be there. It's the perfect place for an assassin to hide. We need to attend this ball. I'll arrange for an invitation at your discretion, Inquisitor. You knew where Hawk was all along! You're damned right I did. You conniving little shit! You kidnapped me! You interrogated me! What did you expect? Hey! Enough! You're taking his side? I said enough! We needed someone to lead this Inquisition. First, Liliana and I searched for the hero of Ferelden, but he had vanished. Then, we looked for Hawk, but he was gone too. We thought it all connected, but no. It was just you. You kept him from us. The Inquisition has a leader. Hawk would have been at the Conclave if anyone could have saved Most Holy. You can't change the past, Cassandra. So I must accept... what? That the Maker wanted all this to happen? That he... that he... Varric is a liar, Inquisitor. A snake. Even after the Conclave, when we needed Hawk most, Varric kept him secret. He's with us now. We're on the same side. We all know whose side you're on, Varric. It will never be the Inquisition's. Attacking him now won't help us, Cassandra. Ha! Exactly! And you better not be keeping anything else from us. Ah, I understand. I must not think of what could have been. We have so much at stake. Go, Varric. Just go. You know what I think? If Hawk had been at the temple, he'd be dead too. You people have done enough to him. I believed him. He spun his story for me and I swallowed it. If I'd just explained what was at stake, if I'd just made him understand... But I didn't, did I? I didn't explain why we needed Hawk. I'm such a fool. What if you hadn't believed him, and you tracked Hawk down? Honestly, Hawk might not even have agreed to become Inquisitor. He supported the Mage Rebellion, after all. He wouldn't have trusted me for a second. But this isn't about Hawk, or even Varric. Not truly. I should have been more careful. I should have been smarter. I don't deserve to be here. You're too hard on yourself, Cassandra. Not hard enough, I think. You can't believe that. <sighs> I want you to know. I have no regrets. Maybe if we'd found Hawk or the hero of Ferelden, the Maker wouldn't have needed to send you. But he did. You're not what I'd pictured. But if I've learned anything, it's that I know less than nothing. Cassandra's calm down. I think you could take your hand off your crossbow. Define calm down for me in terms of who or what she's punching right now? I wasn't trying to keep secrets. I told the Inquisition everything that seemed important at the time. I bet Cassandra regrets how things went back there. You should talk to her. I appreciate that you're trying to keep the peace, but things between me and the Seeker are as good as they'll get. I keep hoping none of this is real. Maybe it's all some bullshit from the Fade, and it'll just disappear. I know I need to do better. I'm sorry. As I explored the Fade, 
I felt the presence of an intriguing artifact in the hinterlands. If you are willing, I would like to locate it. I have marked its location as best I could determine. I need to know more about Corypheus. We spoke of this on our travels to Skyhold. What more can I tell you? Cassandra and Varric seem more familiar with their adversary. You've given me good counsel before. I could use some now. My apologies, Inquisitor. My poor manners shame you. I claim no secret wisdom, but I will guess as best I can. I would like to know more about the orb he carries. As I said, that must be the means by which he created the breach. I suspect the blast that destroyed the Conclave was more accident than anything. The result of unlocking power that had sought release for ages. What I cannot understand is how he managed to survive such an explosion. You said that you believe the orb is elven. I never would have believed that a Vinter Mage could unlock such a powerful relic. It clearly enhances his abilities. Giving him access to power he should never have known. Like the power to control the Archdemon. Indirectly, one assumes. Nothing in any law connects my people to the old god dragons who became Archdemons. What can you tell me about the source of Corypheus's power? According to the law, the ancient magistars of the Vinter received guidance from the old gods. Corypheus commands a false archdemon, a corrupted old god. This suggests he no longer sees himself as their minion. Some of his unique power comes from the corruption of the Blight. The rest may come from the orb he carries. What do you think Corypheus will do next? You shamed him when you destroyed Haven. Spoiled his glorious victory. It would be worse to acknowledge that you had done so. He must continue on his course or show weakness. He will return to his plans to throw Olay into chaos and then conquer it for Devinta. You're sure that's what he'll do? As certain as is possible. Assuming I can plausibly predict a man who seeks to rise to godhood. And can you? The key is understanding this no real god need prove himself. Anyone who tries is mad or lying. His deception will undo him, as it has done countless fools before. We'll talk later. Goodbye. Brilliant, isn't it? One moment you're trying to restore order in a world gone mad. That should be enough for anyone to handle, yes? Then, out of nowhere, an archdemon appears and kicks you in the head. What? You thought this would be easy? No, I was just hoping you wouldn't crush our village like an anthill. Sorry about that. Archdemons like to crush, you know. Can't be helped. Am I speaking too quickly for you? The attack was unexpected. We're all rattled. I'm not rattled. I'm the hero of this tale. Then why isn't Corypheus after you? Hmm, good point. Does that make me a lackey? That's dangerous work. I always assumed the Elder One behind the Venatori was a Magister. But this is something else completely. In Tevinter, they say the Chantry's tales of Magisters starting the Blight are just that. Tales. But here we are. One of those very Magisters. A Dark Spawn. Who does the Imperium say started the Blight? You know how it is. Not us. They say Dark Spawn were always there. Magisters and the Blight aren't even related. Is that a surprise? No one wants to admit they shit the bed. But if Corypheus is one of the Magisters who entered the Black City and he's Darkspawn, what other explanation is there? Clearly the Imperium has no idea. The Imperium is a land of lies built upon secrets, built upon falsehoods. I knew what I was taught couldn't be the whole truth. But I assumed there had to be a kernel of it, somewhere. But no, it was us all along. We destroyed the world. Last I checked, the Blights hadn't actually destroyed the world. Not for lack of trying. If they were more clever, they'd have unleashed something that would really do the job. <laughs> no one will thank me, whatever happens. No one will thank you, either. You know that, yes? That's not why I'm doing this. I knew there was something clever about you. All I know is this. Corypheus needs to be stopped. Men like him ruined my homeland. I won't stand by and let him ruin the world.
Oh, and congratulations on that whole leading the Inquisition thing, by the way. Greetings, Inquisitor. That is your title now, yes? I should thank you. The way things ended in Redcliffe, you could have demanded anything you wished. Yet you chose to make us equal partners. I was not expecting that. You rebelled for good reason. I'm pleased to hear you say that, Inquisitor. <laughs> I've been a Grey Warden, Grand Enchanter, leader of a rebellion, and now I am none of those things. Odd where fate takes you, as you're no doubt well aware. You were once a Grey Warden? Mine is an unusual circumstance, Inquisitor. Normally one is part of the Order until death. But long ago, I found myself stripped of what made me a warden. They tried to reinitiate me, but nothing worked. Nor could they figure out how it happened. So I was sent to the Circle of Magi, the first warden ever to be kicked out. <laughs> Quite the achievement. You sound happy about it. Becoming a warden seemed like a dream when I was first conscripted. Towards the end, however, my brothers and sisters they felt I had somehow cheated death. I was glad to leave. It also made me unique in the Circle. I had an opportunity to do more than I ever could as a Warden. You mean you began the Mage Rebellion? I pushed for our vote to free the Circles of Magi. But I cannot claim sole responsibility for what followed. Still, despite all the chaos, I would do it again. What happened had to happen. You're not still the Grand Enchanter, then? Any claim I had to the title ended along with the Circles of Magi, although some still call me by it. Perhaps the Circles will one day be resurrected. If so, another will take the position. Until that time, I lead my fellow mages by default. I will do what I can for them. You believe they'll recreate the Circle of Magi after all this? It depends on who the next Divine is. And what she offers. We can't go back to the way things were. But endless warfare benefits no one. That is why I agreed to Justinia's conclave. There must be another solution. I've been meaning to ask, how exactly did the Venatori take control in Redcliffe? Mages constantly found their way to us while we were there. Stragglers. Most of them strangers. I had no way of knowing some were actually to winter. They spread whispers, encouraged talk of an alliance, and we were desperate. I'm not proud of our choice, but we were certain Templars were coming. It could have ended far worse. I trust everything is well with the mages? We're mostly relieved. An alliance with the Inquisition offers security, although who knows for how long. I'll leave you to it. Before you go, Inquisitor, a question. In Redcliffe, after we left, did you perhaps speak with King Alistair? Considering who you are? He wasn't in the mood to talk. It's just that I knew his father, Marek, back when I was a warden. And what? You were hoping that would patch things up with him? No. It's too late for that. I only wanted to know if he was happy. His father had such hopes for him. Don't mind me, Inquisitor. The concerns of an old woman. Nothing more. I'm sorry. So am I. The names of those we lost. You must blame me. For this. We all saw who attacked us. We know exactly who to blame. I keep wondering if I could have done something different. When the first of my lookouts went missing, I pulled the rest back, awaiting more information. If they'd stayed in the field, they could have bought us more time. I was afraid to lose my agents. And instead, we lost Haven. You look out for your people. That's a good thing. Is it? My people know their duty. They know the risks. 
They understand that the Inquisition may call upon them to give their lives. Our people aren't tools to be used and discarded. Your instincts were right. Their lives matter. Can we afford such sentimentality? What if Corypheus... We are better than Corypheus. Inquisitor, I was just inspecting our new headquarters. Foundation cracks, nesting animals, and miles from any centers of civilization. The staff must make it presentable if we are to receive any visitors of distinction. The people coming know we just survived Corypheus and a dragon. And they must be confident we are able to do so again. The mages are showing great trust in you. They need to feel safe here. Do you not feel safe here? I've had... difficulty... forgetting Corypheus's attack on Haven. Do you know who first left to arms? Our workers. They were so proud of our cause. Corypheus simply cut them down. So much screaming after that first blast of fire. So many people turned to ash. Corypheus will pay when I face him again. I dearly hope that happens soon. Well, before I return to my duties, allow me to congratulate you on your appointment as Inquisitor, my lord. I will now bring diplomatic issues to your attention, and I'm more than happy to help with any situations that arise. I'm loath to part from such pleasant company. Would you care to walk the castle with me? Oh, well, a tour then? Let me fetch the steward. That isn't precisely what I was hoping for. Well, do let me know if you change your mind. Now I must find someone to prepare the guest quarters. Inquisitor? The Arcanist has arrived. You should see for yourself. Hello there. Advisor? Oh, you're him. The Inquisitor. I'm Dagna. Arcanist Dagna. It's an honor, your worship. Is that it? The hand anchor mark? It's pretty. The breach was pretty too. In a destroy everything sort of way. You're not quite what I was expecting. You're a Dwarven Arcanist? The only one? When you learn things everyone says you can't, you get to be the first. I don't need to tell you. I've looked at Herod's devices. The precision is fantastic, but typical. Mundane. Old thinking. This what now? No disrespect meant to the classical trades, but you need a new perspective. I've made adjustments. As long as I keep making them, you can craft just about anything. Almost safely. You seemed impressed by the anchor. What does it look like to you? I heard what everyone says what you heard Corypheus say. That's a long chain of who said what. To me, it says key. But keys do a lot of things. Open, lock, switch. Some open one thing, some open everything. It sounds like Corypheus made it to open. But it looks like you can use it to close. It may be that simple. It sure is pretty. Wish I could see through it. Where does a dwarf go to study magical theory? Get out. I asked myself that question for years. Turns out, not in Orzmar. I had to start at a circle. I had help, though. A great warden, and I am forever grateful. With that sanction, I visited a half dozen circles. The wonders I've seen. And with an objective eye, I can spot where they overlap. That's a surprise for every teacher. It's a grand tradition. And it works so well with new thinking. You mentioned a Grey Warden who helped you start your studies? Not any Grey Warden. THE Grey Warden. 
The hero of Ferelden is a hero in Orzammar, too. It's incredible that someone like the hero of Ferelden would stop to help the little people. Literally. <laughs> the Warden affected you in a special way. Talk to anyone, they'll say the same. It was a dark time. There was one light. He saved us. He saved me. You gave up so much. Left your home. Was it really that amazing? Yes. I left my home and my family, but I knew... I just knew I could be more than a smith. I wish my people weren't stuck in the past, and I regret that my father couldn't imagine another life for me. But I don't regret what I did. Your years of study have paid off. Oh, yes. The mage said I brought a valuable perspective. I've even presented my work to the College of Enchanters. I wanted an exchange. The surface could learn about lyrium smithing, and Ozamar would gain knowledge of magic. But now there's no college. And so far as the Shaper is concerned, I'm castless. So you're getting my best work, Inquisitor. Let's make some great stuff. All right, rein it in. You have work to do. Right, sorry. I get carried away when I think of it. Ready when you need me. Ah, Inquisitor, you have finally come into your own. The Maker has put you on a difficult path. I pray you walk it safely. I remember our talk out there before we found Skyhold. It wasn't just the Maker who put me on this path, was it? The Inquisitor could never have been Cassandra or Leliana, or me for that matter. We are too political too tied to the Chantry and all its failings. But I did not make you stand against Corypheus. I did not make you risk death to save the people of Haven. Only you could be the Inquisitor. I only pray the power of the Inquisition is enough. We're long past the time for prayers. We are never past the time for prayers, Inquisitor. The Maker has chosen you to deliver us from Corypheus. You have the faith and support of everyone here. Never forget that. Now, was there anything else? Can you tell me anything about Corypheus? I know nothing of the man personally, but the Chant of Light speaks of what he claims to be. No matter all their power, their triumphs, the mage lords of Tevinter were men and doomed to die. Then a voice whispered within their hearts Shall you surrender your power to time like the beasts of the fields? You are the lords of the earth. Go forth to claim the empty throne of heaven and be gods. That was one of the old gods speaking in their dreams? Yes, Dumat as I understand it. In secret, they worked magic upon magic. All their power and all their vanity they turned against the veil, until at last it gave way. That sounds like what happened with the Breach. Very similar, Inquisitor. Above them, a river of light. Before them, the throne of heaven waiting. Beneath their feet, the footprints of the Maker. And all around them echoed a vast silence. But when they took a single step toward the empty throne, a great voice cried out, shaking the very foundations of heaven and earth. Corypheus said he found only chaos and corruption. The Chant of Light says that it was beautiful until the Maker himself spoke. And so is the Golden City blackened with each step you take in my hall. Marvel at perfection, for it is fleeting. You have brought sin to heaven and doom upon all the world. Corypheus seemed so certain that he heard nothing. He described it as dead whispers. Bitterness, perhaps? He paid a high price for his crime. Violently were they cast down, for no mortal may walk bodily in the realm of dreams, bearing the mark of their crime. Walking bodily in the realm of dreams is exactly what Corypheus said he did. But the mark... Could it be related to the mark I bear? I cannot say. Perhaps Andraste saw clearly and we misinterpreted her words. It was always taught that the mark they bore was the shape of Darkspawn. Bodies so maimed and distorted that none should see them and know them for men. That is all I know of your adversary, Inquisitor. Some of the Chant of Light describes what we've seen and what Corypheus said. 
but not all of it. The chant of light is the work of mankind. We of all people must accept that mankind is fallible. Listeners may have misheard one of Andraste's songs. Just one word sung incorrectly could change everything. And how many verses were stricken or changed for foolish political reasons, like the canticle of Chartan. Still, I would trust these words over any spoken by Corythius. I hope they help you. Send men to scout the area. We need to know what's out there. Yes, sir. Commander, soldiers have been assigned temporary quarters. Very good. I'll need an update on the armory as well. Now! We set up as best we could at Haven, but could never prepare for an archdemon, or whatever it was. With some warning, we might have... We were all shaken by what happened. If Corythius strikes again, we may not be able to withdraw. And I wouldn't want to. We must be ready. Work on Skyhold is underway. Guard rotations established. We should have everything on course within the week. We will not run from here, Inquisitor. How many were lost? Most of our people made it to Skyhold. It could have been worse. Morale was low, but has improved greatly since you accepted the role of Inquisitor. Everyone has so much faith in my leadership. I hope I'm ready. You won't have to carry the Inquisition alone. Although it must feel like. We needed a leader, and you have proven yourself. There can be no mistakes this time. I understand. At least we know what we must face. I will do everything I can to ensure the security of our people. You have my word. This thing is not a stray puppy you can make into a pet. It has no business being here. Wouldn't you say the same of an apostate? Inquisitor, I wondered if Cole was perhaps a mage, given his unusual abilities. He can cause people to forget him, or even fail entirely to notice him. These are not the abilities of a mage. It seems that Cole is a spirit. It is a demon. If you prefer, although the truth is somewhat more complex. Cole warned us about Corypheus at Haven. He saved a lot of lives. And what will its help cost? How many lives will this demon later claim? In fact, his nature is not so easily defined. Speak plainly, Solas. What are we dealing with? Demons normally enter this world by possessing something. In their true form, they look bizarre, monstrous. But you claim Cole looks like a young man. Is it possession? No. He has possessed nothing and no one. And yet he appears human in all respects. Cole is unique, Inquisitor. More than that, he wishes to help. I suggest you allow him to do so. What do you mean by possession? Spirits and demons cross over from the Fade by attaching themselves to something in this world. But Cole has willfully manifested in human form without possessing anyone. The demons who came through the Breach or through the rifts, weren't possessing anything. These demons were drawn through against their will, driven mad by this world. But Cole predates the breach. From what we can tell, he has lived here for months, perhaps years. He looks like a young man. For all intents and purposes, he is a young man. It is remarkable. I should hear what Cole has to say for himself. Where is he now? If none of us remember him, he could be anywhere. Haven. So many soldiers fought to protect the pilgrims so they could escape. Choking fear. I can't think from the medicine, but the cuts rack me with every heartbeat. Hot, white, pain. Everything burns. I can't. I can't. I'm going to... 
I'm dying. I I'm... Dead. You're feeling their pain. It's louder this close, with so many of them. Would you like to go somewhere more comfortable? Yes, but here is where I can help. Every breath slower, like lying in a warm bath, sliding away. Smell of my daughter's hair when I kiss her goodnight. Gone. Cracked brown pain, dry, scraping, thirsty. Here. Thank you. It's all right. She won't remember me. You're using your powers as a spirit to help people. Yes. I used to think I was a ghost. I didn't know. I made mistakes, but I made friends, too. Then a Templar proved I wasn't real. I lost my friends. I lost everything. I learned how to be more like what I am. It made me different, but stronger. I can feel more. I can help. If you're willing, the Inquisition could use your help. Yes, helping. I help the hurt, the helpless. There's someone. Hurts, it hurts, it hurts. Someone make it stop hurting. Make her, please. The healers have done all they can. It will take him hours to die. Every moment will be agony. He wants mercy. Help. You say he won't die for hours yet, but you can't know that for certain. His body is failing. He could recover, or the healers could find another way to help him. How do you know? I don't, and neither do you. That's part of life. Try. I want to stay. What a fascinating life you lead, my dear. First you fall out of the Fade, then you're attacked by an archdemon. If you wanted more public attention, you could have just held a ball. We've just been attacked. Try to take that seriously. Oh, believe me, I do. You left yourself vulnerable to attack. It was a miscalculation, one that I'm sure you won't repeat. But the enemy struck a serious blow against you and the Inquisition. We must recognize that. You must. I'm not going to forgive what happened at Haven. Corypheus will answer for what he's done. You're angry? Good. Anger can save you when everything else is gone. Just make sure you put it to good use. Our enemy advances, Inquisitor. We must not sit idly by. Act first and teach them to fear us. You can become the leader the faithful require, but you must do it soon. So, Inquisitor. It's Inquisitor now, right? Remember that war we talked about stopping? Full of little baddies I can stick with little arrows. That's not a friggin' archdemon, is it? Draste, what did I step in? Maybe nobody saw this coming, but you knew how I got the job. I know what people said, but people believe all sorts of shite when they're scared. Swear at a farmer and you've cursed his crops. Spill the salt and you're dead by dawn. Dance through town in a goat's head and children, people never had, go missing. The ancient thing trying to kill us seems pretty real. Don't get me started. Oh, wait, too late, right? A magister who cracked the Black City. It's a hazy dream, right? I mean, if it's real, real, then the seat of the Maker? Real thing. A seat needs a book, so the Maker? Real thing. Fairy stories about the start and end of the world? Real things. It's too far, innit? I just want to plug the Skyhole rubbish so I can go play. You joined to help the little people caught up in this. But do you believe or not? In Andraste? Of course. But you doubt what you're seeing and hearing. It can't be true, true. 
Even fanatics don't want to be this right. Look, I have arrows. I can make this Corypholus believe in those. Good enough? Please be good enough. As long as you're reliable when we go magister hunting. Stay for whatever reason you like. Like don't have nuts to do with it. Not when we're tracking monsters that shouldn't be. What I want is to get everything back to business as usual. A nice simple system with simple problems. Helps me, helps people, helps you. In that order, for now. You're starting to not sound completely crazy. I know, scary, innit? So bring them on. But first, food. I'm starving. So, this is Skyhold. Come, let's walk the ramparts. I want to examine our fortifications. We'll be able to see Corypheus coming from miles away. He's not going to get the better of us again. We lost good soldiers that day, loyal men and women. Let him come. I swear I'll take the Twister Bastard down, even if I have to die to do it. You see this as a personal insult, don't you? If it's not personal for you, maybe it should be. The people flock to your banner, eager to fight for the Herald of Andraste. Their faith is a leash, and your Inquisition has taken hold of it. Tell me honestly, are you what they say you are? Andraste's chosen. I wish they'd understand that I'm really nobody. You're somebody. Don't you see what you are to them? Without you, they'd be consumed by despair. We all would. They need you to be Andraste's messenger. It gives them hope. The truth doesn't matter. Ah, uh, listen to me talk. Your time is valuable and I've wasted enough of it. Inquisitor, huh? Well, you've got the fortress for it. Speaking of which, when you've got a second, there's something I want to show you. What did you want me to come see? Here, come on. I'll show you. Why am I dressed like this? You'll see. Come on, it'll be worth your time, I promise. Evening, Iron Bull. My merc band just joined up. Tanner. I'm from Jader. Well, Mio Jader. Mira. I was gap captain for Lady Pendel. Signed on after shit blew up at the Conclave. Share a drink? Who's your friend? This is Grim. He doesn't talk much. They treating you all right out here? Seem worse. Hey, Grim. Do I know you from somewhere? So, you ready to kill some demons? Or Venatori? Or whatever that Corypheus asshole is? This isn't just about killing. We're helping the Inquisitor save the world and build the next empire. The Inquisitor isn't a god. He's just a man trying to do the right thing. Well, long as I get paid, I'm happy. That's why I signed up. I just couldn't spend my whole life on a farm. Needed to live a little, you know. What about you, Mira? Why'd you join up? I thought you were serving some noble. I saw what happened at Haven. The Inquisitor staring down that monster and his archdemon. I don't sing the chant of light as much as I should. But you can't see something like that and not believe. Well, Grim and I should find our tents. Thanks for the drink. I know every soldier under my command. You don't have that option. But a few faces might help. You made it sound like you didn't like the Inquisition. People don't always tell the truth when you're polite. You've got to poke them a bit. It was good to get their perspective. Yeah. Sounds like we could use an easy win for boys like Tanner. And vets like Mira have seen enough to be wary. You've got a good army coming along. Remember that. No matter what comes next. Good to see you safe, Inquisitor. We've got trouble ahead. I'm sure it's nothing the Inquisition can't handle. 
Careful, your worship. That optimism might be catching. <laughs> Are things that bad? Oh. Crestwood was the site of a flood ten years ago during the Blight. It's not the only rift in the area, but after it appeared, corpses started walking out of the lake. You'll have to fight through them to get to the cave where Sir Hawk's Grey Warden friend is hiding. Let's get to it then. Right, Your Worship. Good luck. Maybe someone in Crestwood can tell you how to get to the rift in the lake. Maker knows they'll want help. Good luck, and please be safe. Thank you for your aid, Inquisitor. What are you doing in Crestwood? A warden named Stroud is wanted for questioning. We heard he'd passed through here, but the villagers knew nothing. They have troubles enough. What have you been told about this rogue warden? Warden Commander Clarell ordered his capture. I can say no more than that. I hope Sir Stroud comes with us peacefully. I trained under him for a time. He's a good man, I'm sure of that. Will you stay to fight the undead here? My orders forbid it. Crestwood was only a detour. Is that all the aid we can offer these people? If the Inquisition can help, I beg you to do what you can. The villagers have already lost too many. Farewell. Farewell. Sir, are you sure we can't help the village? Our orders are clear. If we can't find Warden Stroud, we return to the commander with all haste. Still don't feel right. I know, but if I judge our orders rightly, harder decisions await. None of those wardens mentioned a new leader. I don't think they're part of Griffiths' plot to seize the order. I didn't want to say much in case they were, but I think you're right. I hope Hawk's warden friend has answers for us. Glad you made it. I just got here myself. My contact with the wardens should be at the back of the cave. A group of wardens were protecting a villager from corpses out near Crestwood. They were likely hunting my friend. I'm glad they didn't come looking for people to help in here. They might well be good men, but they've been given bad orders. It's just us. I brought the Inquisitor. My name is Stroud, and I'm at your service, Inquisitor. I need to know why the Wardens disappeared. Could it have something to do with Corypheus? Mm, I fear it is so. When my friend Hawk slew Corypheus, Weishaupt was happy to put the matter to rest. But an art demon can survive wounds that seem fatal, and I feared Corypheus might possess the same power. My investigation uncovered clues, but no proof. Then, not long after, every warden in Orlais began to hear the calling. I recall that being a bad thing, but I don't recall you telling me about all this. It was a Grey Warden matter. I was bound by an oath of secrecy. Is the calling some sort of Grey Warden ritual? The calling tells a warden that the Blight will soon claim him. It starts with dreams. Then come whispers in his head. The warden says his farewells, 
and goes to the deep roads to meet his death in combat. And every Grey Warden in Orlais is hearing that right now. They think they're dying. Yes. Likely because of Corypheus. If the Wardens fall, who will stand against the next Blight? It is our greatest fear. And then they do something desperate. Which is of course what Corypheus wants. Is the calling they're hearing real? Or is Corypheus mimicking it somehow? I know not. Even as a senior Warden, I had heard only the vaguest whispers of Corypheus. The Wardens believe that this calling is real, and they will act accordingly. That is all we know for certain. How can Corypheus make all these Wardens hear the calling? I cannot say. We know little about him save that he is dangerous. He is a Magister, as well as a Darkspawn, and speaks with the voice of the Blight. That lets him affect the minds of Wardens, since we are tied to the Blight ourselves. It must be how he created this false calling. You said all the Wardens are hearing the calling. Does that include you? And also you, Blackwall? Sadly, yes. It lurks like a wolf in the shadows around a campfire. The creature that makes this music has never known the love of the Maker, but... at times... I almost understand it. We must uncover what Corypheus has done and end it. This cannot stand. I do not fear the calling. And worrying about it only gives it power. Anything Corypheus does will only strengthen my resolve. So the Wardens are making some last, desperate attack on the Darkspawn. We are the only ones who can slay Archdemons. Without us, the next Blight will consume the world. Warden Commander Clarell spoke of a blood magic ritual to prevent future Blights before we all perished. When I protested the plan as madness, my own comrades turned on me. Grey Wardens are gathering here, in the Western Approach. It is an ancient Tevinter ritual tower. Meet me there, and we will find answers. Sir, welcome to the Western Approach. We've sighted Warden activity to the Southwest, but no one's been close enough to figure out what they're doing. Between the sandstorms and the vicious wildlife, we haven't made it far out here. One of my men got too close to a poison hot spring and gave me a slightly delirious report of a high dragon flying overhead. In short, this might just be the worst place in the entire world. Be careful out there. Well, it's good to know what I'm in for. Sorry, I don't have more for you. We intercepted a venatory messenger and, uh, persuaded him to give up the orders he was carrying. We have them here. This entire place. It just feels like something's not right. Be careful. I'm glad you made it, Inquisitor. I fear they've already started the ritual. Blood magic, I'd wager. You can smell it. Or see the corpses. You take point. I'll guard your backs. Wait! No! Warden Commander Clarell's orders were clear. This is wrong! Remember your oath. In war, victory. In peace, vigilance. In death. I'm sorry. Sacrifice! Oh. Oh. <laughs> Find it just like so. In 
Inquisitor. What an unexpected pleasure. Lord Livius Eremond of Virantium, at your service. You are no warden. But you are. The one Clarell let slip. And you found the Inquisitor and came to stop me. Shall we see how that goes? I've killed demons before. If I have to kill a few warden mages as well, so be it. You may have to kill a few, yes. Wardens, hands up! Hands down! Corypheus has taken their minds. They did this to themselves. You see, the calling had the wardens terrified. They looked everywhere for help. Even to Vinter. Yes, and since it was my master who put the calling into their little heads, we in the Venatori were prepared. I went to Clarel full of sympathy, and together we came up with a plan. Raise a demon army, march into the deep roads, and kill the old gods before they wake. Corypheus marching across Orlais with an army of demons. That was in the future I saw at Redcliffe. And now you know how it begins. Sadly for the Wardens, the binding ritual I taught their mages has a side effect. They're now my master's slaves. This was a test. Once the rest of the Wardens complete the ritual, the army will conquer Thedas. So Corypheus influenced the Wardens and made them do this ritual? <laughs> made them? No! Everything you see here, the blood sacrifices to bind the demons, the Wardens did it of their own free will. Fear is a very good motivator, and they were very afraid. That's a lie. The Grey Wardens are heroes. They would never do this willingly. The Grey Wardens care about nothing save stopping blights. They will do anything to accomplish that. You should have seen Clarell agonize over the decision. Burdens of command, I suppose. Why would the Wardens try to kill the old gods? A blight happens when Darkspawn find an old god and corrupt it into an archdemon. If someone fought through the deep roads and killed the old gods before they could be corrupted, woof, no more blights, ever. The Wardens sacrifice their lives and save the world. Although I fear history will remember them a little differently now. Why would Clarell risk using demons? Demons need no food, no rest, no healing. Once bound, they will never retreat, never question orders. They are the perfect army to fight through the deep roads. Or across all now they are bound to my master. Do you really want to see the world fall to the Blight? What do you get out of this? The Elder One commands the Blight. He is not commanded by it, like the mindless Darkspawn. The Blight is not unstoppable or uncontrollable. It is simply a tool. Somebody's certainly a tool. As for me, while the Elder One rules from the Golden City, we, the Venatori, will be his god-kings here in the world. That's all I needed to know. Oh, please. The Elder One showed me how to deal with you in the event you were foolish enough to interfere again. That mark you bear, the anchor that lets you pass safely through the veil, you stole that from my master. He's been forced to seek other ways to access the Fade. When I bring him your head, his gratitude will be...
So, that went well. You were correct. Through their ritual, the mages are slaves to Corypheus. And the Warden Warriors? Oh, of course. It's not real blood magic until someone gets sacrificed. The mages killed their fellow Wardens. Nothing can justify that. I don't care about justification. It's past time to take arms against the Wardens and stop this madness. The Wardens were wrong, Hawk. But they had their reasons. All blood mages do. Everyone has a story they tell themselves to justify bad decisions. And it never matters. In the end, you are always alone with your actions. I believe I know where the Wardens are, Your Worship. Eriman fled in that direction. There's an abandoned Warden fortress that way. Adamant. I want these Wardens. We cannot let Corypheus gain an army of demons. The Warden and I will scout out Adamant and confirm that the other Wardens are there. We'll meet you back at Skyhold. I tracked that Venatory mage back to Adamant Fortress. They're looking at assault options now in the War Room. Thanks for coming. You did well, Varric. The Inquisitor is just who we need. Darth, oh, it's, it's been great. Murderous Wardens, Archdemon attacks, plenty of blood mages and crazy Templars. Just like home. I know how much you hated leaving Kirkwall. This is the ass end of Thetis. You know they eat snails here? Still, I, I think I... Uh, I need to finish this out. If it weren't for me and Bartrand, none of this would have happened. So much for changing our lives. That's what happens when you try to change things. Things change. You can't always control how. I tracked the Wardens to Adamant Fortress, Inquisitor. Your specialists have my full report. Adamant Fortress has stood against the Darkspawn since the time of the Second Blight. Fortunately for us, that means it was built before the age of modern siege equipment. A good trebuchet will do major damage to those ancient walls. And thanks to our Lady Ambassador... Lady Cyril of Jader was pleased to lend the Inquisition her sabers. They've already delivered the trebuchets. That is the good news. And the bad news? Erimond called the ritual at the Western Approach a test. He may already be raising his army of demons in the fortress. The Inquisition forces can breach the gate. But if the Wardens already have their demons... I found records of Adamant's construction. There are choke points we can use to limit the field of battle. That's good. We may not be able to defeat them outright. But if we cut off reinforcements, we can carve you a path to Warden Commander Clorel. Taking this fortress is going to get a lot of good soldiers killed. Our soldiers know the risks, Inquisitor. And they know what they're fighting for. It'll be hard fought, no way around it. But we'll get that gate open. It's also possible that some Wardens may be sympathetic to our cause. The Warriors may be willing to listen to reason, though I doubt they will turn against Clorel directly. The Mages, however, are slaves to Corypheus. They will fight to the death. We've built the siege engines and readied our forces, Inquisitor. Give the word, and we march on Adamant. Inquisitor, is it true? Is the mark on your hand magic cast by Corypheus? Corypheus claimed it's a spell gone wrong. I wanted to think it was a blessing. A sign the Maker was returning to his creation. How credulous of me. The Anchor's nothing more special than a misfired spell. At least you had the good fortune to take it from Corypheus. Does it hurt? The Anchor, that is. It looks strange, but it hasn't done me harm. If it did come from Corypheus, that's a small mercy. What did you do before coming here? I had the great honor of serving Antiva's crown as ambassador to Orlais. I'm also first in line to become the head of House Montillier, though my siblings attend to our mercantile affairs. How strong are your past loyalties? I would never have given up my position if I did not intend to fully commit to the Inquisition. We cannot fall back on borders. Antiva is as threatened as any country by Corypheus. If anything, the alliances I forged there may help our current cause. 
What business are the Montelliers in, exactly? We began as merchants. My ancestors founded the first trade routes to Rivain. We once sent entire fleets across the Waking Sea. But not anymore? Ah, no. Uh, these days, our vessels are a touch more modest. Tell me, do you believe I was saved by Andraste at the Temple of Sacred Ashes? I should much like to believe so, Your Worship. The miracles Andraste performed were so long ago, they're difficult to picture. If it were truly her and the Fade who saved you, well, in any case, many already believe you walk in the Maker's Light. Let's speak later. Farewell. Corivius is back. Oh, shit. You said he was a Darkspawn, or a Magister. What is he really? I'm not sure. I don't think Corivius really knows either. He's definitely a Darkspawn, but when we found him, it was pretty obvious he hadn't heard that. He thinks he's a Magister, a priest of Dumat, in fact. He says he broke into the Golden City, like in the Chantry tale. If you and Hawk defeated him once, we can do it again. We didn't just think Corypheus was dead. He was dead. No pulse, no breath, full of stab wounds. There wasn't a lot of room for doubt. It makes me wonder. I thought the Wardens imprisoned Corypheus to use him. Maybe they did it because he can't be killed. How did you and Hawk even wind up in a Grey Warden prison for ancient Darkspawn? Corypheus sent people after Hawk. He actually got control of an entire Carter clan. Made them drink Darkspawn blood. Weird shit. We tracked the Carter to an old dwarven fort or something in the mountains. Of course, it turned out to be a trap. They needed Hawk's blood to open the locks holding Corypheus, and they drew us into the prison to get it. There has to be a way to defeat Corypheus. We'll find it, don't worry. I hope you're right. Baker's breath, what have I let loose? You had nothing to do with this, Varric. I was the one who led Hawk to Corypheus. If I hadn't tracked the Carta to that ruin. But you've got more important things to do than listen to me worry. Just let me know when you want something shot. We must stop the Wardens from carrying out this insane plan, Inquisitor. To seek out these old gods deliberately in some bizarre attempt to preempt the Blight. I wouldn't mind never having another Blight. Corypheus interfering is the real problem. The Blight is the real problem. And the Wardens are trying to end the Blight forever. Yes. Would it have worked? Do you know? Did they? The fools who first unleashed the Blight upon this world thought they were unlocking ultimate power. Forgive me. The entire idea is... unnerving. Anything interesting? A letter regarding Felix, Alexius' son. He went to the Magisterium, stood on the Senate floor and told them of you. A glowing testimonial, I'm informed. No news on the reaction, but everyone back home is talking. Felix always was as good as his word. Was? He's dead. The Blight caught up with him. Are you all right? He was ill, and thus on borrowed time anyhow. It doesn't mean you can't regret his death. I know. Felix used to sneak me treats from the kitchens when I was working late in his father's study. Don't get into trouble on my behalf, I tell him. I like trouble, he'd say. Tevinter could use more mages like him. Those who put the good of others above themselves. Were the two of you... Felix and I? What an odd question. No, I had no intention of abusing Alexius's hospitality by seducing his son. Not that I've been proper my whole life by any means. It wasn't like that. Even in illness, Felix was the best of us. With him around, you knew things could be better. You make it sound like he was a better person than you. What a mad thing to say. Few people are better than I. Very well, a better person, clearly, not nearly as handsome. Thankfully, Felix wasn't the only decent sort kicking around Thedas.
It seems Blackwall knows nothing about the disappearance of the Grey Wardens. It's a disappointment. I am, however, glad that he is with us. Even if he was not what I expected. He seems to be a good man, and his experience will be an asset to the Inquisition. <sighs> As for the other Wardens, I suppose we will have to keep looking. The Divine's death hit you hard. How have you been feeling? Oh, you are referring to my outburst in the Haven. I... I am much better now. Justinia was such a dear friend, and there were so many things going wrong. Sometimes it's best to talk these things out. I was with a hero of Ferelden when he defeated the Archdemon. With him by my side, anything was possible. But there is no happily ever after, not when life goes on. When the Divine requested my help, I went to her. I owed her that much. I sacrificed so much to do the Maker's work. But now, Justinia is dead. I was angry. I felt betrayed. But I shouldn't have let my emotions get the better of me. I'm sorry. Don't apologize. You're grieving and upset. I understand. Thank you. Now, enough of this. Let us think more pleasant thoughts. They called you the left hand of the Divine. That they did. What of it? What exactly does the left hand of the Divine do? A Divine always has enemies. And Justinia had more than most. I protected her. I watched, had an ear to every door. I identified threats, and I dealt with them. Why did Justinia have so many enemies? There were many who felt she was unfit to be Divine. She had a past, a worldly life. Unlike many, she wasn't given to the Chantry as a child. She chose it. And somehow that made her unworthy. And because they thought she was unworthy, they wished her harm. So, you were her spymaster too. I handled difficult situations that couldn't be resolved through more delicate means. What is the point of an Inquisition? Justinia would have started the Inquisition if the Divine Conclave failed to restore peace. She hoped that with enough support, we could challenge the very tenets of the Chantry. She wanted the Chantry to treat the mages fairly. But sometimes I wonder, why stop at mages? The Chantry has committed many injustices. If we're going to change it, why not change the whole thing? <sighs> it's just a thought. None of this will be possible if we fail. I'll try not to break anything. That's good to hear. I could use the left hand of the Divine at my side out there. Every agent out in the world is my eyes, my ears, my blade. Wherever my people are, I am also. Coming with you, leaving my post, would blind and bow me. Do you see? I'd like to hear about Justinia. What was she like? A friend. A mentor. Like me, she had secrets. Made mistakes. It made her human. I think her followers responded to that. How did you and Justinia meet? I met her a long time ago, before she became divine. Before she was Justinia. When I met her, she was Mother Dorothea. I was at my lowest. Broken. Lost. And she saved me. No, no, wait. <laughs> she hates it when I say that. I saved myself. She just showed me it was possible. Was there something more than friendship between you? You're asking if we were lovers? Typical. I was devoted to her, therefore it must be romantic. Love is common. Love is simple. My bond with Justinia was something greater. She was a sister, a mother, a teacher. So to answer your question, yes, it was more than friendship. We'll talk more later. We need to head to Adamant Fortress as soon as possible. If there's a chance we can stop Corypheus from destroying the Wardens, we can't let it slip away. What do you think we'll uncover in Adamant? Nothing good. Hearing the Wardens' plan was bad enough. Now we'll see it firsthand.
Best case, we find a nightmare. Worst, we'll find a nightmare, then die painfully. I still can't believe what they're doing. I thought I understood the order. How much do you know about Corypheus? Not much. I always thought the stories of Magisters corrupting the Golden City were just that. Stories. I didn't expect them to be true, and I certainly didn't expect to find one of them still alive. Don't the Grey Wardens know everything about Darkspawn? You don't have to know how a Darkspawn came to be in order to kill it with soldiers, not historians. And the world would be better off if people focused on defeating evil rather than explaining how it came to be. Corypheus stopped being human a long time ago. Darkspawn don't have human lifespans, do they? No, I suppose they don't. They're unnatural and sustained by... evil. It's been thousands of years. You'd think the Wardens would have managed to kill the first Darkspawn by now. Do you know if there are more Darkspawn like Corypheus? I don't know. I'm not sure any Warden knows. Roderick was sorry before he died. I wasn't aware you and Roderick were acquainted. He was hurt. Red inside from the Templar, but red outside from the Templar too. Needed help to walk. Limping, light, leaning on the young like old Pepe when the road was icy. He called me a fine young man. He said he was sorry for what he did to you. You didn't try to end his suffering, did you? No. He was dying already, and he welcomed it. The pain wasn't too much. He saw it at the end. Loving light, open arms. Andraste taking him home. He was happy. And sorry. Did he tell you why he was sorry? Blood everywhere. Monsters, madness, dying, we're all dying. The Herald stands against it, and heads turn. Desperate and simple, pure. Voices in the Chantry. Years since I'd sung the song and felt it flowing through me. But this is real. This is real. So long since I felt it. Falling, flying, faith. And I fought him. Make her forgive me. I hope I did enough. Impressive, is it not? Fit for a leader. Meant to show influence and the burden of it. It is where the Inquisition will sit in judgment. Where you will sit in judgment. Who will I be judging, exactly? Those who have done wrong. You will know of them, at the very least. All this presumes they have survived their initial encounter with you, of course. Still more lives in my hands. You are a beacon of law, Inquisitor, as others retreat from responsibility. But this needn't be bloody. The Inquisition's sovereignty is derived from the allies who validate it. You are both empowered and bound. Justice has many tools. If their application is clever, execution may even seem merciful by comparison. Is there anyone I should judge? Take the throne when you're ready. We will bring him before you. You recall Gerion Alexius of De Winter. Ferelden has given him to us as an acknowledgement of your aid. The formal charges are apostasy, attempted enslavement, and attempted assassination on your own life, no less. Tevinter has disowned and stripped him of his rank. You may judge the former magister as you see fit. I remember what would have happened to Thedas if his treachery had succeeded. I couldn't save my son. Do you think my fate matters to me? Will you offer nothing more in your defense? You've won nothing. The people you saved, the acclaim you've gathered. You'll lose it all in the storm to come. Render your judgment, Inquisitor. You served a monster, Alexius. There's nothing more to be said. You'll die now by my hand. Again. What do you mean? Again? Inquisitor! Did the spell work?
Pull back! They're through! All right, Inquisitor. You have your way in. Best make use of it. We'll keep the main host of demons occupied for as long as we can. Whatever it takes, Cullen. If we lose here, we lose everything. Understood, Inquisitor. Warden Stroud will guard your back. Hawk is with our soldiers on the battlements. He's assisting them until you arrive. There's too much resistance on the walls. Our men on the ladders can't get a foothold. If you can clear out the enemies on the battlements, we'll cover your advance. Stay back. We will not be sacrificed for some insane ritual. Trust you, Strap. You're a traitor to the wardens. Clarell called for your death. The Inquisition is here to stop Clarell, not to kill wardens. If you fall back, you won't be harmed. All right. My men will stay back. We want no part of this. Deal with Clarell as you must. Well said. I had hoped some of the wardens would listen to me. Our forces need a way up. Clear! Soldiers are dying by the other ladders, though. You can press on ahead, Your Worship. We'll clear a path for the rest of our forces. forces and see that they survive this. I'll keep the demons off them as best I can. Warden, we are betrayed by the very world we have sworn to protect. The Inquisition is inside, Clarell. We have no time to stand on ceremony. These men and women are giving their lives, Magister. That might mean little in Tavinta, but for the Wardens, it is a sacred duty. It has been many long years, my friend. Too many, Clarell. If my sword arm can no longer serve the Wardens, then my blood will have to do. It will. We must complete the ritual! Pharrell! You complete that ritual! You're doing exactly what Eremon wants! What? Fighting the Blight? Keeping the world safe from Darkspawn? Who wouldn't want that? And yes, the ritual requires blood sacrifice! Hate me for that if you must! But do not hate the Wardens for doing their duty! We make the sacrifices no one else will. Our warriors die proudly for a world that will never thank them. 
And then your Tevinti ally binds the mages to Corypheus! Corypheus? But he's dead. These people will say anything to shake your confidence, Corel. Bring it through! Please! I have seen more than my share of blood magic. It is never worth the cost. I trained half of you myself! Do not make me kill you to stop this madness! Be ready with the ritual, Clarell. This demon is truly worthy of your strength. Listen to me! I have no quarrel with the Wardens. I spared those I could. I don't want to kill you! But you're being used! And some of you know it, don't you? The mages who've done the ritual. They're not right. They were my friends, but now they're like puppets on a string. You cannot let fear sway your mind, Warden Chernoff. He's not afraid. You are. You're afraid that you ordered all these brave men and women to die for nothing. I honor your bravery, my brothers and sisters. But this is not the way. You have been tricked. Well, we have come so far. You're the only one who can do this. Perhaps we could test the truth of these charges to avoid more bloodshed. Or perhaps I should bring in a more reliable ally. My master thought you might come here, Inquisitor. He sent me this to welcome you.
You've destroyed the Grey Wardens! <laughs> you did that to yourself, you stupid bitch! All I did was dangle a little power before your eyes, and you couldn't wait to get your hands bloody. Serve the new god. I will never serve Blight. Afterlife, the Chantry owes me an apology. This looks nothing like the Maker's bosom. No. This is the Fade. The Inquisitor opened a rift. We came through. And survived. I never thought I would ever find myself here physically. Look. The Black City. Almost close enough to touch. This must be very exciting for you, Solus. Any advice you have on what exactly is going on would be wonderful. Cole, how does it feel to be back home? I, I, I can't be here. Not like this. Not like me. It's all right. We'll make it right. This place is wrong. I made myself forget when I made myself real. But I, I know it wasn't like this. It's not how I remember the Fade, either. Perhaps it's because we're here, physically, instead of just dreaming. The stories say you walked out of the Fade at Haven. Was it like this? I don't remember what it was like the last time I was here. Right now, I'm more concerned with getting out safely. That huge demon was right on the other side of that rift Eremond was using. And there could be others. In our world, the rift the demons came through was nearby, in the main hall. Can we escape the same way? Let's find out. There, let's go. This is fascinating. It is not the area I would have chosen, of course. But to physically walk within the Fade. <sighs> Concentrate on the task at hand, mage. There is nothing more dangerous than this place. Thank you for the warning. Solus, you're the expert on this place. Anything helpful? The Fade is shaped by intent and emotion. Remain focused, and it will lead you where you wish to go. 
The demon that controls this area is extremely powerful. Some variety of fear, I would guess. I suggest you remain wary of its manipulations and prepare for what is certain to be a fascinating experience. By the Maker. Could that be? I greet you, Warden. And you, Champion. Divine Justinia. Most holy. Cassandra. Cassandra, you knew the Divine. Is this really her? I... I don't know. It is said the souls of the dead pass through the fate and sometimes linger, but... We know the spirits lie. Be wary, Inquisitor. I fear the Divine is indeed dead. It is likely we face a spirit. Or a demon. You think my survival impossible? Yet, here you stand alive, in the Fade, yourselves. In truth, proving my existence either way would require time we do not have. Really? How hard is it to answer one question? I'm a human. And you are... I am here to help you. You do not remember what happened at the Temple of Sacred Ashes, Inquisitor. The real Divine would have no way of knowing that I'd been made Inquisitor. I know. Because I have examined memories like yours. Stolen by the demon that serves Corypheus. It is the nightmare you forget upon waking. It feeds off memories of fear and darkness, growing fat upon the terror. The false calling that terrify the Wardens into making such grave mistakes? It's work. I would gladly avenge the insult this nightmare dealt, my brethren. You will have your chance, brave Warden. This place of darkness is its lair. Corypheus seems to have a lot of demons at his disposal. How does he command so many? I know not how he commands his army of demons. His power may come from the Blight itself, but the Nightmare serves willingly, for Corypheus has brought much terror to this world. He was one of the Magisters who unleashed the first Blight upon the world, was he not? Every child's cry as the Archdemon circles. Every Dwarf's whimper in the deep roads. The Nightmare has fed well. How do we hurt it? That's a little optimistic, isn't it? You hurt it by escaping the Fade and leading your people against Corypheus. That wasn't what I meant. I know. But for now, it is the best answer I can give you. When you entered the Fade at Heaven, the demon took a part of you. Before you do anything else, you must recover it. These are your memories, Inquisitor. So, your mark did not come from Andraste. It came from the orb Corypheus used in his ritual. Corypheus intended to rip open the veil, use the anchor to enter the Fade, and throw open the doors of the Black City. Not for the old gods, but for himself. When you disrupted his plan, the orb bestowed the anchor upon you instead. 
That's it? Yes. That tells me nothing. Not about Corypheus or a weakness for the demon, or even a way out of here. All it tells me is that I should break his damned orb next time it starts glowing. Yet, even that information may one day help you. You cannot escape the lair of the Nightmare until you regain all that it took from you. You have recovered some of yourself, but now it knows you are here. You must make haste. I will prepare the way ahead. Something troubles you, Hawk. I wondered if you might be concerned about the Grey Wardens holding the Divine in that vision. Their actions led to her death. I assumed he had taken their minds, as you have seen him do before. Come, we can argue after we escape this dark place. Oh, I intend to. Could that truly have been the Most Holy? Or, if it is a spirit that identifies so strongly with Justinia, that it believes it is her, how can we say it is not? She seems interested in helping us. I'm less concerned with her than I am with the nightmare she mentioned. It's nothing like me. I make people forget to help them. It eats their fears. I, I don't know if I could do that, but I don't. I don't want to. That's not me. Peace, Cole. None of us mistake you for the nightmare. It is a fear demon, as I suspected, likely drawing on terrors related to the Blight. Fear is a very old, very strong feeling. It predates love, pride, compassion, every emotion. Save perhaps desire. Be wary. The Nightmare will do anything in its power to weaken our resolve. After what it did to my fellow Wardens, I pray we find some way to strike it down. Ah, we have a visitor. Some foolish little boy comes to steal the fear I kindly lifted from his shoulders. You should have thanked me and left your fear where it lay, forgotten. You think the pain will make you stronger? What fool filled your mind with such drivel? The only one who grows stronger from your fears is me. But you are a guest here, I hope. So by all means, let me return what you have forgotten. Your Inquisitor is a fraud, Cassandra. Yet more evidence, there is no Maker, that all your faith has been for naught. Die in the void, demon. Durth ma herelan. Ma banal in asali. Marsolas in amartin. Bonal nadas. Perhaps I should be afraid, facing the most powerful members of the Inquisition. <laughs> Are you afraid, Cole? I can help you forget. Just like you help other people. We're so very much alike, you and I. No. You must know what really happened at the Temple of Sacred Ashes. As must you. The answer lies in your memories. Lost to the nightmare when you last walked the fate. Or you could just tell me. Would you trust my words? Trust what you have seen. So all of this is just a dream? Part of the Fade? It is not just a dream. The minds of mankind are made real here. Their hopes, their loves, and their fears. What changes their world also changes this one. And yours are footsteps that move mountains in both. Tread carefully, Inquisitor. This ground is more treacherous than you know. What can you tell me about this mark on my hand? You already know how the mark came to be upon your hand. As for what it is, it is the needle that pulls the thread, as well as the key. I don't understand. It is the needle that passes through the veil, as little else can. You are the thread. And it is the key that locks or unlocks the door to the Fade. It lets you walk in the Fade physically and survive. Without it, Corypheus must find another way to the Black City. It is part of you now and cannot be removed without your death. I'd like to know more about the Nightmare. It is not simply fear. It is the terror you cannot remember, the horror your mind erases to protect you. 
when old memories no longer make the veteran soldier's hand tremble. It is because the nightmare has taken them. Most people avoid their fears. It is simple for the demon to steal the darkest fragments. They forget, and it feeds. Corypheus has helped it grow monstrous. It makes people forget the worst parts of their fears. It almost sounds like the nightmare is helping people. Perhaps it was, once. But now, it helps none but Corypheus. By his hand, it creates more fear and grows even stronger. In any case, robbing people of their fears is never a kindness. At best, it is a mistake born of compassion. Without fear and pain and failure, we cannot learn. We cannot grow, as you cannot grow until you recover all that was taken from you. So, can you tell me who... what you are? I told you. I am helping you. Yes, but are you her? Or some kind of fade remnant of her? Or a spirit imitating her? Our world is never that simple. What if the answer is none of those things? Or all of them? I am what the Maker made me. The question is, are you what the Maker made you, Inquisitor? If I was chosen, I just don't understand why. Why me? Why this? You are not the first to ask such questions. Did Andras do not question when the Maker charged her with an impossible task? Did she not feel unworthy? Her questions didn't lessen her heroism. So now I'm a hero? Not yet. Perhaps not ever. The choice will be yours. You still haven't answered my question. What are you? I am what you see. All other answers rest in you. Tell me why you're here. Why take part in this? After heaven, I hid here. I watched quietly, learned what I could, and searched for some way to help. And then you came. I don't know what that means. Corypheus and the Nightmare do an injustice to the world. You must stop them. Perhaps you were meant to stop them. Perhaps that is why I am here. We should keep moving. Reach back in Haven. That's how we... how I escaped. I thought it was Andraste sending me from the Fade. It was the Divine behind me. And then you... She died. Yes. So this creature is simply a spirit? You don't say. I am sorry if I disappoint you. instead of passing on. If that is the story you wish to tell, it is not a bad one. What we do know is that the mortal divine perished at the temple, thanks to the Grey Wardens. As I said, the Grey Wardens responsible for that crime were under the control of Corypheus. We can discuss this further once we return to Adamant. Assuming that the Wardens and their demon army didn't destroy the Inquisition while we were gone, 
How dare you judge us? You tore Kirkwall apart and started the Mage Rebellion. To protect innocent mages, not madmen drunk on blood magic. But you'd ignore that, because you can't imagine a world without the Wardens, even if that's what we need. Agreed. The Wardens may once have served a greater good, but they are far too dangerous now. The blood sings softly, it never stops, and then it's all they hear. We can't let them hurt more people. The Wardens are a risk. Send them away before they cause even more trouble. This debate can wait until we're out of danger. Inquisitor. The Nightmare has found us. Form up. I'm with you. Real or not, the Divine is the key to escaping from the Fade. Did you think you mattered, Hawk? Did you think anything you ever did mattered? You couldn't even save your city. How could you expect to strike down a god? Isabella is going to die, just like your family and everyone you ever cared about. Well, that's going to go tiresome so quickly. Warden Stroud. How must it feel to devote your whole life to the Wardens, only to watch them fall? Or worse, to know that you were responsible for their destruction? When the next Blight comes, will they curse your name? With the Maker's blessing, we will end this wretched beast. Do you think you can fight me? I am your every fear come to life. I am the veiled hand of Corypheus himself. The demon army you fear, I command it. They are bound all through me. Ah, so if we banish you, we banish the demons. Thank you. Every fear comes to life. <laughs> You will die in agony! For victory! Nothing.
a path! Go! I'll cover you. No, you were right. The Grey Wardens caused this. A Warden must... A Warden must help them rebuild. That's your job. Corypheus is mine. Stroud. Inquisitor. It has been an honor. For the Warden! Right. Without the Nightmare to control them, the mages are free, and Corypheus loses his demon army. Though as far as they're all concerned, the Inquisitor broke the spell with the blessing of Maker. They need something to believe in. I suppose escaping by the skin of your teeth isn't as good for morale. Inquisitor, the Archdemon flew off as soon as you disappeared. The Venatori Magister is unconscious but alive. Cullen thought you might wish to deal with him yourself. As for the Wardens, those who weren't corrupted helped us fight the demons. We stand ready to help make up for Clarell's tragic mistake. Where is Stroud? Warden Stroud died, striking a blow against the Servant of the Blight. We will honor his sacrifice, and remember how he exemplified the ideals of the Grey Wardens, even as Corypheus and his servants tried to destroy you all from within. Inquisitor, we have no one left of any significant rank. What do we do now? You stay and do whatever you can to help. Stroud died for the ideals of the Wardens. In war, victory. And we are still at war. Do you believe the Wardens can still help? I do, Your Worship. You're still vulnerable to Corypheus, and possibly his Venatori. But there are plenty of demons that need killing. After all that, you give them yet another chance? But they hurt people. While they do that, I'll inform the Wardens at Weishaupt what's happened. Best they not get caught off guard. Thank you, Your Worship. We will not fail you. Good luck with your Inquisition. Try not to start an exalted march on anything. And... Take care of Varric for me. Hawk send me one final report. He's on his way to Weishaupt. As for the Grey Wardens, they are fighting demons and Red Templars while staying clear of Venatori. Hugh dealt Corypheus a significant blow, Inquisitor. The Grey Wardens carry respect in other nations. If we spread the word that the Inquisition has their support... We may gain standing with nations that have suffered under the Blight. I will take the matter to Josephine. You took an army from Corypheus, but that will matter little if Orle falls into chaos. All arrangements have been made for the ball in Halam Shiral. Let us know when you are ready to proceed. Remind me what we know about the plot against Selene. The Venatori are planning some kind of attack on the Imperial Court. Corypheus may even be fueling the conflict between the Empress and her cousin, Grand Duke Gaspard. If we warn Selene, she may prove a most valuable ally against Corypheus. I'll go as soon as I am able. Good. Cullen, Josephine and I will discuss the best way to gain an audience with the Empress. Speak with us when you are ready. What was she like? Divine Justinia. I saw... Or the spirit that took her form. I read your report. I know it isn't clear, but... She seemed calm. Serene, even. And she guided us the whole way through. That does sound like her. She did ask me to tell you something, though. She said, I'm sorry. I failed you, too. Oh. 
I should finish this before it slips my mind. Perhaps later we might discuss the matter further. Thank you. Adamant's influence continues, your worship. I submit Lord Livius Erimond of Virantium, who remains loyal to Corypheus. We found him alive, offering extreme resistance, likely because the Order will ask for his head. In more colorful terms. To say nothing of justice you might personally require for what was suffered in the Fade. Countless better men and women than you are dead. Why shouldn't this be quick? I recognize none of this proceeding. You have no authority to judge me. On the contrary, many officials have communicated that they will defer to the Inquisitor on this matter. Because they fear, not just Corypheus, but Taventa, rightful ruler of every piece of ground you've trod in your pathetic life. I serve the living God. Bring down your blades and free me from the physical. Glory awaits me. Although willing, there is a group you have wronged more than any. Lord Livius Aramund of Verantium. The Wardens can have you. Let them take your head if they want it. Their petty justice or yours, it matters not. Truth lies in the next world. Writing does not come naturally to me, as I'm certain you can imagine. Trying to outdo Varric's next literary masterpiece? <laughs> I haven't his talent for blather. As if written by a dim-witted child. <sighs> Historians will one day ask what happened at Adamant Fortress, in the Fade. I was there. I saw it with my own eyes. It must be recorded. Fair enough. Just be careful what you write. Do not be concerned. I am a poor writer, but not unaware of the weight my words might carry. I still don't know what to say about the Spirit of the Divine. I saw her there, heard her voice, Yet I cannot claim with certainty it was really her. The Chantry teaches us that the souls of the dead pass through the Fade, so it could have been her. Yet even so... Do you really think it might have been her? A ghost? A ghost. A remnant of her hopes and memories. Her lingering will to do good. Those things are all possible. Nobody knows for certain what happens after we die. A spirit could have assumed her form, but why? It helped you, as Justinia herself would have. Perhaps it doesn't matter what she really was then. It matters to me, to what I must write. I must interpret what I saw, yet I am no priest, no philosopher. I am a warrior. I believe it was the Divine. She helped us one last time. I hope that's true. I want to believe it. When I realized we were physically in the Fade, I was terrified, almost beyond reason. The last time such a thing happened, we created Darkspawn. We created Corypheus. The world needs to know the truth this time. No more legends lost to the ages. I knew Stroud, you know, not well. He saved Hawk's little brother from the Blight. Not many people knew who he was, but the man was a hero when it mattered. He wasn't the first good man to fall to Corypheus. He won't be the last. This story's no good for heroes. We're taking down Corypheus before he takes any more lives. You know, sometimes when you say shit like that, I almost start to believe it. Oh, Hawk asked me to tell everyone back in Kirkwall where he's going. Baker's breath, Isabella's going to be furious. I'd better write some letters. Excuse me. You have remarkably little here on early Tevinter history. 
All these gifts to the Inquisition, and the best they can do is the Malefica Imperio, trite propaganda. But if you want 20 volumes on where the divine Galatea took a shit on Sunday, this is evidently the place to find it. I see. My library isn't up to your exacting standards. It's alarmingly chaotic. I found a copy of the Orobalian in what seemed to be the Antiban Classics section. How scandalous. Someone alert the Magisterium. You laugh, but in some places there are punishments for that. Did I see something by Genitivi here? I could have sworn. What is this about, Dorian? When everyone returned, they told us about your tumble into the Abyssal Rift. You went into the Fade. Physically went in. Are you... all right? I learned a surprising amount. What happened at the Temple of Sacred Ashes, for one. Regained your memories. That's good, then. I think so. You do realize this feat hasn't been performed in over a thousand years. Corypheus and his contemporaries entered the Fade and began the Blights. In comparison. You're right. I was fortunate. Indeed. Although there is cause for concern. If you can walk in the Fade, others will try to follow. Who knows what secrets Corypheus has revealed? Not all of them will be as lucky as you. What they could unleash. My advice? Keep this quiet. Let them speculate. Too many will see this as a challenge. You don't number among them? It's... tempting. But I am no fool. There are enough idiots in the world who think if they just use enough blood magic, their problems will vanish. It's exactly the sort of thing I want to stop back home. This... This I don't need. What I do need is a copy of the Liberalum. I'll wager I can find Corypheus's real name. If I can prove he was a grasping ankle bite with no family to speak of, the luster would come right off. Wish me luck. You walked physically through the Fade. Please tell me what you remember. I had... visions. Echoes of what happened to me the first time. The Divine was there, or something like her. Manifestations of your own mind, perhaps? Or external memories awakened by your presence? I suppose there's no way to tell. No one else has physically entered the Fade since the Magisters assaulted the Golden City. Oh, I'm positively envious right now. I wanted to ask you about the Circle of Magi. Of course. What do you wish to know? If the Circle disbanded, how can you still belong to it? The Circle is an idea, my dear. And an idea cannot be dissolved. Many of the first enchanters voted for rebellion, caring little that anything short of a unanimous decision would pit mage against mage. Rather than dissolving it, Grand Enchanter Fiona's vote split the Circle in two. The rebels follow her. The Loyalists follow me. If you lead all the Loyalists, why are you only First Enchanter and not Grand Enchanter? Grand Enchanters are elected, and since there are no First Enchanters besides myself, no vote can be held. I could name myself Grand Enchanter, but the title holds no meaning now. When the Circles are restored, that will change. What was it like to live in a Circle? My dear, your question is the root of all problems with mages. I cannot tell you. Every Circle was different. Their Templars were different, their politics unique. And every person within each tower had an experience of Circle life unique to themselves. Some people suffered and some were content. Some were cruel, some compassionate, and some indifferent. The same is true of people everywhere, in all circumstances, whether they are mages or not. So, tell me about your personal experience with the Circle. I enjoyed life in the Montsimard Circle my dear. It was an edifice devoted to knowledge and refinement. And mages need the company of other mages. No one else can truly understand the challenges we face, nor see the world as we do. You must have been under constant supervision being forced by Templars to live in the tower. Was that hard to endure? My dear, I have a suite in the palace and a wing at my dear Duke Bastien's estate. I've never been forced to live anywhere. Most circles allowed mages to live away from the tower, either on their own or in service to the nobility. 
All that was required was permission from the first enchanter. Some circles were harsher in their restrictions. Kirkwall was the worst, but it was the exception. Most were quite permissive, perhaps too permissive in retrospect. How did we come to this state with the circles in revolt? A failure of perspective that infected circle leadership. Mages lived solely in a world of Templars and mages. They could not even imagine what was beyond the tower walls. Kirkwall gave the world a reason to remember its fear of magic. A mage killed hundreds with a snap of their fingers. Across Thedas, a new tangible fear of magic grew. Commoners and nobles alike called out to the Chantry for protection. But the malcontents in the towers thought nothing of this. They cared only for themselves and for their anger at the new Templar restrictions. When a mage attempted to assassinate Divine Justinia, again, the mages protested the investigation. The leadership chose to vote on independence based on the intolerable conditions imposed by the Templars, sparing no thought to the fact that magic was more feared in the aftermath of these attacks than it had been since Tevinter's day. So long as they had their freedom, they could care little for riots, angry mobs, or about pitting mages against each other. Did they have cause to rebel? In the aftermath of their terrorist attacks? Was that really the most opportune time to break away? By all means, protest abuses by the Templars. Just don't do it in a way that says mages support wholesale murder. By voting when they did, my colleagues all but declared war upon the ordinary people of Thedas. A war in which we are outnumbered a hundred to one. I thought the fighting was only between mages and Templars. Why are mages fighting mages? The vote for independence was carried by only a small margin, but Fiona chose to let the motion stand. Those who opposed a rash declaration of war against the entire free world had little choice. By breaking from the Chantry when they did, the rebels declared themselves in support of mass murder. Anyone who did not wish to support terrorism and the slaughter of innocents was forced to take arms against the rebels. Inquisitor, I... I have been thinking. You remember everything now, yes? The explosion at Haven, the Fade, escaping the breach. In your report, you said Justinia was with you. But only you emerged in the end. Why? Why were you the only survivor? She knew it was either her or me. And she wanted me to live. Of course. Of course she did. That's just like her. Her message to me. I failed you too. I'm not sure I understand what that means. Did you say anything else? Anything at all? Please, if you remember. I'm sorry, Liliana. That was it. There are no answers in the fate. Only illusions. A warped mirror. Justinia has never failed me. I was her left hand. Now she's dead. I failed her. As leader of the Inquisition, you... There's something I must tell you. You're being especially serious today. I know. Lyrium grants Templars our abilities, but it controls us as well. Those cut off suffer. Some go mad, others die. We have secured a reliable source of Lyrium for the Templars here. But I no longer take it. You stopped? When I joined the Inquisition. It's been months now. Why are you doing this? After what happened in Kirkwall, I couldn't. I will not be bound to the Order or that life any longer. Whatever the suffering, I accept it. But I would not put the Inquisition at risk. I have asked Cassandra to... watch me. If my ability to lead is compromised, I will be relieved from duty. Are you in pain? I can endure it. Thank you for telling me. I respect what you're doing. Thank you, Inquisitor. 
The Inquisition's army must always take priority. Should anything happen, I will defer to Cassandra's judgment. No. But you like demons! I enjoy the company of spirits, yes, which is part of why I do not abuse them with bindings. It isn't abuse if I ask. Not always true. Also, I do not practice blood magic, which renders this entire conversation academic. He won't bind me. He's a mage and he likes demons, but he won't help. Why would you want Solus to bind you? So I'm safe. If Solus won't do the ritual to bind me, someone else could. Will. Like the Warden Mages. And then... I'm not me anymore. Walls around what I want. Blocking, bleeding, making me a monster. A mage using blood magic could conceivably do that to any one of us, human or demon. You should ask Solus to bind you too. And then someone can bind him. We'll find a way to keep you safe without binding you, Cole. I have a suggestion, if Cole is ready to listen. I recall stories of amulets used by Ravani seers to protect spirits they summon from rival mages. A spirit, wearing an amulet of the Unbound, was immune to blood magic and binding. It should protect Cole as well. The resources of the Inquisition could be used to find such a talisman. Good. They will not take me. Heard what went on in that Fade thing. What you think went on. Can't even start to believe that business. It's hard to describe. Guess you had to be there. No friggin' thanks. Some people are still there. Stroud, yeah? Lost a serious moustache there. And in trade, a busted down bunch of wardens. And they're always weird. Usually, bad stuff happens first, so you're glad when the hero shows up. But wardens are the wrong way round. They're the good thing that means a bad thing is about to happen. Like in Denerim, when the blight ended. A lot happened in Denerim. What did you see? People talked a lot about this one warden. There was a big fight and they died or... I don't know, maybe they didn't. The hero of Ferelden? You forget the hero of Ferelden? That was ages ago. Ten years. I was playing with small painted boxes and burying stuff I stole. I remember more people cringing about magic than blight. Wardens were an excuse for your stuff to go missing. Blackwall's nice, though. Different from the adamant ones. Need more like him. <coughs> Again. <coughs> Again. <coughs> oh, come on! This is why the Kuhn doesn't like women fighting. I should have asked Cullen. Perhaps you can take over. Hunari training exercise to master your fear. I heard about the nightmare at Adamant. Sounded big. Can you explain why I'm supposed to hit you with this stick? Probably, if I try. It'd involve a lot of Kunari words, though. Just hit me with the stick, all right? I need to get over this demon crap. All right. There we go. Oh, yeah. Damn demon. Who's stuck in the fade, huh? So we're working out your fear with a stick. Less talking, more hitting. Piece of fade, piece of crap. And who killed you? That's right. I on fucking ball. <sighs> oh, oh, I needed that. <sighs> Thanks, boss. <sighs> Any time. Someone I knew once described Adamant to me. Adamant is and always will be the Order. He said, a guardian on the edge of the abyss. 
the lone soul that stares into oblivion and doesn't waver. That's what Warden Commander Clorel tried to be. Well, they all tried to be. I'm told her wardens never wavered. They went to their deaths willingly. They died for us. And Corypheus twisted their sacrifice to make it his own. And that's why he has to die. You'll get no argument from me. There's no one to blame but Corypheus. Even Clorel's intentions were righteous. Her desire to protect was so great it led her astray. It's not right. To want to do good, to be good, and have that turned against you. Don't think of what went wrong. Think of their intentions, their sacrifice. Honor their selflessness. Clorel made mistakes, but she was a great woman. And she died a great woman. It's not the armor or the trappings of the Order. It's not the... joining. At the heart of it, all a Warden is, is a promise. To protect others, even at the cost of your own life. And what else did Lady Forsythia say? That she'd rather drown herself than help the Inquisition. Anything else? She said she'd have us flogged alive if we allied with her brother. That does sound like her. Cheer up, Josie. We at least have her attention. You always do find the brighter side of things. We are in the midst of cementing an alliance with Lady Forsythia of Nevara, your worship. It's become a somewhat delicate task. Should I post more guards outside your room? That should be unnecessary, Inquisitor. I dissuaded her from sending soldiers when she learned we'd struck an accord with a brother she's feuding with. Lady Forsythia simply employs a colorful manner of speech. Dealing with so many demanding, strong-willed people can't be easy. It's no less intense than my days at court, Inquisitor, I assure you. But I confess I do miss my staff from the Embassy in Antiva. It was always useful to discuss the day's visitors with them. I have time, if you'd like to review things with me. I wouldn't wish to impose. If it were imposing, I wouldn't have offered. Well, I admit, there are a few potential alliances it would be good to discuss. Right on the parlor floor. In front of everyone at the soiree. Who does such a thing in front of their guests? The Duke of Kellington, apparently. And then there's calls lurking. It frightens our guests half to death. Lord Genar still won't respond to our letters. And Sarah, can she not find a single overshirt with that mustard taint on it? Then there's Dorian. The man refuses to take anything seriously unless it suits its whim. Not to mention... Oh, oh goodness. Have we been here an hour already? It went by so quickly I didn't even notice. You're far too polite. I didn't intend to go on for so long. You must think me quite the gossip. Spending time with such an engaging woman is never unpleasant, Lady Montillier. Goodness. I'm... Well, I'm, I'm glad I haven't wasted your day. Well, I've taken up quite enough of your time already. Until next time, Your Worship. Something in particular you require? I see I've touched a nerve. I suppose I do need your help. We saw so many Red Templars at the assault on Haven. Perhaps all that was left of the Order. What we didn't see was Lord Seeker Lucius. Indeed, I've seen no hint of any Seekers amongst the Red Templars, or anywhere. I have a growing suspicion Corypheus has imprisoned them. Why imprisoned? He could just as easily have killed them. Not easily. But yes, they may be dead. But the Seekers began this war against the mages. They cannot have simply vanished. There must be a trail we can follow, yet so far I have only discovered hints. But they could have ended up just like the Red Templars. Seekers do not use Lyrium. 
I assume Corypheus gained control of the Templars by corrupting the lyrium they were already taking. To do the same to a seeker, you'd have to force the lyrium upon him. That may be what happened, but it couldn't have begun that way. We're missing a piece of the puzzle, Inquisitor. I need to find it. Finding them obviously means a lot to you. I don't expect you to understand. I cannot even claim that rescuing them would be beneficial. They wouldn't look kindly on the Inquisition. But even so, if there's a chance... If we can spare resources to follow up on these leads, Inquisitor, I would appreciate it. Inquisitor, I've found where the Red Templars come from. They're in full redoubt. The knights were fed Red Lyrium until they turned into monsters. Samson took over after their corruption was complete. How do you know Samson? He was a Templar in Kirkwall, until he was expelled from the Order. I knew he was an addict, but this... Red Lyrium is nothing like the Lyrium given by the Chantry. Its power comes with a terrible madness. Samson's armor was glowing with the stuff. They'll go mad soon enough. He seemed clear-eyed at Haven. Even so, a deluded commander is no less worrisome. The Red Templars still require Lyrium. If we find their source, we can weaken them and their leader. Where do we begin? Caravans of Red Lyrium are being smuggled along trade roads. Investigating them could lead to where it's being mined. If you confront them, be wary. Anything connected to Samson will be well guarded. I appreciate the warning, but you shouldn't have come yourself. What if the guild found out, or... what's his name? Are you worrying for me or for yourself? A little of column A, a little of column B. I am the expendable one, after all. Oh, <laughs> don't worry, I'll protect you. We'll just have to... Well, this is a surprise. You're the Inquisitor, right? Bianca Devery, at your service. Your name is Bianca? It's a common name. Half the girls in the Merchants Guild are named Bianca. The other half are named Helga. I lucked out. I take it you're a friend of Varix. Who isn't a friend of Varix? You have met him before, right? Why do you both look like cats that got into the cream? She's taken a huge risk coming here herself. Maybe for both of us. You're such a worrier. There's a giant hole in the sky. I think the Merchant's Guild has bigger things to think about. Bianca's got a lead on where Corypheus got his red lyrium. The site of Bartran's folly, the tag Varric found, has been leaked. There's a deep road's entrance crawling with strange humans carting out red lyrium by the handful. You can get there from Orlais? It's a long way to the free marches. The deep roads are all connected. Or they used to be. Collapses and such. Some of them on purpose. They really are roads. They spanned the Dwarven Empire, went to every corner of the continent, maybe further. In theory, you can get to any Taig using the Deep Roads, but in practice... Well, there's a reason nobody uses them anymore. Who could have given away the Taig's location? There were a few people who knew. Hirelings from the expedition, a couple of close friends. How they found out isn't important. What matters is we know where they are now. If it's such a secret, how do you know about it, Bianca? I told her. Right after the expedition, I wrote and told Bianca what we found. I had artifacts that needed buyers, and she had more contacts that would pay for them. Plus, I owed her. How do we know they're not using multiple entrances to get to the Taig? Navigating the deep roads isn't like the surface. There's no accurate maps of the whole system, and there are cave-ins, dark spawn, lava floods. If you find a route that gets where you're going, you don't deviate. Trying to find another way could be deadly. We need to deal with this. As long as he has this source, Corypheus is that much more powerful. I couldn't agree more. I'll keep an eye on their operation. If you're interested in shutting it down, you've got my help. Try not to leave me waiting too long, Varric. I've got my own work to do, you know. Right. That's not going to be trouble at all. Let me know when you want to head to the entrance.
Finally. Started to think you weren't coming. Nobody said you had to hang out in the creepy cave while you waited. Well, I did wait, so let's make this quick. These idiots are carrying the Red Lyria Mountain unprotected containers. We don't want to stick around long enough for her to start talking to us. Why would the containers need to be protected? Lyrium is incredibly dangerous in its raw form. It can poison or kill dwarves, and we're resistant to it. Sometimes it just explodes. No warning. Basically, only crazy people mine Lyrium. The mining cast doesn't just sling it into a bucket. It's carried in special containers that keep it under control. And that's normal Lyrium. The red stuff is worse. I wouldn't be surprised if most of their miners die just digging it up. You seem to know more about the effects of Red Lyrium than most. Varric told me plenty about what it did to him. And his brother. How did you find this operation in the first place? There must be hundreds of Deep Road's entrances. I've used this entrance in the past. Varric's not the only surface dwarf to explore the Deep Roads. Oh, I've got to admit, I was pretty surprised when I came here and found it full of humans. We better get to work. Sounds good to me. I built these doors. They probably shut this one from the other side when they heard the ruckus we were making. Ta-da! You've been here often enough to renovate the cave? You already know I've used this entrance in the past. I don't know if Eric's told you, but the Merchant's Guild is cutthroat. Literally. I built the doors to keep rivals from following me down here and arranging accidents. Admit it, you've been waiting to do that since we arrived. <laughs> of course I was. After you. This is almost fun. Kinda like old times. I don't recall us ever shooting people together. Remember crashing Bartram's guild dinner? We might as well have shot him. This isn't nearly as dangerous as pissing off my brother. There you are. You won't be able to use this entrance again. Bianca. That's exactly like your key. How did they get a copy? Well, funny story. When I got the location, I went and had a look for myself. And I found the Red Lyrium, and I... studied it. You know what it does to people. I was doing you a favor. You want to know how this stuff works just as much as I do. I just... wanted to figure it out. How did you go from studying Red Lyrium to giving the location to Corypheus? I found out that Red Lyrium... It has the Blight, Varric. Do you know what that means? What? The two deadly things combined to form something super awful? Lyrium is alive. Or something like it. Blight doesn't infect minerals, only animals. I couldn't get any further on my own, so I looked for a Grey Warden Mage. Blight and magical expertise in one, right? And I found this guy, Lorias. He seemed really interested in helping my research. So I gave him a key. Lorias? He was the Grey Warden we met in Corypheus's. Oh, shit. I knew something seemed off. I didn't realize until you said you found Red Lyrium at Haven. I came here and, well, then I went to you. That name means something to you, Varric? He was at the Grey Warden prison where we found Corypheus. And he definitely wasn't a mage before. You had to know we'd figure out what happened, Bianca. Why did you insist on coming with us? Varric told me what people were doing with the Red Lyrium. I had to help make this right. You told Varric you had a lead, so we'd straighten out your mistake. I know I screwed up, but we did fix it. It's as right as I can make it. This isn't one of your machines. 
You can't just replace a part and make everything right. No, but I can try, can't I? Or am I supposed to wallow in my mistakes forever, kicking myself, telling stories of what I should have done? Ha! As if I would tell stories about my own mistakes. Oh, for pity's sake. Would you two just get a room? Sorry, Inquisitor. We've done all we can here. Bianca, you'd better get home before someone misses you. Varric. Don't worry about it. Get him killed, and I'll feed you your own eyeballs, Inquisitor. I'm glad to have answers, but... Shit. The second she showed up here, I knew. I just... I let this mess happen. I gave her the tag. I am not good at dealing with shit like this. I don't think anyone is equipped any better than you are. No, no, the point is... I don't. I don't deal with things. If Cassandra hadn't dragged me here, I'd be in Kirkwall right now, pretending none of this was happening. Sounds like Cassandra did you a favor, then. Maybe she did. Thank you. For your help back there. After all this, do you think you'll see Bianca again? I always do. The smugglers we interrogated gave up the Red Templar's main source of Red Lyrium, Inquisitor. It's located in the Dales, near a town called Sarnia. Destroying the mine there will cripple Samson's operations. He's caused us enough grief. I'm happy to return the favor. Destroying the Red Templar's source of Lyrium will be a loss Samson won't soon forget. Inquisitor. Scout Harding. We're on the outskirts of Sarnia. This is what's left of the town. The lucky ones got out before the river froze over. The rest, penned in by Fade Rifts and Red Templars. We're the first friendly face they've seen in a long, long while. How did an entire river freeze so quickly? It got really cold, really quickly. Sarnia relies on its river for everything. Trade, food. They weren't expecting this. The Red Templars in the area will need to be destroyed. Knew we could count on you. The Red Templars have been mounting frequent attacks. They won in Plus du Lyon. Bad. Let's get out there and take it back from them. Samson, about spreading Red Lyrium. We should inform Cullen that we've taken care of Samson's Red Lyrium horde. You will be pleased. Our dear commander might crack a smile for once. I've been reading the letters found in the quarry. Samson is making Red Lyrium from people? Not anymore. Not in that mine. I knew Samson had fallen, but this, it's monstrous. We have to put an end to him. Look at these orders from the encampment. That armor must give Samson extraordinary power. We may not be able to stop him. That's what he wants us to think. But no one's invulnerable. Then we must destroy the armor. I couldn't say how. Templars are trained not to destroy expensive magical equipment. Perhaps Dagna has some ideas. She crafts the impossible every day. Dagna, what have you learned of Samson? He should be dead. I mean, you could make a hat out of Red Lyrium and kill people, especially the wearer. Samson's armor is genius. To do all this and not go insane, he must be resistant. 
Or he is insane. Or both. I'll admire Samson's armor when it's lying in pieces at my feet. Oh, fine. I just need time and tools. People. And red lyrium. For tests, you see? Is that wise? Everything is safe if handled properly. And you don't touch it long. Or breathe it. I mentioned the hat, right? No hat. Time and resources, Inquisitor. I'll get what you want. No shoe. Work to do. No red lyrium, no allies, and soon Samson will have no armor, I hope. You hope? Dagnus started work on her red lyrium samples, but she needs more details on the armor. We found orders in the mine. They mention Maddox, a name I did not expect to hear. Samson's letter said something about taking over as the vessel. Perhaps it's a rank among the Red Templars. It could be a title from ancient to winter. Or it's some other role Corypheus has planned for Samson, and Maddox is part of it. Did he serve with you and Samson in Kirkwall? Maddox was a mage in Kirkwall's circle. Samson smuggled letters between him and his sweetheart. Eventually, Samson was caught. That's why he was cast out of the Order. Maddox was made tranquil and became a skilled craftsman of magical items. Samson must have rescued him. I can't believe they made a man tranquil over a few love letters. The official charge was corrupting the moral integrity of a Templar. Knight Commander Meredith wielded the brand for far lesser offenses, believe me. Why would Maddox need saving? When the mages rebelled in Kirkwall, the worst battles took place at the gallows in the circle itself. I thought Maddox had died in the fighting, or was eking out a living on the streets. A hard fate for a tranquil in Kirkwall. Samson must have found him, taken him in. Perhaps there's something left of the man Samson used to be. Or he's shrewd enough to know an extraordinary resource. It seems Maddox built Samson's armor for him, and maintains it still. Tranquil and Kirkwall needed rare and expensive supplies for their enchantments. Supplies we can trace. I can have our men kick down some doors, Inquisitor. Samson's armor might lead us right to his stronghold. There is something I wish to discuss, Inquisitor. My Lord Inquisitor, it's good of you to speak with me. I have news regarding one of your companions, the De Winter. Nothing good, I expect. If you have reservations about his presence here, I share them. But this is another matter. I have been in contact with his family. House Pavas, out of Carinas. Are you familiar with them? He's mentioned his family. They don't appear to be on good terms. Yes. I believe you're correct. Sir Frami sent a letter describing the estrangement from their son and pleading for my aid. They've asked to arrange a meeting quietly without telling him. They fear it's the only way he'll come. Since you seem to be on good terms with the young man, I'd hoped... Just what kind of meeting do they have in mind? I believe they just want to talk, to understand why Dorian felt he had to come here. Somewhat private, away from Skyhold, but not in Tevinter. You make them nervous, I think. They don't understand why he's here with the Inquisition. They want him to come home. What happens if Dorian doesn't agree? Hopefully that will be the end of it. If not, well, that's why you should be there. They don't want Dorian to know? That seems odd. They believe the young man would refuse. And the letter implies he'd have cause. Yet, they are remorseful for whatever came before. This is a chance for dialogue. There is deceit in bringing the young man to this meeting. Without his foreknowledge, I know. But does it not lead to a greater kindness if there is potential for reconciliation? Are you sure this isn't some kind of trap? I mean, the secrecy. That did occur to me. What if it is a plot of those mages, the Venatori? Another reason to put this in your hands, Inquisitor. I pray that isn't the case. But if it is, you are far better equipped than I to respond to such treachery. Why would his family contact you? 
Because they don't know you, Inquisitor. I am not of the Imperial Chantry, but they know what I represent. These are parents concerned about the welfare of their son. How could I not do whatever possible? I would speak to the young man myself, but he does not care for me. Thus I come to you. If any good can come of this, we must try. If you think I'm going to trick Dorian into meeting his family... Ah, oh, I feared you might say that. The family will send our dinner to meet the young man at the Red Cliff Tavern, to take him onward. If he truly does not wish this reunion, he can always end the matter there. I pray you change your mind, Inquisitor. Perhaps their letter will persuade you. If there is any chance of success in this, it behooves us to act. So, I assume you're Talvashoth or something like. Why would you assume that? If you weren't, you would have split my skull open at our first meeting before I said a word. Centuries of warfare of the Kunari do lead to this state of affairs. If you've no problem with me, I've no problem with you. A philosophy I've learned to live by. No issue with my being Inquisitor, then? None that specifically involve you being so very, very large. No. Good. Dorian, there's a letter you need to see. A letter? Is it a naughty letter? A humorous proposal from some Antivan dowager? Not quite. It's from your father. From my father? I see. And what does Magister Hallward want, pray tell? A meeting. Show me this letter. I know my son. What my father knows of me would barely fill a thimble. This is so typical. I'm willing to bet this retainer is a henchman, hired to knock me on the head and drag me back to Tevinter. You think your father would actually do that? No. Although I wouldn't put it past him. Let's go. Let's meet this so-called family retainer. If it's a trap, we escape and kill everyone. You're good at that. If it's not, I send the man back to my father with a message that he can stick his alarm in his wit's end. There seems to be bad blood between you and your family. <laughs> Interesting turn of phrase. But you're correct. They don't care for my choices, nor I for theirs. Because you wouldn't get married? Because you left? That too. Let's go meet this retainer, then. I wonder how much my father paid this man to wait around just in case I showed. <sighs> we'll find out soon enough. May I be with you? Uh-oh. Nobody's here. This doesn't bode well. Dorian. Father. So the whole story about the family retainer was just, what, a smokescreen? Then you were told. I apologize for the deception, Inquisitor. I never intended for you to be involved. Of course not. Magister Parvis couldn't come to Skyhold and be seen with the dread Inquisitor. What would people think? What is this exactly, Father? Ambush? Kidnapping? A warm family reunion? This is how it has always been. I should leave you to work this out. Oh, no, you don't. I want a witness. I want someone to hear the truth. Dorian, there's no need to. I prefer the company of men. My father disapproves. I'll need you to explain that. Did I stutter? Men and the company thereof as in sex. Surely you've heard of it. This is not exactly news, Dorian. And why should it be? Why should anyone care? I have no idea. This display is uncalled for. No, it is called for. You called for it by luring me here. This is not what I wanted. I'm never what you wanted, Father. Or had you forgotten? That's a big concern in Tevinter, then? Only if you're trying to live up to an impossible standard. Every Tevinter family is intermarrying to distill the perfect mage, perfect body, perfect mind. The perfect leader. It means every perceived flaw, every aberration is deviant and shameful. It must be hidden.
So that's what all this is about? Who you sleep with? That's not all it's about. Dorian, please. If you'll only listen to me. Why? So you can spout more convenient lies? He taught me to hate blood magic. The resort of the weak mind. Those are his words. But what was the first thing you did when your precious heir refused to play pretend for the rest of his life? You tried to change me. I only wanted what was best for you. You wanted the best for you? Your fucking legacy. Anything for that. Don't leave it like this, Dorian. You'll never forgive yourself. Tell me why you came. If I knew, I would drive you to the Inquisition. You didn't. I joined the Inquisition because it's the right thing to do. Once, I had a father who would have known that. Once, I had a son who trusted me. A trust I betrayed. I only wanted to talk to him, to hear his voice again, to ask him to forgive me. He says we're alike. Too much pride. Once I would have been overjoyed to hear him say that. Now I'm not certain. I don't know if I can forgive him. He tried to change you. Out of desperation. I wouldn't put on a show, marry the girl, keep everything unsavory, private and locked away. Selfish, I suppose. Not to want to spend my entire life screaming on the inside. He was going to do a blood ritual. Alter my mind. Make me... Acceptable. I found out. I left. Can blood magic actually do that? Maybe. It could also have left me a drooling vegetable. It crushed me to think he found that absurd risk preferable to scandal. Part of me has always hoped he didn't really want to go through with it. If he had. I can't even imagine the person I would be now. I wouldn't like that door. Are you all right? No, not really. Thank you for bringing me out there. It wasn't what I expected, but... It's something. Maker knows what you must think of me now, after that whole display. I think you're very brave. Brave? It's not easy to abandon tradition and walk your own path. At any rate, time to drink myself into a stupor. It's been that sort of day. Join me sometime, if you've a mind. What have you found? We have him, Inquisitor. We found Samson's lair. My duties usually keep me here, but for Samson, I'll make an exception. I want the place razed to the ground, no matter the opposition. I will see it done, Inquisitor. We'll depart at your leave.
fellow Inquisitor. You know me. It's Maddox, Samson's Tranquil. Something's wrong. I'll send for the healers. That would be a waste, Knight Captain Cullen. I drank my entire supply of Blightcap essence. It won't be long now. How are you still familiar with us? Samson spoke of you. He has been troubled by your pursuit. I destroyed the camp with fire. We all agreed it was best. Our deaths ensured Samson had time to escape. You threw your lives away? For Samson? Why? Samson saved me even before he needed me. He gave me purpose again. I... wanted to help. We should check the camp. Maddox may have missed something. A dismal place to die. It can't have been much of a place to live either under Samson's command. What else do you remember about Samson? The man he used to be. Does it matter? He used to be kind, only carries so far. Yet Maddox died to help him escape. Samson does command loyalty. Is there anything in the camp that could help? Or point us to Samson? It's hard to tell. All I see is smoke and ash. This is Samson's idea of remaking the world. I prefer yours. We can't leave Maddox here. He should be properly laid to rest. I'll have someone take care of it. If even Samson did his best for Maddox, we can do no less. I'll keep looking around. Lyrian bottles licked clean. Drinking it, wearing it, growing it. You can't say Samson isn't committed. How much red lyrium is Samson taking? His resistance must be extraordinary. Samson left a message for me. What does it say? Drink enough lyrium and its song reveals the truth. The Chantry used does, you're fighting the wrong battle. Corypheus chose me as his general and his vessel of power. Now there's such nonsense. <laughs> as if I would sympathize. This must have been Maddox's room. The fire couldn't destroy the entire thing, whatever they are. I've seen similar implements for forging with Lyrian. None of this advice. Tranquil often design their own tools. Dagnus should be able to make sense of them. If Maddox used these to make Samson's armor, she could use them to unmake it. We have him. The Red Lyrium deposits are being destroyed, and we've cut the Red Templars down to the core. It's a pity Maddox thought his sacrifice was the only answer. But that leaves Samson with a severely curtailed army, and enchanted army he can't maintain. You did it. I'll celebrate when I see Samson brought to justice. We're getting recruits by the hour. There's more than a few ex-Templars among them. We've struck a blow and given people hope. This is a true victory. Inquisitor, I finished it. Are you talking? Sorry. Have it anyhow. <laughs> you mean this rune? It's not just any rune. I made it with red lyrium and what's left of poor Maddox's tools. The rune acts on the median fissures of lyrium to... <laughs> It'll destroy Samson's armor. He'll be powerless. We should render our enemies powerless at a stroke more often. Maddox covered Samson's tracks thoroughly. But wherever Samson's retreated, we'll find him. Your army stands ready, Inquisitor. For Samson, for Corypheus, for whatever you command. I understand the Inquisition has tracked down the missing seekers. Care Oswin. I didn't see Ban Loren as the sort of nobleman that would become involved in this war. The sooner we go there, the sooner I can put this search behind me. Can you tell me more about the seekers? The Seekers of Truth were born from the original Inquisition long ago, when it united with the Chantry. Seekers stood above the Templars, watching over them but also investigating magical events they couldn't handle. We were meant to be incorruptible, above reproach. How seldom does reality match the ideal? But what are Seekers, exactly? Those who know anything of us think we are Templars. We do not use Lyrian, however. Our abilities are different, as was our original purpose. 
We discipline the Templars and were accountable only to the Divine. And not even her, truthfully. So nobody ever watched over the Seekers? It was the Divine's duty. But she could only do so much when the truth was hidden from her. The Templars have always feared us. When a Seeker arrived at a circle, they knew trouble was afoot. That kind of power is troubling. You begin to think you are the only one who can solve the world's problems. If you don't see a problem, it doesn't exist. If someone insists it does, they are the blind ones. Do you think that kind of problem could ever be fixed? Possibly. Though the Seekers themselves would need to change. They were clearly not willing to, even though they abandoned everything they stood for to avoid it. In my heart, I believe they can still be salvaged, but not by their own hands. How does someone become a Seeker? Most Seekers begin training in their youth. I was much older, an exception due to my noble birth. We train rigorously for years. Our bodies and minds must be elastic to undergo the vigil, and most fail even then. Is the Vigil some kind of initiation? It is the rite every Seeker must go through in order to summon their gifts. A full year of fasting, prayer, and separation from all distractions, including other people. We empty ourselves of all emotion, focusing only on the purity of our devotion. And the moment it finally ends, it's wonderful. Faith realized. I cannot put it into words. Was it some kind of magic? I don't fully understand it, to be honest. If the vigil was not so arduous, I'd say more should attempt it. What if mages never needed to fear possession by demons? I'm told it is impossible, however. I suppose I'll never know the truth of it now. Why did your order turn against the Chantry? We originally united with the Chantry through a treaty that stated they would keep mages under control. It was felt Most Holy had tacitly allowed the Circle of Magi to vote on its independence, thus breaking the treaty. The Seekers saw themselves as justified, and they led the Templars into a war of righteousness. You sound like you disagree. We knew what was happening at Kirkwall, where the Mage Rebellion began. We looked into reports of Knight Commander Meredith's harsh treatment of her charges years earlier. But we found so many shocking cases of magical corruption, it was decided her actions were justified. If we'd been there when it happened, if we'd looked harder at the root causes... You seem to care a great deal about it. Too much, if you ask the rest of my order. When faced with a problem, the Seekers would close ranks and crush it. We would find an answer, but only once we felt we weren't being coerced. The moment the mages voted for independence, our response was predictable. It was difficult to watch. I've no more questions. Care Oswin, odd that the trail should lead us here. Ban Loren is a pious, unassuming man. What has he become involved in? Might simply be a victim as well. Let's see what lies within. Fiery Promise is a cult with strange beliefs about the Seekers. They've hounded us for centuries. What kind of strange beliefs? They believe they are Seekers, the only rightful ones. They say we robbed their powers long ago, preventing them from ending the world. Ending the world? The only way to truly eradicate evil in their eyes, the world will be reborn a paradise. It's all nonsense. Why haven't the Seekers dealt with them? We have, many times. 
They simply reappear after a time like weeds. Nobody knows how. Cultists. Why am I not surprised? This explains why the Seekers might be here, but not the connection to Corypheus. As the Seekers of Truth have proven resistant to the effects of Red Lyrium, the Elder One has seen fit to place them in your care. Reclaim your destiny, and know that the Elder One expects your devotion as repayment. Signed by Lord Samson, Commander of the Red Templars. Does Corypheus not realize the promises want the world to end? What use are they to him? Sounds like they're perfect for each other. I suppose it does. But this doesn't explain how he captured the Seekers in the first place, or what's been done with them. We must keep looking. The letter said Seekers were resistant to Red Lyrium. Our abilities grant us many gifts, but the resistance to Red Lyrium's corruption? That seems strange. Although it would explain why none have numbered among the Red Templars. And thus Seekers would be useless to Corypheus. He would have no leash to hold us. We'll find them, Cassandra. I know we will, one way or another. Daniel! Daniel! Can you hear me? Cassandra... It... is you. You're alive. As are you. I'm so glad I found you. No. They put a, a demon inside me. It's tearing me up. What? You can't be possessed. That's impossible. I'm not possessed. They fed me things. I can feel it growing. What could they hope to gain from this? Our powers. Revenge? Who knows? The Lord Seeker. You have to find him. Of course we'll find him. If he lives, we'll... Lucius betrayed us, Cassandra. He sent us here, one by one. An important mission, he said. Lies! He was here with them all along. He's still working with them. But we met Lord Seeker Lucius in Val Royo. He couldn't have been here. That wasn't him. It was a demon masquerading. What? How could that be? The Lord Seeker allowed it. He let the demon take command while he... Came here. Cassandra. Now is not the time for sympathy. Wait. Don't leave me like this, please. You should have come with me. You didn't believe in the war any more than I did. You know me. I wanted that promotion. <coughs> Go to the Maker's side, Daniel. You will be welcome. He was my apprentice. I have never known a finer young man. Now we find Lord Seeker Lucius. Lord Seeker Lucius. Cassandra, 
with a man I can only assume is the new Inquisitor. You must be very proud of your handiwork. I presume you know we Seekers of Truth were once the original Inquisition. Oh yes. We fought to restore order in a time of madness long ago, as you do now. And we became proud. We sought to remake the world, to make it better. But what did we create? The Chantry, the Circles of Magi. A war that will see no end. And aiding Corypheus is supposed to help? Corypheus is a monster with limited ambition. And your ambition is so much greater. We Seekers are abominations, Cassandra. We created a decaying world and fought to preserve it even as it crumbled. We had to be stopped. You don't believe me? See for yourself. The secrets of our order passed to me after the former Lord Seeker was slain. The war with the mages had already begun, but it was not too late for me to do the right thing. And this was the right thing? Lord Seeker, what you've done... I know. What Corypheus did with the Templars does not matter. I have seen the future. I have created a new order to replace the old. The world will end so we can start anew. A pure beginning. Join us, Cassandra. It is the Maker's will. He was insane. He had to be. The influence of Corypheus, perhaps? Was he trying to disable the Seekers? If so, the plan worked perfectly. He could not have destroyed all of us. I won't accept it. Let us return to Skyhold. I wish to see what's in this Book of Secrets. This tome has passed from Lord Seeker to Lord Seeker since the time of the Old Inquisition. And now it falls to me. That's a lot of not very exciting reading, apparently. Do you know what the Rite of Tranquility is? The last resort used on mages in the Circle, leaving them unable to cast but depriving them of dreams and all emotion. It should only be used on those who cannot control their abilities, but that has not always been the case. Does the book say it was used for other things? No. As a seeker, I looked into... abuses. Mages made tranquil as punishment. What finally began the Mage Rebellion was the discovery the right of tranquility could be reversed. The Lord Seeker at the time covered it up. Harshly. There were deaths. It was dangerous knowledge. The shock of its discovery in addition to what happened in Kirkwall. But it appears we've always known how to reverse the right. From the beginning. So the Seekers are responsible for the rebellion, in more ways than one. One more crime to add to the pile. Yes. We created the right of tranquility. I told you of my vigil. The month I spent emptying myself of all emotion, I was made tranquil and didn't even know. Then the vigil summoned the spirit of faith to touch my mind. That broke tranquility and gave me my abilities. The Seekers did not share that secret. Not with me, not with the Chantry, not even with... There's more. Lucius was not wrong about the Order. I thought to rebuild the Seekers once victory was ours. Now I'm not certain it deserves to be rebuilt. If you did rebuild the Seekers, how would you do it? 
I can't be the only one remaining. We will always spread to the winds, and some may still be out there. I would find them one by one. We would all read this book, no more secrets. Then together we would establish a new charter. The Maker's work in truth. You keep saying that, but what is the Maker's work? There is no way to know for certain. That is why we must seek it out. Perhaps we lost our way because we stopped looking. I don't think I've ever seen you so shaken. No. It seems as if everything I believe is under siege. You know what I mean. I do not think the Seekers have been doing the Maker's work. Not truly. Perhaps we believed it once. The original Inquisition came to be during a terrible time. But now... We harbored secrets and let them fester. We acted to survive, but not to serve. That is not the Maker's work. You said there was more in the book. At some point, power becomes its own master. We cast aside ideals in favor of expedience and tell ourselves it was all necessary for the people. Will that happen to us, Inquisitor? Will we repeat history? No, we're nothing like the Seekers. I wonder how much we resemble what they used to be. That's not for me to decide, Cassandra. Inquisitor, I know we have not always seen eye to eye on matters. You don't say. Thank you. I could not have done this on my own. Inquisitor, I must speak with you. What is it? I must explain something first about the Montilier's fortunes. I remember you said your family had been forbidden from trading in Orlais. It's devastated our finances. The Montiliers have, in fact, been in debt for over a hundred years. I had no idea your family's situation was so precarious. Hardly anyone outside the family does. For generations, we've done everything to keep creditors at bay. Sold our lands to stave off interest. It's just... It is infuriating to see my family still reduced to this. I'm to become head of our house. If I sell any more of our land, my family will become destitute. That cannot be my legacy to them. Most people worry about their next meal. Never mind an estate. I'm not blind. But I worry for my family. My foolish sister Yvette with her daydreams. My brothers trying to rebuild our fleet with their own hands. Is it wrong to hope they never know hardship? Is there anything I can do? I'd almost solved our problems. For a while. I negotiated a chance to reinstate the Montiliers as landed traders in Orlais. We could rebuild with that. But when I dispatched paperwork to Val Royau, I've just learned my carriers were murdered, and the documents restoring my family's trading status destroyed. Who hates the Montiliers enough to do that? Leliana made inquiries that bore success. Count Boiver, a nobleman in Val Royau, claims to know who killed my messengers. He has a request, that you come when I meet him, so he's seen publicly conferring with you. What will being seen with me gain the Comte? The Count will drop hints at parties he's to meet with an important visitor. Allies and rivals will take note. Once he's met you, there will be speculation. The Count will subtly spin reports to his advantage. He will use us. But if he knows who killed my people, I ask that we indulge him. If that's what it takes to get to the bottom of this, I'll meet this Comte with you. Thank you, Inquisitor. It means... you are too kind. I must know who killed my couriers just to harm my family. Welcome, my friend. Thank you for seeing us, Comte Bauvert. The honor is mine. Please, sit. It's an honor to assist two such distinguished guests. 
We appreciate your help, Comte. The death of Lady Montilly's servants must weigh heavily on you. Have you heard of the House of Repose? The Assassin's League? My contacts obtained a copy of a document in the archive. Contract for life. The House of Repose is hereby sworn to eliminate anyone attempting to overturn the Montelier's trading exile in Orlais. They're not just after your messengers, Josephine. They'll try for you, too. I... I am afraid so, yes. The contract was signed by a noble family. The Du Parquets. But the Du Parquets died out as a noble line over 60 years ago. Indeed. But the contract was signed 109 years ago. How can a family try to kill you after they died out? The Du Parquets were our rivals. They drove the Montelliers from Val Royale. This contract was drawn up over a hundred years ago, but it wasn't invoked until I tried to overturn my family's exile. Unpleasant though it may be, the House of Repose is merely fulfilling its contractual duties. If the people who wanted your family dead are gone, why are the assassins still after you? A contract is a contract, Inquisitor. Our legion businesses live and die by their reputations. The entire guild's welfare would be endangered if an agreement was tossed aside on a whim of time or fate. She's quite right, Your Worship. The House of Repose is doing what it feels necessary. By its standards. I assume you have a thought or two on this, Josephine? The Du Parquets still have descendants under the common branch. If we elevate them to nobility, a Du Parquet could annul the contract on my life. Uh, that will take time, Lady Montigny. Time during which the House of Repose will be obliged to haunt you. Will they now? You are exceedingly well informed. You're not to have said you'd heard rumors at best. A bit of subterfuge. This contract on your life is an ugly business. One the House of Repose deeply regrets. But this is Orlé. Even an assassin's world is his bond. Does Comte Boisvert actually exist? Absolutely. The Comte's offer to reveal the killers of Lady Montilly's messengers was genuine. So was his information somehow. A nun to be tied up later. I'm guessing the actual Comte Boisvert met with a fatal accident. Comte Boisvert slumbers in a nearby closet. Nothing more. The contract on Lady Montilly's life is so unusual, we felt the courtesy of an explanation was in order. It is appreciated, monsieur. Your idea to seek out the Paraquet to revoke our orders is uh, an interesting one. I wish you luck. I did not come to shed blood today, Inquisitor. Only to speak. Might I pass? Why warn us about your contract and let us go? In Orlais, it is only decent to inform those involved in a contract when extraordinary circumstances conspire. And the Guild's reputation would suffer if you ignored the contract. I quite understand. Thank you, my lady. May we conclude with my departure? Go, then. Good day, your worship. My lady, I pray we'd never meet again. Well, I didn't think our meeting would end like this. We'll deal with these assassins. I have some thoughts. Let's discuss them back at Skyhold. I'll feel safer with the castle's walls around me. Do you hear something? Mm. Oh, goodness. Uh, Comte Poivre, is that you? Mm. Oh, the lock's been broken off. We'll find a saw. Mm. I realize the cabinet is quite valuable, Comte, but surely... Hey. Mm. A... Locksmith, then? Mm. Mm. As you wish. Mm. I'm so sorry, Inquisitor. I never thought my family's trading status would trap us in an assassin's plot. Between our soldiers and spies, Skyhold's safer than anywhere else in Thetis. Yet the problem persists. I've tracked down the last Du Paraquets. If they become gentry, they can annul the contract on my life. 
will require a noble from Val Royaux to sponsor them, a judge to provide documents, a minister to ratify them. It's so like you to take the longest course of action, even when your life is at stake. I assume you already know everything about this mess. There is a faster way, Josephine. The original contract on your life is in the vaults of the House of Repose. If my agents infiltrate it and destroy the original, the assassin will have no obligation to chase you. Liliana, please. I want no more bloodshed over a personal affair. Don't be so stubborn, Josie. How long will it take you to gather these favors in Val Royaux? If destroying the original contract will satisfy the Guild, I say we do it. But I'm sure my plan will work, Inquisitor. Whatever happens, I'll assign you more guards. The House of Repose won't be idle long. I appreciate it, but I still believe elevating the Duparakets will solve this. First, we need to perform some favors in Barwayo. I'd be happy to discuss where we could begin. Why did the Duparakets hate the Montelliers so much they set up a permanent assassination watch? A Montelier and a Duparaket fell in love. A young couple, pledged elsewhere, attempted to elope. The whole thing ended so violently, it's a wonder any survived. It's fortunate the Duparaket's descendants hold no grudges. What if the Duparaket's refuse to aid you? I've already contacted the Duparaket's Inquisitor. They're ready to help us. It will be a long road, but a lordship is a chance to restore a proud lineage to their heirs. Besides, I've promised them a heavy bag of coin once this is over. Are you sure the House of Repose will forget this assassin contract on a farmer's signature? It's perfectly legal. In Val Royo's noble circles, a written word is a bond. Besides, the guild would never risk being so unspeakably crass. These assassins are afraid of being seen as impolite. Breaking one's public oath or bond implies a certain... poverty in Orle. A common merchant may lack the resources or manners to fulfill a debt, but among the guilds, it would be shameful. You said I'd have to do some favors in Val Royaux if we want to make the Duparaquettes lords. The Countess Dion is our first step. Her lover, a mage from the White Spire, is missing. Bring her news of him and she'll be very amenable to sponsoring the Duparaquettes as lords. Inquisitor. What an unexpected pleasure. You must have had a long journey to the city. Might there be any news from this house? Here's a letter from Ellerly. He's safe with his family in the Dales. Oh, my Ellerly. Oh, bless you. The Dions will sponsor the Duparakets as a family deserving of a noble title, Inquisitor. You have my word. Now please, forgive my hastiness. But I must read Ellery's words. Make her keep you. Inquisitor! What happened here? The House of Repose decided to pay a visit. The guards arrived in time, but I should have guessed the assassins would infiltrate the servants. Are you sure they didn't hurt you? They only frightened me. It was all so sudden. Leliana assigned people to shadow me. They appear to have saved my life. I owe you everything, Sergeant. Only my duty, Ambassador. I'll talk with the Spy Master about these murderous louts. She'll find how they got in. Good book? Oh! I don't know what you're talking about. No. What are you hiding, exactly? I'm not hiding anything. Exactly. I think you are. It's of no interest to you, I'm certain. It's a book. I can see that. It's one of Varric's tales. Swords and Shields. The latest chapter. The latest chapter? Meaning, you've read them all? Not... Since this all began, we've been busy. That's just her favorite. Nobody asked you, Tevinter. <laughs> I couldn't finish the last one you lent me. I actually feel dumber for having tried. It's literature. Smutty literature. 
Whatever you do, don't tell Varric. Me? No, I would never. <sighs> They're terrible. And magnificent. And this one ends in a cliffhanger. I know Varric is working on the next. He must be. Pretend you don't know this about me. I need to have a few words with my publisher. The first one will be you, and the second one will be Bastard. They've claimed for years my crime serials don't sell in Orlais. So why is the Council of Heralds asking me for autographs? Sorry, distracted. Anyway, you need something? Cassandra is waiting for the next issue of Swords and Shields. I must have heard that wrong. It sounded like you just said that Cassandra read my books. She's a pretty big fan, in fact. Are we talking about the same Cassandra? Tall, grumpy seeker, like stabbing things? Wait, did you say the romance serial? Oh, she'll be waiting for a while then. I haven't finished it and wasn't planning to. That book is easily the worst I've ever written. The last issue barely sold enough to pay for the ink. Well, Cassandra seems to be hooked on it. And I honestly thought a hole in the sky was the weirdest thing that could happen. So, you want me to finish writing the latest issue of my worst serial? For Cassandra? Oh, that's such a terrible idea. I have to do it. On one condition, I get to be there when you give her the book. You've got a deal. I'll get to work then. You know, the fact that the book is terrible just makes it more worthwhile somehow. What we learned at Adamant concerns me. The hero of Ferelden and I have been together for years. I nearly lost him to the Archdemon. He is looking for a way to stop the calling from taking him, as it does every Grey Warden. But if Corypheus has power over the Wardens, my love could be in danger. If you two are still together, why isn't he here? His quest took him far to the west, to lands that have never known the Blight. But Justinia needed me here. I owed her that much. My love and I are never truly apart. When this is all over, I will join him again. And this time, nothing will come between us. What makes him think he can stop the calling? It has been done before. Grand Enchanter Fiona was once a warden, but something took all trace of the calling from her. A warden mage named Avernus also found a way to prolong his life with magic. It wasn't much, but enough to stop the hunt. He will find a way. I have faith in him. Were the two of you happy together in the years after the Blight? Happier than you could imagine. The only shadow over our love was knowing that one day I would lose him to the Calling. His quest is for me as much as for him. He knows how much I've lost. What would you like to do? I do not know where the hero of Ferelden is precisely, but I know how to get a message to him. He may have information that helps the Inquisition. At worst, it will do no harm. I will draw up a plan in the war room. Thank you. I'll leave you to your work. How can I help? What do you know about the Fade? A great deal, from my wanderings. There are a few hard facts, but I can share what I've learned. I'd like to know more about the Breach. Simply put, it is a tear in the veil between this world and the Fade, allowing spirits to enter the world physically. Small tears occur naturally when magic weakens the veil, or when spirits cluster at an area that has seen many deaths. But the Breach is artificial. The anchor on your hand let you control it, and even opened a small rift at Adam. I'd like to know more about the Veil. Circle mages call it a barrier between this world and the Fade. But according to my studies in ancient elven lore, that is a vast oversimplification. Without it, imagine if spirits entered freely. The Fade was not a place one went, but a state of nature like the wind. I don't know if I can imagine that. Try. Imagine if spirits were not a rarity, but a part of our natural world. Like a fast-flowing river. Yes, it can drown careless children, but it can also carry a merchant's goods or grind a miller's flour. That is what the world could be if the veil were not present. For better or worse. 
I'd like to know more about demons. The Chantry says that demons hate the natural world and seek to bring their chaos and destruction to the living. But such simplistic labels misconstrue their motivations, and in so doing, do all a great disservice. Spirits wish to join the living. And a demon is that wish gone wrong. Is there a way to coexist? To live with them, if not in peace, at least without such active confrontation? Not in the world we know today. The Veil creates a barrier that makes true understanding most unlikely. But the question is a good one, and it matters that you thought to ask. I'm interested in what you told me of yourself and your studies. If you have time, I'd like to hear more. You continue to surprise me. All right, let us talk. Preferably somewhere more interesting than this. Why here? Haven is familiar. It will always be important to you. We talked about that already. I sat beside you while you slept, studying the anchor. How long can it take to look at a mark on my hand? A magical mark of unknown origin? Tied to a unique breach in the veil? Longer than you might think. I ran every test I could imagine. Searched the Fade, yet found nothing. Cassandra suspected duplicity. She threatened to have me executed as an apostate if I didn't produce results. I would never have agreed to that. You were in no position to argue. You were never going to wake up? How could you? A mortal sent physically through the Fade. I was frustrated, frightened. The spirits I might have consulted had been driven away by the Breach. Although I wished to help, I had no faith in Cassandra, or she in me. I was ready to flee. But you stayed. I did. I told myself, one more attempt to seal the rifts. I tried and failed. No ordinary magic would affect them. I watched the rifts expand and grow, resigned myself to flee, and then... It seems you hold the key to our salvation. You had sealed it with a gesture. And right then, I felt the whole world change. For all our sakes, I'm pleased that you stuck around. As am I. You have fractured rules of man and nature, and you will shatter more before you are done. To visit me here, and you not even a mage. What do you mean? Where do you think we were? This isn't real. That's a matter of debate. Probably best discuss after you wake up. Any news on the House of Repose, Inquisitor? What's the next favor we need to get these due paraquets a lordship? We must persuade Minister Belize to ratify the papers. She's in charge of these matters of rank. The Minister will be at a small fete thrown by the Marquis with Scott. I'll get you an invitation. Thank you for seeing me in private, Minister Belize. I chastise you for taking me from the party, Inquisitor, but the Marquis throws such dull affairs, it's hardly worth it. I assume you wish to discuss your petition to elevate these du paraquettes to a minor lordship. Tell me, why should I allow you to pollute the Orlesian nobility any further than it's already been muddled? Surely even a minister could do worse than have the Inquisition in her debt. I am a well-positioned woman. I require something more concrete than vague promises of future gifts. And do not attempt to charm me. I am far too old to tolerate it. What can you possibly provide that will make your petition worth my effort? Diplomatic connections that reach far beyond the boundaries of Val Royo, perhaps. Hmm. 
I might make use of your ambassador. The Montilliers aren't what they were, but at least they're from proper stock. Arrange for me to be introduced to the court of Antiva. I hear winter is most pleasant by their sea. Very well, Inquisitor. Should you fulfill this bargain, I shall raise the Duparaquettes into lordship. I received a letter from the House of Repose, Your Worship. They acknowledge their contract is null and void. There is no longer a price on my life. I'm glad you don't have to live your life looking over your shoulder anymore. I regret we were forced to deal with them. That you are endangered by my part in the game. Did I ever mention I used to be a bard? You were a singer. Bards entertain the Orlesian court. They sing, play music, make charming conversation, and spy. Many young nobles put on a mask and practice playing the game in such a fashion. What made you interested in becoming a bard? I was attending a university in Valroyo when I learned about bards. There was such an air of romance about them. Stories of secrets, trysts, and fascinating people. A group of us, young gentry from Antiva, decided this exciting life was for us. You seem a bit steady for such an outgoing lifestyle. <laughs> the life of an entertainer didn't suit me at all. During one particular intrigue, I encountered a bard sent to kill my patron. We fought. Or perhaps scrapped is the better word. Both of us terrified. We were at the top of a steep flight of stairs. The other bard threw a knife, and I pushed him away from me. You can imagine the result. You were only defending yourself. But it was such a waste, Inquisitor. When I took off his mask, I knew him. We'd attended parties together. If I'd stopped to reason, if I'd used my voice instead of scuffling like a common thug, I'll always wonder who that young man would have grown into. He seemed willing enough to murder you for the game. Perhaps. I feel I'm the last to judge whether or not he would have actually used the blade. In all the commotion... Forgive me, I don't believe I ever thanked you for helping me with this. I'd do it again in a heartbeat. Such a gracious woman deserves nothing less. I... Such talk. I'm quite overcome. Should I stop? Oh. No. I mean, yes. I meant... No, I, I don't... Well, if you meant to draw a blush to my cheeks, you've completely succeeded. Let's return to Skyhold before anyone notices. We have to reach the Empress before Corythius. The only question is, how? We know how. I have our way in. The real question is, where is our enemy hiding? At the urging of Grand Duchess Florian, the Empress is holding a ball. Absolutely everyone will be there. During the festivities, Céline will be meeting for peace talks with the usurper Duke Gaspard and Ambassador Briala. The assassin must be hiding within one of these factions. Do we need to go to the peace talks? The Empress must have personal guards. We could just warn her she's in danger. We've made the attempt, but... It seems that our messages never reached her. Someone intercepted them. It's better that we don't leave this to chance. If Orlais falls to Corypheus, no land is safe. Tell me everything we know about the Empress. Empress Celine is a renowned diplomat and reformer. She works tirelessly to secure peace for the Empire. Unfortunately, many Orlesians view peace as complacency. She has yet to name an heir, leaving the future of the Empire in doubt if anything happens to her. Especially when the next in line is her cousin Gaspard, who's made few friends on the Council of Herods. Selene is surrounded at all times by countless guards, courtiers, servants, and vassals. What better place for an assassin to hide than the Empress's own household? 
How can Gaspard still be next in line while he wages war against his empress? A title Grand Duke indicates that he was a prince before the empress took the throne. What do we know about Duke Gaspard? The man who would have been emperor. He's Selene's cousin, and was first in line to inherit the throne when Emperor Florian died. Selene outmaneuvered him. She won over the Council of Heralds, who hold authority over title disputes. She became Empress, and he a general in the Imperial Army. He's well loved by the troops. He's also a Chevalier. Most of their number sided with him when he turned on the Empress. Aren't the Chevaliers part of the army? Why would they follow the Duke? Most Chevaliers are sworn to serve the Crown but that does not give them faith in the person wearing it. The Empress has tried to improve relations with Ferelden and Navarra. The Chevaliers see her as anti-military. They believe Gaspard could lead the Empire back to the glory of Draken's expansion years. Who is this Ambassador Briala? An ambassador in name only. She has organized the Elves of Halam Sheral into an underground army. The Empress invited her to the peace talks in a bid to gain the Elves' alliance in the war. That would be scandal enough, without the rumor that Briella is a jilted lover of Selene's. A personal grudge and a network of sabotage at her command. <laughs> Promising lead. Wait, the Elven leader is a jilted lover of the Empress? It's not widely known. Just a rumor whispered among the palace servants a few years ago. If it's true and where to get out, the Empress and an elf. Hmm. The scandal could destroy Celine's court. Even if a lie, Briella could use it to blackmail the Empress. She has some connection to the throne. You've given me plenty to think about. With Gaspard and Celine's armies entrenched, we cannot openly march troops to the palace. My agents will ensure your soldiers get inside. But it must be a few at a time to avoid attention. Understood. Just give the word, and we'll begin. The political situation in Halam Shiral hangs by a thread. The Empress fears our presence would sever it. The Grand Duke is only too happy to have us at the ball as his guests, so our invitation comes from him. Whether we act as his allies, or upset the balance of power, he gains an opportunity, if not a clear advantage. Inquisitor Adar, it is my great pleasure to meet you. The rumors coming out of the Western Approach say you battled an army of demons. Imagine what the Inquisition could accomplish with the full support of the rightful Emperor of Orlais. And which one was the rightful one again? I keep getting them confused. If we keep watch, he may appear, probably by the brandy. <laughs> I am not a man who forgets his friends, Inquisitor. You help me, I'll help you. Prepared to shock the assembly by appearing as the guest of a hateful usurper, my lord? They will be telling stories of this into the next age. There's a Tevinter assassin on the loose, Gaspard. Finding him is my priority. Are you serious? That is a grave allegation, my friend. A foreign power meddling now, of all times? I have no doubt this Tevinter is hiding within the ranks of the Elven delegation. They're up to something. My people have found these ambassadors all over the fortifications. Sabotage seems the least of their crimes. That sounds like something I should look into. <sighs> Be as discreet as possible. I detest the game, but if we do not play it well, our enemies will make us look like villains. We're keeping the court waiting, Inquisitor. Shall we? Inquisitor, a moment, if you please. I must warn you before you go inside. How you speak to the court is a matter of life and death. It is no simple matter of etiquette and protocol. Every word, every gesture, is measured and evaluated for weakness. I'm not intimidated by stuffy Orlesian nobles. These people burn cities as a diversionary tactic, and assassinate one another as a feint. 
The game is like wicked grace played to the death. You must never reveal your cards. When you meet the Empress, the eyes of the entire court will be upon you. You are safer in the Fade with the Fear Demon. Let's go in. We're keeping everyone waiting. Everything will be fine. And Raste watch over us all. And now presenting Grand Duke Gaspard de Chalon, and accompanying him, Lord Inquisitor Ada. Vanquisher of the rebel mages of Ferelden. Crusher of the vile apostates of the mage underground. Let me just smile. It is all for show, my dear. Champion of the blessed Andraste herself. <laughs> Did you see their faces? Oh, priceless. Accompanying the Inquisitor, Sika, Cassandra, Allegra, Portia, Calogera, Philomena. Get on with it. Pentagast. Fourteenth cousin to the King of Navarra, nine times removed. Hero of Orlais, right hand of the divine. Madame Vivienne, first enchanter of the Circle of Magi, enchanter of the Imperial Court, mistress of the Duke of Gislaine, warden Blackwall of Valchevin, constable of the Grey, bearer of silver right wings of valor, Sir Callum Stanton Rutherford of Homley. Commander of the Forces of the Inquisition, former Knight Commander of Kirkwall, Lady Liliana, Nightingale of the Imperial Court, Veteran of the Fifth Blight, Seneschal of the Inquisition, and Left Hand of the Divine, and Lady Josephine Charette Montillier of Antiva City, Ambassador of the Inquisition. Cousin, my dear sister. Grand Duke, we are always honored when your presence graces our court. Don't waste my time with pleasantries, Celine. We have business to conclude. We will meet for the negotiations after we have seen to our other guests. Inquisitor? Lord Inquisitor, we welcome you to the Winter Palace. Allow us to present our cousin, the Grand Duchess of Leeds, without whom this gathering would never have been possible. What an unexpected pleasure. I was not aware the Inquisition would be part of our festivities. We will certainly speak later, Inquisitor. Your arrival at court is like a cool wind on a summer's day. I'm delighted to be here, Your Majesty. We have heard much of your exploits, Inquisitor. They have made grand tales for long evenings. How do you find Halam Shiral? I have never seen anything to equal the Winter Palace. We hope you will find time to take in some of its beauty. Feel free to enjoy the pleasures of the ballroom, Inquisitor. We look forward to watching you dance. Inquisitor, a word when you have a moment. Josephine! Oh, Josephine! Is this him? <sighs> Inquisitor, please allow me to present to you my younger sister, Yvette Gabriella Montillier. Delighted to meet you, Lady Montillier. <laughs> Inquisitor, I've heard so much about you, but not as much as I want. Josephine writes, but she never tells me anything. Is it true? Rebel mages in Redcliffe were performing blood rites and orgies before you stopped them. Where did you hear such nonsense? Everyone in Antiva says so. Is it true? Those strays are little more than wistful thinking, milady. Oh, 
How dull Redcliffe must have been, then. Enjoying the ball? I see many of them. The dancing is so dull, Your Worship, but the Empress's gallery is magnificent. Yvette? Sorry, Josie. Go on, Josephine. Half our royal must be empty. So many of the Empire's finest are in attendance. They've noticed the Empress paying you special attention, but they don't quite know how to take advantage of it yet. This uncertainty won't last long, I'm afraid. Tell me about yourself, Lady Yvette. This is the first time I've encountered any of Josephine's family. She would forget to mention the artists. I've been studying painting under Antiva's royal tutors. You should be proud, Josie. I'm going to be exhibiting my work next season in the city's biggest salon. Have you actually sat down and finished the painting yet? I must wait for my inspiration. And I must wait for your tutor's bits. This may be my only chance to hear about when Josephine was a girl. Oh, yes. As she told you about when she was ten and... Yvette. Stop. Fine. Uh, what about when we were climbing the cliffs by the... No. She once told the Duke of... Absolutely not. Hmm. She still plays with her doll collection when no one's looking. Yvette! That's absurd. Absolutely preposterous. <laughs> Which power should the Inquisition throw its weight behind? Selene has held the throne successfully for years. I see no profit in ousting her. Gaspard has run military campaigns, but never a kingdom. His transition would be, let us say, chaotic. I'll see you later. Another time. And here we are. You haven't embarrassed yourself as much as I feared. Well done, my dear. I've always wondered, what's the Orlesian fascination with masks? We all wear masks, my dear, not just the people in Orlais. Who you are as a son, a lover, a friend, is not the same man who speaks for Andraste and leads the Inquisition. Orlesians codify this truth, make it visible. By giving each of these selves its own separate face, they believe they can be their truest selves unmasked. Any words of wisdom for navigating the ballroom? Speak to the Council of Heralds. Six of them are here tonight. The seventh member of the council is indisposed. His absence will complicate the negotiations. The council are the highest ranking players of the game. They see everything. They might know something we can use. Anything happening I should know. Strange that I haven't seen much of Grand Duchess Florian. One could always find her clinging desperately to the Empress's skirts before. It seems like you enjoy this, Vivian the game, Inquisitor. Of course I enjoy it. If I didn't, I'd be dead by now. Tell me, Lydia, where do you want the crown to fall? What I want is irrelevant, darling. Orle requires stability, and that is best served by Empress Selene. You ready to act when I give the signal? Always, my dear. Can I get you a drink, Commander Cullen? No, thank you. Inquisitor, did you need something? The sooner we track down this infiltrator, the better. Do you have any advice? Orlesian social events don't fall within my area of expertise. There are a few here we can trust. Be careful. You've attracted a following. Who are all these people? I don't know, but they won't leave me alone. I take it you're not enjoying yourself? At this point, the headache I'm developing is preferable to the company. Who do you think the Inquisition should support? Gaspard's claim to the throne is fair. Orlais needs someone capable of responding to the crisis at hand. A military-minded leader seems the best option. Have you noticed anything out of the ordinary? Not yet. It would be easier if people would stop talking to me. And other people. Not you. We'll talk later. I await your sin. This ball is a waste of time, like all Orlesian foolishness. Let's find the Venatori collaborator and get out of here. You don't seem to care much for the ball. 
Olesians pretend their petty squabbles are a game. Yes, let us treat murder, corruption, and deceit as delightful amusements. How wonderful. We are here to save Empress Selene, and it galls me. Why does she merit our protection? The Empire would be better off without her. Gaspard is the leader Olay needs in this crisis. You support the Civil War? Of course not. Chaos is what Corypheus wants, and we must oppose him. Were it up to me, however, I would let Selim fall and Gaspard take the throne. He would see the true threat, not spend his time throwing balls and writing letters. Have you witnessed anything noteworthy? Nothing yet. I will let you know. Stay alert. We don't know where the enemy is hiding. I'll be watching for trouble. The sooner we leave this place, the better. Don't I know you from somewhere? Ah. Lord Rudal de Langre, I've seen you in his company before, no? I don't think we've met, my lord. I'm just a Grey Warden. A Grey Warden? Odd. Your face is so familiar. Around the eyes, especially. Uh, perhaps without that beard? More wine. It will come to me. I'm ready for anything. Just give the word. So, Silverite Wings of Valor. What did you get that for? For... Valor. Care to elaborate? It was a long time ago. Back when we didn't stop to boast about past victories when there was an assassin on the loose. While I have a moment, is there anyone here I should question? I'm not well acquainted with Orlesian nobility. They rarely welcome Grey Wardens coming in with the right of conscription. What do you think about all the scheming and politics? I think I'd rather be anywhere else. Let's say the Empress and get back to where things make sense. Say what you want about Selene's ascension. She stole the throne? She seduced her way to it? Who cares? In the years since, she's proven she is the perfect mix of strength, cunning, and grace that Ole needs. Gaspard, you may as well crown a bull if he wins. What's the word? Seen anything yet? There aren't enough guards. That seems odd. Either the Empress disguised them for appearances, or something has gone wrong. Wait for my signal. Good. I was hoping it would catch you. What did the Duke say? He points the finger at Ambassador Briala. The Ambassador is up to something, but she can't be our focus. The best place to strike at Selene is from her side. Empress Selene is fascinated by mysticism. Foreseeing the future, speaking with the dead, that sort of rubbish. She has an occult advisor, an apostate who charmed the Empress and key members of the court as if by magic. I've had dealings with her in the past. She is ruthless and capable of anything. How can Selene openly keep an apostate in the Imperial Court? The Imperial Court has always had an official position for a mage. Before now, it was little better than court jester. Vivian was the first to turn that appointment into a source of real political power. When the circles rebelled, technically every mage became an apostate. The word lost much of its strength. You think she's controlling the minds of the court? That's powerful blood magic. She's worth investigating. Can't be sure of anything here. Both leads point toward the guest wing. It's a promising place to start. I'll coordinate with our spies to see if I can find anything better. I will be in the ballroom if you need me. My lord! My lord Inquisitor! May we have a word? It is very important. The Empress has sent us with a message for you. How can I be certain this message is from the Empress? We three wear the masks of House Valmont. They signify that we are public faces of the Empress. They are also extremely fashionable. I am always honored to hear from Her Majesty. Oh, she is the honored one, Inquisitor. Empress Selene is eager to assist the Herald of Andraste in his holy endeavor. She will pledge her full support to the Inquisition as soon as the usurper Gaspar is defeated. That's a generous offer. 
The Empress believes wholeheartedly that the Inquisition is our best hope for peace in these difficult times. She looks forward to cementing a formal alliance. As soon as Gaspar is out of the way. But we have taken enough of your time. Please, enjoy the masquerade, Inquisitor. Well, well. What's this? Well, well, what have we here? The leader of the new Inquisition, fabled herald of the faith, delivered from the grasp of the Fade by the hand of blessed Andraste herself. What could bring such an exalted creature here to the Imperial Court, I wonder? Do even you know? You may never know. Courtly intrigues and all that. Such intrigues obscure much, but not all. I am Morrigan. Some call me advisor to Empress Selene on matters of the arcane. You have been very busy this evening, hunting in every dark corner of the palace. Perhaps you and I hunt the same prey. I didn't realize I was watched so closely. All eyes are upon you, Inquisitor. Indeed, you distract from more important matters. Such as? Such as the unwelcome guest I recently found and killed within these very halls. An agent of Tevinter. So I offer you this, Inquisitor. A key found on the Tevinter's body. Where it leads, I cannot say. Yet, if Selene is in danger, I cannot leave her side long enough to search. You can. You left Selene alone. Is that wise? I must return to her anon, but she is safe enough for the moment. It would be a great fool who strikes at her in public in front of all her court and the Imperial Guard. Why did you kill the agent? You might have had useful information. I would not have slain the man on sight had he not attacked me first. Why? Undoubtedly, I caught him in an illicit act. I did not know from whence he came until after the battle, and regret only that I could not capture him alive. What intentions the Imperium has here, I suspect you know far better than I. I may find the time to try a door or two. Proceed with caution, Inquisitor. Enemies abound and not all of them aligned with Tevinter. What comes next will be most exciting. Mistress Nightingale, what a pleasure to see you again. You look radiant. <laughs> Marquis, it's been far too long. How's your family in Valjean? No complaints, my dear. Elder's no daughter of the Ghana of Darsview, you must come and to the to ambassador the to the Imperial Court. Joined. Oh, I've missed them very much. Little Sylvie must be ten now, no? 
Eleven. And already up to my elbow. Oh, how they grow. Perhaps I shall call on you soon. Excellent. Now I must dance Lord with the Marcelin. It was the lovely and his wife, right. Lady Elodie. Look at Lady Cambian's slippers. Trimmed with pearls. And emeralds. And those buckles. Toss her into the lake and she'll sink right to the bottom. What a disaster. There's a Tevinter assassin on the loose, and you're concerned about buckles on shoes. Everyone needs a hobby. Besides, you can learn a great deal about a person from their clothing. Gold and jewels on a dancing slipper. A slipper is easily lost, and finds itself in the dust and dirt. She is unconcerned with the possibility of losing the shoe or soiling it. A vulgar display of wealth. But Lady Cambian's family has recently lost most of its holdings. They have their title, but little else. So, how did Cambian acquire such a grand shoe, hmm? What has she done? Who has she bedded? These are all useful questions, no? You're different here than in Skyhold. More approachable, perhaps. This is Halam Sheral Inquisitor. This is the Imperial Court. This is the beating heart of the Great Game. Of course, everyone is wearing a mask. I learned this very young. I was still a girl when I attended my first ball. All this, the smiles, the small talk, it is a dance. And like any dance, it can be learned. For some of us, it has become so familiar that the steps may be performed in our sleep. What do you think the Inquisition should support? What we need most of all is a stable Ole. Either Celine or Gaspard can give us that. I should go. Be on your guard. I always am. Inquisitor, to what do we owe this honor? We will be happy to assist you if we can. Her Imperial Majesty is unfortunately occupied at present. I'd like to know more about the negotiations. It seems strange to hold peace talks during a ball. Oh, do your people have no customs surrounding great occasions? How sad. By Orlesian tradition, moments of great solemnity are celebrated with revels and feasts. While joyous occasions are given time for reflection and contemplation, we must never forget that life is both bitter and sweet. The ball is an opportunity to celebrate life and hope for the future, while we mourn those killed in the war. What can you tell me about the other parties involved in the talks? Gaspard is a decorated general, much beloved by the Imperial Army, and a legend among chevaliers. He is better suited to the battlefield than the throne, and he would gladly make his palace a war camp. He's also fiendishly charming. Lady Briella has great intentions to change the lives of the Elves for the better. Even if her plans could never work and would only provoke hate crimes against alienages. She is an idealist, but her lack of patience could prove disastrous. What is the Empress trying to accomplish with the negotiations? Peace is her only objective, Inquisitor. Gaspar and Briella are driven by personal ambitions but those desires threaten the safety of all Orlesians. The war must end tonight. We must conclude this to deal with the larger crisis. Perhaps you could tell me something, then. We haven't been properly introduced. How rude of us to forget. My Lord Inquisitor, allow me to present Lady Kuto. And Lady Colomb. And of course, Lady Fleur, we are the Empress's ladies-in-waiting. I'd like to know more about Empress Selene. Her Majesty has held the throne since she was just 16 years old. She is respected and beloved, not just in Orlé, but across Thedas. She doesn't care much for liver, and she drinks a tea black. If the evening ends favorably for the Empress, how does the Inquisition benefit? Her Imperial Majesty brings the might of the Olysian Empire with her friendship. She is also a respected diplomat and world leader. 
She can forge alliances for you with Rivain, Antiva, the Underfels. And she throws the best parties. Good evening. Until next time, Inquisitor. Do take care! Enjoy the masquerade! My friend! Come in, have a drink. What can I do for you? If you're as delighted by the court as I am, there's a decanter of port around here. I'd like to know more about you. All of Orle knows my story. But you, my friend, are far too sensible to be Orlesian. The heart of it is simple. I am the rightful heir to the throne of Orle. But my cousin, Celine, is a politician, while I am a man of action. She charmed the Council of Heralds. They gave the crown to her, and while it looks fetching on her, I intend to take it back. What's your claim to the throne? The Hundred Days' Cough swept Val Royer in 877. It killed thousands of children. Royalty and commoner alike. There are only three living grandchildren of Emperor Judicale the First. Myself, my sister Florian, and Celine. And I am the eldest. By rights, the crown should have passed to me. If you're the rightful heir, how did Celine become Empress? I am the oldest, but I lack the Valmont name. My mother was the late Emperor's sister. Celine is a Valmont. Her honored father was my mother's brother. But she is the youngest. When there is any doubt surrounding the line of succession, the matter falls to the Council of Heralds. Celine outplayed me, forming alliances on the Council for support. So they passed over me in her favor. So you intend to out-negotiate your cousin? It will take heroic effort on my part, Inquisitor. And a lot of brandy. The talks will take most of the evening. Make her willing, we will emerge triumphant. I have a question about the peace talks. What will be going on in these negotiations? We will whittle one another down with words until we are bored into agreement. Celine will talk circles around us, that elf will glower and cast suspicion everywhere, and I will get very drunk. Somehow, by the time they stop serving drinks, our war will be ended. Politics, my friend. I get the distinct impression that you don't enjoy politics, Duke Gaspard. In Orlais, they call it the Great Game. They believe it is something you can play and win. But there are no winners. Like dogs playing wicked grace, it is a mockery of action. Give me a battlefield, Inquisitor. I will show you who the victors are. When I am Emperor, there will be changes. No more of this courtier's nonsense. The nobles may not like it, but after a few lose their heads, they'll fall in line. You didn't extend this invitation out of the goodness of your heart, Grand Duke. As you might have guessed, I'm not the most political man. If the nobles believe the Inquisition supports me, it will help in negotiations. And uh, I take joy in watching the scandalized expressions when they see us together. What can you tell me about Celine and Briala? Briala may be called Ambassador, but she is purely a spy. She works towards some hidden agenda. Elves have no place in politics. Her presence here is suspicious. Celine is a skilled player in the game. She knows how to get her way with a few words and a smile. But the game is a farce. I will prove that a few hundred chevaliers are better than diplomacy. We'll speak later, Duke Gaspard. Another time, friend. Inquisitor Adar, the stories claimed you were barely capable of speech. You haven't dazzled the court this evening, but at least you've avoided embarrassing yourself. Well done. What brings you to me? 
I want to know more about the peace talks. What can you tell me about Selene and Gaspard? Gaspard is a warmonger. He served in the war against Ferelden and fought a dozen skirmishes on the Navaran border. He's a simple man. Simple men aren't hard to manipulate. Selene is the voice of reason in the Empire. But reason is cautious. Reason looks for compromise. Reason doesn't choose radical change. However sorely it may be needed. I had a question about you, Brion. I'm an elf. Inquisitor. That should tell you everything you need to know about my life. I'm good at what I do. And so the matters. I will help my people no matter the cost. What's your story? How is an elf invited to the Empress's ball as an ambassador? Empress Selene and I have... history. There was a time when I put my spies at her disposal. She knows my qualifications. We had a falling out. Now we are negotiating to determine whether I return to her side in the war. What do you mean, we had a falling out? She betrayed me. Turned me over to the guards on a trumped-up charge to save her political reputation. It wasn't personal. It's the game. That's how all Orlesians justify these things to themselves. It wouldn't do to let the court know she had an elven friend. If she doesn't win you back to her side, what do you intend to do? I have contingency plans. I'm not a child putting all my hopes on a single ball. This evening gives me access to Duke Gaspard. He's challenging. Not as progressive or persuadable as his cousin. But with time and sufficient blackmail, he might work with us. I'm surprised you'd admit that, considering the circumstances. I know it's incriminating. Few harbor more resentment against Selene than I. But if she died after inviting me here, the court would certainly pin her death on me. An elf assassinating the Empress? Alienages across Orlais, across all Thedas, would be purged. That cannot happen. I've been told you were romantically involved with the Empress. I didn't take you for a gossip monger, Inquisitor. I suppose your spies have already briefed you. So there's no point in pretending. Yes, Selene and I were lovers once, but we've gone our separate ways now. We'll speak more later, Ambassador. Another time, Inquisitor. Why kill the servants? They were unarmed. They always kill the servants first, my dear. Otherwise they could run and warn someone. The defenseless are always the first casualties of war. servant. What was he doing here? This man was a council of Herald's emissary. Curious to find him here. That knife bears a shell on family crest. Gaspard's crest. Time to have a word with the Duke. <laughs> Venatory agents! That must be the Venatory leader. The Venatori were watching this approach. They're organized.
Fancy meeting you here. Shouldn't you be dancing, Inquisitor? What will the nobility say? Aren't you supposed to be negotiating, Ambassador? Welcome to the Imperial Court, friend. This is our diplomacy at work. You clean this place out. It will take a month to get all the Tevinter blood off the marble. I came down to save or avenge my missing people. But you've beaten me to it. So, the Council of Errol's emissary in the courtyard. That's not your work, is it? He was dead when I arrived. I expected as much. You may have arrived with the Grand Duke, but you don't seem to be doing his dirty work. I knew he was smuggling his chevaliers, but killing a council emissary? Bringing Tevinter assassins into the palace? Those are desperate acts. Gaspar must be planning to strike tonight. He can try, but I'll stop him. I wish you luck. Better than luck? I wish you success. I misjudged you, Inquisitor. You might just be an ally worth having. What could you do with an army of elven spies at your disposal? You should think about it. What do I have to give you in exchange for this army of spies? A moment of consideration. I know which way the wind is blowing. I'd bet coin that you'll be part of the peace talks before the night is over. And if you happen to lean a little bit our way, it could prove advantageous to us both. Just a thought. More politics than double dealing. Is there anyone here who is not corrupt? It's the game, my dear. Everyone plays it here. Inquisitor Adar. We met briefly. I am Grand Duchess Floriane de Chalon. Welcome to my party. Why am I not at all surprised that you want to see me now? This is Orlé, Inquisitor. Nothing happens by accident. I believe tonight you and I are both concerned by the actions of a certain person. Come, dance with me. Spies will not hear us on the dance floor. Very well. Shall we dance, Your Grace? I'd be delighted. The Tal Vashoth are hardly known for political maneuvering. Just what interest do you have in our little war? I assure you, the effects of this war reach far beyond the borders of the Orlesian Empire. Perhaps it does. I should not be surprised to find the Empire is the center of everyone's world. It took great effort to arrange tonight's negotiations. Yet one party would use this occasion for blackest treason. The security of the Empire is at stake. Neither one of us wishes to see it fall. Do we both want that, Lady Florian? I hope we are of one mind on this. In times like these, it's hard to tell friend from foe. Is it not, Your Grace? I know you arrived here as a guest of my brother, Gaspar, and have been everywhere in the palace. You are a curiosity to many, Inquisitor, and a matter of concern to some. Am I the curiosity or the concern to you, Your Grace? A little of both, actually. This evening is of great importance, Inquisitor. I wonder what role you will play in it. Do you even yet know who is friend and who is foe? Who in the court can be trusted? An excellent question. I might ask the same of you, Your Grace. In the Winter Palace, everyone is alone. It cannot have escaped your notice that certain parties are engaged in dangerous machinations tonight. I thought dangerous machinations were the national sport in Orlé. You have little time. The attack will come soon. You must stop Gaspar before he strikes. In the Royal Wing Garden, you will find the captain of my brother's mercenaries. He knows all Gaspar's secrets. I'm sure you can persuade him to be forthcoming. We'll see what the night has in store, won't we? You'll be the talk of the court for months. We should take you dancing more often. 
I'd happily do more dancing. Just not with Corypheus. I promise not to invite him to your next ball. Were you dancing with Duchess Florian? More importantly, what happened in the servants' quarters? I heard there was fighting. I hope you have good news. It appears the peace talks are crumbling. Morrigan helped me get into the servants' quarters, where I found a group of Venatori and Gaspard's dagger. The man would truly do anything to become Emperor. Then, the attack on the Empress will happen tonight. Warning Celine is pointless. She needs these talks to succeed, and to flee would admit defeat. Then perhaps we should let her die. You have an idea, Liliana? What Corypheus wants is chaos. Even with Selene alive, that could still happen. To foil his plan, the Empire must remain strong. This evening, someone must emerge victorious. And it doesn't need to be Selene. She's right. Do you realize what you're suggesting, Leliana? Sometimes, the best path is not the easiest one. You're asking me to decide what's best for Orle. More than that. Whoever controls the Imperial Throne will affect all of Thedas. You cannot stop Corypheus without a decision. You must support someone, or all is lost. Then we should support Selene. She is the rightful ruler. Why would we say otherwise? Because she led Orle to this point. I say Gaspard, provided his sister is wrong about him. I would suggest Briala. She could bring true peace, not only to the Empire, but also to its elves. This is, however, your decision, Inquisitor, not ours. I can't decide this. Not yet. You must. Even inaction is a decision, Inquisitor. You could speak to Selene in the ballroom, but she won't act. Not without proof. If Gaspard is guilty, he'll admit nothing. If he's innocent, he knows nothing. We need the truth. What did Duchess Florian tell you? She said Gaspard's mercenary captain is in the royal wing. That he knows about the assassination. Which could be a trap. Or a lead. Either way, you should search the private quarters in that wing for clues. Then get me access. And in the meantime, get your soldiers into position. At once. Be careful, Inquisitor. Is it true what they say? You're the Inquisitor, are you not? We heard stories of your accomplishments. Some of those might have gone a bit far. I told you, Philippe. Not everyone fights an archdemon and lives to tell. It's an inspiration. I'm curious. What did you hear about the fight with the archdemon? They say the army of the Inquisition fought a desperate stand at Haven against the forces of an old god in the thick of battle. You crossed swords with evil itself. The enemy had you outnumbered and caught. And you cast down a mountain upon the Archdemon and escaped. Even if a tenth of that is true, it's a remarkable feat. If you like, Commander Cullen could give you all the details of that battle. He's in the ballroom. Really? But I shouldn't leave my post. You'd only be gone a moment. Philippe, the world is coming to an end. If we don't hear this story now, we'll never have a chance. You're right. Thank you. Let's go. It's all right now. You're safe. Safe? I don't know if I believe in safe anymore. No one's supposed to be here. Briala said... Oh, I shouldn't have trusted her. Briala told you to come to this wing of the palace? Not personally. The ambassador can't be seen talking to the servants. We get coded messages at certain locations, but the order came from her. 
She's been watching the Grand Duke all night. No surprise she wanted someone to search his sister's room. Is there anyone else who knows the code in the drop location who could have written those orders? I... I don't know. Any of us could do it, but... No. No one else could send me here. It had to be Briala. This wing is sealed. How did you get in here? Easy. The door was unlocked. One of the others probably handled it. So this room belongs to Grand Duchess Florian. It used to. This had been her private room in Halam Shiral since she was a child. But this part of the palace was damaged, and the royal family moved to the guest wing. What were you trying to find in Florian's old room? The message didn't say. I should have known it was a setup. If there's a reason you distrust Briala, I want to hear it. I knew her. Before. When she was Celine's pet. Now she wants to play revolution, but I remember. She was sleeping with the Empress who purged our alienage. Something like that could destroy Briala if it were known. No. Some know she has a... a history with the Empress. But they believe she was just a favored servant. If the Inquisition will protect me, I'll tell you everything I know about our ambassador. Go to the ballroom. Find Commander Cullen. He'll keep you safe. Thank you. Make her protect you, Inquisitor. Somebody. Hello? Is anyone there? Somebody. Anybody? What happened? It's not what it looks like. Honestly, I would have preferred it if it were what it looks like. The Empress led me to believe I would be rewarded for betraying the Grand Duke. This was not what I hoped for. You're telling me that Empress Selene left you naked and trussed like a roast duck? Please, I beg you, don't tell Gaspard. The Empress beguiled me into giving her information about plans for troop movements in the palace tonight. She knows everything. Everything. The Duke's surprise attack has been countered before it ever began. She's turned it into a trap. The moment he strikes, she'll have him arrested for treason. Clever Celine. Even I'm impressed. I don't know which is worse. Celine for using such a tactic or him for falling for it. I'll protect you from Gaspard if you're willing to testify about Celine's trap. I'll do anything. Anything. What was that sound? Something's not right. You paid it, Elysian assholes! When I get out of this, I'll butcher you like the pigs you are! Inquisitor, what a pleasure. I wasn't certain you'd attend. You're such a challenge to read. I had no idea if you'd taken my bait. I had a feeling you were mixed up in all this. Such a pity. You could almost be our legion, if you were just a little quicker. It was kind of you to walk into my trap so willingly. I was so tired of your meddling. Corypheus insisted that the Empress die tonight, and I would hate to disappoint him. Why kill the Empress? What does Corypheus want to achieve? Celine's death is a stepping stone on the path to a better world. Corypheus will enter the Black City and claim the godhood waiting for him. We will cast down your useless maker and usher in a united world, guided by the hand of an attentive god. Your Orlesian royalty. Why would you help Corypheus attack your empire? You think so small, Inquisitor. Why settle for an empire when Corypheus will remake the entire world? I admit, I will relish the look on Gaspar's face when he realizes I've outplayed him. He always was a sore loser. What exactly is in this for you? <laughs> the world, of course. I'll deliver the entire south of Thedas and Corypheus will save me. 
When he has ascended to godhood, I will rule all Thedas in his name. You won't get away with this, Florian. <laughs> but I already have. In their darkest dreams, no one imagines I would assassinate Selin myself. All I need is to keep you out of the ballroom long enough to strike. A pity you'll miss the rest of the ball, Inquisitor. They'll be talking of it for years. Kill him, and bring me his marked hand. It will make a fine gift for the master. all that? Were those demons? There aren't any more of those blasted demons coming, right? No more demons. It's safe. Maker? I've never seen one that close before. I knew Gaspard was a bastard, but I didn't think he'd feed me to fucking horrors over a damn bill. Duke Gaspard lured you out here? Well, his sister. But it had to come from him, didn't it? But all that garbage she was spewing doesn't mean anything. Gaspard had to be the mastermind. Tell me everything you know. The Duke wanted to move on the palace tonight, but he didn't have enough fancy chevalier. So he hired me and my men. He had to offer us triple our usual pay to come to Orlay. Stinking bunch of cheesemongers. Want a new job? One that pays better? The Inquisition can always use a good mercenary company. You hiring? I'm game. Anything's better than this bullshit. You want me to talk to the Empress, or the court, or sing a blasted song in a chantry? I'll do it. Thank the Maker, you're back. The Empress will begin her speech soon. What should we do? Wait here, Cullen. I'm going to have a word with the Grand Duchess. What? There's no time. The Empress will begin her speech any moment. We owe the court one more show. Inquisitor. I'm giving you a chance to end this peacefully. There's no need for more death. Corypheus is only using you. I don't know what you're talking about. Really? You've already forgotten trying to kill me in the garden just a moment ago. You arranged for your brother to be at the ball so everyone would be watching him while you carried out the plan. So when the Council Emissary stumbled into the wrong room and found your assassins, you could pin the blame on Gaspard. The Empress, your brother, and the entire court all here as your guests, a tempting target for Corypheus. This is very entertaining, but you do not imagine anyone believes your wild stories. That will be a matter for a judge to decide, cousin. Gaspard? You cannot believe this. You know I would never... Gaspar? You lost this fight ages ago, Your Grace. You're just the last to find out. Oh. 
Your Imperial Majesty, I think we should speak in private. Elsewhere. Your sister attempted regicide in front of the entire court, Gaspard. You're the spy master. If anyone knew this atrocity was coming, it was you. You don't deny your involvement. I do deny it. I knew nothing of Florian's plans. But you... You knew it all and did nothing. <laughs> I don't know which is better. That you think I'm all-seeing, or that you're trying so hard to play innocent and failing. Enough! We will not bicker while Tevinter plots against our nation. For the safety of the Empire, I will have answers. Every one of you is implicated. You all conspired to allow this to happen. That's a bold claim, Inquisitor. Are you prepared to defend it? You allowed the Grand Duke to sneak soldiers in, hoping he'd make a politically foolish move. That's duplicitous. Even for you, Celine. You took the bait. I met your mercenary captain, Your Grace. He says you are ready to attack tonight. Clever move. If you were trying to get hanged for treason. And Briala was playing both of you. She murdered your ambassadors and sent you each forged letters. Even if I did, you can't touch me. No one will defend you once it's revealed that you and Selene were lovers when she burned Halam Shiral's alienage. You've made your point. What do you want? You are three of the best minds in the Empire. You could do so much for Orlea and your people if you stopped fighting. It is remarkably... optimistic to believe that the three of us could ever forget our differences, Inquisitor. I cannot believe you want to make a speech. This is foolish. We have no choice. The nobility requires an answer for what happened. Unless you want to pretend the war was all a dream. That would go over well. No more dithering. We make the cut swift and clean. Kindest to all of us. Lords and ladies of the court, we are pleased to announce that an accord has been reached. Our cousin Gaspar will now hold a place of honor in our cabinet. <laughs> Friends, we assembled are the leaders of the Empire. We must set the example for all Thedas. We cannot be at war with each other while the Fade itself challenges our borders. We must stand united or surely we will fall alone. We will save Thetis from calamity, but only together may we accomplish this. We will heal our wounded country. A long road of reconstruction lies before us. But tonight, we celebrate the arrival of peace. Let the festivities commence! The Orlesian nobility make drunken toasts to your victory and yet you are not present to hear them. Do you tire so quickly of their congratulations, Inquisitor? It is most fickle after all your efforts on their behalf. There's plenty of opportunity for that later. I wanted some air. I had no wish to interrupt your breathing, only to bring news. By Imperial decree, I have been named liaison to the Inquisition. Selene wishes to offer you any and all aid, including mine. Congratulations. I had no idea you were interested in joining the Inquisition. The assignment has been given to me, regardless of my personal interest. Selene knows you face an opponent who wields great magical power, which is far more important than her own curiosity. You will require my knowledge if you are to defeat such magic. Regardless, Corypheus is a threat to Orlais and to myself. Thus, I am not opposed to the appointment. What skills do you have that would benefit us? I have knowledge which falls beyond the realm of most mages. 
I suspect this is also true of Corypheus, thus it behooves you to add to your arcane arsenal, yes? Mundane knowledge will not bring the rift in the sky to a close, after all. When you say knowledge beyond the realm of most mages, do you mean blood magic? I know many obscure, forgotten, and forbidden arts. Some of it you might consider blood magic, yes? Should thought of that frighten you, allow me to offer reassurance. Knowledge alone does no harm. What I possess I place at your disposal to make use of or ignore as you desire. Welcome to the Inquisition, Morrigan. A most gracious response. I shall meet you at Skyhold. Is everything all right? You look troubled. I'm just worn out. The night has been very long. It was a tumultuous evening, but Orle is safe now. It was worth the struggle. Is there anything I can do? Um, can I get you anything? A drink, perhaps? Would you care to dance with me, Lady Josephine? I was hoping you'd ask, my lord. The matter is urgent, Lady Josephine. I am well aware of that, revered mother. We will need them to return to Valroyo as soon as possible. There are ceremonies, ordinations. Make us mercy. That's quite impossible at the moment. However, I will see to this matter as soon as possible. My Lord Inquisitor. Please, may I have a word with you? How may I assist you, revered mother? With the political turmoil put to rest, our minds turn to a single question. The next divine. We cannot answer it without the left and right hands of divine Justinia V. I have already told you, revered mother. Lady Leliana and Sikar Cassandra cannot be spared from their duties. But surely with the support of the Empire, the Inquisition will not be harmed by the loss of just two souls. Why do you need Liliana and Cassandra? They were Her Holiness's most trusted advisors. They represent her legacy, her hopes for peace in Fadas. They could rally the Grand Clerics to follow as no candidate from the clergy has been able to. Liliana and Cassandra are candidates to become the Divine? How is that possible? Not yet, but they could be. We need them to be. There is precedent. Other times when clerics remained deadlocked, a successor was chosen from outside the clergy. Lady Liliana and Seeker Cassandra were Justinia's most trusted friends and advisors. Our late divine is still held in high esteem. To honor her, the Grand Clerics might support one of them as successor. How long does the Chantry need them? Several months, at least. If one of them is crowned divine, she would not be returning to the Inquisition. Liliana and Cassandra would have to make that decision for themselves. And they certainly will, at a later date. The Inquisitor has only just returned and has important business to attend to. You must excuse us, revered mother. Don't let them detract from your victory at Alam Shiral. We've beaten his wardens and stopped his intrigues. Soon, Corypheus will have no place to hide. Colin is hoping to press our advantage. We'll plan our next attack when you're ready. What have you done now? I get it, Seeker. You're still sore after our spat. I'm not a child, Varric. Do not suggest I'm without reason. Uh, a peace offering. The next chapter of Swords and Shields. I hear you're a fan. This is your doing. Oh, yes. Do you really think I'd miss this? 
Well, if you're not interested, you're not interested. Still needs editing anyhow. Wait! <laughs> you're probably wondering what happens to the night captain after the last chapter. Nothing should happen to her. She was falsely accused. Well, it turns out the guardsman... Don't tell me! <clears throat> this is the part where you thank the Inquisitor. I don't normally give sneak peeks, after all. I... thank you. Varric's the one you should be thanking. I am but a humble servant to my loyal readers. I wonder if I have time to read the first part. But don't forget to tell all your friends, if you have any. Ah, <sighs> completely worth it. There are spirits hovering by the veil to observe the thrones of powerful nations, the machinations, betrayals. After our time in Halam Shirao, I understand why. I had forgotten how I missed court intrigue. You miss court intrigue? When were you at court? Oh, well, never directly, of course. An elven apostate is rarely invited to speak with empresses and kings. But from the Fade, I have watched dynasties form and empires crumble. It is sometimes savage, sometimes noble, and always fascinating. In any event, Selene should now be a steadfast ally, especially after helping her neutralize Briala. Am I sensing concern over how we dealt with Briala? No. Why would I disapprove of... Oh. Because we're both elves. I'm sorry. I was confused. I do not consider myself to have much in common with the elves. Who do you have much in common with? Who are your people? A good question. I joined the Inquisition to save the world. Regardless of who my people are, this was the best way to help them. As for the Elves of Orlais, I believe Briala is doing quite well on their behalf. She is an admirable woman. She's done good work. Hopefully with our help, she can help them even more. Yes. However much I identify, or fail to identify, with her people, Briala's efforts have been remarkable. She organized resistance against a powerful enemy, using only her wits and the resources at hand. That demands respect. Especially in a world where most would look at her and only see a pair of pointed ears. I don't know what you think you're doing. I'm being clucked at by a hen, evidently. Don't play the fool with me, young man. If I wanted to play the fool, I could be rather more convincing, I assure you. Your glib tongue does you no credit. You'd be surprised at the credit my tongue gets me, Your Reverence. Oh. <laughs> I... What's going on here? It seems the revered mother is concerned about my undue influence over you. It is just concern. Your worship, you must know how this looks. You might need to spell it out, my dear. This man is of Tevinto. His presence at your side. The rumors alone. Oh? I'd like to hear what these rumors are, exactly. I... could not... Repeat them, Your Worship. Repeat them? So, you've shared them before. I... See, I meant no disrespect, Inquisitor. Only to ask after this man's intentions. If you feel he is without ulterior motive, then I humbly beg forgiveness of you both. Well, that's something. She didn't get to you, did she? No. It takes more to get to me than thinly veiled accusations. You don't think she'll do anything? Do what? Yours is the good opinion I care about, not hers. I should ask, do the rumors bother you? Why should it bother me? Everyone's talking about the Inquisition. That's good. I'd hate to think I brought you any grief. Perhaps it's odd to say, but... I think of you as a friend, Inquisitor. I have precious few friends. I didn't think to find one here. I... Uh... Don't speak. I detest confessions. And I'd like to get this over with. Allow me to say I'll stand beside you. 
against Corypheus, my countryman, or spurious rumor. So long as you'll have me. You asked for my opinion, and I've given it. Why would you expect it to change? I expect you to keep your word. It's relentless. I can't... You give yourself too little credit. If I'm unable to fulfill what vows I kept, then nothing good has come of this. Would you rather save face than admit... We will speak of this later. And people say I'm stubborn. This is ridiculous. Cullen told you that he's no longer taking Lyrium? It seemed very important to him. It's not a decision to be made lightly. But now... Cullen has asked that I recommend a replacement for him. I refused. It's not necessary. Besides, it would destroy him. He's come so far. Why didn't he come to me? We had an agreement long before you joined us. As a Seeker, I could evaluate the dangers. Cassandra, did you refuse Cullen's request because he's wrong, or because you want him to be wrong? Mages have made their suffering known, but Templars never have. They are bound to the Order, mind and soul, with someone always holding their Lyrium leash. Cullen has a chance to break that leash, to prove to himself, and anyone who would follow suit, that it's possible. He can do this. I knew that when we met in Kirkwall. Talk to him. Decide if now is the time. Make us breath. I didn't hear you enter. I... Forgive me. Cullen, if you need to talk. You don't have me to... I never meant for this to interfere. I believe you. But whatever good it does, promises me nothing if I cannot keep them. You asked what happened to Ferelden's circle. It was taken over by abominations. The Templars, my friends, were slaughtered. I was tortured. They tried to break my mind, and I... <laughs> How can you be the same person after that? Still, I wanted to serve. They sent me to Kirkwall. I trusted my knight commander, and for what? Hmm? A fear of mages ended in madness. Kirkwall's circle fell. Innocent people died in the streets. Can't you see why I want nothing to do with that life? Of course I can. I... Don't. You should be questioning what I've done. I thought this would be better. That I would regain some control over my life, but... These thoughts won't leave me. How many lives depend on our success? I swore myself to this cause! I will not give less to the Inquisition than I did the Chantry. I should be taking it. I should be taking it. You give enough, Cullen. I'm not asking you for more. The Inquisition can be your chance to start over. If you want it to be. I don't know if that's possible. It is. <sighs> All right. How bracing to be in the thick of the game again. The last time I was at Alam Shiral was Countess Letienne's wedding. There were a dozen affairs, five secret alliances, and a duel between two chevaliers over the vintage of an Antivan port. But until the Duchess was unmasked, I've never seen the Winter Palace in shock. The nobility needed a shock. Corypheus played them all for fools. I agree completely. The game's become increasingly insular in the past few years. Corypheus skillfully took advantage. It's disturbing so few people in the Orlesian court were aware of the Duchess's machinations. The Empress realized she was in danger. She's always in danger. Those loyal to her should have practiced more vigilance. 
But let's not lose sight of victory. Your actions at the ball have secured us allies and favors alike. My favorite moment of the evening is still our waltz in the garden. <sighs> I could have danced with you for hours. We must do it again sometime. You're the Inquisitor. You're very tall. Mother didn't say you were a canary. And just who is your mother? Mother is the inheritor. She who waits the next stage. Kieran, are you bothering the Inquisitor? Of course not. Did you see what's on his hand, Mother? I did see. It's time to return to your studies, little man. <laughs> My son. Never where you expect him to be, naturally. I didn't know you had a son. Why would you? I take great pains to not let my own reputation affect him in any way. To most in the Imperial Court, he's simply a quiet and well-spoken lad. Perhaps the heir of some distant family. But he goes where I go. Worry not, Inquisitor. Kieran is a curious boy, but seldom troublesome. Will his father be joining us as well? It would be... most unlikely. I have raised Kieran on my own for quite some time now, as was my preference from the start. So, tis but the two of us, Inquisitor. Your fortress is a large place, and you will scarce notice our presence. There's something rather unusual about him. There is. He is a special lad. It falls to me to protect him from anything and anyone that mean him ill. Most of all, he must be protected from myself. No one could harm him more than I. To think... Until recently, this place stood decrepit. Occupied only by the desperate and the lost. Now it is party to events that threaten to shake the world. I wonder if it is pleased. It sounds like you've heard of Skyhold before. This fortress was built upon the remains of a site holy to the ancient elves. They called it Tarar Salan, the place where the sky is kept. It is said that from here... They reached up to the heavens to bring them down to rest. They abandoned it, as did the humans who came after them. Bones laid upon bones, silent until your arrival. We were lucky to have found it when we did. Fate is often mistaken for luck, as Mother is fond of saying. The magic in this place has seeped into the stones, protecting it from darkness. Those who let it fall to ruin did not know what they possessed, you, I think, shall do it justice. You were kind to welcome my aid, Inquisitor, even knowing as little of me as you do. I will do my best to aid your cause with all the knowledge at my disposal. This I swear to you. Just don't hold anything back. We need every advantage. Some might think Corypheus a madman for seeking godhood. Yet one must ask, what were the old gods? What secrets of theirs did the ancient magisters know? What I fear, what all should fear, is not that Corypheus believes he can succeed, tis that he actually may. I do not believe a reminder is necessary for this accused. Her capture and disgrace could not have been more public. Grand Duchess Floriane de Chalon, although her titles are among the dignities already at risk of forfeiture. You spared her life despite her treachery. What becomes of it now falls to you. Out of your element, Florian. Welcome to the Inquisition. My party. <sighs> despite her posture, Lady Florian has acknowledged your authority. Should I curse you on behalf of the Elder One? I realize he had no intention of honoring the Concordats I manipulated. Do as you must. I respect your mastery of the game, even as I despise your victory. Celine does not know her fortune. 
She has caused no end of misery. It's time she brought some joy. Grand Duchess Florian de Chalon, jester to the Inquisition, in flat shoes. History's greatest malevolence, Inquisitor. I am the jest of Orlais already. Will you not consider it, Lady Cassandra? The clerics are still sequestered. If no one steps forward, they will debate until... And you think I could make them agree? I've heard enough for one day, Mother Giselle. Talk to her, your worship. What's going on now? I assume you've heard that Leliana and I are both candidates to be the next divine. Because of what happened at Halam Shiral, of course, the Empire favors you. Thus, everyone close to you. So now the Chantry bandies our names about without even asking us first. How can you and Liliana be candidates? You're not even priests. It's not without precedent. Amara III was sister to the Emperor, and Galatea a commoner. Leliana and I were, at least, part of the Chantry hierarchy. It would be accepted. If they'll pick non-priests, why am I not a candidate? Because you're a man, first and foremost. If they name you a candidate, they may as well join the Tevinta Imperium. Truly, though, I imagine it's because they're frightened of you. A weight such as yours would break the Sunburst throne and tear the Chantry to pieces. I just don't know why they believe Leliana or I would be any better. I think you'd make an excellent divine. Truly? I never look good in hats. Surely it was never meant to be like this. The Chantry, the Circle of Magi, the Templars, this cannot be what they intended when it all began. The Chantry should provide faith, hope. Instead, it cannot veer from its course, even in the face of certain death. I'm surprised to hear you, of all people, say that. Oh? Am I not the same woman who declared the Inquisition against the Chantry's wishes? In all my years as a Seeker, I did what I was told. My faith demanded it. But now my faith demands something else. That I see with better eyes. If you're concerned, then make it better. Did you know Varric is Andrastian? Oh, he blasphemes with every second breath, but deep down he believes. His heart is virtuous. But he would never step foot in a Chantry. It should be the first place to which the virtuous turn. It needs to change. Perhaps I must be the one to change it. What would you change about the Chantry? The Circle of Magi has its place. But it needs reform. Let the mages govern themselves with our help. Let the Templars stand not as the jailers of mages, but as protectors of the innocent. We must be vigilant, but we must also be compassionate to all peoples of Thedas, human or no. That is what I would change. You're not the only candidate. What about Liliana? Liliana says she wishes to follow Justinia's legacy. But she and I remember a different person. Justinian knew her fellow clerics and the people would only accept so much change. Liliana would cast it all aside and start over, I think. And that would be chaos for us all. So this is your new crusade? I've agreed to nothing yet. And if the Chantry calls on you? Then I will do whatever I can, for as long as I can. I suppose I should not be so concerned the clerics speak my name for now, nothing more. For now, restoring order and stopping Corypheus remain our priority. So it's true. Some look to Cassandra or even me as Justinia's successor. I never thought the idea would gain momentum. Of course, with the other candidates out of the picture... Is becoming divine something you really want? When Justinia was alive, I would have laughed at anyone who even suggested that I could be her successor. 
Things have changed. Still, I don't know. Restoring the Chantry will be like trying to steer a sinking vessel through storm. No one would fault you for abandoning ship, you know. Out of the ship, and straight into the sea. You think Thedas hates mages now? If the Chantry falls, don't you think the people will blame magic? Look at all that's happened. Kirkwall's Chantry, the war, the breach. Mages are always involved. Without the Chantry to guide, that hatred will spiral out of control. No. We don't want that. And the Chantry can see that it doesn't happen. The people are sheep, Inquisitor. They need to follow. But this is a discussion for later. If Corypheus wins, finding a new divine will be the least of our problems. Ah, good. We're not drinking alone. How you doing, creme de la creme? Your worship. I'm so glad he has someone new to hit with that joke. Do you prefer creme or cremisius? Creme's faster. The chief's nicknames usually end up sticking. Hey, when I was growing up, my name was just this series of numbers. We all give each other nicknames under the cune. They ever wear shirts under the cune, chief? Or do they just run around binding their breasts like that? It's a harness, Creme. Yes, for your pillowy man bosoms. Let me know if you need help binding. You could really chisel something out of that overstuffed look. Wait, are you? I didn't realize. You didn't? Well, great. Now we can all talk about it. In Kunadar, Krem would be an Akunathlak. That's what we call someone born one gender, but living like another. And Kunari don't treat those Akun people any differently than a real man. They are real men. Just like you are. Maybe your people aren't so bad after all. Don't get your hopes up, Krem. We still come down hard on the back talk. <laughs> anyway, here's the rest of the Chargers. Or what's left of the rest. A lot of them went looking for stronger drinks. We've got Rocky and Skinner there. And over there are Stitches, Dalish, <laughs> and Grim. Crazy bunch of assholes, but they're mine. Were you born on the surface, or are you from Orzammar? Orzammar. I got exiled. Stupid noble crap. Also, I accidentally blew up a bit of the shape rate. Rocky's one of our best sappers. He can take down enemy fortifications faster than a golem. I'm also working on my own version of Kunari Black Powder. I've almost got it. Yeah, you really don't. Why aren't you with your clan? Our Keeper thought I should see the world a little. Dalish don't have Templars, so they can't have too many mages in a clan at once. Now, sir, you know I'm not a mage. That'd make me an apostate. You carry a staff, Dalish. It's a bow. A bow with a giant glowing crystal at the tip? Yes, it's for aiming. Old elven trick you wouldn't understand. I take it you're the company healer. Yes, first time I ever picked up a sword was when the blight hit Ferelden. Never put it back down. He makes a potion that'll put you right back on your feet after even the toughest fight. It tastes terrible, though. That's because it's a poultice, sir. You're not supposed to drink it. So, how'd you join the Chargers? Killed some people. Skinner didn't take kindly to nobles testing their new swords on the elves in her alienage. Bull took me in. Now I get paid to kill Shams. This is actually really good behavior for her. She's not marking her territory or anything. Grim, is it? Hmm. <clears throat> Grim doesn't talk much. I'm pretty sure he's the lost king of some small country. Or a chieftain. Something like that. Hmm. <clears throat> Got a good company, Bull. Ah, we do all right. No man can beat the Chargers, cause we'll hit you where it hurts. Unless you know what's happened with loose cards and looser skirts. For every bloody battlefield will gladly raise a cup. No matter what tomorrow holds, our horns be pointing up. <laughs> Thanks for coming by, boss. Glad you could meet some of my team. One for the Empress, for Gaspar, Briana, the Duchess, and Corinthians, right in the dangle bag. Well, remind me to stay on your good side.
don't worry, you're sparkling compared to that lot. A cook here, a footman there. What's it matter, right, so long as there's a book for the throne? A pretty one, sure. But how many lives are worth one empress's arse? Ugh, that place. Should have just thrown in some bees and slammed the doors. We decided the course of a nation. I think it was worthwhile. Right, Orle will never be the same. Except for everything they say and do. Ugh, you know the most important thing I got out of all of that mess? The one thing. Don't sleep with empresses. That's what that was all about. That, and Briala being an idiot. The whole thing would have gone different if that little piss-up wasn't in the middle. That was a mistake on their part. It made everything worse. Wrong way around, Inquisitor. It started worse. Lots of people died before there was a hole in the sky. That's who you're saving. If you get a chance, maybe remind them not to be idiots. This... this is just... it's something to keep their hands busy. I'm grateful you tracked me down when you did. As exciting as wandering the woodlands was, this is better. It's good to be part of something so important. Something that could change things. The Grey Wardens are huge and important. You're part of that. True, but without a blight on the horizon, everything the Wardens do feels like waiting. This, the Inquisition, is what matters now. And I'm grateful to be a part of it. You are who you choose to follow. Someone told me that once. Took me years to understand what he meant. There's wisdom in that. It was a Chevalier who said those words to me. A powerful man, but never without honor. A true knight. We met as competitors in the Grand Tourney. He left me with that advice before we parted. Put aside his own ambitions to help me win the melee. I don't think I even thanked him. What is this Grand Tourney? You've never heard of it. The Grand Tourney of the Free Marches. It's a spectacle. Song, dance, wine, every amusement you can imagine. <laughs> but the greatest part is the contest of arms. Prove yourself in the Grand Tourney, and you can make your fortune. How did he help you? There were a hundred men on the field, each one fighting for himself. The knight and I had forged an alliance. It was just the two of us, and we took all comers. The goal? Down as many opponents as possible. He always let me deliver the final blow. He must have wanted something from you to help like that. A pupil, a squire. Someone to teach and to mold. He saw my potential. When it was over, he offered to mentor me. To teach me to become a chevalier like him. And I, young and stupid, turned him down flat. I just won the melee at the Grand Tourney. I didn't need him. I should have gone with him. Perhaps things could have been different. You're here now. A Grey Warden. It worked out. I suppose it did, didn't it? But I'm older. Hopefully wiser. And I think I've chosen the right person to walk with. Something wrong with your tea? It is tea. I detest this stuff. But this morning, I need to shake the dreams from my mind. I may also need a favor. You just have to ask. One of my oldest friends has been captured by mages, forced into slavery. I heard the cry for help as I slept. When your friend was captured, how did he... she... It. It? My friend is a spirit of wisdom. Unlike the spirits clamoring to enter our world through the rifts, it was dwelling quite happily in the Fade. It was summoned against its will, and wants my help to gain its freedom and return to the Fade. I thought spirits wanted to find their way into this world. Some do, certainly. Just as many Orlesian peasants wish they could journey to exotic Ravain. But not everyone wants to go to Ravain. My friend is an explorer seeking lost wisdom and reflecting it. It would happily discuss philosophy with you, but it had no wish to come here physically. Do you have any idea what the mages want with your friend? No. 
It knows a great deal of lore and history, but a mage could learn that simply by speaking to it in the Fade. It is possible that they seek information it does not wish to give, and intend to torture it. All right. Let's go get your friend. Thank you. I got a sense of my friend's location before I awoke. I'll mark it on our map. My friend! Ah! The mages turned your friend into a demon. Yes. You said it was a spirit of wisdom, not a fighter. A spirit becomes a demon when denied its original purpose. So they summoned it for something so opposed to its own nature that it was corrupted. Fighting. Let us ask them. A mage! You're not with the bandits? Do you have any lyrium potions? Most of us are exhausted. We've been fighting that demon. You summoned that demon! Except it was a spirit of wisdom at the time. You made it kill! You twisted it against its purpose! I, I, I understand how it might be confusing to someone who has not studied demons, but after you help us, I can... We are not here to help you. Word of advice? I'd hold off on explaining how demons work to my friend here. Listen to me. I was one of the foremost experts in the Kirkwall Sir. Shut up. You summoned it to protect you from the bandits. I... Yes. You bound it to obedience, then commanded it to kill. That is when it turned. The summoning circle. We break it, we break the binding. No orders to kill, no conflict with its nature, no demon. What? The binding is the only thing keeping the demon from killing us. Whatever it was before, it is a monster now. Inquisitor, please! I'll do everything I can to save your friend, Solace. Thank you. We must hurry! I'm sorry, Solus. Don't be. We gave it a moment's peace before the end. That's more than it might have had. All that remains now is them. Thank you. We would not have risked the summoning, but the roads are too dangerous to travel unprotected. You tortured and killed my friend. We didn't know it was just the spirit. The, the book said it could help us. Solus. Never again. I need some time alone. I will meet you back at Skyhold. Hey you. I have an inquisitor favor to ask. Just a little thing, really. A little march around for some of your people. It's nothing for you, right? All right. Let's hear what you've got. Jump right in, huh? I like that. It's a Red Jenny thing. I got a tip that some noble stiffs are arguing over Vergel. Land squabble. They're getting little people beat up, so I need you to go to your big table and send some people to walk through town. Just walk through? 
Just walk through. Easy, right? Was this a tip from one of your friends? Not a Jenny. Just normal angry people getting sick of being in the middle. I don't usually hear about things this far away. But having a friend like you is like getting really big ears. Bigger ears, I guess. Shut up. Who is asking for this? I'm asking because I heard people complaining. See, when nobles fight, it's not them. It's their little people stuck in the middle. It's like a polite war, so no one pays attention. But if you march through, the people up top feel threatened too. Stuff like this is always happening. Good sovereigns to be made if you're one of the few who notice. What does the Inquisition get out of this? Nobles think everyone is out to get them. So when your helmets march through, both sides will think the other's your ally. Both get scared, both make deals. Worst case, you get a little bump among the people just because they see you active. Can't promise anything, but something will happen. Just like always. All right, Sarah. I'll have someone look into it. It's fun, right? Being important without doing a thing. Well, not much of a thing. Not everything has to be torn skies and ancient assholes. Every little thing makes a difference somewhere. My dear, I'm afraid I must ask you for help. There is an alchemical formula that I must complete, but I have been unable to obtain a critical ingredient. The heart of a snowy wyvern. I had arranged to obtain one, but the Chevaliers working with me were killed in the Civil War. If I'm going to hunt down a snowy wyvern, I need you to tell me everything you know about it. They're quite rare and exceedingly dangerous. Their venom is the most potent of any wyvern. Ordinary hunters would not make the attempt. The risk is too great. You, my dear, would certainly be an equal to this monster. I didn't know you were an alchemist, Vivienne. What exactly is this project you're working on? It is a special request from a member of the Council of Heralds. I am still the Imperial Court Enchanter, after all. The matter is private. That is all there is to say. You want me to risk my life to get this thing for you, but won't tell me what it's for? My dear, it is hardly proper for me to blab the secrets of those who put trust in my discretion. I would do no less for you, after all. I'm not a hunter. Why do you think I can help? This beast is not hunted for sport, as other wyverns sometimes are. It is far more deadly. In the past, chevaliers have been dispatched to either kill the creatures or drive them away from villages. Since my chevaliers have fallen to political conflict, I find myself in need of someone with a martial aptitude. I'll do what I can. Thank you, my dear. I would be most grateful. I shall give the location of its lair to Cullen. Remember, my dear, I must have its heart or the potion will not work. I eagerly await your success. I do for you, my dear? Is it too much to hope that you've brought me the heart of the snowy wyvern? If you want the wyvern's heart, you'll tell me what you're using it for. I can do better, darling. Give me the heart and I'll show you what it's for. Will that suffice? All right. One heart as requested. How kind of you. Please accept this as your payment. I must begin work immediately. You have been a dear friend, and I would like you to come with me.
This should only take a moment, Inquisitor. I'm here, my darling. Darling? Bastien? Vivienne, I'm sorry. There's nothing here now. Bastien is dead. I can hardly believe. It was the Winter Send Ball. My first visit to the Imperial Palace. The Circle sent a dozen of us to entertain the nobility. I was in awe of everyone and everything, and then our eyes met. Bastien spent the entire ball at my side. The Dowager tried to have him killed for slighting her, but he didn't care. Obviously he was smitten, but what did you think of him? He was a dashing rogue, and any defects he might have had were made up for with rank and importance. It was a more innocent time, I suppose. Now he's gone, and I... I must write to his son, Laurent. And his sister will make a terrible fuss if she isn't informed first. And I'll need to arrange for the Chantry services. Maker only knows how long that will take. If I can help you, just say the word. No, my dear. I'll handle everything. Excuse me, I have so much to do. Inquisitor. How are you, Solus? It hurts. It always does. But I will survive. Thank you for coming back. You were a true friend. You did everything you could to help. I could hardly abandon you now. Where did you go? I found a quiet spot and went to sleep. I visited the place in the Fade where my friend used to be. It's empty. But there are stirrings of energy in the void. Someday something new may grow there. What happens when a spirit dies? It isn't the same for mortals. The energy of spirits returns to the Fade. If the idea giving the spirit form is strong, or if the memory has shaped other spirits, it may someday rise again. You're saying your friend might come back? No, not really. A spirit's natural state is peaceful semi-existence. It is rare to be able to reflect reality. Something similar may reform one day. It might have a different personality. It would likely not remember me. It would not be the friend I knew. I'll let you get back to work. All right. Thank you again. I hear Vachelle was good pay for you, Inquisitor. Time to go see if my friends came through, too. Got a location for a stash. Hopefully something nice for my trouble. Well, your trouble. Just let me know when you're ready to head out. Be sure to bring your empty pockets. Who is putting up the reward for this? I don't know. Sometimes it's past the hat. Sometimes it's, I lifted this from Master's vault. Doesn't matter, does it? Job done. Time to get what we're owed. I'm ready if you are. Always, yeah. My favorite part, this. Let's go see what friends can get us. Wait, this is weird. What? I was expecting a village or something. The people that leave me stuff don't trek out to places like this. Give me a city and I'll give you a tour, but surprise, surprise, I don't know stupid woods or ruins. What's that? Don't hurt me. Harmond made me do it. What's your name and why are you here? He made me come. Said I had to lead him to her because I said things. It was just bar talk. This was supposed to be a simple drop. What's going on? You're her. You're the one he's waiting for. It's her. She's here. Red Jenny. <laughs> Oh, 
Oh, hold on. I was not aware the Inquisitor was personally involved. This is a tragic misunderstanding. Let's all sheathe our swords, you walk out, and we'll conduct this like business. Don't believe this piss bag. He started it. There. That wasn't so hard, was it? We identified the confusion, and we worked past it. I'm Lord Pell Harmon. I do hope, Inquisitor, that you continue to respond to reason. After all, your choice of company is hardly virtuous. Frigging user you are. Another noble prick who punches down. We're the same, you and I. Well, that is overstating it. You are nothing like me. But we both need people. Well, say your piece. Of course. No more rash mistakes. Honestly. Previous to this very moment, I thought you'd also been tricked by these red jennies. Despite your foreign nature, as Inquisitor, you are a social peer. I attacked them on behalf of us both. Ass biscuit. <sighs> Quiet. Inquisitor, Herald, I don't want to be your enemy. I'm barely invested in being hers. If you are willing to recognize an opportunity, we could be exceptional partners. The servants you killed... They did nothing except talk about what was going on. You killed my contacts. My friends. That is entirely true. Well, that should be that then. You're the one who empowered them, made their complaints a threat. Perhaps you should have warned them about talking to you. Stop talking to him. Really, just stop it. What would you be willing to commit to the Inquisition? Why even ask? Because a leader needs such information to make informed decisions. My family has ties across Lower Ferelden. Our presence in Orlais is recent, which is why I resorted to subterfuge. We have militia elsewhere, and they can be made expendable for your purposes. Tell the Snot Splash no already, not saying again. Nothing is free. What do you expect from the Inquisition? Access, Inquisitor. Your diplomat is wisely selective. Josie has better taste than him, yeah? Lady Montelier knows a wise acquisition. Or perhaps can be made to see one. Three, two, frigging done! Uh, now what was the point of that? Ugh! Mother puss bucket friggin' bastard shite bag piss face You think you lop eared son of an arse not rock Sarah. Foot piece of Sarah Ugh! What He's done you're done Relax it's over he said Friends Inquisitor Better than his lot any day What what do you want? Because I'm still angry Angry face and you should thank me for stomping the smile off that ass. He was getting in your head. I did what I thought was best. It wasn't ideal, and I apologize. What? Really? Really. Well, good then. Right, what do you mean? Because I am really not used to that acceptance thing you're doing right there. We'll have some differences, but I want to be one of your friends. You're pretty big to be one of my contacts. Important, I mean, not fat. But all right, Inquisitor. You're on my good side. We'll see if it lasts. What do I do with it? You found one of the amulets. Excellent. May I? It is simple enough. You put it on, I charge it with magic, and you should be protected. Are you ready, Cole? They can't make me a monster. Ah! What was that? Oh, for... What are you doing to the kid? Stopping blood mages from binding me like the demons at Adamant. But it didn't work. Something is interfering with the enchantment. Something like Cole not being a demon? I'm not certain exactly what Cole is. Regardless of Cole's special circumstances, he remains a spirit. 
Yes, a spirit who is strangely like a person. I don't matter. Just lock away the parts of me that someone else could knot together to make me follow. Focus on the amulet. Tell me what you feel. Warm, soft blanket covering, but it catches tears. I'm the wrong shape. There's uh, something. There. That way. We'll find whatever is preventing the amulet from working, and we'll make it right. All right, kid. Get Cullen and work with him on the map to figure out where you're sensing something wrong. Will you come with me? All of you? Sure. All right, I get it. You like spirits. But he came into this world to be a person. Let him be one. If I see a way to protect Cole without taking away... whatever he is, I'll use it. But Cole clearly needs our help. I'm not saying we do nothing. But that ritual of theirs only works on demons, right? This is not some fanciful story, child of the stone. We cannot change our nature by wishing. You don't think? However we deal with the problem, our next step is to track down whatever is interfering with the enchantment. Yeah, this should get me through the month. Give me a moment. Greetings. Can I help you? You... You killed me! What? I don't... I don't even know you. You forgot! You locked me in the dungeon in the Spire and you forgot and I died in the dark! The, the Spire? Cole, stop! Just take it easy, kid. He killed me! He killed me! That's why it doesn't work! He killed me, and I have to kill him back! Before anyone gets killed, I need to know what's going on. Cole, this man cannot have killed you. You are a spirit. You have not even possessed a body. A broken body, bloody, banged on the stone cell, guts gripping in the dark, dank. A captured apostate. They threw him into the dungeon in the spire at Valroyo. They forgot about him. He starved to death. I came through to help. And I couldn't. So I became him. Cole. If Cole was an apostate, That'd make the guy we just saw a Templar. Must have been buying lyrium. Let me kill him. I need to... I need to. Solus? We cannot let Cole kill the man. I don't think anyone was going to suggest that, Chuckles. Cole is a spirit. The death of the real Cole wounded him, perverted him from his purpose. To regain that part of himself, he must forgive. Come on. You don't just forgive someone killing you. You don't. A spirit can. Beric? The kid's angry. He needs to work through it. A spirit does not work through emotions. It embodies them. But he isn't a spirit, is he? He made himself human. And humans change, they, they get hurt, and they heal. He needs to work it out like a person. You would alter the essence of what he is. He did that to himself when he left the Fade. I'm just helping him survive it. Before I decide anything, I need a clearer picture of what happened. It seems the real Cole was an apostate, captured and taken to the Circle by Templars. Who aren't known for their gentle nature. As the young man starved to death in a dungeon, his pain caught the attention of a spirit, likely one of compassion. Compassion? 
An uncommon spirit, certainly. And all too fragile when its efforts to help prove to be in vain. Cole needs to let this go. I believe I can help. Cole, come with me. This man's pain, Cole. He remembers now. He knows he killed me. No. Feel his pain. His guilt. The shame that drove him from the Templars. Don't worry. We'll erase his records. They clap me on the shoulder. Smell of oiled metal and blood. They smile like Louis did when he made me drown the kittens. Laughter bounces off the walls like a thin child's fist. Sorry. I'm so sorry. He's hurting, Cole. And you are a spirit of compassion. Forget. I believe we are finished here. You all right, kid? Yes. He's free. We're both free. He has to be working. Cole should be adequately protected. Have you talked to him since? Have you heard what he sounds like? He sounds like a spirit. Nonsense words, like Bartrand at the end. Just need to hear the song again, just for a minute. I'm all right, Varric. What matters is his happiness. Cole, how are you feeling? I am well. There is work. Wounded to help, hurts to heal, but the weight is off. The old chains have fallen. You're not still angry with the man who hurt you? No, I helped him forget. His pain no longer pulls at me. A woman with two names slips a knife in darkness to her left hand. Honey stirred into Leliana's wine. Faith, not revenge. Could have been a person. Possibly. Would that have made him happier, Child of the Stone? It's time to plan our next attack. What's the state of the Inquisition? Our alliance with Orle holds. For the present, they'll send aid on request. And your actions at Adamant denied Corypheus his army of pet demons. With Orle's support, our numbers match his. Corypheus's followers must be panicking. My agents agree. Our victories have shaken his disciples. That's what we want. Demoralized soldiers fall first. Where is Corypheus now? After you dealt with the Duchess, Corypheus uprooted his major strongholds. He's moving south to the Arbor Wilds. His army clearly wasn't prepared to flee. Our victories have them on the defensive. We strike Corypheus now, while his people are reeling. If he's hiding in the Arbor Wilds, that's where we finish him. But what is Corypheus doing in such a remote area? His people have been ransacking elven ruins since Haven. We believe he seeks more. What he hopes to find, however, continues to elude us. Which should surprise no one. Fortunately, I can assist. You have my attention, Lady Morrigan. What Corypheus seeks in those Forgotten Woods is as ancient as it is dangerous. Which is? It is best if I show you. This is an Illuvian, an elven artifact from a time long before their empire was lost to human greed. I restored this one at great cost, but another lies within the Arbor Wilds. That is what Corypheus seeks. 
Corypheus wants this and you brought it into my castle? If the Darkspawn could breach these walls, would he not have already come for you? I found legends of an elven temple within the Arbor Wilds. Untouched. It proved too dangerous to approach, and thus I turned elsewhere to find my prize. If Corypheus has turned southward, he could succeed where I failed. The Illuvian would be his. What does it do? A more appropriate question would be, where does it lead? If this place once had a name, it has long been lost. I call it the Crossroads, a place where all Illuvians join, wherever they might be. A useful trick. For one who knows the way, certainly. The ancient elves left no roads, only ruins hidden in far-flung corners. This is how they traveled between them. As you can see, most of the mirrors are dark, broken, corrupted, or unusable. As for the rest, a few can be opened from this side, but only a few. How did you find out about this place? My travels have led me to many strange destinations, Inquisitor. Once, they led me here. It offered sanctuary. Sanctuary? Not all the mirrors lead back to our world. The ancients were nothing if not... resourceful. If they don't lead back to our world, then... Places... between, like... this one. I can describe it no better. For a time, I had a safe place to raise my son. But only for a time. One cannot remain in between forever. What do you mean, a few can be opened from this side? Some of the Illuvians have been left unlocked, like doors accidentally left ajar. All others are closed. They can be opened only from beyond. Opened how? With a key. I suppose you have such a key? The key can be many things. Each Alluvian is different. I have knowledge as well as power. Often that is enough. Corypheus wants to come here? This is not the Fade. But it is very close. Someone with enough power could tear down the ancient barriers. And enter the Fade in the flesh, like Corypheus wanted to do with the Anchor. He learned of the Illuvian in the Arbor Wilds as I did. He marshals the last of his forces to reach it. You have made Corypheus desperate, Inquisitor. We must work together to stop him, and soon. With an Illuvion, Corypheus could cross into the Fade in the Flesh. Indeed. The Inquisitor can attest that these artifacts still work if one knows how to use them. What happens when Corypheus enters the Fade? Why, he will gain his heart's desire and take the power of a god. Or, and this is more likely, the Lunatic will unleash forces that tear the world apart. I won't allow it. I can't. Indeed, should Corypheus succeed, do not doubt you would be first to feel his holy wrath. Pardon me, but does this mean everything's lost unless we get to the Illuvian before him? Corypheus has a head start, no matter how quickly our army moves. 
We should gather our allies before we march. Can we wait for them? We should send our spies ahead to the Arbor Wilds. Without support from the soldiers? You'd lose half of them. Then what should we do? You overcome it, all three of you together. Josephine, have our allies send scouts to meet us in the wilds. Liliana, your fastest agents will join them. Together, we'll have enough spies to slow down Corypheus' army until Cullen's soldiers arrive. <laughs> Such confidence. But the Arbor Wilds are not so kind to visitors. Old elven magic lingers in those woods. We'd be remiss to not take advantage of your knowledge, Lady Morgan. Please, lend us your expertise. Tis why I came here. Although it is good to see its value recognized. Any further instructions, Inquisitor? Remember what Corypheus has done while you plan. Every loss, every setback, every death. Let him learn what it means to be an enemy of the Inquisition. We'll hound Corypheus in the wilds before he can find the temple or this Illuvion. Inquisitor. How goes the battle, Captain? The Red Templars fall beneath our blades, Your Worship. Commander Cullen says they're nearly finished. Our scouts saw Corypheus traveling towards an elven ruin to the north. We can clear you a path through his armies. Make the monsters pay, Captain. Leave none standing. We shall not flinch, Your Worship. Not a one of us. Andraste guide you, Inquisitor. I wonder. Is it Andraste your soldiers invoke during battle, or does a more immediate name come to their lips? They show me respect, Morrigan. No one mistakes me for the Maker. True. You are far more likely to come to their aid than a Chantry fable. But I digress. If your scouts report accurately, I believe these ruins to be the Temple of Mathal. Which is? A place of worship out of elven legend. If Corypheus seeks it, then the alluvian he covets lies within. Let us hope we reach this temple before the entire forest is reduced to ash. We are aware of the designs Corypheus has on our lives and people, Ambassador. You must excuse us, however, if our mind wanders to our beloved kingdom. I pray our lay fares well in your absence. It is our return to court that concerns us. Our dear cousin Gaspar warns it might align with poor weather. It's ambitious to predict so far into the future. I'm confident your majesty can weather any storm. We will see how this battle proceeds. Corypheus yet threatens to engulf us. We are gladdened to see you, Herald. 
This day will be recalled for ages. We are privileged to witness the fulfillment of the Inquisition's purpose. There are other ills, Your Majesty, that the Inquisition may be called upon to attend. We will note them with great interest. Men and women of faith serve you. Their favor is no less than our own, their service no less dear. With Orlé at your side, we will see you victorious against Corypheus. May you walk in the light. Inquisitor, I hear this Illuvian lies in a temple nearby. That's where the fighting will be worst. Andraste keep you safe. Move everyone immediately if the fighting comes closer. You may count on it. Good luck. Corypheus will finally grace us with his presence? I'd count on it. Be ready. I hear fighting ahead. They still think to fight us, Aster. These are but remnants. They will not keep us from the Well of Sorrows. Well of Sorrows? Be honored. Witness death at the hands of a new god. At last, Mathal's sanctum. Let us proceed before Corypheus interferes. You said Corypheus wanted an Illuvian, but he mentioned a Well of Sorrows. Which is right? I am uncertain of what he referred to. You were guessing. Corypheus might not be after this Illuvian. It might not even be here. Yes, I was wrong. Does that please you? 
Whatever the Well of Sorrows might be, Corypheus seeks it, and thus you must keep it from his grasp. Let's find this well before Corypheus's people do. I want to know how Corypheus returned to life. We saw him die. And his life force passes on to any blighted creature, Darkspawn or Grey Warden. Then Corypheus can't really die. We'll find a way to stop him once we're done here. It is strange. Archdemons possess the same ability, and still the Grey Wardens are able to slay them. Yet Corypheus, they locked away. Perhaps they knew he could do this, but not how. Are you certain Corypheus is using the power of the Blight to make himself immortal? Perhaps you forget. I was in Ferelden during the Fifth Blight. I have seen a true Archdemon rage. How Corypheus gained the power to send his soul into blighted bodies, that is the real question. Well, answering that question, let us destroy Corypheus for good. Perhaps. I would suggest first dealing with the well. If Corypheus obtains it, any chance of success could be lost. You said this Mythal was worshipped as a goddess? So one assumes. What is a god but a being of immense power? The dread old gods were nothing more than dragons, after all. They rise as archdemons, and they die. Perhaps Mathal was a powerful elf, a ruler among her kind. History often plays storyteller with facts. You admit lack of knowledge, and yet dismiss her so readily? I do not dismiss her. I question her supposed divinity. One need not be a god to have value. Truthfully, I'm uncertain Mathal was even a single entity. The accounts are varied. There are varied accounts of Mathal? In most stories, Mathal writes wrongs while exercising motherly kindness. Let fly your voice to Mathal, deliverer of justice, protector of sun and earth alike. Other paint her as dark, vengeful. Pray to Mathal and she would smite your enemies, leaving them in agony. More Dalish tales. If you know more about this soul, speak. The oldest accounts say Mathal was both of these, and neither. She was the mother, protective and fierce. That is all I would say. This is not a place to stir up old stories. Whatever the truth, all accounts of Mathal end the same. Exiled to the beyond with her brethren. What do you mean, exiled? Tricked by the Dread Wolf, as all the Elven Gods were said to be, trapped in a land beyond the Fade. Many Dalish believe this is why the Elves fell from grace and their gods did not save them. Or perhaps they were simply rulers slain by Tevinter. Who can say? Do you know what this part of the temple was used for? The room we stand in is a vestibule, not the temple proper. To those who knew it, perhaps this ritual was little more than a polite knock at the gate. These customs must have been as familiar to ancient elves as bowing to a queen is to you or I. I find it difficult to picture you curtsying to anyone. Have we become so familiar you can predict my manners and customs now? Nothing is lost by indulging in the occasional civilized conduct, particularly when unexpected. You've seen the elves here. They seem odd. Indeed. Two things are possible. One, this is a group of Dalish separated from their brethren, cultists, fanatic in their desire to keep humans away. Two, these are elves descended from the ancients having resided here since before the fall of Arlathan. The second appears unlikely, but if true, the implications are astounding. If they keep records, it could change everything we thought we knew about history. It is thrilling, no? Discover an era thought lost forever has possibly thrived in the shadows. We may, however, find these elves reluctant to part with their long-kept secrets. Why would this be here? Something wrong? It depicts the dread wolf, Fen Harel. In elven tales, he tricks their gods into sealing themselves away in the beyond for all time. 
The setting of Fenharel in Mathal's greatest sanctum is as blasphemous as painting Andraste naked in the Chantry. Some Chantries display statues of Andraste's betrayer, Maferath, as part of the chant. It might fulfill a similar function, a reminder of vigilance for the faithful. For all your knowledge, Lady Morrigan, you cannot resist giving legend the weight of history. The wise do not mistake one for the other. Pray tell, what meaning does our elven expert sense lurking behind this? None we can discern by staring at it. We can send for historians once peace is brought to this forest. The inhabitants of this temple may not appreciate guests. It appears the temple's magics are still strong. Is this elven? Does it say anything about this well of sorrows? Atishor, via Abalassan. It means enter the path of the well of sorrows. There is something about knowledge, respectful or pure. She then. She then. Tears all I can translate. That it mentions the well is a good omen. At least we know the Well of Sorrows was important. Supplicants to Mathal would have first paid obeisance here. Following their path may aid entry. might catch them. Hold a moment. While they rush ahead, this leads to our true destination. We should walk the petitioner's path as before. An army fights and dies for us. The longer we tarry, the more soldiers we lose outside. Let's jump down and be done with this place. In this case, I must agree with the witch. This is ancient ground, deserving of our respect. You see the urgency. We cannot find the Well of Sorrows unprepared. You're very eager to reach our destination. Are we not all eager to stop Corypheus from achieving his mad plan? It sounds like what you want is that well. There is a danger to the natural order. Legends walked Thedas once, things of might and wonder. Their passing has left us all the lesser. Corypheus would squander the ancient power of the well. I would have it restored. I should take your word that this is altruism and not hunger for power? Ah, uh, yes. Far easier to believe the Witch of the Wilds full of greed. Mankind blunders through the world, crushing what it does not understand. Elves, dragons, magic. The list is endless. We must stem the tide, or be left with nothing more than the mundane. This I know to be true. 
I read more in the first chamber than I revealed. It's said a great boon is given to those who use the Well of Sorrows, but at a terrible price. What exactly did that altar say about the Well of Sorrows? Like most elven writing, it was insufferably vague. The term I deciphered was Halam Shivanas, the sweet sacrifice of duty. It implies the loss of something personal for duty's sake, yet for those who served at this temple, a worthwhile trade. Did you not trust me enough to tell me about this price when you read it? I hoped to find more information. If I intended to cheat you, I would have feigned ignorance entirely. My priority is your cause, but if the opportunity arises to save this well, I am willing to pay the cost. And gain what? That is what we must discover. The rituals may point the way. Yes. More rituals? What are they for, do you know? I believe they signify an intent to lay oneself bare, to champion a cause without pity, regret, or shame. Mathal's cult was not fond of vacillation. One approached them with nothing less than complete confidence. What happened to those who were less sure of themselves? Legend does not say. Perhaps this place has a more gruesome history than we know. I want to discuss the well again. Oh, I see. An opportunity to use the well may not even arise. I understand this. All I meant to suggest is that, if it does, I be the one to do so. I am willing to accept the consequences. What if something happens to you? What about your son? Kieran is... a strong lad. He will thrive, with or without me. Are you sure of that? I am sure of precious little these days. Let us see if the doors have opened. Tis not what I expected. What was this chamber used for? We're being watched.
the novice. You are unlike the other invaders. You stumble down our paths at the side of one of our own. You bear the mark of magic, which is familiar. How has this come to pass? What is your connection to those who first disturbed our slumber? They are my enemies as well as yours. I am called Abelas. We are sentinels, tasked with standing against those who trespass on sacred ground. We wake only to fight, to preserve this place. Our numbers diminish with each invasion. I know what you seek. Like all who have come before you, you wish to drink from the Vera Belasan. The place of the Way of Sorrows. He speaks of the well. It is not for you. It is not for any of you. What is this Vera Belasan exactly? It is a path. One walked only by those who toiled in Mithal's favor. He speaks of priests, perhaps. More than that, you need not know. So... Your elves from ancient times? Before the Tevinter Imperium destroyed Arlathan? The Shemlin did not destroy Arlathan. We Elven warred upon ourselves. By the time the doors to this sanctuary closed, our time was over. Wait, that's not right. What do you say? You would not know truth. Shemlin history is as short as the pool of your years. What did the Imperium do then? Are you saying it wasn't a war? The War of Carrion feasting upon a corpse, yes. We awaken only when called, and each time find the world more foreign than before. It is meaningless. We endure. The Vera Belisan must be preserved. Solus, perhaps he'll listen to you. What shall I say, Inquisitor? Shall I sway him from a millennia of service by virtue of our shared blood? He clings to all that remains of his world, because he lacks the power to restore it. We came to stop Corypheus. He's here to take your well, not I. I believe you. Trespassers you are, but you have followed rites of petition. You have shown respect to Mithal. If these others are enemies of yours, we will aid you in destroying them. When this is done, you shall be permitted to depart. And never return. This is our goal, is it not? There is no reason to fight these Sentinels. Consider carefully. You must stop Corypheus, yes, but you may also need the well for your own. I accept your offer. You will be guided to those you seek. As for the Vera Belisan, it shall not be despoiled, even if I must destroy it myself. No! Morgan! Tough bastard. A day's march, hours of fighting, and still fierce as dragons. The Chantry never knew what it was throwing away. Samson, sir, watch out! Inquisitor, you and those elf things don't know when to stop. You've hunted us half across Thedas. I should have guessed you'd follow us into this hole. Your reserves are gone. So is the Lyrium. Isn't it time to stand down? To enjoy the mercy you showed our brothers and sisters? No thanks. Corypheus chose me twice. First as his general, now as the vessel for the Well of Sorrows. You know what's inside the well? Wisdom. The kind of wisdom that can scour a world. I give it to Corypheus, that he can walk into the Fade without your precious anchor. What's your part in it? What's a vessel? What else empties a well? I'll carry its power to Corypheus. One more task entrusted to me. Being force-fed Chantry Lyrium was good for something. This armor makes me a living fortress, mind and body. I won't forget a word of the well's knowledge. Corypheus will be unstoppable. I'll see Corypheus dead before I let him wield that power. How are you going to stop him? You're no match for Corypheus. Even if you drink from the well, you'll never master its wisdom as he could.
This is the strength that Chantry tried to bind. But it's a new world now, with a new god. So, Inquisitor, how will this go? Power is all well and good, until it's taken away. <laughs> What did you do? What did you do? My armor... It's gone! Delirium! I need it! Kill them all! Take it from Corypheus. You mustn't. <laughs> He's still breathing. We can take him back to Skyhold for judgment. Heard his parting words, Inquisitor. The elf seeks to destroy the Well of Sorrows. So the Sanctum is despoiled at last. You would have destroyed the Well yourself, given the chance. To keep it from your grasping fingers. Better it be lost than bestowed upon the undeserving. Fool. You'd let your people's legacy rot in the shadows. Enough. You cannot honestly... I said, enough! The well clearly offers power, Inquisitor. If that power can be turned against Corypheus, can you afford not to use it? Do you even know what you ask? As each servant of Mithal reached the end of their years, they would pass their knowledge on through this. All that we were, all that we knew, it would be lost forever. It's better that knowledge remain in the well, never passed on. You'd rather destroy it? There are other places, friend, other duties. Your people yet linger. Elven such as you? Yes, such as I. You have shown respect to Mithal, and there is a righteousness in you I cannot deny. Is that your desire? To partake of the Vir Belasan as best you can? To fight your enemy? I'll take anything that might help against Corypheus, no matter the price. So I see. The Vera Belisan may be too much for a mortal to comprehend. Brave it if you must. But know you this. You shall be bound forever to the will of Mithal. Bound? To a goddess who no longer exists, if she ever did? 
bound as we are bound. The choice is yours. Is it possible this Mythal might still exist? Anything is possible. Elven legend states that Mythal was tricked by Fen'Harel and banished to the beyond. Elven legend is wrong. The Dread Wolf had nothing to do with her murder. Murder? I, I said nothing of... She was slain, if a god truly can be. Betrayed by those who destroyed this temple. Yet the Virabella San remains. As do we. That is something. Are you leaving the temple? Our duty ends. Why remain? There is a place for you, Letheline, if you seek it. Perhaps there are places the Shamlin have not touched. The Imperium went to great lengths to expunge elven history. You might be the last to know the truth. Would the elves of your lands listen to the truth? They might. Would it hurt to try? It very well may, Shemlin. Yes. It may be that only Uthenera awaits us. The blissful sleep of eternity never to awaken, if fate is kind. Could come with us. Fight Corypheus. He killed your people. We killed ourselves long ago. Malas Amali Nahalam Abalas. His name, Abalas, means sorrow. I said, I hope he finds a new name. You'll note the intact Illuvian. I was correct on that count, at least. Is it still a threat? Can Corypheus use it to travel the Fade? You recall when I took you through my Illuvian, I said each required a key? The well is the key. Take its power, and Mathal's last Illuvian will be no more use to Corypheus than glass. I did not expect the well to feel so... hungry. Don't go any closer, Morrigan. I am willing to pay the price the well demands. I am also the best suited to use its knowledge in your service. Or more likely to your own ends? What would you know of my ends, Elf? You are a glutton drooling at the sight of a feast. You cannot be trusted. Of those present, I alone have the training to make use of this. Let me drink, Inquisitor. What training makes you so qualified? I have studied the oldest lore. I have delved into mysteries of which you could only dream. Can you honestly tell me there is anyone better suited? I would be. You lead the Inquisition. This is not a risk you can take. I have the best chance of making use of the well for everyone. Let me drink. You're not concerned about the price? Bound forever to the will of Mithal? Bound to the will of a dead god? It seems an empty warning. Perhaps a compulsion yet remains. Who can say otherwise? I do not fear it, even so. Are you sure you want this, Morrigan? We don't know what will happen. We do not, and yet it must be done. I am ready. Looking at it, listening to it, that's not just knowledge from the ancient elven priests. It's their will. How would you know such a thing? That's what Abelos was telling us. The collective will of the priests puts anyone who drinks under a compulsion, a gas. Can't you feel it? That would match the legends, but it does not tell us what the gas entails. I would still use the well, but you are right. We must be cautious. Thoughts? She is right about only one thing. We should take the power which lies in that well. It all seems ghoulish. Let Morrigan use it, if she wants it so much. If it is truly between you and her, then let her take the risk. Make her help us all. Enough deliberation. Give me your decision. 
It's yours. Are you all right? Elasin <laughs> Salah. Visan. Visan Allah. I. I am intact. There is much to sift through. But now we can. It is done. I'm pleased to report we won the battle, Inquisitor. When you went through that mirror, Corypheus and his archdemon fled the field. I'm not sure why. What he wanted was no longer within the temple. Perhaps. He spent so long trying to get into the temple, he probably couldn't have helped his forces by that point. Then Corypheus is finished. If he is wise, he will hide, and rebuild his strength before he attacks again. He will not hide. You sound pretty certain when you say that. The Well of Sorrows held many voices. And they speak to me now from across the ages. They hold wisdom. Secrets I never dreamed possible. But even they fear what Corypheus has become. Should we fear him more than his army? Possibly. Luckily for you, he has a weakness. The dragon he calls is not truly an archdemon. It is a dragon in which Corypheus has infested part of his being. He doubtless did so out of pride to emulate the gods of old. That pride can be exploited. Kill the dragon, and his ability to leap into other bodies is disrupted. He can be slain. You're sure? If there are no bodies for him to jump to... You assume there is a limit to the range of his power. There is not. Then what do you propose? Killing the dragon is no simple task, if it could even be found. There is a way to defeat the dragon, to match Corypheus in his power. The well whispers it to me now. Your help will be required, Inquisitor. Speak to me when you are ready and we shall begin. I'll see to Skyhold's defenses in the meantime. Forgive me, Inquisitor. For personal interest, I have relieved Josephine, as you might expect. Knight Templar Samson, general to Corypheus, traitor to the Order. The blood on his hands cannot be measured. His head is too valuable to take. Kirkwall, Orlay, many would see him suffer. I can't say I'm not one of them. The Headsman's Axe isn't enough. 
That's an impressive amount of ill will. The Red Lyrium will steal your vengeance. You know what it does. Corypheus only delayed my corruption. Are you still loyal to that thing? He poisoned the Order, used them to kill thousands. Templars have always been used. How many were left to rot like I was after the Chantry burned away their minds? Piss on it. I followed him so Templars could at least die at their best. Same lie as the Chantry. The Prophet just isn't as pretty. I found your people. They believed in you. Believed your cause was righteous. Not your business, Inquisitor. Your friend Maddox was so loyal he killed himself. For you. They were always going to die. I saw what Corypheus was doing. So yes, I fed them hope instead of despair. I made them believe their pain had purpose. Just like the Chantry does. <laughs> right, Commander? It ended as well as anything else I've done. Corypheus would kill me on sight. I'll tell your people what they want. Everything I cared about is destroyed. We could use more friends in the Free Marches. We'll barter you there. Samson, you are a traitor and a murderer. Kirkwall's leaders will decide your fate. Do as you will, Inquisitor. Your kind always does. Victory in the Arbor Wilds. The Archdemon might have been a real threat to our army, but it flew off once we turned the tide. It is still out there, however. I wonder what Corypheus plans now. We'll deal with whatever he throws at us. Do not underestimate Corypheus. He is powerful, and you have yet to fight him one-on-one. -on -one. But he will come. You will get your chance. If he tries, he'll regret it. I believe you. Not long ago, this was impossible to imagine. You, a valued friend, victory close at hand. The time has come to consider what will come next. You'll be the next Divine, I assume. That has not happened yet. But it may. If the Maker wills it, then yes, I will answer his call. Blessed are they who stand before the corrupt and the wicked and do not falter. You have come far, my friend. It has been an honor. I was pondering who might be divine, and it suddenly occurred to me. Is it so ridiculous for the Grand Clerics to support me? Why shouldn't they? If you were divine, what would you do? Change things. Change everything. Your support of the Mage Rebellion was a good start. We must build on this. No more circles. The Mages will be free. The Chantry will accept them as the Maker's children. In fact, it will accept everyone. Elves, Dwarves, even Canari. Why exclude them? The Chantry allows our differences to tear us apart, instead of teaching us how we are the same. I think you would make a good Divine. I am glad to hear it. Your support may persuade the Grand Clerics to vote in my favor. Justinia wanted to accept the Mages. Our treatment of them made the mess you had to clean up. But perhaps it is not just mages we must accept, but all people. A nice dream, no? It is certainly something worth working for. Ugh. But what am I saying? Justinia couldn't find enough support for a form. Why would I fare any better? Perhaps I should stop filling my head with such foolish notions and get back to work. Inquisitor, I was... Do you have a moment? What were you like? Before the Anchor? Has it affected you? Changed you in any way? Your mind? Your morals? Your... 
Spirit. I don't believe so. Ah. Uh. Why do you ask? You show a wisdom I have not seen since... Since my deepest journeys into the ancient memories of the Fade. You are not what I expected. What have I done that's so surprising? Kunari are savage creatures. Their ferocity held in check only by the rigid teachings of the Kune. But you have shown a subtlety in your actions. A wisdom that goes against everything I know of your people. I'm just one part of this team, Solus. What about Cassandra or Liliana? Cassandra separates matters of faith from those of the world. And she above all should understand how limited that is. Liliana has a brilliant mind, but her faith was damaged. To her, it is all a game of tactics now. But not you. So what does this mean, Solus? It means that I respect you deeply, Inquisitor. And I have disturbed you enough for one evening. My dear, I know you must have a great deal on your mind right now, but I need to speak with you. You know as well as I how far the Inquisition's influence has spread, and how desperate the Grand Clerics have become. Our opinion will be instrumental in their election of the new Divine. I thought that might be coming after the Grand Ball. The Inquisition may not be invited to their vote, but our actions will certainly influence the Grand Clerics. To sit on the Sunburst throne, a candidate should have grace, charm, and a will of solid steel. Cassandra may lack the first two, but unless you can think of someone better, she is the strongest choice. What would your ideal Divine do with her power? The most important thing, of course, is the restoration of the Circles and the Templar Order. The institutions that have protected Sadus for ages must be rebuilt and the malcontents utterly crushed. We cannot allow anarchists to threaten the lives of the innocent. After we have restored sanity to the world, there will be time to address voices of dissent. Where can we find candidates outside of the Chantry? There must be someone other than Liliana or Cassandra. The Chantry is already desperate. They would not look to unordained women if they had any choice. You may have better luck searching the halls of the Imperial Court. There are many women serving the Empire who have the necessary presence and acumen. Liliana might be a better choice than Cassandra, don't you think? Liliana is a well-meaning fool. She will do irreparable harm to countless people in the name of freedom. She proposes to abolish the Circles with nothing but a solemn promise from mages not to murder children. When an angry mage lashes out inside a tower, villages aren't destroyed. The Circle protects us all. Maiders will die and take ordinary men with them in a war that cannot be won. Consider carefully, Inquisitor. Everything we do is a sign from the Maker to those who seek one. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh wait, no I'm not. It's just the funniest, isn't it? That creaky old Abelas in Mythal saying the Elves weren't destroyed by Tevinta. An admission that did not come easy. Of course it didn't, because that's Elfy Elves' thing, being the sore losers of history. I never hear the end of it. Like being sad makes them better than me. Turns out they're not victims, they're the same as everyone else. Assholes. Plus, a big old temple full of demon worshipping lies. Grand, that. You seem pretty certain. You don't believe anything from Mythal? Of course not. What, well, I should believe all that stuff, because elves. I mean, it was impressive and all. Makes the Dalish look like tits for living in the woods, but so what? There can't be a bunch of gods, and the Maker. Don't matter how much or little you believe, those don't fit. So call me stupid, but I believe the stuff not made up by dead people who failed. Mythal is a ruin full of demons. I mean, it just makes sense, right? There's so much history there. What if some of it is true? No, now you're stupid. You can't think that because it's stupid. But everything we saw. Why believe it? Because Abelas looked weird. If that's all it takes, Carifi's shit heel is full of lumpy truth. You're not even an elf. Why are you being so damned elfy? You're the frigging herald of Andraste. Every time you open your mouth, you'll sound like an idiot. It's not as if it matters what I believe. I've already denied being the Herald. Not for me to say, yeah. Just saying. Anyway, believe what you want. So long as we kill Kariffy fish. Whatever. 
Corypheus died, and then he didn't. That's why he always felt wrong, like he didn't fit inside himself. He wears another man's life. I thought dying was forever. So did I. Corypheus seems to break a lot of rules. But is it him? Is he real? If a man can be dead and then not... Could I have saved the real Cole? What happened to him wasn't your fault. It gnawed at me, hooks in the hollows, pain of not knowing like the knot in his belly. But that is a hurt, and hurts can heal. I can heal. Forget. Cole? Cole? Are you? You may still use that name, if you like. I am here to help you. Want to drink? I've a hankering for company. When I was a boy, there were these urchins who roamed the streets near my father's house. One day they found a dog, a wretched little thing. It came to them for food. I caught it, tied a rope around its neck, and strung it up. Do you know what I did? You stopped them? Cut the dog down? I did nothing. Not a damn thing. It was crying. I saw the kicking legs, the neck straining and twisting. And I turned around, went inside and closed the door. I could have told my father, or alerted someone. I didn't. I just pretended it wasn't happening. You said you were just a boy. I was old enough to know the dog was suffering and that it was wrong. I may as well have tied the noose myself. We... could... make the world better. It's just easier to shut our eyes. When we first met, you were saving peasants from demons and outlaws. You're not a man who shuts his eyes. A little insane, maybe. Of course you'd make light of it. You make saving the world look easy. The rest of us can only dream of matching what you've done. Don't you see? It's not just about what happened back then. There's always some dog out there. Some fucking mongrel that doesn't know how to stay away. I understand you have spared the Grey Wardens from destroying what goodwill was left them. Tis good of you, considering the weakness Corypheus exploited was their own doing. Still, should a true Archdemon one day arise, they will no doubt be needed. Or so they would have us believe. One thing which makes me curious, did you encounter the hero of Ferelden at Adamant Fortress? Was the hero of Ferelden a friend of yours? We traveled together during the time he fought the Blight. I helped him, and he helped me. Without him, Kieran would never have been born. Regardless, did you see him? I met no one by that title. When the Champion of Kirkwall mentioned a Grey Warden ally, I assumed that ally would be he. It was, after all, just the sort of thing in which he would involve himself. But that rather begs the question, if the hero of Ferelden was not at Adamant, where is he? My suggestion? Track him down. He could be a great aid against Corypheus, or a terrible foe to the Inquisition. I'd like to know more about you. 
Ah, yes. Whence comes the mystery woman slinking her way into the Inquisition's ranks? Once I was an apostate, living well away from the banal influence of the Chantry in the Kukari Wilds. Then came the Fifth Blight with its dark spawn, and I left Ferelden for the Empress's court. Tis certain the nobles of Orlais breathe a collective sigh of relief that I am now here. It's odd that an apostate could live so... openly. <laughs> it confuses those who expect apostates to cower and hide. I stand boldly before them and demand to know why I need some Chantry mage to teach me to control my power. They would put me on a leash so they can feel safer at night. I am uninterested in their comfort. Naturally, it helps to have friends in high places. You were in Ferelden during the Blight? The Blight began in the Kukari Wilds, so yes, I experienced it firsthand. Indeed, I fought at the hero of Ferelden's side for a time. He is the reason the Blight was defeated. In the end, what he did for me... I will always be grateful. And after that, I came to Orlais. The last place one would look for me, or such was my hope. The Orlesian court seems like an odd place to find someone like you. That was the point, originally. I knew the Empress was intrigued by the Arcane, and that I could answer questions no Chantry mage could. Thus, we fit together nicely. I became her advisor, and she my benefactor and source of refuge. Truth be told, our arrangement would not have lasted much longer. Too many wagging tongues, even for Selene. Tell me more about your son. He is a very special young man. Special in what way? In every way. At first, Kieran was a means to an end. But as he grew, I never thought of myself as a mother, Inquisitor. I, I had no good example to follow. I find myself becoming something I can barely recognize. I leave you to the garden. Of course. Inquisitor, may I have a word? I notice you've paid Lady Montelier quite a number of compliments. What does that have to do with you? An entanglement with our ambassador seems most unwise. I asked Josephine to join the Inquisition because we needed a diplomat, not so she could be toyed with. I enjoy being with Josephine. I'm not trying to break her heart. Then I would be more cautious. Josephine's no stranger to courtly intrigue love? There she's an innocent. She has no idea you are truly attracted to her. If indeed you are. What do you have against the idea of me being attracted to Josephine? I have not known you long, Inquisitor. Neither has Josephine. Her heart is easily carried away. I want to be sure it's taken by someone who truly cares. So, if you feel anything towards Josephine, I want to know. Yes, I'm very attracted to Josephine. Is that so? Whatever is between you, I ask that you treat her with kindness. For her sake, as well as yours. Whatever happens, I'm glad to see Josephine has a concerned friend here. <laughs> I have so few true friends these days. Those that are left I deeply cherish. I will not trouble you any further, but I do watch over my friends. Good day, Your Worship. Leliana said I was an innocent in love? More or less. Of all the... I'm quite capable of understanding our association. I've never thought your intentions were overly romantic, Inquisitor, I, I assure you. Perhaps I should have composed a ballad then. Or sent roses. What? You mean, you do? We've only just... I didn't wish to presume you harbored any tender feelings for me. But I am attracted to you. Quite, in fact. But we haven't even known each other a few short months. How can you declare this liking for me after such a brief time together? I don't know why I can't stop thinking about you, Josephine. I only know that I do. I would not object to a closer relationship between us, my lord. If that sounds agreeable to you. Nothing would make me happier. 
Well, then. A message from Divine Justinia. That's a shock. You're all right reading it? Thank you for the concern, Inquisitor. But I am. This message was written months, perhaps even years ago, to be delivered to me if she died. I've heard of such contingency plans. A sudden death often leaves loose ends. I'm to go to Valence, a small village on the waking sea. There is something hidden there. Why hide things in Valence? What's so special about it? Justinia was revered mother at the Chantry there for many years before she became the Divine. It is a place that holds great meaning for her. Do you know what you're looking for? The Divine was a powerful woman who used her position to obtain all sorts of things. Whatever she hid in Valence would very likely benefit the Inquisition and must be kept from falling into the wrong hands. If I'm lucky, she will have instructions for me. I'll help in whatever way I can. Wonderful. I was hoping you would agree to come with me to Valence. One more thing. If what is hidden in Valence is as valuable as I think, we're not going to be the only ones looking for it. I shall meet you at the Chantry in Valence. Try not to delay. Just as I remember it. You didn't tell me you'd been here before. The hero of Ferelden and I came here after the Blight to visit Justinia. She was just Dorothea then, a revered mother. It's peaceful here. You must have good memories of this place. It was a place of comfort. It is good to see it still untouched by Corypheus. Liliana, is that you? Sister Natalie, what are you doing here? I thought you were in Val Rayo. No, I've been here since Justinia died. This place makes me feel like... like she's still with us. Inquisitor, this is Natalie, a trusted friend. Wait, Inquisitor? You... you brought the Inquisitor here? My lord... Forgive me for not recognizing you earlier. Bigger things to worry about than that. Oh, uh... I see. Natalie, listen. There is something hidden here. Something Justinia left for me. Oh, really? What is it? I don't know. But we'll find it. I'm curious to see what brought us all here. Justinia's letter came with instructions for me. They were a little cryptic. Always remember that faith sprung from a barren branch, that light has no fear of darkness, above all, that strength lives in an open heart. She must be hinting at something in here. Let's look around. Do they still sing verses from the Benedictions every Friday? That canticle was Justinia's favorite. Uh, yes, of course. We'd never give up the traditions of our most beloved divine. That is lovely to hear. I stare up at the breach sometimes. It's terrifying, but beautiful in its way. It is beautiful. Have you seen it by sunrise? When the sun rises through it, it splits into what looks like a thousand suns, like a broken mirror. Yes, spectacular, isn't it? You must be careful, Natalie. Justinia's enemies are making their move vying for position, and the sunburst throne. An open heart. Well, that one's quite literal. And morbid. But Justinia always said that compassion was my greatest strength. Doubt is easy. It takes courage to trust. I was in the cloister in Lothering when the blight began. There was a lot of fear back then. No one knew what was going to happen whether we would live or die. And then one morning, I found a single bloom on a dead rose bush. And I thought, even in the midst of all this, life finds
finds a way. The Maker hasn't abandoned us. What was that? Looks like we opened something. Sorry to keep you waiting. Good old Liliana was playing you the whole time. Didn't you realize? They never sing the benedictions here on Fridays, Natalie. Something so simple. And you got it so wrong. I wanted to believe, but you were lying from the start. Keep that pretty mouth shut if you must, dear. You've already told me everything I need to know. The prickle with burrs on your hem, talking about the sun rising through the breach. It all points to a single place. Morel in the Dells, Grand Cleric Victoire's Bastion. She sent you, didn't she? Victoire was always an opportunist. Who is this Grand Cleric? I've never heard of her. An experienced cleric. She never agreed with Justinia, but kept her ideas to herself. I suppose now, with Justinia dead, she thought she could make her move. I want to know what this Grand Cleric planned here. She sent Natalie here to see what Justinia was hiding, no? The Inquisition has turned Thidas away from the true Chantry. It must be stopped. Stop us? You must be joking. Mother Victoire is well loved by many. The Inquisition has more enemies than you know. And Victoire thinks she can ally with them. Good work. We know the name of our enemy. That's half the battle won. Exactly. Kill me then. I am not afraid to die for my beliefs. At least I still know what I believe. Release her, Liliana. She's no threat. The Grand Cleric? She is one woman. We are the Inquisition. The Inquisitor has spoken. Run. Tell your mistress that she has a choice. The Inquisition is coming. Can't be it. There's nothing here. It's not what you expected. That doesn't mean it's nothing. There's a message carved in the lid. The left hand should lay down her burden. She... she's releasing me. The Divine has a long reach, but it is always her left hand that stretches out. A thousand lies, a thousand deaths. Her commands, but my conscience that bore the consequences. She apologized in the Fade. She said she failed you. This is what she meant. All this time, Justinia carried the fear that she was using me. Just like I'd been used in the past. But Marjolaine's games were trifles. Justinia gambled with the fate of nations. She needed me. No one else could have done what I did. She knows that. Then you have to let it go. Let her go. You don't owe her anything anymore. If it were not for you, I would have killed Natalie and called it a good thing. Thank you for showing me what was right when I couldn't see it for myself. There are things that must be said, but not here. I will see you back at Skyhold. I'm told that Ambassador Montillier is pleased with the restraint you showed in Valence. Ugh, she's positively beside herself. I will never hear the end of it. Niceness before knives, Liliana. Haven't I always told you? Will that be all, my lady? For now. How have you been feeling since Valence? Good. Wonderful. Valence was something of a rebirth for me. If you hadn't been with me at Valence, I would have killed Natalie. I'd have told you that I didn't have a choice. But there is always a choice. I am more than this. I am more than what Justinia made me. What does this mean for my Inquisition? Will you still be my spymaster? Of course. I would not give up my post. Not after everything we've built. I just know now that I shouldn't ignore my heart. 
Mercy is not always a weakness. Do you resent Justinia for what she did? How can I when there is so much between us? When she gave her life for peace? No, I believe her intentions were pure. Most intentions are. You've exceeded her. She could never have imagined the power you now hold. And now I will know how to use that power wisely. I have to stay true to who I really am, before a spymaster, left hand or bard. I almost lost myself. How do you stay so civil with everyone, Josephine? Bonds of circumstance among the nobility are fickle. Civility is the only constant everyone admires. And I do deplore rudeness in those who know better. Does it even become a strain sometimes? Well, it can be trying. There is no shortage of self-regard among the nobility. The game can be wearying, discouraging, and extremely painful. But honestly, I'd miss meeting people. I've made the most fascinating friends. One good thing about becoming Inquisitor has been meeting so many different people. I'm pleased. I imagine we appear a strange bunch to those outside our circle. Mages, Templars, Seekers, and an apostate elf are not often found working in harmony. Or at all. How far do your roots go back to Orlais? Very far. The Montiliers used to have vast holdings in Valroyo itself. I wish I could have seen them. Especially the ones bearing the family crest. The original crest design was abandoned when we were exiled from the city. I've always wanted to find a copy. Why was Liliana so set against us being together, Josephine? I think nothing of it. She'd disapprove of anyone I chose to keep serious company with. Back in Valroyo, Liliana was practically my older sister. So you two never had a romantic history together? A romantic... You did hear me say Liliana was like a sister to me. She's a most dear friend, and nothing more. Has our being together set any tongue wagging? Undoubtedly. A rumor already gave you a dozen suitors the moment you took your title. Who were these rumors pairing me with? I can only speak to what was whispered in several courts. Josephine. <sighs> to begin with, Cassandra, Leliana, Colin, Dorian, Mother Giselle, Enchanter Fiona, Chancellor Roderick, three R's, two counts, and some man named Philip. Honestly, I don't think he even exists. I thought we might go somewhere a little more private for a while. I have so much to do, but... Oh, let's do. After you. Come on, Krim. I'm working my ass off trying to get you to see that move. You still got plenty of ass left, Chief. Uh, your worship. Glad you came by. I got a letter from my contacts in the Ben Hasrath. Already verified it with red. Do you want to discuss this alone? Not like I was hiding it from my boys. Besides, right now, I need to hit something. You know they've got training dummies, Chief. The training dummy might actually defend itself against the shield bash. Anyway, the Ben Hasrath letter. What did the letter say? The Ben Hasrath have been reading my reports. They don't like Corypheus or his Venatori. And they really don't like Red Lyrium. They're ready to work with us. With you, boss. The Kunari and the Inquisition joining forces. That could be a powerful alliance. My people have never made a full-blown alliance with a foreign power before. This would be a big step. They found a massive Red Lyrium Shing operation out on the coast. They wanted us to hit it together. Talked about bringing in one of their dreadnoughts. Always wanted to see one of those big war ships in action. Did you see that? Go get some water. They're worried about tipping the smugglers, so no army. My chargers, you, maybe some backup. What does this alliance really get us? They wouldn't use the word alliance if they didn't mean it. Naval power. 
More Ben Hasrath reports. Kunari soldiers pointed at the Venatori. It could do a lot of good. You don't seem entirely happy about this. No, I'm good. It's... Uh... I'm used to them being... over there. It's been a while. I thought Kunari wanted to extend their reach to the whole world. Yeah. Just didn't think I'd see it. Look, the Kuhn answers a lot of questions. It's a good life for a lot of people. But it's a big change, and a lot of folks here wouldn't do so well under that kind of life. I guess it's not like we're converting. This is just us joining forces against Corypheus. On that front, I think we're good. I think the Inquisition could use some help from the Canari. Good. I'll pass on word to Colin and Red. We can set up the meeting whenever you're ready. All right. Our Kunari contact should be here to meet us. He is? Good to see you again, Hisrad. Gat! Last I heard, you were still in Saharan. They finally decided I'd calm down enough to go back into the world. Boss, this is Gat. We work together in Saharan. It's a pleasure to meet you, Inquisitor. Hisrad's reports say you're doing good work. Ironball's name is Hisrad. Under the Kuhn, we use titles, not names. My title was Hisrad, because I was signed to secret work. You can translate it as Keeper of Illusions, or... Liar. It means liar. Well, you don't have to say it like that. I'm only here because we both want to stop Corypheus. Indeed. The Tevinter Imperium is bad enough without the interference of this venatory cult. Yes. Filthy, decadent brutes, the lot of them. I'm certain life would be much better for all of us under the Kuhn. It was for me, after the Canari rescued me from slavery in Tevinter. I was eight. The Kuhn isn't perfect, but it gave me a better life. Yes, one free from all that pointless free will and independent thought. Such an improvement. Arguing about the war between your two nations isn't going to help anyone right now. I'm not here to convert anyone. All I care about is stopping this red lyrium from reaching Minrathos. With this stuff, the Vince could make their slaves into an army of magical freaks. We could lose the Heron and see a giant Tevinter army come marching back down here. The Ben Hasrath agree. That's why we're here. Our Dreadnought is safely out of view and out of range of any Venatori mages on shore. We'll need to eliminate the Venatori, then signal the Dreadnought so it can come in and take out the smuggler ship. What do you think, Ball? Mm, don't know. I've never liked covering a Dreadnought run. Too many ways for crap to go wrong. If our scouts underestimate enemy numbers, we're dead. If we can't lock down the Venatori mages, the ship is dead. It's risky. Riskier than letting Red Lyrium into Minrathos? If it's dangerous for the Dreadnought close to shore, why not attack when the smugglers reach open water? Any decent smuggling ship can outrun a Dreadnought on open water. We need to catch them close to shore. There might be Venatori mages on the ship as well. If the Dreadnought can't handle them. It's unlikely there'll be more than two or three mages on the ship, and they'll be dead by the third shot. On land, though, a half-dozen Venatori attacking the Dreadnought from cover could do some serious damage. I could have crushed any Venatori resistance with the Inquisition's main forces. Why not use them? Because then the Venatori would have seen you coming and run. They'd schedule a new shipment for later, and our spies might not know when or where. This is risky, yes. But it's our best chance to destroy the shipping operation permanently. Let's go hold up our end of the bargain, then. My agent suggested two possible locations the Venatori may be camped to guard the shore. There, and there. We'll need to split up and hit both at once. I'll come with you, boss. Krim can lead the charges. Let me fill him in. Come by when you're ready to move. Once they're down, send up your signal. That'll let the Dreadnought know it's safe to come in. Understood, Chief. Remember, you're gonna want a volley to start, but don't get suckered into fighting at range. They've got mages. It's all right. We've got a mage of our own. I'm not a mage! Get in close and take their enchanter down before he takes over the battlefield. He'll be dead before he knows it. Just... pay attention, all right? 
The Vince want this red lyrium shipment bad. Yes, I know. Thanks, Mother. Kunari don't have mothers, remember? We'll be fine, Chief. All right, Chargers. Horns up! Horns up! Ready whenever you are, boss. You gave your Chargers the easier target. You think? Lower and farther from the smuggler's ship, it's much less likely to be heavily defended. Suppose we'll do the heavy lifting then, just like old times. <laughs> Clear, Gat. Right. Signaling the Dreadnought. Chargers already sent theirs up. See them down there. I knew you gave them the easier job. There's the Dreadnought. That brings back memories. Nice one. Crap. The Chargers can't stand against that kind of force. No, they can't. Your men need to hold that position, Bull. They do that. They're dead. And if they don't, the Venatori retake it and the Dreadnought is dead. You'd be throwing away an alliance between the Inquisition and the Canari. You'd be declaring yourself Talvashov. With all you've given the Inquisition, half the Ben Hasra think you've betrayed us already. I stood up for you, Hisrad. I told them you would never become Talvashov. They're my men. I know, but you need to do what's right, Hisrad, for this alliance and for the Kuhn. Call the retreat. Don't. They are falling back. All these years, Hisrad, and you throw away all that you are. For what? For this? For them? His name is Iron Bull. I suppose it is. Get out of range. Won't be long now. Bull, when the dreadnought sinks. Sinks? Canary dreadnoughts don't sink. <sighs> Come on. Let's get back to my boys. Hey, boss. Inquisitor. It is my duty to inform you that there will be no alliance between our peoples. Nor will you be receiving any more Ben Hasrath reports from your Talvishoth ally. You under orders to kill me, Gat? No. The Ben Hasrath have already lost one good man. They'd rather not lose two. So much for that. I'm proud of you, Bull. <laughs> Thanks, boss. You're late. Sorry, Chief. Still sore from fighting off all those events. Good to see you, Inquisitor. How did the Chargers come out of the fight? Just fine. Thanks to you and the Chief, we had plenty of time to fall back. The Chief's even breaking open a cask of chasing sack mead for the Chargers tonight. Damn it, Krem. That's the kind of thing you don't have to mention to the Inquisitor. Sorry, Chief. Ah, forget it. You're doing fine. You have a problem. That over there is a full tavern, but everyone's drinking alone. They're all up their own asses about the Inquisition. 
I can't have fun with everybody whinging, and they'll fall on their swords before Corypheus can push them. I'm thinking pranks. Set a few up, knock a few down. You win or not? I don't understand how annoying my people will help. Look, you have experts for everything, and I know a bunch of tight-ass people when I see them. Oh, sure, they'll complain, but they'll really mean... Thank you for distracting me from the end of the stupid world. Come on! Lead the way. What, really? Really? <laughs> I knew you were different. Let's go. What, the desk? Oh, yes. Center of the Empire and all that. What to do, what to do. All right, Sarah. What do you want to do? Thing looks heavy. Don't want to move or break it. I got it. Easy one. Just a slip of something under here. There, won't notice much, but it's just that little bit wonky. He's so in control that'll piss him royally. I tell one of the soldiers and boom, the general seems like people. And since he works for you, you seem like people. Come on, next one. Right, little lady prissy pants. Have a look for something short. What, just the door? Where she greets every important idiot. Yes. Well, Sarah, what do you have in mind? Um, <laughs> get a bucket. Classic, yeah? Five minutes of sloppy boss gets you weeks of happy kitchen staff. Except for the one who cleans it up, I suppose. But whatever. Next stop. What's that? A locked... No, leave that. Not interested in her hidden things. Not for just a bit of fun. Maybe... Feed her messenger something gassy? No, bears don't pop. But they flap and... Uh... Hmm. Who is up there? Go! <laughs> that was fun. An inquisitor of the people. Still remembering you're one of them. If all they got was the Herald stuff, the serious bit, you'd start to sound pretty scary. That works, but not for long. I think you're off the mark. By a lot. Oh, probably. But it works on me and everyone I know, so I'm right. Same reason everyone else thinks they're right. It's all bull, so pick the advice you like, I guess. Anyway, fun time, Inquisitor. You! Oh, Frig. You did it! <laughs> Inquisitor, you honor us with your presence. Will you be dining alone, your worship, or will others be arriving later? I may have a friend joining me. Very good, your worship. Right this way, please. Please enjoy your meal this evening, your worship. You can't tell her. She'll laugh and then do it because she loves you. She wants to make you happy. You saw something in him that needed a word of encouragement? He wants his wife to tie his hands to the bedposts, little silk ribbons. He worries she'll hate him. She only said it because she was jealous of your shoes. Remember his hand on your waist as the music swelled. So many little hurts, even here, away from blood and battle. I wouldn't have heard them before. Now I can, thanks to you. So you help them with a few whispered words? The right words. Plus what I am, a little of me making the happiness stronger so the pain fades. I don't steal the pain. The nightmare demon at Adamant did that. It made them less so it could grow. I help them heal. They never need to know I was here. You've made me better. It was my pleasure. Remember old Maurice, too proud to forgive. Gnarled hands clutching the back of an empty chair. Find another path. There was someone before. He was my friend, but he didn't know what I was. When he found out, he changed. I lost him. 
You found out, but you didn't change. Didn't make me change. You let me be this, be more. Thank you for helping me find this again. For believing in me. You don't know what it means. Not really, no. But you're welcome, regardless. You don't need to. It used to help, but it doesn't anymore. Let it go. You were scared, trying to show them you were strong. Find him. Tell him you're sorry. The woman in the red dress thinks you would look good naked. She wants someone to compliment her hat. They will never know, but I know, thanks to you. What happened at the Elven Temple? It's got me thinking. I should go back, shouldn't I? To Tavinta. Once this is done, if we're still alive. All my talk of how terribly wrong things are back home. But what do I do about it? Nothing. How does this relate to the Elven Temple? That elf, Avalas. He said the Imperium wasn't what destroyed the Elves. My people would never accept that. It would reduce us to scavengers, destroy our legacy no matter how terrible. But we should accept it. Take our history down a peg. Confront the legacy hanging over us like a shroud. Maybe not all of us want to, but that could be altered. If you can change minds, so can I. Someone with your impeccable taste could transform to Vinter. I hope you're right. You usually are. It might surprise you to know that you're the one who inspired me. You're shaping the world, for good or ill. How could I aspire to do any less? If it means proving that Tevinter can be better, that there's hope even for my homeland, I would do anything. It's been quite the momentous day, hasn't it, my dear? We should probably give some thought to the very likely possibility that Morrigan will use her new power against us. What's our plan if she does? Circle records have limited information on shapeshifting. There are mentions of counterspells that may prevent mages from transforming or from reverting to their true forms. I have my people research these spells now. If they have ever been documented, I'll find them. The pieces are nearly in place. We'll soon strike against Corypheus directly. You've done well. I will be proud to fight alongside you when the time comes. I wanted to thank you. When you came to see me, if there's anything... This sounded much better in my head. I'll take your word for it. Really, you don't need to thank me. No, I do. I've never told anyone what truly happened to me at Ferelden Circle. I was not myself after that. I was angry. For years, that anger blinded me. I'm not proud of the man that made me. Now I can put some distance between myself and everything that happened. It's a start. You're a better person than you give yourself credit for. I appreciate the thought, but I know who I am. Anyway, I meant to thank you, not trouble you further. You've enough to worry about. How are you holding up? I'm fine. Focus your concern on our soldiers. Of course, Inquisitor. Why, what's this? You said you wanted to see your original family crest. I found one for you. I'm astonished. I'd given up hope that any example of the early family crest still existed. It even has our first motto, back from when we had a trading fleet to speak of. From sea to shore, we tame the waves. Anything to see you smile. You've certainly succeeded. Thank you. The Spy Master has confirmed it. Blackwall is gone. Go on. Liliana knows where he is, doesn't she? 
She knows everything. She doesn't know everything yet. Sister Leliana had us search the warden's quarters. Not much to find, except this. It was missing from last week's reports. I don't know what Blackwall's interest in this particular matter is, but it could be a good place to start. Cyril Mornay, for your crimes against the Empire of Orlais. For the murders of General Vincent Callier, Lady Lorette Callier, their four children and their retainers, you are sentenced to be hanged from the neck until dead. Do you have anything to say in your defense? Very well. Who's this man to Blackwall? A brother? A friend? They're going to kill him. Good grasp of the obvious, this one. Proceed. Stop! A Grey Warden. This man is innocent of the crimes laid before him. Orders were given and he followed them like any good soldier. He should not die for that mistake. Then find me the man who gave the order. Blackwall! No, I am not Blackwall. I never was Blackwall. Warden Blackwall is dead. And has been for years. I assumed his name to hide like a coward from who I really am. You... After all this time. It's over. I'm done hiding. I gave the order. The crime is mine. I am Tom Rainier. I didn't take Blackwall's life. I traded his death. He wanted me for the Wardens, but there was an ambush. Darkspawn. He was killed. I took his name to stop the world from losing a good man. But a good man, the man he was, wouldn't have let another die in his place. Was the bailiff telling the truth? Did you really do those things? Yes, I did. It's all true. It's time we all took a good look at who I really am. Don't you understand? I gave the order to kill Lord Callier, his entourage, and I lied to my men about what they were doing. When it came to light, I ran. Those men, my men, paid for my treason, while I was pretending to be a better man. This is what I am. A murderer, a traitor, a monster. Would a monster have given himself up? Somewhere along the line you stopped pretending. I have Liliana's report on Tom Rainier. Give me the overview. Looks like our friend was once a respected captain in the Imperial Orlesian army. Before the Civil War, he was turned, persuaded to assassinate one of Selene's biggest supporters. He led a group of fiercely loyal men on this mission, and told them nothing of it. His men took the fall for him. A few lucky ones, like Mornay, managed to escape. Let me guess. Our spymaster had this lying around somewhere, didn't she? It would have been difficult for anyone to connect Blackwall to Rainier. Even Liliana has something of a blind spot when it comes to wardens. <sighs> what do we do now? 
Black Wolf... Renier has accepted his fate, but you don't have to. We have resources. If he's released to us, you may pass judgment on him yourself. If it were up to you, what would happen? What he did to the men under his command was unacceptable. He betrayed their trust, betrayed ours. I despise him for it. And yet he fought as a warden, joined the Inquisition, gave his blood for our cause. And the moment he shakes off his past, he turns around and owns up to it. Why? He wanted to change. To prove that he'd really left his past behind, he had to face up to it. Saving Mornay the way he did took courage, I'll give him that. But I can't tell you what to do. Have Rainier released to us. We must move quickly. We can explore our options back at Skyhold. I need to know about Blackwall. The real Blackwall. We met in a tavern when I was on the run. I was nothing. A waste of life. But he wanted to recruit me. We headed to Valshavan for the joining. The Blackwall insisted on making a stop along the way. An old ruin from one of the previous blights. He said it led to the deep roads. I was to go down alone, find a dark spawn, and fill a vial with its blood. When I returned, I found the warden ambushed by more of the creatures. He took a blow for me. He shouldn't have died. It should have been me. I'm not saying I disagree, but Blackwall clearly thought you were worth saving. No one should die for me. He... He would have wanted me to carry on to Valshavan, I'm certain. But without Blackwall, there's no proof that I've been recruited. That I didn't kill him. I couldn't go to the Wardens. But I couldn't just walk away. So... Rainier died. And Blackwall lived. Who were you before this mess? I was a captain in the Orlesian army. Well regarded, respected. But it wasn't enough. One mistake. One mistake and everything I worked for fell apart. I need to know the details of what you did. Who you killed. Why? I betrayed the Empire and assassinated a general, Ulf Gold. The man was General Vincent Callier. My employer was a Chevalier, Robert Chapuy. Sir Robert believed that Grand Duke Gaspard was the rightful ruler of Orlais and would eventually take the throne. He thought that by eliminating one of Selene's loyal supporters, he might endear himself to the true Emperor. I can't say if Robert's plan would have worked. I didn't care. There was good coin offered, and I took it. By the time Sir Robert's involvement was uncovered, I was long gone. Of course, the Grand Duke disavowed any knowledge of the act and publicly condemned it. Robert killed himself. Poison in his wine. Another victim of the great game. My reports say that Callier was with his family. Who had them all slaughtered. I didn't know Callier would be traveling with his family. I assumed only soldiers, armed guards. My men had been told to eliminate everyone. They'd seen war. They thought they were defending their country. No one likes to think about that. But it's names that carry power in this world. Bloodlines. Heirs. No matter how leaders like Selene or Gaspar pretend the game is played, that's how real war is waged. But you weren't at war. Not really. I've been on enough battlefields to know that a crime at the right time would have earned a medal. But that's what I did. And why I deserve to be here. You got your men to help you. What did you tell them? They didn't know who they were attacking. I told them it was an important mission. They trusted me without question. Just as your men trust you. Our men follow me because they believe our cause is righteous. They believe it because that's what you tell them. That's all for now. For judgment this day, Inquisitor, I must present Captain Tom Rainier, formerly known to us as Warden Blackwall. His crimes... Well, you are aware of his crimes. It was no small expense to bring him here, but the decision of what to do with him is now yours.
Not even a word of thanks, I see. I don't know if I can thank you. What did you have to do to release me? Josephine called in a few favors. There are enough people out there who owe the Inquisition. And what happens to the reputation the Ambassador has so carefully cultivated? The world will learn how you've used your influence. They'll know the Inquisition is corrupt. I wish there'd been another way, but my options were limited. You could have left me there. I accepted my punishment. I was ready for all this to end. Why would you stop it? What becomes of me now? Blackwall intended you join the Wardens. I will let them decide your fate. But only when Corypheus is dead. For now, Tom Rainier, the Inquisition needs you. As you command. Blackwall gave you the chance to atone through action, not merely punishment. I find I can do no less. I am grateful for this, Inquisitor. And I will serve for as long as I can. There you are. I've been looking all over for you. I've just received the most terrible news. What is it? I'm engaged. When did this happen? <sighs> for the past year, my mother and father have searched Antiva for a match for me. They had no idea you and I had grown so... close. Today, I received a letter declaring they've betrothed me to Lord Adorno Cielo Tranto of Antiva. I must deal with this. But until then, we cannot be seen in a compromising situation. I'm so sorry. Are you saying we should act like nothing has happened between us? No. No, not at all. But it is not right that we carry on while I am betrothed. I must break off the match first. Let me know what I can do, Josephine. No. Thank you so much, but no. Until I know more, I cannot risk a reputation. Why did this have to happen to us now of all times? I must see to this. And to my other duties. If I can keep my mind on them today at all. Inquisitor, I'm afraid untangling my engagement to Lord Otranto will take some time. Is there anything I can do? He is Antivan. The only acceptable thing to do would be to challenge him to a duel for my favor. Arrange the duel with Lord Otranto, then. What? No, Inquisitor, please. That was said in jest. The traditional form of dueling among Antivan nobles isn't usually fatal, but there is always a chance of harm. I hardly wish to see you skewered on a sword point for the sake of my honor. Your Worship, may I deliver a message from Lord Adorno Cielo Tranto of Ativa. His Lordship accepts your request for a duel for the affection of Lady Montelier. He awaits your pleasure in Val Royal. No protests? No outrage that I'm trying to steal Josephine from him? Quite the contrary, Inquisitor. Lord Tranto is greatly looking forward to his first duel of the month. May you enjoy safe passage to Val Royal, Your Worship. I am Lord Otranto Aventi, rightfully betrothed of Lady Josephine Montillier. Songs of your exploits have spread to my city, Inquisitor. It's humbling to make your acquaintance. It is a pity it will not last longer. Before we duel, I trust you find the weapon to your satisfaction. Am I not allowed to pick my means of defense? I am the wounded party in this duel. Tradition dictates that I select our weapons. Of course, if you fear you might be clumsy with such a refined instrument, there is no shame in a forfeit. Not on your life. Then let us begin.
an admirable start, Inquisitor. Perhaps not all Kunari are the simple peasants rumors paint them to be. I'm glad Lady Montillier isn't here, exquisite as I've heard her appearance to be. Cutting you down in front of Josephine would have given a poor first impression of House Otranto to my bride. Don't worry. I'll be sure to tell Josephine you fought bravely. I admire your fearlessness, but you cannot hope. Stop! Josephine! Lady Montillier, what a pleasure to... What are you doing? Josephine, I can't take the chance that you might have to marry him. That's not your decision. The Inquisition needs you. I need you. Yet you throw yourself into danger. Why do this? Why risk everything we've built? Why risk your life? Because I love you. You... You do? He does? And I mean it. Every word. I love you too. Well fought. Lord Otranto. I'd assumed your liaison with the Inquisitor was an affair of passion or convenience, Lady Montillier. But I'm not fool enough to stand in the way of true affection. The Atrantos regretfully withdraw the terms of our betrothal. Thank you. Do not thank me. I know when I'm outmatched. Josephine, I've never been happier in my life. We're tempting fate with such talk. But neither have I. Just do kiss me again. I can't stop thinking about your duel in Val Royale. Running into the middle of the crowd, the noise, the swords flashing. I was so worried for you, but at the same time, well, it was the most exciting thing I've seen in ages. You do remember what this Inquisition has been doing, don't you? Oh, allow me to correct myself. The most exciting thing I have seen that didn't threaten to stop my heart. You know, when I first laid eyes on you back at Haven, I hadn't an inkling we'd become so close. Something suggested you were special the moment I saw you. I'm glad it did. These moments seem so dear, especially given your greater calling. Sometimes I must remind myself that I'm required to share you with the rest of the world. The world may want my time, Josephine, but you have my heart. Then I count myself happy, beyond compare. Planning troop movements now? I'm trying to imagine what it will look like when we're done. All of this once belonged to the Tevinta Imperium. Andraste changed that, as did the Blights. As for what will come next, I cannot guess the Maker's plan. We make the world a better place. Because everyone agrees on what better means. I know I want a world where people trust the Chantry and that trust is respected. I want to respect tradition, but not fear change. I want to right past wrongs, but not avenge them. And I have no idea if my wanting these things makes any of them right. Even if they're not right, 
They're certainly admirable. Some would disagree. They would call it heresy. That didn't sound like the ravings of a heretic, Cassandra. Perhaps not. But it takes precious little effort to paint even an act of compassion as damaging. Tell me, what guides you? You make decisions that shake the world, yet always seem so assured. I wish I had your confidence. You almost sound like you admire me. I absolutely do. I may not always agree with your decisions, but how many could do what you have done? You were a prisoner, accused and reviled, yet you've emerged from every trial victorious. The Maker's grace does not make you immortal. You live or die by your own hand. That is worthy of admiration. I do what must be done. What other choice is there? The demands of the moment. Exactly. When we first met, if someone told me I would be pleased to have you lead me, I would have throttled them. But I am. The Maker chose well. I hope we can call each other friends. I hope so too. We still have a long road to travel, Inquisitor. Wherever it takes us, I'm glad you're here. The Temple of Mathal was extraordinary. In all my journeys, I never dreamed of finding anything like it. What will you do with the power of the well once Corypheus is dead? I won't know the answer until Corypheus is defeated. Yet they are already asking you to answer. Restore the Chantry? Destroy the Chantry? If you do nothing, someone else will answer in your stead. Whatever you do, choose wisely. Forgive my melancholy. Corypheus has cost us much. The Temple of Methal did not deserve such a fate. The orb he carries, and its stolen power, that at least we may still recover. With luck, some of the past may yet survive. Thank you, Solas. We couldn't have done this without you. You are welcome. You wanted to see me? Oh! I got it! I bossed the sala Yeah, yeah, my soul's dust. Yours is scattered all over the ground, though, so... Ugh. Sorry, boss. I thought I might need backup. Guess I'm not even worth sending professionals for. You knew the assassins were coming. Little change in the god rotation tipped me off. Why didn't you tell me ahead of time? You go through years of Ben Hasrath training to hide facial expressions when I wasn't looking. See? Like that. If I'd warned you were the guards, the assassins would have been tipped off. Are you all right? Fine. Hurt myself worse than this fooling around in bed. What if they used poison? Oh, they definitely used poison. Sarkamek. Liquid form. If I hadn't been dosing myself with the antidote, I'd be going crazy and puking my guts up right now. As it is, it stings like shit. But that's about it. Are you interested in getting some payback? Against who? The entire Ben Hasrat? Besides, this wasn't serious. Sending two guys with blades against me? That's not a hit. That's a formality. Just making it clear that I'm Talva Shoth. <sighs> Talva fucking Shoth. You don't need to say Talva Shoth like it's an insult. This isn't about you, boss. But I'm Talva Shoth too, just like you. No, you're not. Not really. You grew up with a family. You never knew anything different. I've killed hundreds of Talvashoth in Saharan. Bandits, murderers, bastards who turn their back on the Kuhn. And now I'm one of them. You're not a Talvashoth. That's a Kunari word. And you don't follow the Kuhn any longer. You're Iron Bull, mercenary captain for the Inquisition. I can live with that. <sighs> anyway, I'll get this cleaned up and let Red know what happened. Boss, whatever I miss, Whatever I regret, this is where I want to be. Whenever you need an ass kicked, the Iron Bull is with you.
Hey, you. You have time? It's not a question. Let's go. I've got something I want to do for you. Just come. You won't need your gear and stuff. Sarah, explain. Ah, oh, just come on, will you? I haven't wanted to do this with anyone for a long time. We're eating on a roof. They're horrible, right? And raisins, ugh. I freaking still hate cookies. Why am I sitting on a roof eating awful baked goods? I got caught stealing when I was little, yeah? You get alienage or worse for that, but the Lady Emerald took me in. She was sick and couldn't have children. I had no parents. It worked out. Anyway, she gets a year sicker, so I ask her about cookies. Because mums make cookies. I can pass that down or something. Turns out, she couldn't cook. She missed that talk with her mum. The ones she made, she bought and pretended. Ah, oh, right. Well, no, she was a bitch. She hid buying them by keeping me away from the baker. She did that by lying that he didn't like me, didn't like elves. She let me hate so she could protect her pride. I hated him so much and I hated... Well, she died, and I hate pride. Pride cookies. But this Inquisition thing is working out, so I figured I could make some Inquisition cookies, because then I could like them again. Oh, it's stupid. I don't understand. This Lady Emerald was just trying to be good to you. She hurt people. It was just cookies. It was not just cookies. Lie to herself, fair play, only hurts her. But she made me think there was something wrong with me. And the baker. I made his life shit. Why not? It seemed like he deserved it. I mean, if you don't give a child a cookie because of appearances, you're a monster. Stupid pride horn noble. I know, I said it was stupid. That's why I want to get rid of it. I want to make better cookies. You know what? That would be great. See, I knew. Wait, really? because it seemed friggin' daft every step to me. Suppose it's not really about them. I hate learning lessons. Makes my stomach hurt. Anyway, I'll throw this rubbish away. Next time we'll be better, yeah? Sarah, any time. Can we get off the roof now? Oh, yes, please. It smells like bird and dank. This part, not a good idea. Thanks, yeah? Feels good, this. There you are. I've been looking all over for you. You're just in time. We almost had to start without you. What exactly were you starting without me now? Look who showed up, everybody. Deal him in, would you, Ruffles? I do hope I recall the rules. It's been ages since I've played a game of Wicked Grace. Grab a seat. We're ready to start. Are we playing cards or what? There's a crown on his head, but a sword too. His head didn't want either. Don't talk to the face cards, kid. You seem to have enough people. I have a thousand things to do. Losing money can be both relaxing and habit forming. Give it a try. Curly, if any man in history ever needed a hobby, it's you. Dealer starts. Oh, I believe I'll start at. Oh, three coppers. Do you think that's too daring? Maybe I'll make it one. No. Boldness. Three it is. Seriously, who starts at three coppers? Silver or go home? Sounds good. I'm in. Bolder the better, right? I'm in. Me too. Well, are you in? I'm in, and raising another silver. <laughs> you haven't even looked at your cards. Well, our illustrious leader is betting we're bluffing. You are bluffing. <laughs> the poor recruit ran out into the dining hall in nothing but his knickers. And this profound silence fell over the hall as 70 mages and 30 Templars all turned to stare at once. Then a slow round of applause began and spread until every soul was on their feet. A standing ovation. <laughs> what, what did he do? Saluted, turned on his heel, and marched out like he was in full armor. 
<laughs> Good man. <laughs> You're shitting us. <laughs> That's how you know it's true. I could never put that in a book. Too unlikely. I think it's our professional storyteller's turn to tell one. I think I can manage that. Did I ever tell you about the time we broke into Chateau Hain? It started, as most capers do, with a trap. And then Hawk looks up and says, Looks like the Duke has fallen from grace. <laughs> that's how Duke Prosper died. You know, that's almost perfect for him. And the dealer takes everything. I win again. Deal again. I've figured out your tells, Lady Ambassador. Commander, everyone knows a lady has no tells. Then let's see if your good fortune lasts one more hand. I'm not losing any more coin to Josephine, but I have got to see this. Don't say a word, dwarf. <laughs> I tried to warn you, Curly. Never bet against an Antiva, Commander. It comes off. I didn't know it came off. Glad you decided to join us tonight. It's too easy to mistake you for the Inquisitor. I enjoyed this. See? That's what I mean. It's easy to forget you're not just an icon or symbol. Like those statues of Andraste holding bowls of fire. A at least it is for me. You up for another game when this is all over, Inquisitor? Every time I play, I increase the odds of winding up like Cullen. You're never more alive than when you're about to lose your pants, my friend. Who's that? Did I win? Inquisitor, thank the Maker you're here. Morrigan chased after her son into the Illuvian. She was terrified. I've never seen Morrigan like that. You must go after her. I will find help, Inquisitor. Wait. This isn't the crossroads. This is the Fade. How did the Illuvian lead here? Can it go anywhere? Morrigan! Go back. I must find Kieran before it's too late. Why would Kieran do this? How could he do this? We stand in the Fade. To direct the Illuvian here would require immense power. If he is lost to me now after all I have sacrificed... We'll find him, Morrigan. He can't be far. The Fade is infinite. He could literally be anywhere. Whatever happens to him now, it is my doing. I set him on this path. Please, help me look, Inquisitor. Just a little longer. There he is! Who's with him? That's... No. It can't be. Mother! Mother. Now, isn't this a surprise? Clearly not the good sort of surprise. My lovely Morrigan has a flair for the dramatic. Thankfully, my grandson is more sensible. Kirin is not your grandson. Let him go! As if I were holding the boy hostage. She's always been ungrateful, you see. 
ungrateful! I know how you plan to extend your life, wicked crone. You will not have me, and you will not have my son! That's quite enough. You'll endanger the boy. <gasps> what have you done to me? I have done nothing. You drank from the well of your own volition. <gasps> you... are Mathal. You can't be Mathal. That's not possible. <laughs> Explain to me, dear boy, why I cannot be what I am. Mithal was an elven god. You, you're... Human? <laughs> Not a word many have used for me in a very long time. I'm sorry, Mother. I heard her calling to me. She said now was the time. I do not understand. Once I was but a woman, crying out in the lonely darkness for justice. And she came to me, a wisp of an ancient being, and she granted me all I wanted and more. I have carried Mythal through the ages ever since. Seeking the justice denied to her. Then you carry Mithal inside you? She is a part of me. No more separate than your heart from your chest. You hear the voices of the well, girl. What do they say? They... say you speak the truth. But what was Mithal? A legend given name and called a god? Or something more? Truth is not the end, but a beginning. A herald indeed, shouting to the heavens, harbinger of a new age. As for me, I have had many names, but you may call me Flemeth. I know the name Flemeth. It belongs to an ancient Ferelden legend. It says, long ago, you left your husband for a lover. Your husband then tricked you, killed your lover, and imprisoned you. Then a spirit came to offer you vengeance. Mythal, that's what you spoke of. One day, someone will summarize the terrible events of your life so quickly. But yes, I was that woman. That is how my tale began. Flemeth appears in other legends helping heroes for reasons of her own. I nudge history when it's required. Other times, a shove is needed. <laughs> if Mythal is within you, why not reveal yourself? And to whom should I reveal myself? To the elves, to everyone. <laughs> I knew the hearts of men even before Mythal came to me. It is why she came to me. They do not want the truth, and I, I am but a shadow lingering in the sun. Why did Mithal come to you? For a reckoning that will shake the very heavens. And you follow her whims. Do you even know what she truly is? You seek to preserve the powers that were, but to what end? It is because I taught you, girl. Because things happened that were never meant to happen. She was betrayed as I was betrayed. As the world was betrayed. Mythal clawed and crawled her way through the ages to me. And I will see her avenged. Alas, so long as the music plays, we dance. Did you come here to make Morrigan serve you? Oh, what a servant she would make. Then what is it you want? One thing, and one thing only. I have to go now, Mother. No, I will not allow it. He carries a piece of what once was, snatched from the jaws of darkness. You know this. 
He is not your pawn, Mother. I will not let you use him. Have you not used him? Was that not your purpose, the reason you agreed to his creation? That was them. Now he... He is my son. Flemeth extends her life by possessing the bodies of her daughters, Inquisitor. That was the fate she intended for me. I thwarted her, and now she intends to have Kieran instead. Wait, the way she talked about Kieran. I am not the only one carrying the soul of a being long thought lost. He is more than that, Mother. As am I. Yet do you hear me complain? Our destinies are not so easily avoided, dear girl. Allah, I have to. You do not belong to her, Kieran. Neither of us do. If Kieran is so special, why did you wait until now to come for him? I did not know where he was. Morrigan cleverly hid him from me. Until now. <gasps> it was the well. Always grasping beyond your reach, despite all that I taught you. You're going to steal the body of a young boy? If my daughter believes it, then it must be so. Kieran, I... As you wish, hear my proposal, dear girl. Let me take the land and you are free of me forever. I will never interfere with or harm you again. Or keep the lad with you, and you will never be safe from me. I will have my due. He returns with me. Decided so quickly. Do whatever you wish. Take over my body now if you must, but Kieran will be free of your clutches. I am many things, but I will not be the mother you were to me. A soul is not forced upon the unwilling, Morrigan. You were never in danger from me. Listen to the voices. They will teach you, as I never did. Wait! Are you all right, Kieran? You are not hurt. I feel lonely. She wanted the old god soul all along. Is it worth reminding myself that perhaps I do not know everything after all? My mother has the soul of an elven goddess, or whatever Mithal truly was, and her plans are unknown to me. You truly had no idea what she was. I knew she kept the truth from me. I even suspected she was not truly human, but this... I always thought the so-called elven gods were little more than glorified rulers, but now... I have doubt, and doubt is an uncomfortable thing, Inquisitor. Just be thankful you did not drink from the well. I am evidently tied to my mother for eternity. So Kieran had the soul of an old god. 
taken from the Archdemon at the final battle of the Fifth Blight. Yes, he has never known anything else. I'm uncertain what effect this will have on him. But why did you... I told you at the temple, the magic of old must be preserved. No matter how feared. Kieran had a destiny, and now... It is in Flemeth's hands. I suppose we shall see what she does with it. For what it's worth, I think you did the right thing. Did I? She was testing me. And I cannot tell whether I passed. Now we must prepare to face Corypheus himself. It seems Mother was right. The voices of the well tell me I will be able to match his dragon. All that remains is for you to find him. Did you find what you need, Morrigan? I can match the Darkspawn Magister's dragon. Yes. As for matching Corypheus, that is up to you, Inquisitor. I'm eager to try. Then all that remains is to find Corypheus before he comes to us. We've been looking for his base since all this began, with no success. His dragon must come and go from somewhere. Oh, what about the Deep Roads? We could send word to Orzammar, a higher envoy, to... It seems Corypheus is not content to wait. He's in the Valley of Sacred Ashes. You either close the breach once more, or it swallows the world. But that's madness. Wouldn't it kill him as well? Inquisitor, we have no forces to send with you. We must wait for them to return from the Arbor Wilds. Then I face him alone. your maker now. Call him. Call down his wrath upon me. You cannot, for he does not exist. I am Corypheus. I shall deliver you from this lie in which you linger. Bow before your new god and be spared. Never! As you Let us not forget what you are. A thief in the wrong place at the wrong time. An interloper, a gnat. We shall prove here, once and for all, which of us is worthy of godhood. I came here to stop you, Corypheus. Nothing more. Clever of you. It will avail. You will fall as a warning to those who oppose my divine will. Uh. 
feel my wrath. Akunari, your blood is engorged with decay. Your race is not a race. If you desire it is a mistake, death, you shall have it. of the Grand Cathedral. We shall see about that. If you desire death, you shall have it.
Let the skies boil! Let the world be red to sunder! I will not yet fall! of the Golden City, cross the ages. Do not, ancient ones, I beseech you. If you exist, if you ever truly existed, aid me now. Solus? The orb. Corypheus is dead. That's the important thing. Yet so much has been lost. There's more, isn't there? It was not supposed to happen this way. No matter what comes. I want you to know you shall always have my respect. Inquisitor! Are you alive? Victorious, I see. What a novel result. And it seems the breach is finally closed. Looks that way. What do we do now? We go back to Skyhold.
A moment, my lord. My agents have found no trace of Solus. He has simply vanished. If he does not wish to be found, there's likely nothing we can do. But I will keep looking. Why would he just leave? Something must be wrong. You said he was upset about the orb. I can't be the only reason. Now that Corypheus has been defeated, we have a moment to stop and celebrate. Afterwards, you will be busy. Every noble in southern Thedas is clamoring to meet you. The fighting's over. Why do they want to meet me now? <laughs> You're joking, yes? They wish to bask in the glory of your victory, hoping that some of it will rub off on them. Everyone knows Empress Selene owes you her life and her throne. A thousand problems remain. And your opinion will be sought on each one, whether you wish to give it or not. I don't see what the fuss is about. Corypheus needed to be stopped. And you are the one who stopped him. Previously, you were an upstart, a fearsome Kunari in charge of rebels and heretics. Until Corypheus revealed himself, they could not see the single hand behind the chaos. Once he did, they knew. A magister and a darkspawn in one creature, the ultimate evil. Now you are the only power left standing. Enjoy the evening while you can, Inquisitor. Am I imagining it? Or do we have a moment to breathe? Corypheus is definitely gone. I was there. You should hear the stories they're telling in the barracks. The pride in their voices. Some of the soldiers have requested leave to return home, but many would follow us still. You are proof that the Inquisition has made a difference, and that we will continue to do so. Our soldiers put their trust in you, Cullen. I appreciate everything you've done. I should be thanking you. You gave me a chance to... to prove myself. In your place, I'm not sure I would have done the same. I should let you mingle. I'm sure everyone desires your attention. Enjoy the party, Inquisitor. Help stop an ancient Magister Duxborn. Not every Warden recruit gets to say that. Thanks to you, I do. We couldn't have done it without you. You've done enough for me. Uh, forget the flattery. So now that you've saved the world, what's next? Hoping to put it all back together? Someone has to fix things. Might as well be me. If anyone can do it, you can. If you ever need my help, you know where to find me. I'll be ready. So, demons, dragons, giant asshole vint on a big magic rock. You don't let it get dull, boss. Good stuff. How is that good in any way, Bull? We all walked away. Chantry folk are picking up what's left of Corypheus with a dustpan and a pastry scraper. It's weird. I joined the Inquisition under orders from the Ben Hasrath and stayed because Corypheus was an asshole. Now that it's done, I've got no orders. For the first time in my life, I can go wherever I want. Good luck. Wherever you end up, they'll be lucky to have you. I think I'm good right here. For now. The best fights always seem to find you. If I left, I'd just get jealous hearing about all the great shit I was missing. I've been starting to think about putting all this into a book. What do you think of... This shit is weird, the Inquisitor Adar story. It's a working title. Maybe you should keep working. I'll leave the title for last. Naming things is always the worst. I still haven't decided if I should do this book. As if anyone will believe this story if I tell it. Not to mention I'll... Have my hands full with reconstruction and relief efforts in the free marches as soon as I get back. Don't divide your efforts. The people of the free marches are more important than a story. As it happens, I agree with you. Kirkwall is in bad shape, and a lot of other city-states were hit hard by the war. I'm not leaving for a while yet, though. We'll have to get in at least one game of Wicked Grace before I go. Curly needs to win back some of his dignity. They're all happy. There's still fear. But you helped them all. You healed what was hurt. 
They don't want to forget what happened, even if it gives them nightmares. It would hurt less, but it matters to them. The fear reminds people of what they fought for. It gives the victory significance. It's part of being people. I know. I don't understand, but they need it. I, I think I could return to the Fade if I tried. I'm light enough to slip through, but I'd like to stay and help for a while, if that's all right. I can still help people here. The Inquisition is just getting started. Yes. Because of you. Thank you for letting me stay. Finally got a party, yeah? A bit of fun for saving the world. It's the least Andraste's Herald deserves for making things normal again. Except for, you know, everything ever again. I mean, is this for us or for her? Or, you know, him? Because I was there and I still don't know what's real. Couldn't it be his will and our effort? Perhaps miracles need a little help. Well, what's the friggin' point of them then? Ugh, you sound like a sister. I guess you'd know by this point. Seems like you did it right, mostly. Still some things to do yet, right? Because I'm in no hurry to go back to... Val Royale. that's where I was. You mind if people still stay around? Or whatever? This is home, if you'll have it. <laughs> Shut it, you. I cry, I'm punching everyone. All right, enough of that. Is this a party or what? Raise them for winning. Big freaking heroes, Inquisitor. All of us. I was passing through the hall this morning and a serving girl saw me and squealed. Actually squealed, dropped her laundry and everything. Such a mess. She was completely breathless. You were at the battle with the evil one, weren't you? I didn't even get a chance to answer. She hugged me. Hugged me. This is your influence. That's what happens when you're a hero. Is that so? Must be why it's so unfamiliar. Mind you, I can't say I hate the notion of being the good to Vinter. I suppose you can't all be evil bastards. The blacksmith said that, and he spat when we first met. I hope my father hears. He will shit his small clothes from shock, I swear. I appreciate everything you've done for us. So you should. Being appreciated is a nice change of pace, though. I'm also pleased to come out of it alive. I wasn't expecting that. You thought you'd die? Didn't you? The hero dies in all the best stories. Anything else just sounds so implausible. I've decided to stay with the Inquisition. For now. You will. Tevinter lacks the presence of my best and only friend. It'll keep. Oh, I should never have hired new caterers so late. Leave it be, Josie. Everything's fine. It is not! I'm so sorry. Nothing's quite as it should be. Oh, do you like the drinks? I'm not sure about them. The drinks are fine. It's been a wonderful evening. I hope you're not just saying that. You're not, are you? What a disaster. So much was late, the invitations for a guest barely went out at all, and... and... It was so wonderful to prepare for a small banquet instead of the end of the world. Do you know what everyone is talking about tonight, from commoners to kings? Us. Vedas is discussing the success of the Inquisition. You played no small part in our rise to power. <laughs> you had a role yourself, if I recall correctly. Truly, we will never forget those we lost, but for tonight, to victory. Enjoying the refreshments? Josephine sent all the way to the capital for the Petit Four. I must remember to thank her for the trouble. <laughs> She's been craving the cakes from Madame Lucien's shop for months. This celebration gave her the perfect excuse. To you, Inquisitor, for all you've done. I can't believe it's over. It seemed an impossible task. Defy the Chantry, build the Inquisition from nothing, defeat a creature that would be a god. And yet here we are, celebrating. So we should be. Defeating Corypheus was no simple task. 
He was so confident of his power, he could not conceive of losing. If he could, he would never have challenged me. And he would have gone into hiding. Yes, it worked out far better this way. I intend to rebuild the Seekers of Truth, to make us the order we were meant to be. That will take time. Meanwhile, I am free to remain with the Inquisition. I think back to how we first met, and here you stand. You are the Inquisitor, a symbol of hope and change to so many. And you are my friend. How did that happen, I wonder? I'm pleased it did. You are a great man, and I will always stand at your side. So much to do, my dear. I'll be returning to Valvoyor to organize the Loyalist Mages. The Empress requires my expertise during what is sure to be a difficult transition. But that will wait. Are you enjoying the celebration? Josephine was in a frenzy arranging it. As a matter of fact, I am. This is all for you, darling. Enjoy yourself. You've earned it. Go mingle. The night is still young. May I join you? I wanted to catch you. Uh, the celebrations appear to be winding down with the sunrise. I've never witnessed such a lovely sight. Don't leave, Josephine. The Maker himself would have to tear me away. I should do? I should hope so. It's been good to have the celebration, free of what the future holds. Whatever awaits us, my lord, I know only one thing. I would never have you face it alone. It is said that Corypheus woke after his long slumber and found the world gone awry. He fought to bring back those days of magic and shadow, to raise himself as a god and set things right. Now, we are left with a scar in the sky to remind us of what almost was. It tells us that a great victory against chaos was won, but left the world forever changed. Consider the mighty empire of Orle, where Empress Selene remains on her golden throne. The civil war is ended, but a new war rages in the shadows. Gaspar, it seems, has learned his lesson well. Even the elves have no rest, with Briala's uprising rocking the empire to its core. Fortunately for Selene, her gratitude towards the Inquisition has remained strong. Some claim she clings too tightly to the Alliance. Others know it is all that stands between her and defeat. The Grey Wardens of the South slowly rebuild in the months following the events at Adamant. They declare it time for the Order to emerge from the shadows, to join the rest of humanity in fighting their ancient foes. Rumors abound that they severed ties with their leaders at Weishaupt, and that a bitter war now rages between them. What becomes of Hawk is unknown, save that all news out of Weishaupt soon ends. Does the sudden silence indicate a battle within, or something far worse? One month after the defeat of Corypheus, the Chantry names Cassandra as successor to the Sunburst throne. Given the name Divine Victoria, she immediately enacts reform, a new Templar Order, and a new Circle of Magi. The Seekers of Truth are rededicated to their purpose of protecting the innocent. A proclamation of support for the Inquisition is issued, recognizing its service to all of Thedas. Despite her popularity, the new Divine's reforms are seen by some as going too far. The Inquisition's Mages, the former rebels, led by Grand Enchanter Fiona, are left with a choice. In the end, they refuse Cassandra's invitation to rejoin the Circle of Magi and instead 
reform the College of Enchanters as a new order. The College, they say, will allow mages of the South to gather in peace and seek new solutions to age-old problems. From the beginning, the College and the Circle have clashed, and some fear it will lead to a new war of the mages upon themselves. And what of the Inquisition itself? It has eyes and ears in every hall. No secrets are beyond its reach. And that knowledge has become the source of its power. I leave Skyhold now, knowing that power will continue to grow. The Inquisitor is a symbol to many, a leader of the changing world order. To others, he has become a target. They linger in the shadows, waiting for their day to come. When it does, the Inquisition shall stand ready. I knew you would come. You should not have given your orb to Corypheus, Red Wolf. I was too weak to unlock it after my slumber. The failure was mine. I should pay the price. But the people... They need me. I am so sorry. I am sorry as well, old friend. Smiles, everyone. We must be careful how we present ourselves. Why did Divine Victoria call the Exalted Council? She's kept Orlay from bothering us for the last two years. At increasing political cost, yes. She has done all she can, but the Exalted Council has become necessary. Orlay would control us, and based on their many marriage proposals, they have specific plans for you. Our real concern is Ferelden. They would see us disbanded entirely. Inquisitor, it has been too long. I hope the years have been kind to you. How have you been, Mother Giselle? I spent last summer in Empress du Lyon, distributing food sent from the Exalted Plains. The Dales are finally recovering. Since Corypheus fell, I think you may have spent more time traveling than I have. It keeps me out of trouble, Your Worship. The Inquisition forces were of great help tending the sick. The Elysian soldiers at Suladin keep somewhat less so. Divine Victoria asked me to greet you on her behalf. She is currently attending to the Ferelden Ambassador's concerns. You can probably just call her Cassandra in private conversation. You can, Inquisitor. I prefer to use her divine name. Our last divine once joked about why I insisted upon calling her Justinia. 
She called it my way of reassuring her that I had not completely forgotten who was in charge. How do you think Divine Victoria has done these last two years? It is hardly for me to say, Inquisitor. With respect, that's never stopped you before, Mother Giselle. Victoria says she is better suited to the battlefield than the sunburst throne, but she has restored the Chantry. And also people's faith in it. We are lucky to have her. I'll speak to Divine Victoria. I believe she would appreciate that, Your Worship. The Divine sees the good that you can do, and have done. Duke Cyril will wish to greet you on behalf of Ole. I believe he is currently speaking with the Tevinter Ambassador. Many of your friends have returned as well. I hope you have a chance to speak with them before the Exalted Council begins. The Imperium sent an ambassador? Yes, Your Worship. Dorian Pavas has taken the chance to return from Tevinter. It will be good to see him again. I owe him my apology. I allowed my distrust of Devinter to cloud my judgment. He took a great risk coming to help us, and deserved better treatment. You're going to apologize? To Dorian? I have little patience for those who cannot admit they were wrong, Your Worship. Myself included. I will have to make my apology somewhere public. He will want an audience for his reaction. Thank you, Mother Giselle. Your Worship, a final question, if I may. This exalted council, Thoreldon would have the Inquisition disband. Ole sees its power as another feather in a chevalier's helmet. What do you wish to do with the Inquisition? The Inquisition still has work to do. We can't let someone's fear push us into disbanding. Then I wish you luck in the negotiations to come. Make her watch over you, Inquisitor. I will not keep you any longer. Divine Victoria, am I interrupting? Not at all. The Earl of Redcliffe was telling me of events in Denerim. He represents Ferelden at the summit. Inquisitor, good to meet you. How are things in Redcliffe, my lord? Blessedly quiet. The mayor conveys his greetings. Redcliffe remembers its savior. I had hoped to steal a moment of the Divine's time. Very well. We'll continue this later, your perfection. I am supposed to be impartial while speaking for the Chantry, but I confess that neutrality is beyond me. I may be the Divine, but I will always be your friend. And I can hardly ignore the fate of the Inquisition that I began. Is there anything I can do to make your job easier? You could find me a sword and something to hit. I must attend to other matters. If you need me, I am ready to assist. Unconditionally. I'm glad you finally arrived, Inquisitor. The Crown's anxious for news. And your thoughts on Ferelden's position? The breach is long gone, yet Skyhold's army remains. Ferelden can't continue to ignore soldiers on its borders. I appreciate knowing where Ferelden stands. You are owed that, Inquisitor, especially here. These Orlesians will talk circles around you before you get a simple greeting out. I won't keep you longer. We'll have words enough when the Exalted Council begins. Orle is on your side, Lord Parvis. The Inquisition's support is not a thing to lose lightly. Which is why the Orlesian court is circling it with a net and collar? But you'll have to excuse me. I see an old friend I must greet. Inquisitor, how long has it been? Don't actually tell me. I despise feeling old. It's good to see you, my friend. You arrived ahead of me. I hope all's well. It's everything I expected. We've been spared the burden of surprise. Orle wants the Inquisition tamed, Ferelden wants it gone, the Chantry medals, and Tevinta sends but one ambassador. That's me, by the way. A reward for my interest in the South. Thankfully, Ambassador Pavis is a token appointment. Call on me as you like. Inquisitor. Duke Cyril Montfort. 
member of the Council of Heralds and Lord of Chateau Hain. I have long followed your work. It is extraordinary. Is that sentiment shared by the rest of the court? <laughs> of course. Ole wishes only to offer respectful guidance to the Inquisition. The Inquisition's grown. It would be shocking if they didn't find us a threat. Yet you've started no major wars. The Inquisition is a very considerate rival. I have not forgotten Justinia's death. I had friends who perished at the Temple of Sacred Ashes. More than the good you have done, it is a good we may do together I don't wish to lose. Whatever happens, Inquisitor, I wish you well. The Prince of Starkhaven wrote to you again. Of course he did. Just put that one in the pile with letters from the Mergent's Guild. And the Captain of the City Guard had a very colorful message for me to deliver to you as well. Inquisitor! Andraste's ass, am I ever glad to see you! And the Inquisitor comes to the rescue once again. Is that what you call it? Uh, this is Bran Caven. Until recently, he was the Viscount... Provisional Viscount. Of Kirkwall? And what are you doing now? I have resumed my post as Seneschal now that Master Tethras has been elected Viscount. You're the Viscount of Kirkwall now? Well, it seems the two of you have a great deal to discuss. Why don't I just leave you to it? So, it turns out you fund enough reconstruction efforts in a city-state, the nobles give you the worst job they can think of. I might need to sit down. You're the ruler of Kirkwall now. All of it? That's not that big a deal. I have a really pointy crown that I wouldn't be caught dead wearing, but that's it. They voted me in because I got the harbor and businesses up and running again. They want shit fixed, and I can do that. Anyway, I was hoping I'd catch you before the summit got underway. I got you a sort of present. It's official recognition of your title and holdings in Kirkwall. Congratulations. You're a Compt now. You can't actually do that without... Too late. Already did it. <laughs> also, your mercenary company, the Valokas. They work for Kirkwall now. I just know my guard captain will love the Shokrakar. Guard Captain Aveline has been to my office 11 times in the last week to complain. <clears throat> you were leaving us to talk, remember? <sighs> What are you up to? I feel like I should be suspicious. Look, it's really not that big a deal. Oh, that reminds me. It's the key to the city. You can't give that away without approval from the Council and a special ceremony. It... It's just symbolic, anyway. It controls one of the giant chain nets in the harbor. Really? That is so much better than I thought. Thank you. I'm touched. A little bit horrified by this key now, but still touched. Please don't give anything else away. I don't know how this council thing is going to end for the Inquisition. But whatever gets decided, you've got a place lined up in Kirkwall if you want it. Also, uh, control of the harbor, I guess. Anyway, you should meet with the diplomats. And we'll get in a game of Wicked Grace before I go back, though, right? I wouldn't miss it. Don't bet any public buildings this time. Inquisitor, I see you have time for afternoon refreshments. Glimmering, glittering, perfect cut, mask a maze of gemstones. She will think it pretty. Excuse me, I might... Um... You're useful to have around, Cole. He wants stones the color of his eyes. Happy, bright, beaming, being seen, not seeing. And I needed the table. For breadcrumbs? Birds like breadcrumbs. Inquisitor, how good to see you here. I came to sit and pen another song. 
sweet songs, poignant pain plants joy that grows later. She can't see me. I help her help people. I gathered. You're smart and kind. You're worthy of true love. Hello, Halam Shiral! The fire of Zither must be fueled by wine, ideally shared with adoring fans. But not with him. You need somebody nice. Yes, better. He'll be gentle. So will you. You're with the Chargers, are you not? I've seen you in the Skyhold Tavern where I sing. Oh, yes. I, I love your songs. Sometimes I'd sit up on the chair to take a better look at your songs. The Chargers have their own song, if you'd like to hear it. Good. You're sure they'll both be all right when Krem tells her? Strong arms, a sweet voice. The father wanted me to be happy. Which one of them is that? <laughs> both. Here's you, and everyone. Glad to be back all stuffed together, with the pressure full on, again. Don't worry, Herald of Everywhere. I came prepared. I know what everyone needs. Just like best times. I expected a roof. It's early. Anyway, that was a good run. It's all been a good run. I needed that. And I need... You know it's ending, right? We can say it won't, but knobs in places like this. All they do is end things. They'll try a leash. Or worse. But maybe you aren't ready to quit just because some Lord Piddlebits is scared of us. The Inquisition's still needed. No one can question that. That's the problem. When people need us, they don't need them. Point is, sooner or sooner, all this changes. And you've helped me understand. Too much. So it's my turn to help you. See, I have these friends. And all of them were the wrong sort of whatever. Their place changed, or it never was. So together, we made an us. Everyone needs an us. And when the world is done saying no and calls you the wrong sort of whatever, maybe we can be that us for you. What do you think, Inquisitor? Want to run some rooftops as a Jenny? You want the Inquisitor? Don't I have a few more titles than your usual Jenny? No offense. Some taken. <laughs> Words. Look, we don't want you. We want to be there for you. If you want to keep doing, it won't be nobles who help. It'll be friends. I don't think I can do what you do, but I'm glad to call you friend. Then we're still at your back. You'd have a hard time stopping us. Did we make this trip for nothing? Balls, no. We're gonna drink to tomorrow until it's yesterday. <laughs> to all my friends. Always and ever, Inquisitor. Always and ever. Sarah was never in the group. Creepy song is creepy. Blah. The Worship, I'm glad you're here. Listen, I need you to keep the Chief distracted while we sneak this dragon skull through the room behind him. I'm looking forward to seeing where this goes. It's for his birthday. I'll see what I can do, Krem. All right, here he comes. Just keep him talking. He loves talking. Hey, boss. Good to see you. You know what, Bull? I really like hitting things. <laughs> I know, right? We have the best job. <sighs> it's good to see that the veil has largely healed, now that most of the major rifts are closed. You might think otherwise, but the Veil isn't technically a physical barrier. 
It's more like a magical vibration that repels the fade. Hmm. Do you think news of the Exalted Council could affect the Lyrium shipments from Orzammar? Uh, maybe. It's fascinating to see the remnants of Syrian culture here. Most of it was deliberately erased during Orlesian unification, under the reign of Mafrath's son, Izarath. Uh-huh. Did you know that Ferelden has its own names for lords? The country is divided into Ternirs, governed by Terns. Inside those are cities and Arlings, ruled by Arls. And then there's the Benorn. Uh, it's a large area of countryside ruled by multiple bands. <sighs> Good to know. Surprise! Happy birthday, Chief! Oh, you guys! You got me! Fashionably late. I thought you weren't gonna show. I gave you my word we would talk, and I never break my word. Easy there. I was just teasing. So, tell me everything that happened while I was away. And Garolf strolls up, hands filled with ripe squashes, and says, Sir, I must report that it was an utter boondoggle. Ha 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 ha! Uh, maybe you had to be there. It's good to see you fitting in. It has its warts, that's for sure. But this life feels right. Like it's where I'm supposed to be. Anyway, it's nice to be back. Though I'm not sure what to think of this council. The Wardens will be missing me, but they aren't gonna keep me away from a friend who might need my sword arm. I'm getting a little worried for the palace, and any passers-by. <laughs> Darling, you made it. Excellent. I shared your disappointment ages ago, and they do appreciate punctuality. Appointment? With the Imperial Garden Spa, of course. You work so hard, my dear. I wanted to treat you. I feel like I'm going to break something in here. Or someone. You'll present the staff with a special challenge, darling. The experience will be good for them. What are the cheese wheels for? It pains me that you even have to ask. You've clearly been living too long in barely civilized conditions. <laughs> Did you hear something? Relax, darling. It's spa day. How have you been? It seems ages since we've spoken. I hope all is well with you and Ambassador Montillier. I would never kiss and tell, Vivienne. You know that. Merely expressing concern for your well-being, my dear. Someone ought to. <laughs> you must be keeping very busy. The Circle needs more supervision than a toddler. It may master using the privy on its own any day now. Don't you feel better, my dear? This place really does work miracles. What happened? Darling, it's spa day. Don't fret. You'll undo all the good they've done. Come along, Inquisitor. They have other appointments, you know. As the most eloquent dwarf you know, Sparkles... 
speech! Speech! Way too much speech. Varric, there's really no need. What's going on? Inquisitor! You're just in time. Sparkles, the Imperium doesn't deserve you. Or want you. It, it may even kill you. But we'll miss you. If it counts. And you didn't know. Okay, folks. Time to take the party elsewhere. Tom never wanted any. I swear. Uh, leave him. It's true. When the Exalted Council has ended, I'm going back to Tevinter. For good, this time. Tevinter needs someone like you. My father is dead. Assassinated, I believe. I received notice this morning. A perversely cheerful letter congratulating me on assuming his seat in the Magisterium. We only met a few times while I was home. He didn't say anything about keeping me as his heir. This ambassadorship, his doing, I'm told. He must have wanted me away when the trouble began. I have to go back. So you'll truly be a magister? Oh, yes. I can't wait to degrade the magisterium with my presence. A new outfit is required. And then what? I find my father's killers and kill them back. Then I find those giving to Vinter a bad name and kill them. They're most likely the same people, so that should make the job easier. You'll need help. I could go with you. Not this time, my friend. I won't be entirely without support. Mayveris has gathered other Magisters who feel as we do. We'll be an actual faction in the Magisterium. I'll teach them manners, take them shopping. It'll be fun. I know it was complicated, but... I'm sorry about your father. Thank you. It still doesn't feel real. I wish you safe travels and the best of luck. Oh, I'll need it, thank you. Magisters are tricksy bastards. A present. A going away present. It's a sending crystal. Amazing what friendship with the Inquisition gives you access to. If I get in over my head, or you're overwhelmed with sorrow for lack of my velvety voice, Magic. What? You didn't think I would just leave and you'd never hear from me again, did you? You are my dearest friend. Perhaps my only friend. That will never change, no matter where we are. Now let's finish the good wine before the others get back. Oh. Is everything all right? Yes. Well, I wanted to speak with you, and now you're here. I am. What's on your mind? Maybe you should sit. I can stand. Maybe I should sit. Inquisitor, I want you to know that I am your friend. I will always be your friend. Oh, well, that's... So I hope to give you sound advice on this momentous day. Do what is in your heart, my friend. No matter what anyone might tell you. I really can't imagine what you mean. Oh, I'm talking about marriage. Marriage? Josephine is a wonderful woman. If you're clear on your path to... You're not proposing to anyone. I am going to kill Varric. Why do I believe everything he says? Why? He said I was going to propose? He mentioned a proposal. I suppose I filled in the blanks. 
or he did this on purpose. That dwarf gets entirely too much joy from my discomfort. I might get married. I've thought about it. I suspected as much. Being Inquisitor has brought you good things. Many good things. But only a few have been by your choice. Take what happiness you can from those, and do not let them go. That is all I meant to say. Advice from a friend for the days to come. Will you walk with me? The first time I came to the Winter Palace, I was only 18. I was dazzled. Such rich hangings, splendid marble columns, more golden lions than I could count. It's all still here, still bright, but I no longer see that same palace. Everything changes. People, most of all. Yes. Now all I can see are the knives in the shadows, the poison in jeweled goblets. They seek to tear the Inquisition down. You feel it, no? Fear. I'd fear anyone with our vault of secrets, wouldn't you? It is not our secrets, nor our soldiers. There have always been spy masters and private armies. They are afraid of nothing so much as the hand that directs it all. Mine. Already your actions have begun to reshape Thedas. Your influence is felt everywhere. It was only a matter of time before they moved. I'm surprised it took this long. It may be time to end things. The Inquisition still does good work. Thedas will always need us. We set out to restore peace. And now, peace is upon us. But I know from experience how hard it can be to lay down your blade and accept that things have changed. We can still work for the good of Thedas without the Inquisition, but the time for soldiers and spies has passed. You have suffered terrible things, Inquisitor. I hope you still see the light ahead of us. The world is ready to move past the horror of the Breach and Corypheus, and so should we. But whatever you decide, I will be honored to stand beside you. You there! You're to dodge, not catch! If that ball were a fireball, you'd be dead. You found a dog? They don't breed Mabari in Olay. The merchant said he was abandoned. Perhaps his owner's tired of the novelty. Tire of you? With that positive attitude and fetching ability? <clears throat> He's not supposed to fetch it. I don't think you understand how this works. Another Ferelden trapped at the Winter Palace. I couldn't leave him to that fate. Besides, <laughs> I think he likes me. I never expected you to make friends at a political council. How times have changed. <laughs> so they have. The Inquisition will change after this. I'm not yet sure what that will mean. Whatever happens, our people, you, Liliana, Josephine, will have my support in whatever form you require. I can't imagine the Inquisition without you. I am honored, and likewise, Inquisitor. You can help. Dodge this, and I'll find overpriced Orlesian dog treats before we go. It's so good to see you, darling. I've been fielding Orlesian diplomats all afternoon. Have they given you trouble? Not at all. It is quite alarming. It means they are all saving themselves up for later. Would you walk with me? I should like to take some air before the Exalted Council becomes inescapable. The palace has been most accommodating. We are, after all, here at their insistence. But the ministers may... 
No. No more talk of the Council. This meeting was to spend time with you in a more relaxed fashion. Is this in your daily notes? Three to four o'clock. Idle chat with the Inquisitor. Of course not. <clears throat> not precisely. The truth is, there is a small entertainment happening tonight, to which I may be able to find a pair of invitations. You'd like me to go with you? Very much so. In all the years you've worked with Orlais, you had so little time to enjoy its culture. Perhaps you're right. These meetings and talks don't allow for much leisure time. And then back to Skyhold without a moment's pause to take in where we are. Sometimes, I'm afraid I do not make enough time for you, my love. Please, come with me tonight. And what is this small entertainment? Something to ease our minds. I would very much like to surprise you with the details. If it makes you happy, how can I refuse? Oh, wonderful. I was worried we wouldn't find the time. The past years have been so busy. We have earned at least a few moments of rest. A calm night out sounds... Oh, bravo! Bravo! This was your idea of a restful evening? Oh, wasn't it lovely? It's been so long since I've gone to the opera. But tell me, did you enjoy the performance? The performance pales in comparison to the lovely lady I saw it with. You are sidestepping the question. Love leaves my tongue tied. Well, in that case, I suppose allowances can be made. Thank you, Your Holiness. Now, Artigan, as to your concerns... The Inquisition established an armed presence in Ferelden territory. You outright seized Caer Bronach in Crestwood. Our goal was to keep more Ferelden citizens from dying, not to seize power. Your help was appreciated two years ago, Inquisitor. Now order has been restored, yet you remain. Invading under pretext of restoring order is exactly what the Grey Wardens did to us centuries ago, and we exiled them. Now the Inquisition is doing the same thing with Grey Wardens in their ranks. Your concern is ill-founded. The Grey Wardens have proven their worth time and again. Of course Orle tolerates this interference. The Inquisition is the only reason Selene still has the throne. Rest assured, Tegan, the Empire of Orle will not stand idle if the Inquisition oversteps its bounds. Unlike Ferelden, however, Orle understands that these were the well-intentioned mistakes of a young organization. An organization in need of a guiding hand. Yours, no doubt. Pardon me, Inquisitor. Sister Leliana asked to speak with you in private. My apologies. An urgent matter has come to my attention. Ambassador Montillier, can you handle this for a short while? I... of course, Inquisitor. This is highly irregular. Are we not even worth the Inquisitor's time? Inquisitor? I thought you would want to see this. A canary warrior in full armor. How did he get into the Winter Palace? So what would the left hand of the Divine see when she looked at this? This is a warrior, not a spy. Part of the Antam, the canary military. Most of his wounds come from a fight against someone using magic, but at least a few are from a blade. He was badly hurt, separated from his allies, and made it here before he died. But how? Would the Iron Bull know anything about this? I asked, and he is as surprised as we are. Since becoming Tarvashov, he has had no contact with his people. He seems frustrated at not knowing more. We need to find out what's going on. 
Can Josephine manage the diplomats while I look around? She will be fine. It's all speeches and posturing for the first few days anyway. I will ask Divine Victoria to call a recess for now. I will also have our friends ready themselves for battle if need be. You think that's likely? I think the Exalted Council may be more exciting than we expected. Please move along. There is nothing to see here. Looks like he came down over the railing. Crossroads. Morgan brought me here while showing me the Alluvians. It's pretty, I guess. Kind of stretchy. Ugh. Too many colors. Everything looks gray and murky to me. But there's patterns all over. It's like glass from, where's it? Sorol, isn't it? I wonder if it somehow looks different to elves. How would that work? Eyes are eyes, or supposed to be. Oh, stupid place. The blood trail leads to this mirror. Right. Let's see where this guy came from. Elven ruins. I'm not sure we're even in Orlais anymore. Oh, this is gonna be fun. The old team together again to kick some ass. There's no throwing, right? It was one time. Another Canari, dressed like the one in the Winter Palace. He's Katashok, a foot soldier. Must have been in the same squad. Scorch marks everywhere. This is the work of a mage. A powerful one. I can still feel the heat crackling. We need to find out why these Canari were here, and who did this to them. Over there. Canari. If we want to know why they're here, we've got to get across to that island. I'm afraid I can't understand a word you're saying.
maybe it's all the intruding we did when we intruded. It must have been set to guard something. That was like Veiled Fire. It claimed this was a refuge for elven slaves. Slaves? Of other elves? The old elves? Pissers. This whole valley was a sanctuary, created by the dread wolf Fen Harel. Fen Harel? The Dalish elves' god of misfortune? Cuts all over the back. He was killed by surprise. This can't have happened too long ago. The blood's not even dry. <laughs> this is Fen Harel helping former slaves as a mortal, not a god. Kinda of curious that this guy had to specify he wasn't a god. But Fenny helping is bonkers. Fen Harel sounds like quite the rebel. The old elven gods must have simply loved that. The elven gods were just Evanuris, powerful but completely mortal mages. Whoever ran this place was trying to rebuild the slaves' confidence, get rid of old propaganda. If that's true, Fen Harel was teaching these freed slaves the truth about these false gods. Ah! What's wrong? This looks like it fits into that pedestal by the broken bridge. Canari. Bust it on. These positions are believed a lot.
Why did those Canari attack the Inquisition on sight? No idea. They warned Talvashoth, though. This might be a rogue group, but they think they're following the cube. That's Fen Harel. Removing the face markings from a Dalish elf. Not Dalish. They weren't Dalish yet, right? Maybe the markings used to have a different meaning. What's this? Hidden weapons. These freed slaves actually fought back against the Evanuris, posing as gods. Interesting word, Evanuris. If all it means is mage leader, well, they were basically magisters. The Dalish are going to shit themselves. Letter says the Canari came to these ruins because the Alluvians connect to Halam Shiral. So they're aiming for the Winter Palace. It was some sort of infiltration. There's no more details. Uh, this is crazy. They're acting like we're at war. Are they? I don't know, boss. I wish I did. A note about an unknown intruder coming through an Alluvian. They turned spirits against us, then fled. It must be a mage. They killed any Kunari in the way and let the spirits do the rest. Two parties, then. The Kunari and a mystery agent determined to stop them. Come on. We have to warn people about the Kunari's designs on the Winter Palace. One dead Kunari was bad enough. Now we have more, and they're hostile. This makes no sense. The Canari may not be friendly to the Inquisition, but they have no reason to attack us. They also have no reason to be here, or using Illuvians at all. I've had the mirror placed under guard for now. It appears the relative peace and quiet of the last two years is coming to an end. First the Blight, then Mages and Templars, then Corypheus, and now this. Can't we go ten years without the world falling to pieces? We must ensure that the Kunari do not disrupt the negotiations. The Exalted Council is in a very delicate state. I'm certain you can soothe the nobles' ruffled feathers while we solve the real 
problem. Not when the Inquisitor insults everyone present by walking out in the middle of the talks. Our only advantage is that Orlais and Ferelden are divided in goal and grievance. If they unite against us, Divine Victoria will have no choice but to support their claims. We could lose everything. I know we're asking a lot of you, Ambassador. I promise we won't make this any harder for you than necessary. I know, my love. I'm sorry. I will attend to the Exalted Council. And while Josie does that, we will investigate. I'll head back to the crossroads. We need to find out what the Canari are doing, and why they attacked. And I'll have a quiet word with our honor guard. Men of us still hustled. Hmm. Guess they didn't feel like talking. That path wasn't there before. Maybe the Kunari figured out a way to make new paths. All right. Let's see where they were going. see, shall we? Look at all that. The Canari have a huge operation here. Yeah, but for what? This place isn't stable. Look, someone up ahead. I think he's human. Stay back. Oh, wait. Your hand. Are you the Inquisitor? Odd to find a human down in the deep roads at all, let alone surrounded by Kunari. We don't have much time. Please, what the Vidasala is doing, you have to stop her. The Vidasala? That's a high-ranking Bin Hasrath. Specializes in magic. Finding, studying, stopping. Not anymore. I don't care whether you serve Fenharel or not. Someone has to stop her. Who are you, exactly? My name is Jeren. Sir Jeren, once. I was a Templar in Kirkwall. Until I joined the Kune. You're Canari? Kirkwall was... Madness. Chaos. The Canari were like the eye of a storm. I stand for order and discipline. Protecting the innocent from magic. But this plan... It's as mad as Meredith ever was. Why do the Canari think that the Inquisition serves Fen Harel? I don't know. The Vidasala said it, and the Canari here accept it as fact. We've had agents of Fen Harel causing trouble all over the crossroads. Sabotage, making spirits attack us. I assume the Inquisition was their army. That you came here because Fen Harel told you to. What is it you want me to stop? This place is a Lyrium mining and processing center. The Canari need it for. Have you ever heard of Saravas? It's what the Kunari call mages. Even as a Templar, I'd never seen anything like the power Saravas can unleash. And now Vidasala is giving them Lyrium. A lot of Lyrium. It's part of something she calls Dragon's Breath. 
That's a load of crap. There's no way the Vitasala would let any Cerebas within a thousand feet of Lyrium. There's more to it than that, but I couldn't find out what. The Canari don't like it when you ask too many questions. Where are we? Why are there elven mirrors in the deep roads? This place is close to... something like a Lyrium Spring. The more we mine, the more there seems to be. As for the mirrors, I don't know. Maybe the elves were mining here too. What are you doing down here? The Canari wanted me to teach them everything I knew about Lyrium. Where it comes from, everything it can do, how we put it to use. I knew enough from my time in the Order. They figured out more. I'm not sure how. Maybe they got to the Carter. The Canari can't be mining their own Lyrium. It kills anyone who tries, other than dwarves. It killed the Canari at first. The Canari workers have a discipline only Tranquil can match. And they're quick learners. They figured it out. Why give the Cerevas more power? What does the Vitasala want them to do? She said it would save the South. That can mean only one thing. An invasion. This mine is the only source of lyrium the Canari have. They're using Gatlock, the explosive powder in the round casks, to mine, so they don't have to touch raw lyrium. If you get the primers from Central Supply, you can prime the Gatlock and detonate it. The mines will go up in flames. All right, I'll try to stop them here. I doubt my blessing counts for much now, but make a watch over you. Deep Stalkers and Cavins will cut off reinforcements, but they'll still come when they hear trouble. You've got to find the Vidasala to end this war before it begins. There's no telling how bad things will get when I destroy the mine. You'd better get moving. I will. Good luck, Inquisitor. Let's go. We have a Lyrium mine to ruin. any worse. Look at the water!
Dragon's breath. <laughs> the Kunari always enjoy their metaphors. But what does it mean? Who knows? Kunari agents moving through Illuvians to attack the South is bad enough already. I still do not understand why they accused the Inquisition of serving Fenerel. Corypheus tried to set himself up as a god. Maybe someone who knows elven history is doing the same. But how does that implicate us? What made them decide that the Inquisition serves this Fenherel? Hopefully we will learn more after we have stopped them. Let's see the Exalted Council try to disband the Inquisition after we've saved them from this Dragon's Breath. We must find out what Dragon's Breath is first. For now, our only lead is the Canari leader, the Vidisala. Gentlemen! My apologies, Lady Josephine. There has been an incident with one of your soldiers. How dare you! It was bad enough that the Inquisition chose not to inform the Exalted Council of the Kunari Corpse. Orle would have been happy to help with the matter. But now your own guards are attacking servants? You have overstepped your bounds. My plan to seize power in Ferelden would hardly start with soldiers scuffling in Orle, Arl Tegan. While the Exalted Council is our foremost priority, the Inquisitor will, of course, address this matter personally. Thank you, Inquisitor. Orle stands ready to assist the Inquisition, as always. Secrets and lies. Do you understand why we fear your Inquisition? You act as if you're the solution to every problem. How long before you drag us into another war? What's going on here? The Orlesians tried to take one of our people, Inquisitor. We've secured the area. This is the Winter Palace. You cannot simply seize control when one of your guards attacks a servant. The Inquisition is handling this. When some noble commits a crime of fashion, you can take over. I only asked what he was doing. And when I refused to bow to the Inquisition's dogs, you attacked me. How would you like us to handle the situation, Inquisitor? That barrel there. Where did it come from? I was ordered to bring wine for the guests. You're lying. Your Inquisition soldiers are completely out of control. No, we're in control. Keep talking and you'll find yourself in chains. Please take the servant into custody. Right away, Your Worship. Inquisitor? Ambassador Montelier will explain later. For now, please hold the servant for questioning. As you say, Inquisitor, Lord Cyril will hear about this. Inquisitor, I also found this by the barrel. I can't read the language. Did you resolve the problem with the guard? The guard is the least of our problems. Someone smuggled Gadlock barrels into the Winter Palace. Smile, Inquisitor. There are many eyes upon us. At least now we know the true extent of the dragon's breath. How are you still smiling? Years of training as a bard, Inquisitor. We cannot show weakness now. Enemies could be watching, or we can let them see this idle conversation between two friends. You think the dragon's breath is these Gatlock barrels? Of course. A surprise attack, even through the Illuvians, would have met fierce resistance. But if everyone at the Exalted Council died in an explosion, the South would be rudderless, vulnerable to attack. This is what Corypheus should have done after the explosion at the Temple of Sacred Ashes. An attack as swift and unstoppable as the breath of a dragon. The guard who confronted the servant said she found this note near one of the barrels. It looks like Canari writing. Let me see. I picked some up from the Iron Bull, though I'm told my accent is atrocious. These are orders for positioning the Gatlock in the palace. When duty has been performed, Report to the Vidisala through the mirror marked by a bookcase. If we're going to find the Vidisala and stop this dragon's breath, this is our chance. Good. While you do that, I will have agents locate the Gatlock barrels and remove them safely. I will also send word to my foreign contacts. We must see where else this dragon could strike.
An alluvian marked by a bookshelf. This should be it. Is this some sort of old elven library? It definitely saw a massive magical backlash some time ago. Let's hope we can track down the Vidisala in all this. Visitors, patrons, welcome. The halls are open. What are you? I am study. I am a learning thirst. Come, know what has not been lost. New words, new stories. The Kunari would not approach, but we learned their words as well. If you wish to exchange knowledge, they congregate by the lower gate. What did the old elves use this place for? This is the Vir the living knowledge of the Empire. The libraries of every city, the wisdom of every court. A connecting place whose paths are in disarray. What put this place into disarray? The Vir was made with world and fade. When they sundered, so did we. Paths broke, knowledge fragmented, many were trapped. I preserve their last words. What were these old elves' last words? What happened? Where are the paths? Where are the paths? God save me. The floor is gone. Do not let me fall. Do not let me. On this spot, that is all. I'm looking for a canary called Vidisala. Do you know what she wants here? Vidisala, yes. She uses scholars and mages for study. They fear this place, but they seek to know the Veil. What does Vidisala want to know about the Veil? I regret I do not have more information. I am sundered from myself. If you discover another one of me nearer the Kunari, I may know more. Kindly give it my greetings. I have not thought with myself for some time. There must be thousands of years of history here. There must be so much you can teach us. I will try to recall, honored patron, but there are gaps, breaks, greetings, laughter, Emma and Nassal, forms out of air, light, memories. And yet there are so many broken parts at every missing, missing, missing. Stop, please, stop. You don't need to hurt yourself. Yes, I... Wisdom from compassion. Yes. I will stop. Apologies. I knew all once. We knew. With the break, only fragments or knowledge knew since the fall. We'll be going now. Know this. An unknown person, not of the Kunari, recently woke the librarians. An unknown person? Could this be our agent of Fenharel? The librarians facilitated learning before the fracture, before the fall. Now, beware them. They are unwell. There, Kunari, on that upside down island? Shivering, wide awake, watching for demons. This isn't home. This isn't home at all. Let's look around for more. The inverted alluvian must lead to the canary. Welcome, welcome. Listen to the last words of those who lived past the fall. How could the dread wolf cast a veil between the world that wakes and the world that dreams? The Evanuris will send people. They will save us. When have you last heard from the gods? When the veil came down, they went silent. What is this veil? What has Fenharel done? Are these records saying Fenharel created the veil between our world and the Fade? If it's true, that means the Fade and the waking world were once one in the same. are heading toward that upside-down Illuvian. It's a place of learning. Maybe this Vir de Thara is helping us find what we need.
Welcome, and listen to the last words of those who walked this place. If we get out of here, I will end Fen Haral. After he held back the sky to imprison the gods, the dread wolf disappeared. Lies. We must tear down the veil, the cities, the pathways. Without magic, they're crumbling. You're wasting your time. Fen Haral's veil has turned our empire to ruins. So the ancient elven empire collapsed because the veil weakened magic. Do you realize what this means? What this place is? The actual history of the elves could change everything. An empire run on more magic than we have ever seen. Perhaps it's best its little secrets remain lost. That should be enough stairs. Let's see if we can reach the inverted alluvian now. Survivor of the Breach, Harold of Change, Hero of the South. The Vidisala, I presume. After fulfilling your purpose at the Breach, it is astonishing to hear you still walked free among your people. Your duty is done, Inquisitor. It is time to end your magic. It's not too late to put our weapons down and talk. There's no need to pretend that you're blind to what you've begun. I am no stranger to catastrophe, but this chaos in the South defies comprehension. The Kuhn left your people to curb your own magic. You've amply proven we should have stepped in long ago. Is that what Dragon's Breath is for? Murdering our heads of state just to control our magic? Do you believe closing the breach solved everything? That its consequences stopped there? The day we saw the breach, the Kuhn decided its action. We would remove your leaders and spare those who toil. This agent of Fenharel has disrupted everything. Lives that were to be spared, lost for him. Who is this agent? Why would you think they work for the Inquisition? Kill the Inquisitor, then follow me to the Dargarad. are open. Can you tell me where a Kunari called the Vidisala went? Yes, we heard much, although she fooled herself into thinking we could not hear. Take a keystone to the Davarad. I will join you there soon and take stock of our remaining Gatlock powder. I found a keystone with one of the Kunari. Yes, and you need words for their key. Maras Nira. It glows. It will open the way to the Davarad. May you find what you seek. In coming here, you strengthen the path. 
Seekers of knowledge true. I was connection. One city could read the records of another. One Elven feel the memories of another. When the veil fell upon us, I marked the end of all they knew. We've got to find this dark rad and corner Vinisala there. Your agents confirm there are Gatlock battles in Denerin's palace? Yes, and in Valroyo and across the Free Marches. The Winter Palace is not the only target. The Canari are one order from destroying every noble house in the known world. Oh, there is a bright side. Warning the ambassadors will remind them of the Inquisition's value. Not when the Inquisition is responsible for that threat. They came in through us? Yes. How, damn it! The Alvin servant handling the barrels confessed to working for the Canari. But the servant was Orlesian. That implicates Orle, not us. But the barrels arrived at the Winter Palace on the Inquisition Supply Manifest. <sighs> How are we supposed to fight a war when we can't even trust our own people? Do you know who got the barrels onto the Inquisition Manifest? Yes, several of the Inquisition's Elven workers have gone missing. I had their backgrounds checked. They joined the Inquisition after fleeing the chaos in Kirkwall. I remember when Kirkwall was at its worst. Many of the city's elves converted to the Kune, trying to find a better life. And the Canari turned them into spies. The Inquisition stopped Corypheus and saved the world. We can't let an outside threat change who we are. I fought to protect the Inquisition in this exalted council. And for what? So we could deceive and threaten those we claimed to protect? Once we locate the spies... This isn't about the spies! You hid the Kunari body. You all but seized control of the Winter Palace. We did what was right, not what was politically convenient. Do you know what this has cost us with Orle and Ferelden? They are planning to dismantle us as we speak. And perhaps they are right. <laughs> It's fine. It's under control for now. But we don't have a lot of time. I need to get to the Darvarad. Thank you, Inquisitor. Would you... Would you like us to inform the Exalted Council of the danger? Yes. If we fail, the Exalted Council needs to know what happened. I will inform them personally. Leliana, I can... No, your job is hard enough already. This is my responsibility. I'll have guards ready at the Alluvian, in case the Canari attack the palace. Make a watch over you. Alright everyone, get ready. Where did the Canari get all these? How long have they been studying Alluvians? The sooner we stop this invasion plan, the better. Oh shit, that can't be good. You alright? We should hurry. Here they come!
end well for Kirkwall the last time the Kunari got angry. I really hope we settle this fast. I've seen all the burning cities I ever want to see. Dragon's Breath is an actual dragon? Ethar! Vaz! Inquisition! Nira Tasi Asara! Mirabas Adim Kata! You have come far enough, Inquisitor. No more. Visitor, you have such a little time left. You must finally see the truth. Elven magic already tore the sky apart. If the agents of Ben Harrell are not stopped, you will shatter the world as well. If these agents of Ben Harrell are a threat, we'll handle them. How, when you have never defeated anything without their assistance? You would have died from the mark on your hand, but for the help of one of their chief agents. The same agent who helped seal the breach. 
who led you to Skyhold, who gave Corypheus the orb, then founded the Inquisition. Solus, agent of Fen'Harel. What? Solus wanted that orb. If the agents of Fen'Harel gave it to Corypheus, he couldn't be one. Or perhaps he was tasked with removing the evidence of his group's interference. Solus tricked us all. He pushed a dying canary into the Winter Palace to lure you into opposing us. Without him, we could have brought the South peace and wisdom along the gentle path. Now we must take the way of blades. <laughs> Anna Hayden, Inquisitor. If it is any consolation, Solus will not outlive you. Solus was one of us. I won't leave him for Vitasala. The Vitasala cannot have gotten far. like this, it will kill you. Solus must help as he did at Haven. Solus doesn't want to hurt people. He isn't that kind of wolf. The canary don't see.
Let us finish this! You are dead, Inquisitor! Your soul is dust! Besit Kata, etwa Ost. Maras Kata! Your forces have failed. Leave now and tell the Canari to trouble me no further. Solas. you have questions. The Canari believe you are an agent for someone who has taken the name Fen Harel. The Canari reject myth and legend. If you told them of your meeting with Nathal, they would attribute it to a demon. I am no one's agent but my own. I fear that the truth is much simpler and much worse than the Canari believe. You're Fen Harel. I was soulless first. Fen Harel came later. An insult I took as a badge of pride. The Dread Wolf inspired hope in my friends and fear in my enemies. Not unlike Inquisitor, I suppose. You also know the burden of a title that all but replaces your name. The Dalish legends about the evil trickster god are wrong. 
I saw the truth in the crossroads. You saw another story, written in desperation to give me more credit than I ever deserved. You were a hero, Solas. I sought to set my people free from slavery to would-be gods. I broke the chains of all who wished to join me. The false gods called me Fenharel, and when they finally went too far, I formed the veil and banished them forever. Thus I freed the Elven people, and in so doing, destroyed their world. You banished the false gods? You didn't kill them? You met Methol, did you not? The first of my people do not die so easily. The Evanuris are banished forever, paying the ultimate price for their misdeeds. The Evanuris were elven mages? How did they come to be remembered as gods? Slowly. It started with a war. War breeds fear. Fear breeds a desire for simplicity. Good and evil, right and wrong, chains of command. After the war ended, Generals became respected elders, then kings, and finally gods, the Evanuris. You said that the elven gods went too far. What did they do that made you move against them? They killed Mithal. <laughs> Crime for which an eternity of torment is the only fitting punishment. I thought Mithal was one of the Evanuris. She was the best of them. She cared for her people. She protected them. She was a voice of reason. And in their lust for power, they killed her. You love the Fade. Why would you create the Veil to hide it all away? Because every alternative was worse. Meaning? Had I not created the Veil, the Avenuris would have destroyed the entire world. How did creating the Veil destroy the world? You saw the remains of Via Dathara. The library was intrinsically tied to the Fade, and the Veil destroyed it. There were countless other marvels, all dependent on the presence of the Fade, all destroyed. The elven legends of immortality? All true. It was not the arrival of humans that caused them to begin aging. It was me. The Veil took everything from the elves, even themselves. That's the past. What about the future? I lay in dark and dreaming sleep while countless wars and ages passed. I woke still weak a year before I joined you. My people fell for what I did to strike the Evanuris down. But still, some hope remains for restoration. I will save the Elven people, even if it means this world must die. Why does this world have to die for the Elves to return? A good question, but not one I will answer. You have always shown a thoughtfulness I respected. It would be too easy to tell you too much. I am not Corypheus. I take no joy in this. But the return of my people means the end of yours. It is my fight. You should be more concerned about the Inquisition. Your Inquisition. In stopping the Dragon's Breath, you have prevented an invasion by Canari forces. With luck, they will return their focus to Devinter. That should give you a few years of relative peace. The Canari said the Inquisition was unknowingly working for agents of Fen Harel. I gave no orders. You led us to Skyhold. Corypheus should have died unlocking my orb. When he survived, my plans were thrown into chaos. When you survived, I saw the Inquisition as the best hope this world had of stopping him. And you needed a home. Hence, Skyhold. You gave your orb to Corypheus? Not directly. My agents allowed the Venatori to locate it. The orb had built up magical energy while I lay unconscious for millennia. I was not powerful enough to open it. The plan was for Corypheus to unlock it, and for the resulting explosion to kill him. Then I would claim the orb. I did not foresee a Devinter Magister having learned the secret of effective immortality. What would have happened if Corypheus had died and you'd recovered the orb? I would have entered the Fade using the mark you now bear. Then I would have torn down the veil. As this world burned in the raw chaos, I would have restored the world of my time. The world of the elves. If you destroyed the veil, 
Wouldn't the false gods be freed? I had plans. So at least some of the stories about the Dread Wolf are true. I did not lead a rebellion against immortal mage kings without getting my hands bloody. You must understand. I awoke in a world where the veil had blocked most people's conscious connection to the Fade. It was like walking through a world of tranquil. We aren't even people to you. Not at first. You showed me that I was wrong. Again. That does not make what must come next any easier. You never cared about us. We were the means to an end. You were people, and you deserved better. Like all the rest I've used in one hopeless battle after another. What's wrong with the Inquisition? You created a powerful organization. And now it suffers the inevitable fate of such. Betrayal and corruption. It's not that simple. Do you know how I discovered the Canari plot? The plot I disrupted by leading them to your doorstep. The Canari spies in the Inquisition tripped over my spies in the Inquisition. The Elven Guard who led you to the Canari body? Who intercepted the servant with the Gatlock barrel? Mine. Why bother disrupting the Canari plot if you're going to destroy the world regardless? You have shown me that there is value in this world, Inquisitor. I take no joy in what I must do. Until that day comes, I would see those recovering from the breach free of the Kune. Why? Because I am not a monster. If they must die, I would rather they die in comfort. In any event, it is done. So you let us do your dirty work? The mistake was yours to fix, Inquisitor. You control the Alluvians now? Yes. You remember Briala from Halam Shiral? For a time, she controlled part of the labyrinth. One of my agents was supposed to take it from her, but he did not succeed. I had to override the magic personally. The Canari stumbled upon this section independently. With them gone, the Alluvians are now mine. There's still the matter of the Anchor. It's getting worse. Yes. I'm sorry. And we are almost out of time. The monk will eventually kill me. Drawing you here gave me the chance to save you. At least for now. If I live, I'm coming to stop you. I know. Take my hand. I'm sorry. Live well, while time remains. Something must be done, but we cannot lose the Inquisition now. We stand on the brink of war with the Canari. Yes, because this Solas provoked them in the first place. The Inquisition did not cause this threat. We informed the summit of the danger. The danger posed by Canari spies inside your organization. Without our organization, none of us would be here to complain. <sighs> no one has forgotten what you have done. But Corypheus is two years dead. If the Inquisition is to continue, it must do so as a legitimate organization, not a glorified mercenary band. Inquisitor. You all know what this is. A writ from Divine Justinia authorizing the formation of the Inquisition. We pledge to close the breach Find those responsible and restore order, with or without anyone's approval. I'm proud to say we accomplished that goal. We will honor the sacrifices of those who gave their lives in defense of what we stood for, and still stand for. Because our work is not done. Where we led in war, we will now serve in peace. The Inquisition will act as Divine Victoria's personal honor guard. Answering directly to her, we will transition from a military force into a peacekeeping organization. My own adventuring days may be done, 
but the Inquisition and its mission will continue. Over the next several months, the Inquisition carefully gave over many of the duties it had held. As the Divine's personal guard and peacekeeping force, the Inquisition shrank to a more manageable size. Many who had served went home, though the remaining force was still enough to give pause to any who might threaten the Divine's plans. Those who served the new Inquisition were tested and checked thoroughly, in the hope of ferreting out any more spies within its ranks. With the dragon's breath disrupted and any hope of a swift victory dashed, the Canari retreated back to the north. Few knew what debates were waged in Parvalin, but not long after the Exalted Council, the Canari launched new attacks against Tivinter. Their aggression caught the already unstable Imperium off guard. Tivinter was soon mired in a war many feared could spread across Fadus. Cassandra continued her reign as Divine Victoria, rebuilding fractured alliances and settling the Inquisition into its new role as her personal guard. Her efforts were successful, and for a time, Southern Thetis saw peace. Cassandra also spent time in the Hunterhorn Mountains north of Orle, where she worked to rebuild the Seekers. For a time, the new Seekers remained reclusive, showing no interest in worldly affairs and working to a purpose few outside their order could guess. Some believed that the end of the Inquisition as it had been heralded the destruction of the fledgling College of Enchanters. Having clashed with the Circle, the College now found itself without support against the newly elected Grand Enchanter, Vivian. Fortunately, Grand Enchanter Vivian grudgingly agreed not to destroy its terrified leaders, as a personal favor to Divine Victoria. The two institutions settled into an uneasy coexistence across the South, vying for power. Liliana continued to act as the Inquisition's spymaster in its final months as an independent organization. During this time, she shared many of her responsibilities with her most trusted agents, including Charter, Rector, and Harding. Many believed that Liliana feared what lay on the horizon and was grooming successors in anticipation of the challenges ahead. Liliana continued her romantic affair with the hero of Feralden, even though their respective responsibilities often kept them apart. Whenever she could spare the time, Liliana would join her love at a villa on the Waking Sea. The house from Liliana's childhood. Those days were deeply cherished, for both saw the troubles that were to come. With the Inquisition now serving the Divine, Sarah returned to the singular and plural role of Red Jenny because nobility and grammar could both still eat it. Many noted how Sarah's methods had changed after seeing the Inquisitor stand for everyone. This Red Jenny was more focused, tactical, and, some dared say, effective. 
she and her network could also be counted on to act in the interests of the supposedly desk-bound Inquisitor. Sarah remained a formidable ally of allies, intent on proving that the powerful weren't, and that it was friends who mattered over all. With frequent visits to her whittle, of course. Perhaps most unnerving was Sarah's standing offer to the Divine. When the knobs piss about with your left hand or right, call on Red Jenny to give them two fingers. Varric took up the role of Viscount and, with the help of his friend Hawk, rebuilt Kirkwall's damaged infrastructure. Under his rule, the city-state finally resumed its place as the major trade hub of the Free Marches. He continued to ignore all mail from both the Merchants Guild and the Prince of Starkhaven. With the Inquisition in its new role, the Bulls Chargers returned to taking jobs throughout Orlais and Feralden. Fighting demons and clearing out the remains of venatory forces, the Iron Bull did his part to restore order to Thetis. After the Inquisition transitioned to a peacekeeping role, Cullen continued to serve as commander of its forces. For Under his leadership, the Inquisition protected the Divine's interests while enforcing new standards of security. Cullen also expanded the Chantry's treatment for Templars whose minds were taken by Lyrium, as well as those who wished to cease Lyrium usage. And as chaos reigned in the north and threats to the Divine lurked in every shadow, Cullen remained ready to serve. Dorian returned to Tivinter to take his father's place in the Magisterium. As rumors flew about the Imperium's infighting, Dorian was spoken of often as a voice of resistance against corruption. Along with Magister Mavaris Talani, he formed a group called the Lucerni to restore and redeem Tivinter, a fight many thought hopeless. Those fighting by Magister Pavis's side noted that he kept in constant communication with the Inquisitor via message crystal. Whether for vital information or for moral support, these talks seem to give Dorian the strength to continue his fight. After the Exalted Council, Tom Rainier bid farewell to his friends and went to Weishaupt Fortress to pledge himself to the Grey Wardens for good. While he was rarely seen in the years that followed, some said they encountered Rainier in far-flung lands, their accounts always similar. Rainier carried out the duty of the Wardens, but always found time to help others along the way. Sometimes he served as a shield for the defenseless. Other times, he spread simple cheer among children with gifts of small, carved toys. Cole returned to the Fade, saying that there was more pain coming, and that he knew where compassion was most needed. He promised that his friends in the Inquisition would remember him, and that where the hurt was greatest, he would help. After easing the Inquisition's transition into the Chantry, Josephine returned to Antiva and her family. Thanks to the Inquisitor's help, the Montilliers were once again permitted to trade in Orlay. The next few years were a busy time, as many ships with the Montelier crest were built and set sail again from Antivan harbors. Soon, Rivani pirate captains with an ancient feud against Josephine's ancestors took to the seas, determined to rekindle the rivalry. Apart from Josephine's sister, Yvette, nearly eloping with a dashing pirate prince on one occasion, Lady Montelier took the development in stride. The Inquisitor found himself warmly received by Josephine's family, and House Montelier soon became a second home. A place where the Inquisitor could, at last, find peace for a time, with Josephine happily by his side. After the events at the Winter Palace, elves left the Inquisition under mysterious circumstances, as did elven servants across Thetis. None could say where they went, but those who believed the Inquisitor's story about Fenhir Rail wondered just how large the Dread Wolf's forces were. And what the ancient elven rebel had planned.
My agents have found nothing. With the Illuvians, he could be anywhere. Maintaining the Inquisition, even as a peacekeeping force, leaves us vulnerable to agents of the Dread Wolf. But also gives us the strength to respond. <sighs> we will need to be careful. Solus knows everything about us. Who we are, how we work, our strengths, and weaknesses. Then we find people he doesn't know. We will stop Solus by any means necessary. 